Here he's probably going to take the ball to safety and well played sequence there from Sentinels. I liked what I saw there. Cloud9 cannot pull a business up four to one and sit on that lead. They cannot think that this one's over because Sentinels are now within one minute, one or two good holds just like that. Sentinels have life and they have the skills, the talent, the teamwork. They have everything they need to, to win this game and this series as they've cut this lead in half Cloud9 with one push to potentially hold on to a 45 second lead. But if not, Sentinels are going to inch closer and closer to coming back. It's almost like the curse of it, the, the feeling a little bit too easy right now for Cloud9 is they got 90 uncontested and now they're just maybe going a little bit too fast to try to close it out. Looks like they were able to secure three kills though. Finally, this push does work. Only 43 seconds on the board for Sentinels and if they can hold off one more round of slays, Cloud9 will secure round one. Tusk with the time, with the oddball and it looks like Cloud9 will in fact win round one. <laughs> And it, it's miraculous even that it was a close round after the start we saw from Sentinel's goose eggs through two to three minutes for half, more than half the team. Hey, uh, these are just uh, shocking words coming out of my mouth. And but what I'm hearing from Eli the Ninja, I cannot believe what we're witnessing here from Sentinels. And it's not to say that Cloud9's not a, a great team. They are. They've earned their spot here from the open bracket. But this is Sentinels. This is a, a grand finalist contending team here just in pool play. Looking like they not, might not make it out. Yeah, definitely not what we expected to see, but this is where I have seen this team shine, though, is when their back is absolutely against the wall. That's typically when they do step up. So I think right now we could see a bit of a transformation. But if you're on the side of Cloud9, you want to continue the aggression. You want to continue to apply pressure. Don't let them fall into that comfort zone, because if Cloud9 can secure this dub, they will certainly find themselves in that championship bracket. That had, that had to be the comps uh, for Cloud9 in between the start of round one and two is, guys, run it back. Same exact way. Right. Keep the pressure on them. Keep doing exactly what we're doing. There's nothing else to talk about. Just keep playing our game. As we see that from Cloud9, a good start from Sentinels to earn the first 14 seconds, but it's Cloud9 instead looking to reach the first 30-second checkpoint as they've got numbers edge, and it's going to trickle down into the scoreboard. It looks like they're they're going to double up on Sentinels. They're working on a little rotation here as well. Spawns on the seaside for Rami, and he says, come on through, boys. But the cross, I imagine, is going to be watched from the B-rail. But no, Sentinels wow. have nobody there. And the Shroud screen is going to allow Septify to make it all the way from A to C with the heads-up rotation doubling up on the lead. And now with that lead, you can reset things and go again. Yeah, great rotation from Cloud9, just kind of understanding what side of the map Sentinels is spawning predicting which way they're going to push from and just pushing out the opposite direction. You can really play keep away on this map, just rotating through the perimeter if you accurately predict. But wow. Great shots coming out of Rami, kind of coming out on top in a fight he didn't deserve to win. Rami's a guy that I really felt like willed his way to the World Championships oh, yeah. with that. Was it Team War roster? Yeah. Great, Tony. great roster, but Rami in my eyes was... He was that dude, and he is that dude, still is, as he sits at 12, 5, and 8. Doesn't have any ball time until now, uh, but thats I don't think that's his role, right? Uh, Randy's role is to do uh, dole out damage, and he's doing just that, playing his game, and Cloud9 are looking better for it. Diagram with the camel to work with. We're not seeing enough sandbox control for Sentinels, not enough map control, oddball control. This one's going the other way quickly as two more go down. No, three more go down for Sentinels. Last player alive is lethal, and all he can do is wait for his teammates to respawn all the while. Tick, 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 tick. Cloud9 getting more and more time. Enemy has the ball. Tusk, 16 and eight. The, the player coach, this guy was on pro team as a coach multiple times throughout the last couple of seasons but look at him slaying out in a major way calling the shots rotating the oddball oh my he is absolutely on fire this game and sentinels need to wake up if they're going to come back in this series even just this one game right now it looks like cloud nine just might be too much right now this is unbelievable sentinels was the only one of the only two teams outside of the defending world champs to not make a roster change and nobody questioned it everybody right. thought great run it back sentinels you guys are them but it's cloud nine instead with a potential game one victory and my goodness it could get out of hand quickly three go down though sentinels have life but they need to show much more than what they have in this game so far if they want to come back i like what i'm seeing though they're sending two players immediately into the cafe side, trying to influence those spawns into the PD side. They're gonna do a two-man push to supply pressure to the spawners, but look at this, Rami, he's not over there. He spawned at Arcade. 
and somehow dies though. That's a massive kill from Falcated. If Rami is able to kill Falcated in that moment, you have to imagine the rest of Cloud9 was ready to collapse in, but they're gonna continue to have to work to finish this round. That's huge. Falcated essentially earning it a full Stalker that Rami, like a DoorDash delivery, says, right. here, take this. Look at that. Make sure you tip double as Falcated kill. earns the double kill. Three go down, make it a triple, triple as Cloud9 get team wiped and Sentinels have life. Cut this lead in half and it looks like with one more good strong hold, they could very well regain the lead, regain some composure most importantly. I feel like the mental is maybe the most damaging part of this uh, sequence and performance so far for them, but they are coming back with a vengeance. Huge win there again. Three more go down. Make it four. Sentinels with back-to-back -back team wipes are going to steal the lead. Wow, look at this. The duo, the roommates, Falcated and Boo Boo Doo Boo. 21 kills and 14. I feel like they came out of nowhere with these kill counts. Lethal and Sparty not slaying out like we're used to. Maybe that's why it's been a little bit more difficult for them in this game so far. But what a massive comeback this has been. The push is on, though, from Cloud9. Sparty's going to have to find a way to throw this ball out into a safer location. He's getting chased both to driveway and commando. Can't get that ball quite to safety. I think it still sits up at commando. But they've got several players here, and they're going to try to keep Cloud9 off the ball. All it takes for Sentinels is one, one hold, one team wipe, one rotation, and one round win to get right back in this game. And what feels like the series, despite it being so early in it, two go down for Cloud9, only one for Sentinels. Septify looks to maintain his life, but he goes down in the red room, and it looks like Sentinels are going to secure round two. We got ourselves a tie game. You said it feels like they need this round to, to get back in the series, but they need that round to get back in the tournament. They have not won. <laughs> A series yet and they need this one or they're or they're out they're gone so love to see the bounce back here we'll see if they can win round three i feel like that's gonna make cloud nine shake a little bit here they said okay we're fighting a wounded sentinels maybe this is our chance to defeat them but then sentinels wake up and suddenly they're ready to play Falcated actually set the oddball or i should say actually set the kill record in an oddball last season with yes. i believe it was 45 kills no 60. Six, the 60 it was 60 yeah it was 62 i think i think that's what he's on pace for now and falcated more of the same leading the lobby with 24 slays he's playing his role and you're right if sparty's not going to be in that mvp caliber performance like we expect from him falcate is going to have to pick up the slack and he's done just that now sparty picks up the camo look at this Lurking takes a very direct route into the setup. I think Cloud9 are ready for it, though. You see them positioning themselves with their backs to that wall, specifically to make sure they can't be assassinated by Camo. He gets spotted out, eats two stalker shots to the back. Great awareness from Cloud9 to shut down Camo right away. And right now, they're going to start round three with an early lead here. All right, Cloud9 answering back. Sentinels get the round two win and the opening break win, but. Cloud9, regain the oddball and this lead. Septify with it at the back of A. You assume if numbers start to dwindle, he might just toss it out through the middle of the map, but instead it's Sentinels pushing through the middle of the map. Tusk in the tires, pushing through, working his way down the B rail and on a flank across the B stairs. Now looking up towards the tires, spots Booba Dooba, and this flank is gonna allow him the backside of a couple members of Sentinels. And now he's got a collective flank here. Two players pushing up through the cafe side, two on the A side for Sentinels. And it looks like Cloud9 might just win this uh, sequence. Rami gets a kill. Tusk stays alive with a repulsor, but he doesn't have another. Oh yes, God. he does. Oh my goodness, if not for a third grenade from Falcated, Tusk would have stayed alive and would have been a hell of a play for Cloud9. Nonetheless, they regain the lead and reset that oddball. I mean, I love the play from Sentinels. Just make sure this guy dies. Throw every grenade on the map at him, please. <laughs> Get him more out grenades. of the cafe. They finally do so. It's going to secure the side of the map. Tusk really being a thorn in their side, but he's really been slowed down ever since I called out how he was on fire. He's only gotten four kills since then. Called out that he was had 16. And uh, that's kind of what you got to do, right? You got to shut down the MVP, current MVP of their team. Well, that momentum Ooh. just a little bit. Love this play with the repulse. Perfect flank here wow. from Rami. Septify getting a kill as well. And Sparty and Boo Boo, sorry, Sparty and Falcated trapped the in the tram side oh, of the map. Wow. They're going to wait for teammates to come off spawn. But I like the fact that they're fighting out B immediately. That's going to make it easier for their two teammates coming off spawn to push out on the other side. I love the communication from Cloud9 as well. Rami recognizing that 
He has positioning on the cafe side, means that Sentinels is going to be forced to push through either mid or red room. They call it out preemptively. They know the push is coming, but now on the cafe side, Rami goes down and that opens up the cafe for Sentinels. And they're using it to their advantage to regain control of this oddball. But they go two down in that push, make it three. Sparty, last player alive. Does he push through or does he wait to regroup with his squad? All the while on the A side, Tusk going to earn some more time. Sparty just not feeling like himself right now. We've seen him just pull off the most unbelievable s series of slays time and time again. But something's off right now. Yeah. To, to me, it might be like a PC thing. You know, there is a difference when you go from your home setup that's tuned perfectly to then having to adjust to a totally new PC environment. Maybe he's feeling different type of input lag. I don't know. Because we see his performance online. Right. He's so and, and on land. Yeah. He's not an online player. Yeah, no, he's he's been a phenomenal on land historically. But I think maybe there's just something not quite right with his setup right now. Yeah, something's not right for Sentinels. Not right in this match as Cloud9 take a 63 and rolling to 16 lead. And with two and a half minutes on the clock, Eli, it's not quite there to where you can really play for that time. I think Cloud9 are going to go through and try to secure the 100 seconds, but they don't have to. They're not forced to. They don't have to overextend for it. If anything, now Sentinels, we're going to witness some desperation from them. Sparty earns the camo. He needs to stay alive with this power up. Could power up. <laughs> potential comeback, but he goes down right after. Sparty loses his life, loses the camo, and Sentinels might just lose this game. Cloud9, impressive resilience here. Despite that comeback victory in round two from Sentinels, they are swinging even harder, it seems, in round three. Like I said, you can't let Sentinels fall into their comfort zone. Cloud9 has been constantly surrounding Sentinels from several lanes simultaneously. They seem to be just kind of winning these bait and switch battles, just kind of outplaying Sentinels. Sentinels do have the control right now. Whoa. The shotgun gonna try to shut that down though. Bulldog starts barking, Diagram gets the kill. Gonna try to rotate back, that's a great kill for Sentinels to pick up. Shotgun player could have caused a lot more problems there. Sentinels down by 42 seconds. Needing a sequence, but they're not gonna get it. They're gonna go back to the respawn screen, leave those last player alive, and I feel like Cloud9 are manipulating that three down, almost like Quadrant last year, where they force the fourth, the last member, the last Spartan standing for Sentinels to either have to make a hero play or just wait for spawns. The problem is in Oddball, when you wait for spawns, which is probably the right play to make, you allow 10, 20 seconds right. on the other side for Cloud9. That's what's taking place. But for now, Falcated has it in his hands and a chance to come back. But with 122 on the clock, Sentinels need to get within striking distance. And it looks like they will. Absolutely. Maybe wow, not. look at this, though. Who was that? I think that was Skep with the Stalker Rifle. Finds a perfect angle to three-shot the Oddball Carrier. Boo Boo's gonna deal some early damage, use himself as bait. Teammate cleans him up. The damage has been done. I mean, just killing their Oddball player in that moment yeah. was the was the opening. So Skep with a huge sneaky play. Start that opening. Ball really not in anyone's hands firmly just yet. Both teams still fighting for control of the C side of the map. And uh, with one minute on the clock, Sindel's gotta play well from here on out. Now the clock is a factor. Every passing second with that oddball on the ground is a second closer to Sentinels going down 0-1 in this series. And I just feel like it's not what you want to see for them. It's deja vu. They, they need to feel like they've got something different working here today. You can't have any of a repeat performance from day one. And I kind of feel like it looks like it so far here. It's early, only game one, but this is not good for Sentinels. I mean, you made a good point earlier when you said some teams benefit from playing through the open bracket. I feel like Cloud9 has to be one of those teams, right? Like, yeah, these guys have been practicing online, but land practice is just a different thing, right? Like, you're getting more used to those timings that we talked about that might be a little bit different compared to your online practice. A lot of these guys play on not too great an internet. I know Rami specifically yeah. has a hard time online because he just doesn't have great internet. 60 ping is his best, I think he gets. Always shows up on land, though. This guy's a monster on land, so... I think a lot of teams were kind of looking past this roster, maybe not giving them credit. You cannot forget how talented these guys can be on land. And don't look past the triplets. Two out of the three making it out of open bracket. Avenue on the side of business. Diagram on the side of Cloud9. Diagram in particular with 105. And the time that matters now is the, gener uh, the general clock, regulation clock dwindling away, 63 to 83. Sentinels don't have a chance to go down 2-1. And that will do it. Cloud9 take game one and start to
insert a little bit of doubt into Sentinel's hearts and minds. I can feel it. I, can you? I can, man. Honestly, looking at the stats was almost mind blowing. You look at the side of Cloud Nine, all of them right around 28, 29 kills. They're all like right there. You look at Sentinels, Sparty had 10 kills in three rounds of Oddball. I don't think I've ever no. seen him have that few in three rounds. He had 10 kills. Falcated, three, three kills around. You're no. Falcated had 45 kills. <laughs> he was on pace for the 45. We <laughs> a little prediction there. But that's that's insane. For for each of those rounds going 10 minutes. So 0. 0.33 kills a minute for Sparty. Though that's that math ain't mathing for me, man. I I cannot explain what we're maybe seven minutes around on average. So 0. 0.5 kills a minute. I yeah. don't know. Either way, the math ain't mathing right for for Sentinels. They need to find more. They need to dig even deeper as they are down 0-1. And if they go down again, twice. They're out of the tournament. As we switch gears here, Bittersweet versus Lore Gaming. Another one of those matchups where elimination is on the line. Bittersweet needing this victory to stay alive. Lore, though, is going to present a difficult task. Lore was who you and I had predicted to potentially make top eight in this tournament. This is their first test. Book it. Obviously, they have uh, you know, a very difficult pool ahead of them. Bittersweet, probably their team that they're looking closely at to beat right now. Bittersweet with the lead 2-1. And they've kind of taken a defensive stance I think stance it actually here. might be... Uh, we might have a, a color switch, and I could be faded. Oh, you're right, you're but right. But I think it's actually Lore in the lead. We'll get that switch for you guys after this game. A little color dif differential, but we'll keep it rolling. Lore Gaming with a 2-1 lead. Two minutes left as Piggy has a couple of shots out. And this is huge. If they can earn rockets, they could just earn this next score. This looks like an intentional play call from Piggy here. He said... Let's not overextend. Yeah, we've got a few kills, but let's just play our timing here. Make sure we guarantee these rockets. They could be the catalyst for a flag cap. They do secure the rockets. Cherish uh, back up to his green hall. Gets a kill with the first rocket. I think he still has one left. Looks like a member of Lore Gaming. Got the overshield, though, and he's going to try to shut it down. 90 seconds left. Two down on the side of Lore Gaming as cherished and the rest of bittersweet have broken through one final chance potentially to tie things up and send it to ot Ooh. cherished with the slay is gonna get the pole as well mm. oh but a huge slay there from drift tapping buttons follows up on piggy and just like that the run gets shut down breaking shot feeling obligated to push up and help mortally mortally still alive in the mauler here breaking shot doesn't want to die though knows that with a minute left on the clock every death lowers their odds of Forcing the overtime here. Love this push though. We've got Piggy Long Haul Cherish on the train. And Breaking Shot in green. They all push through three lanes simultaneously. They get a couple of kills. Breaking Shot surviving. Cherish swinging in right now to help Breaking Shot. They have a chance to get some more slays and potentially slow it down. But look at this drift. Trying to force a kill on Breaking Shot, but he's still staying alive. And Piggy with that battle rifle could put significant damage into the spawning sides of Snipe as Cherish has another flag out. Three go down for. Lore Gaming Acid, last player alive, looking to make his hero play. And all he needs to do is stay alive here. He's done enough to get one slay. He's done enough to pause the run. And now he's just looking to allow his teammates to spawn up and help with this push. Mortally down to one HP. If he gets through the long haul, he could just tie it. But instead, Acid gets another slay. Cherish gets another pull, but he's down to one HP. Repulsor oh. kicks that grenade away. Cherish down to one HP. Great prioritization of opponents from Acid as he continues oh. with his life and takes down Cherish once again. What a sequence from Acid. That repulse made all the difference. Wow. That's going to secure game. If he didn't have that repulse, he absolutely dies to those grenades. 100%. Repulses two grenades at the same time, by the way. They were both flying at him. Takes no damage. And I don't think Mortley and Breaking Shot predicted that because they backed up. They tried to look at another target. <laughs> no, they said, oh, they that did guy's not. dead. Let's let's refocus. But no, Repulse are making the biggest difference in that in the game. Acid and spawned into a spawn trap on Snipes. And we talked about Piggy with the battle rifle on the long haul set up perfectly to protect that flag run to get through the long haul. It does. But my goodness, the play from Acid to rotate from S1 to the back of Flag, to, to Mauler, then to Long Haul, then to their Long Haul, then to Green, all the while staying alive, earning more and more slaves. I think he earned four kills. That's a team wipe to essentially secure the game there. What a, what a play there from Acid as Lore Gaming. Take it 1-0 as we switch gears here. Ascending Ooh. baseline back against the wall. And ooh, this, yeah, 
That <laughs> audible mm, from Eli makes more and more sense now. I saw the series score, and then I looked down at the game score. Two and a half minutes left, four to one. We saw a comeback like this earlier, but I don't know if this one is as likely as Darkest Hour looked to shut the door and secure a top 12 finish, sending Ascending Baseline home, and uh, most importantly, not only securing top 12, but securing an opportunity to play in the championship bracket where you better watch out. There's too many veterans and too many talented players on this Darkest Hour roster. Yeah, this squad looking very dangerous, not just against this squad, but I can see them absolutely putting up a fight, taking series off many other teams in the tournament. Ascending baseline on the other side just kind of falls Huge. flat, it seems. But they do but get a it enough? here. Yeah, just two minutes left. I mean, they got to get this overshield, number one. Number two, they got to get that flag home. Number three, they got to <laughs> get two more and then win two more games. I mean, uh, it's this is looking almost impossible, but this is definitely step one in the process. Sounds like a homework assignment from <laughs> Professor Elias. Ascending baseline, complete the first question, but at two to four, we're going to switch gears to our main match. Cloud9 up 1-0, and now up 1 in this particular game. But Sparty has the camo. Sparty has already, feels like, more kills than he did in the previous game. And he's got a chance here with the camo. What can he do with it? You have to imagine there was some type of pep talk for Sparty after that game one. I mean, he himself probably very frustrated. I mean, this guy holds himself to a high standard, right? And if he's not performing and being there for his squad, he's going to be very upset with himself. But hopefully able to take that energy and turn it into a positive type of energy so that he can come back to life and lead the squad to victory. Yeah, I'm, I'm not counting Sparty McFly out. I've seen Never. him perform at a high level way too much. He could be dead in the dirt. One HP oh, and full opportunity to come back. But we got to start talking about Diagram hitting the quick scope on a boo boo doo boo. And with control of the snipe tower, they might just earn a couple more slays, and I know it's a while till that next camo comes up, but this is all preemptive setup here for Cloud9, and it's looking good. Yeah, this tower control, ever important. Guarantees that you have a good look at camo whenever it comes up. Keep in mind, camo now spawning every two and a half minutes, QTs every two minutes. Don't usually see teams go out of their way to get the QT. It's one of those things that they are just going to get if it's there, if they're there. Uh, but look at this rotation from Diagram wow. going all the way around. Maybe sensing that Sentinels are trying to create a defensive stance. Want to catch them off guard and maybe they're going to do so. I think Sentinel still thinks Cloud9 uh, Cloud and Diagram in particular is at the tower. And now he's flipped the map on its head. He might get the side of the head or even the back of the head. He does. Sparty, lucky to have QT, but look at this. Look at, look at the bait as Diagram. Wow. But that sniper ultimately goes down and Sparty, my what God, is he doing? juking his way to... Survivability stays alive. I thought twice he died, what? but he stays alive and earns another slay. Sparty finding his form, sitting at four and two, having a much better game two. And because of that, Sentinels are in the lead, up three. I mean, maybe I'm biased from watching Twitter clips, but I feel like Sparty's got to be the best QT player that I've ever seen. He's made more big brain plays with the Quantum Translocator than I think anyone I've seen. And he's continuing to do so. Needs to win this fight against Rami. Probably could have won that without trading out if he was just... Maybe predicting Rami's strafe a little bit better, but great job for Rami to get that trade despite being down in the fight. Tusk, who coached FaZe at the Halo World Championship, now on the sticks once again with the camo in his suit. A couple shots on a boo boo Falcated collectively, combining for that tower control. They've got the nest control as well, but Cloud9 are looking to break through and break it down. Falcated does not have the awareness of that camo. And with the use of the wow. repulsor, Tusk was dead to rights. But instead, not only does he stay alive, but he's got the high ground now. So he kills Falcated, takes the repulse off of his body, and uses it to stay alive. Huge plays out of Tusk. Feels like he's living on borrowed time here. If he can get any more value out of this life, that's massive. But it's Sparty McFly with the sniper rifle, and he's hitting shots. How many electric... Flips that we see in the offseason. Not going to see down. one right now, though. Shutting him down. And then also Even throwing huger. the snipe off the map. While the other team has control of the tower, just denying that resource. So massive right now. That was big. I know Cloud9's down seven, but I still like that heads-up play to not allow Sentinels to run away with it with the snipe. Because you see Sparty with it. You just assume you're going to see an overkill in the feed. To go down, though, for Cloud9. And this is the Sentinels we are expecting to see. This is the Sentinels we thought could run through to a potential Grand Finals here this weekend. They still have life, but they, again, need to win this series. Otherwise, they go home. Yeah, Falcated, seemingly putting the team on his back when they need it most. Like I said, put up 45 in the last game despite losing. Pick it up right where he left off. He's 13-2, and two, plus wow. 11 margin. 
now 14 and 3. It's absolutely trying to will this team to victory. Sparty definitely woken up here as well. Not quite as much as Falcated, but I mean, who can pace that? Oh yeah, what's, uh, what's your kill death ratio of Falcated? He'll say killing frenzy. <laughs> <That's>, he's <laughs> right. plus 10 right now. And that's the difference in this game with a seven kill lead for Sentinels. You could argue it's a lot on the, the back of Falcated and the improved performance here from Sparty here in game two. As Boobadooba looks to push up, push on through, but he goes down once again. Boobadooba on the other side having an uncharacteristic game, and it feels like Sentinels, the last thing left for them is to get everybody clicking on the same page. I don't think you can have somebody pick up the mantle. Ooh. There's not enough players performing at a high level. It's really just Falcated right now. So they get 16 and 5 in this Slayer, willing Sentinels in this match. Wow, Tusk just snagged that camo and got out. That was insane. He. <laughs> It was one of the only players alive on his team. I saw two go down, and he just ran straight at it, and G slid out, activated it on the other side, and it's a massive thing right now. They're still down by 10, but this could be a catalyst to get them to come back. Right now, he's fi finding a difficult time just looking for a route to, to have an impact here. Falcades. Falcades having that, nah, we're not doing this game. Right. <laughs> we're not doing this, guys. We're not going down to the open bracket squad. We're not getting sent home before we get an opportunity to compete in champ bracket. Right now, the only opportunity for Sentinels, the best case scenario is to go to the lower bracket. So they've got their task out in front of them, but it's going to be difficult. They've got to focus here on Cloud9, winning game one rather convincingly, but Sentinels with a convincing potential win here in game two. A big led by Falcated. Once again, nobody's in double digits except for Falcated. 17, 3, and 6. Unbelievable. I think Sentinels also just secured the sniper as well. Came up at the six minute mark. Haven't seen... No, Diagram has it. Diagram needs to stay alive, though. It looks like Sentinels know he has it, but they're not going to sit back and be scared of getting sniped. They're going to continue to apply pressure. Wow. And yes, Diagram is deleting them off the map, but all the while, Sentinels still getting kills on his teammates, which are only getting them closer to the finish line. Sentinels, with this 10-kill lead brought on by that 10-kill KD spread from Falcated, have the opportunity to trade out despite Diagram and what looks like a potential killing spree for him. It might not just be enough if Sentinels are able to chip away and trade out. Still up by nine here. Multi-possession lead. They're in the driver's seat. Feeling comfortable. But they need to secure this. They cannot rest. They cannot assume Cloud9 is going to lie down. They aren't. Last game, uncharacteristic of Sparty. This game kind of feels uncharacteristic of Boobadoobo. Seen him make some somewhat odd solo pushes that like we're not used to seeing. Usually that like patient, controlled, very precise movement around the map. And if he does get unorthodox, nine times out of 10, he makes it work some Right, yes. Having a difficult time making it work right now, but doesn't matter. Falcated still, positive 10, 18 and eight. Only Insane. Nearly half his team's kills right now. Low death count to boot. Lethal looking very strong as well. Nine kills, 10 assists, only five deaths. That's extremely valuable in a Slayer game. Certainly consequential in the score line right now. He still gets taken down now, and this is kind of the best Cloud9's looked in a little while. Got two dead without losing a player. Now only down seven. Boo -boo -boo. Misses the jump. Misses the jump, looking to sneak his way through the back of mud. He's got some teammate support, and he misses it twice. Yeah, this is, I'd say not the stat line, but him missing that jump twice to me is more uncharacteristic than anything. Boo Boo Doo Boo, I, I, I recall him against Complexity at one point when we coached him, uh, uh, securing that jump to win 50-49, clutch up. He's not, we're not seeing that right now on land, unfortunately, but fortunately for Sentinels, Falcated is having himself the, the, the performance of the match for Sentinels, or the tournament, I should say, for Sentinels, as they're up by nine, needing one kill left to secure a game two victory and a tie in the series. A much needed bounce back win here for Sentinels. Just gotta secure this last kill. I would say if they somehow lose this right now, they're out of the tournament for sure. Because <laughs> how can you possibly come back Check. from that? But uh, I think they're just gonna force a trade here. There we go. Finally comes through. Suddenly Sentinels have life in the tournament and that's what you wanna see if you're a Sentinels fan. Falcated, responsible for more than half of the slays. 26 that he played a part of. Goodness. 20 it via kills. Six assists as well. Sometimes you assume you get 15 kills in a Slayer. You're lucky to get five or more assists, but Falcated really stuffing the stat sheet. And again, I use the word willing his team back into it. Without that performance from Falcated there, Eli, there's no questions. Cloud9 is likely up 2-0 in this series. And woof, 
dude we got another one here business versus native gaming this is another one of those might as well call it lower round one matchups because the loser of this series is going home collect takes down an idol tolic takes down last shot as well wow. for the double kill as three go down for business and native gaming are going to earn control of the map and the scoring. You see what Collect just did there as well? After getting those slice, he's just sat on top of the scoreboard for a moment, positioning himself in an, the extension of the L shape with his teammates on the other side to force these spawns back mud. As soon as he knows they have respawned, he then immediately rotated to apply pressure. Now he knows the next spawn is in A. This is perfect control of the spawns and predictions out of Collect so far, but finally missing a couple shots. Trip cap for Native Gaming as Collect has spurred his squad to this lead doing a great job with the snipe about to earn a killing spree and look at that a collective triple kill in the feed from multiple members of native gaming take down three for business once again and with three caps on the board this is going to be 20 plus seconds that they might just get in one series of respawns collect always that x factor player that we're looking at is he on his game and from the eye test here early on i'm gonna say yes this guy it it feels like yeah, maybe he's not hitting every single snipe shot, but what's more important to me is the process, the positioning, the control, the discipline, and putting himself in positions to best support his team every step of the way. Yeah, and we've said multiple times in the offseason, so goes Collect, so goes Native Gaming, and so far, so good. But for now, Collect's the only player alive on his squad looking to mitigate damage and retain control of B. He's got the QT to work with, but for now, Business will get back on the board with the split control of A and C. Love this push from Collect, gets the kill and immediately portals back to safety. Has teammates in there to finish the fight. Shout out to Halo 3. And now we're going to rotate to the sandbag. Looks like Camo is coming up in two seconds here. Collect's going to look to add that to his repertoire. Camo up. The battle ensues for it. All the while, though, Native Gaming are going to secure more time. So it's a little bit of a distraction here for business. They're going to earn the Camo, but time continues to tick away. 122 and rolling to a 14 for business. Could this camo spur a comeback? Enemy it's gonna have to victory. right now. Native in firm control. Look at this patience from last shot though. Player capping the zone right in front of him, but look at that. Collect spotted him, but the repulse seemingly did nothing. Somehow unable to have any impact on last shot. I don't think camo gives you immunity to repulse, but kind of looked like it there. And now last shot. Get shot in the back, so he's unable to convert C back into his possession. You kind of would have liked him to get a little bit more value out of that camo. At one point, one four to one four one for Native Gaming. This one feels like they're running away with it a little Ooh. bit. In a game three with the series tied, this gives them that 80% chance to win the series. This is Double the game you want to take outside of a uh, secure game five. This is it for them. And oh my God! Off the spawn, collect takes the space, takes the soul of Talik. And this could just spur Native Gaming to a Game 3 win. Collect is unlocked right now. Jeez. He is absolutely on a tear. Have to imagine just trusting in his teammates. Always perfectly positioning himself kind of in that pivot position between them so that no matter which teammate needs more help, he can then fight them on that side. Love this rotation. He's been a complete master of the sandbox throughout this game. If he doesn't have QT, he's got camo. If he doesn't have camo, he's got repulse. He's had multiple snipers, <laughs> and he's had the rotations as well. Unable to stop it, and this is the best business have looked for an opportunity to start capping in quite some time. But Collect's gonna try to shut it down. Collect multiple times is regain control of B for, oh, Native Gaming, and they don't have him! No Oh my way. god, with the use of the QT, Collect gets behind two. They had no idea. He could QT his way to a triple. Instead, takes down three for business, and Native Gaming, just like that, have regained full control of this map and this match. Collect the single-handedly taking over this game. This is exactly what we love to see. We just know how high this guy's ceiling is, and it's this rare sight to see him in true form, and I feel like this is the best we've seen from him in quite some time, leading his team to a massive lead here, and they start the trip victory. cap. Barco does get taken down on the other side. Last shot getting a slate as well. You have to think they're going to try to rotate and get control of B here. And this really points to how well Native Gaming are playing, Eli. You'd think Collect, based on his POV, what we've seen, he's got to have the most slays in the lobby. No, it's McWin. 
with 17 somehow. We haven't had a chance to watch his POV, but he's actually the top performer, ironically enough, for native gaming, despite the incredible sequences, killing frenzy esques uh, from the likes of Collect. As Native Gaming look really good here in Game 3. This is a grudge match between Business and it looks like they might just take it. But Business have A, B, and C controlled. Now C flips in favor of Native Gaming and this is it. With 20 seconds left to win if you're Native Gaming, they've got one final chance. Does Business to bring this back? Yeah, but they've got three dead. APG trying to repulse an enemy off of him, but there's more lurking in the shadows. Here we go. Colic and Avenue take him down. Now we've got a trip cap. We know these guys can play fast and aggressive. That prior squad that we've seen Manny and Talik on, they were always so good at this game type. So we know they have it in the tank. They just maybe had to get out of the blender to flip the map. But right now, B and C Go! also converting. Big win with the insane no scope. Can't turn two, but does also give that sniper away. But no, APG shutting him down. That's Huge. massive yeah. to maintain that card in their hand. Massive, just to keep it out of the hands of business. That's a comeback condition oh. for them. Repulsor sets back to like a couple of flies in the summer Texas heat as the Repulsor is used to maintain control of C and this game. Wow. Native Gaming take game three and a 2-1 lead in this series. Business back against the wall, needing this win or they're not even gonna make it a champ bracket. Well, keep in mind, I think business do have one more series to play after this. But Native have already lost two. So if Native were to lose the series, they would be out of the tournament. Right, right. So I think, but the odds are not good for business, even if they were to win this uh, to beat that other squad, or even if they were to lose this to Enemy beat that other team squad. Scored. And that other squad being SSG, I believe. I think so, yeah. And if we just had to predict where that one would go, that's, that's a tough matchup. Is whoo, tapping buttons with a snipe headshot. Switching gears here. Hope you guys are enjoying the frenetic, continuous HGS red zone action. I see Louis V. Titan behind the scenes. He's kind of doing the, <laughs> the neck uh, warm up, spinning his uh, shoulders around. Oh, he's, he's got to stay warm. He's got to stay ready. He's the one on the on the ones and twos, switching gears between all oh. of these matchups. Tapping button continues with the damage being dealt. A no scope double kill and continuous control of B for Lord Gaming. A 30 second lead off the start for them. I've said it before, man, and maybe people will call me faded for this, but this tapping buttons guy, he'll just randomly be the best player in the world on any given day. Like straight Absolutely. up, this, he's just unbelievable performances. On that native white roster, he was no. absolutely no, monumental in so many of their victories, and you're seeing exactly why. This guy has not missed a shot. He's not died yet. He's not missed a shot yet as he continues dominating. Oh. Bittersweet. It's nothing but bitter. No sweet as Tapping Buttons has seven in a row. Unbelievable start from the Mexican Phenom, placing top four from the open bracket last year in the opening event. And it looks like he might just do it here again. It's a body shot on breaking shot there. Breaking shot trying to get some semblance of control. Oh! My God! <laughs> Tapping buttons! What are you doing? This is illegal! Ain't no! Hasn't missed a shot! 100% accuracy and a 100 point lead, it looks like, for Lord Gaming. What? I'm calling the police. I'm calling him right now. Officer, this guy on your Him's screen right, right now. here. This guy. This is the one. Oh my God! It's not a headshot. <laughs> but it's a groan from everyone. Oh, he misses a headshot, but still gets the kill. This is the expectation we have for tapping buttons. Does he have a killing frenzy oh. to start this game? QT with the slip, he stays alive, but breaky shot finally breaks him down. But not before tapping buttons starts off 9-0 and Lore Gaming have a 90-second lead. Insane stuff to start, but the question is, can they get control back when tapping is out of sniper ammo? <laughs> <laughs> same level of success with just oh. the bandit. But I mean, he's absolutely on fire. Love that the observer switched right back to him when he comes off spawn. He does find a trade, <laughs> yes. but I don't think they're able to secure that camo. Acid has been very impressive to me throughout this tournament. He's going to try to step up, put up numbers similar to Tappy here. Acid's had the ice for Lore Gaming. We saw the montage moments there from Tappy Ooh. Buttons, but it's been Acid who's continuously, routinely stayed alive, earned the slaves when he simply shouldn't. Now, earning control of B goes down, but not before securing more time for Lore Gaming. We're seeing some incredible gameplay from Tapping and Acid. I mean, you see now why he was picked up by North American rosters last year. This guy's insane, but finding similar levels of success with his Mexican brethren on the other side. They're absolutely dominating, but switching back on board here. 
Back to the primary matchup. We got Sentinels versus Cloud9. King of the Hill on recharge. Seems like a good game type on paper for Sentinels to potentially continue coming back in the series. Whew. You got to take a deep breath, man. This is continuous action. What a treat. We're going to win so much good Halo here as Sentinels looking to put together a game three win to give them the lead in this series. And this doesn't feel like a must win for them, but I almost feel like they're going to put the pressure on themselves to win this. They need to show that they're the better team than Cloud9. You can do that by taking a 2-1 series lead. We know Sentinels is arguably the better team, probably on paper and power rankings, but Again, this is why you play the game on land, and after a hot start from Sentinels, they are in the first bit of time. It's Cloud9 who answer right back, and they double up on this lead, and look like they have the potential to score one out. Diagram with a massive double kill right there. Now three dead for Sentinels. Not that much time left. Our observer getting confirmation, I guess, from the referee to end it. Maybe there was a player lag out. Not really sure what happened, but... I don't mind it. We are back on board with... <laughs> yes, more tapping buttons, <laughs> yeah, please. Tapping buttons and Acid, who have been putting on a show here on Live Fire. Tapping buttons with a repulsor! Mind the gap! Oh, it's Acid, excuse me. I'm losing track of who's popping off here for Lore Gaming. As tapping, switching gears now, we're back on board with them. 14, 3, and 5. We saw Falcated with an incredible performance for Sentinels. Feels like... Tapping buttons doing just that, but he goes down. He's had actually a stretch of gameplay that's not as insane. He started off 9-0. Ever since then, 5-6, and six, negative, quote-unquote. But look at Lore Gaming. They've built an even bigger lead with him having a worse performance in that stretch. Eli, make sense of that. I mean, you look at the scoreline, it's Drift stepping up in a big way. During that whole sequence, I think Drift made only had three kills. Now with 12, he's kind of picked up the slack. Like I said, the question is, can they maintain this level of control when tapping is out of sniper ammo? And the answer is yes. yes. They have been able to control the map, rotating fast and bittersweet. If they do not come back and win this game, they are out of the tournament. Lore earning 100 seconds off the start on the back of a 9-0 spree from tapping buttons. But ever since, he's been 5-6, and six, and they earn the same exact results. 100 seconds with him not playing at his best, not with a sniper in his hand. And my goodness, does that point to the deadly potential of this roster and the ability for others to step up when tapping buttons isn't somehow popping off because that's all we've seen from him so far. There's a lot of pros that say Drift is one of the hardest players to run into in matchmaking. I mean, he was number one in CSR multiple times throughout Halo Infinite's lifespan. This guy, I feel like not talked about enough. He's also gotten first or second in multiple online free-for-all tournaments. Yep. Just Lots of individual skill, maybe overshadowed by tapping in a lot of situations, but absolutely in the conversation for best, best player in Lat Am. And wow, this this squad is just impressing me more and more every Enemy time I watch them play. Scoring. Bittersweet with one final breath. 234 to about a minute or so, but bittersweet. Okay. Have the snipe. Have the trip cap. Okay. Breaking shot with a double kill. Nose go. Kill. Looking to secure okay. a triple. He does triple in the back kill. of his opponent now looking for the melee. Oh. Cherish, <laughs> what are you doing? We're renegotiating his contract. Get him <laughs> off the stage. Wow, breaking shot gets robbed from the overkill. I mean, that was still amazing. That was sick. He's uh, definitely the type of guy that wants to will this team back into it, and this is the time they have to do it. Yeah, this is it. Back against the wall. They've got the uh, the catalyst in that. We're going to give him the overkill. We're going to yeah. call it that. For sure. From breaking shot as Piggy and the rest of Bittersweet have life, have the QT, have control of B and C. It feels like they don't necessarily have to push for a trip cap here. They just need to retain life. They need to retain map control, breaking shot, and a 1v1 for his life. But he goes down. Cherish, though, gets the trade. Mixy scenario here where Lord Gaming could steal B and this game. Drift with it, but no, Piggy takes him down. Such a huge kill, make it a double kill from Piggy. Now also rotating for the triple at four the dead. perfect time to get more four dead and give the camo to breaking shot. Gonna rotate and try to also take A, maybe giving up. Wow, C they're not gonna the go process. for the trip gap. Yeah, it looks like they maybe predicted okay, they the spawns. Will. And yeah, so breaking shot, it doesn't make sense for breaking shot the cap because he's got camo. He's gonna push in, takes the fight uh -oh. against Noble, barely wins it, tapping's there to clean it up. He's about to be rewarded with the QT and 
potentially the B stronghold as well. Bittersweet are down by more than a minute. Ooh. And if not for the five perfect shots from tapping buttons, it felt like, based on the eye test, they had what it took to come back in this one and make it a series, make it a game. But it looks like instead, Lore Gaming looking to shut the door. Will Mexico make it out of the open bracket, out of pool play, and into the champ bracket? Gotta hold on here. They don't have any slays. You have to imagine Bittersweet should be getting in a stronghold soon. They've got a couple slays now. Okay, finally they do get into B. But they are losing players at the same time. They go three dead, and this is going to be the end That'll of it. That'll do it. Vamos. Lore Gaming with the 3-0 sweep. Secure their spot in the championship bracket for Zilla going nuts behind me. And so too is Mexico as Viva they earn another Mexico! historic victory. Viva la Mexico. Oh my god. Lore Gaming looking phenomenal. Collect though, 18 and three in this game. We're just jumping around and seeing some godlike performances. Collect, absolutely unlocked right now. It is hard to be 18 and three on this map, Hunter. Dude, what is this stat line from Collect? This is unbelievable. Every time we switch matches, switch POVs, someone's popping off. It was tapping buttons, previously falcated before that. Now Collect continuing on, 18, four and four. And I gotta imagine, big reason why, native gaming. As we hop on board with this one, are up 1-0 in the round. Only down by one second to business with that oddball reset. Both teams going to vie for map control and the next oddball grab. Not only that, they're up 2-1 in the series. So business backs against the wall here. Have to win the next two rounds just to send this into a game five. <laughs> Look at those go from barcode. That was like a two-frame reaction time. What was that? We've seen Barcode pop off plenty of times. He's got a great clip and overkill on recharge with the shock, but he goes down shortly after. But most importantly, <laughs> it switches into the hands of Collect. So you lose Barcode with the snipe, but you're not. Uh, what a great consolation prize to have Collect with it now. And this could help Native Gaming earn this next oddball reset. But a lot of a lot of time, a lot of time on the regulation clock going only away. I can just hear Barcode's Australian accent <laughs> when he loses the shock. Just says, "All right." Go crazy, mate. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's already been seeing what Collect's been doing all day long. He's like, just do your thing. Uh, oh, I love it, man. Halo, it's an international competition, and despite the languages we speak, we all speak the love language that is Halo. That's right. So we hop on board here once again with Collect, once again with the shock in his hands as Native Gaming has, have earned that reset and the lead now. 30 and rolling as Barcode has it in his hands. Collect. Just simply staying alive here at the top of A could potentially stop any push from business. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if you hit that, I mean, Talik would have definitely felt that one for more than the 10 seconds of his respawn timer. He does get the kill, though. Barcode wisely plays the ball. They've got a strong lead here, and I love this from Collect. Like I said, he's not. it's not just in the way that he's aiming his gun, but it's in the way he's moving around the map. When he knows his teammates have bound to play the ball, he's already taking space in gold, which is so important to contest that reset at Audubon. Last shot. They need some value out of this camo. He finds two, but goes down shortly after. But three go down in total for Native Gaming. McWin, last player alive. Look at this, advancing on the map as the last player alive, no less. No fear. He goes down shortly after. Collect in the corner. A gold mm. goes down as well. And business have a nice stretch of gameplay, but it's just enough to earn a 2v2. Right. I mean, they're winning some 1v1s, which is massive for sure. But long term, can't rely on that strategy to win a game. Got to create larger advantage states. 1v1 wins don't always lead to that barcode and a grenade. Grabs from APG there. Take that player down. Manny trying to shut down APG here, but Barcode's got the shock. Collect is nearby as well. And business looking to close the door. The last shot with a very important kill right here. If they went down, this round could have gone out of control, but it feels like business are still in this one. Barcode lining up the headshot on Avenue. Now sets his sights towards the flank on the gold frags. Last shot with a double kill via one of the frags. Helps take down three for Native Gaming. McWin, last player Enemy alive once ball. again. Does he have another hero play? Does he continue to push through? He does. My goodness. You might assume that's an overt extension, but for the likes of Austin, it's a play he makes often. He goes down right there as it's a 3v3 for now. 30 seconds left on the clock. 20 second lead for Native. And it, oh. it seems like they might not play for ball time here. They might try to throw this oddball off into no man's land and dwindle away the life force and the, the clock. So important. Also, Hunter, 
Repeat after me. Mickwin. 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 Yeah, he's not on the dollar menu. He's not. <laughs> he's not McWin. Mickwin. All right. Anyways. He has the ball. Mickwin <laughs> on the verge Mickwin. of securing this game. I call him Austin. That's why. Yeah. I mean, that's the same way. I know him as Austin. I'm. You yeah. know, we're, we're tight like that. So. Oh yeah. Okay. 10 seconds left and a 10 second lead here for Native Gaming. Looking to shut the door on business. APG with the kit, the camo, and the shock rifle. Desperation reeking for business. They have oh. to OE. They're going to get back smack. Double kill. Would have been a triple kill if not for the clock hitting triple zero as Native Gaming take the series 3 1. Business have their work cut out for them, I think. Their only hope to make it into champ bracket now would be to defeat SSG if we haven't mixed up the pools here. Had to double check that one, but regardless, it's going to be a tough team no matter what. It's, I think they have yet to play the number one seed in their pool. That was a massive win for Native Gaming, and how big for them going up against Business, who they had, let's say, a, a lot of previous history with, and then even in the 24 hours leading up to the, the tournament, those two teams swap seeds. Right. And swap fate, you yep. could argue. Yeah, very interesting seeing them end up in the same pool to play against one another. That seems to happen pretty often, though, doesn't it? Like, when the team... That happened to them before, where they ended up in the same... It right. ended up the same pool it would have been anyways. And that was the big question for Native Gaming. I talked to Talik yesterday. They had the opportunity to retain their pool, actually. HDS said, if you just bring Trey down off the coaching uh, desk and onto the sticks, you guys can retain your seed. They said, no, 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 no. We're, we're going to take Avenue, and we're going to take that run through the open bracket. We know that we still have that potential to place where we want to, and they felt like that was the best route through the open bracket. But for now, in pool play at least, they're not looking as good as they did on day one. Right. Shifting gears here. Back on board with Darkest Hour. They did just defeat their last opponents, but FaZe Clan, a whole nother ball game. They're not looking bad, though. They did score about 40 to 50 points in that first round. Slays don't look completely Double lopsided. No. He's definitely in control Killing in the slay department, but Darkest Tower so far looking all right here against FaZe. Don't expect Darkest Tower necessarily to take the series, but anything's on the table. And for FaZe, you can't sleep on these guys, especially early on in the day. Uh, we saw Sentinels get off to a slow start. A lot of that in the sense that, you know, it's early, right? Gamers are used to playing through to 10 a.m., not starting Halo at 10 a.m. So right. I think that there's a little bit of that, and you want to cut through that immediately. You can do that with a good start here in this series as FaZe have earned that. A 1-0 lead in the round and in this particular game, 1-1 one one now as Darkest Hour get on the board and take a little bit of lead. And maybe not what we're used to seeing, but Renegade the most ball time on FaZe right now. I have to think that these matches for FaZe are just kind of reps to make sure they're playing through their processes, you know, yep. and staying disciplined, getting used to the pace of play on LAN, making sure they don't do anything silly. But Darkest Hour actually with the lead here in round two. They've got a nice setup here. They're also looking to apply pressure to the spawning members of FaZe. Envoy picks one up. Have Common pushing up through the center here. Snakebite having to scurry away to safety in PD. And Common trading out with Frosty. That means they should be able to hold this ball a bit longer, but looks like they're going to drop it for now and maybe fight for that camo. Sentinels in Cloud9 still waiting to get that next game started. We have not forgotten about our main matchup of the time slot here as switch gears. FaZe Clan versus Darkest Hour. Darkest Hour making out of the open bracket. They've already won a series, I believe, in 3-0 fashion at that. So they're off to a good start looking to secure a spot in champ bracket. As to his phase, as they've already got that locked down. 4-20, to 20, though, as Darkest Hour not only go out to a lead early, but they're going to continue it on a couple minutes into the end of the round, too. Right. It feels like they should have more ball time, though, no? I mean, yeah. they've had seemingly solid control. They also had the camo during that last play, but that's just the, the level of pressure that FaZe places on you, right? Like, you don't really feel comfortable to hold the ball if you know that Renegade and Frosty are lurking in the shadows. It goes to show, right, like uh, in a last player alive, maybe, uh, you know, FaZe or any any team has two players left, maybe one. You're feeling pretty good about that. You feel like you're going to win that encounter. But if it's if it's one player left for FaZe and it's Renegade pushing up or right. Frosty or God, you can name anybody for FaZe, it's not the same as another last Spartan standing situation you might have earned if you're Darkest Hour or any squad 
as FaZe. They're just different. They're the world champions, the defending world champs. They got the rings on, and now... No, it's actually Darkest Dower continuing with the time. They hold off the push from FaZe Clan. Renegade and Royal 2 go down, and Darkest Hour are going to continue to go up. 10xing them on the lead early in round two, you could argue, but Darkest Hour actually almost at the halfway mark. This is, this is looking good. They played all through those different plays very patiently. I mean, like we said, just dropping the ball, guaranteeing that they win that fight, really using each other as bait effectively. FaZe Clan maybe thinking it's going to be an easier fight than it was, but here we go. Here we go, we are back on board with Sentinels and Cloud9. Now keep in mind, this was a reset. I'll have to see if we can find out if there, it's just a full reset or if there's some type of score differential being used here. But right now, looks like the early bit of build time going to Cloud9. Cloud9 getting on the board first in a crucial game three, tied one all. Cloud9 getting the opening strike, winning game one convincingly in an oddball where Sentinels didn't really show much life, though in game two, Falcated had 20 kills, six assists, accounting for half the slays to bring his team right back. He's been the MVP for Sentinels. Does he have another MVP performance in him? If not, this feels like it could be an upset. If you count Falcated's kills from games one and two, he had 65 total kills in just two games. Absolutely willing his team to victory. But right now, it's Cloud9, Kind of in the driver's seat. Sentinels has the more favorable spawn, though, which should lead to a stop here. But look at the dance from Rami, just dodging grenades. Finally gets taken down. Takes a player to drop in on his head from above. On the other side of the map, a couple of kills going in favor of Cloud9. And Sentinels kind of left reeling here. They're going to have to fight for control of pipes while their teammates come off spawn. Falcate gets a kill. and might be the opening that they need to get some control in this hill. Cloud9 looking to strike first, go up 1-0 in this game. One minute off the clock, and Tusk pushes on through. Takes down Sparty, looking for the double kill on Falcated. Yes, Tusk, double like a kill. woolly mammoth, earns the massive double kill. Four go down for Sentinels, and that's going to earn Cloud9 a likely 1-0 lead. Not only that, but they should be more likely to get the early rotation. Look at Lethal, though. He knows the situation, knows the hill's about to transition to this seaside, to these blue pipes. Getting here early, trying to get some semblance of control on this side, but also find an angle. I think he's also looking for Septify, who has the camo. Lethal finds out where he is, but in the worst way possible, taking damage and has another member of Cloud9 on him. Cloud9 do a great job to collapse over here, despite Sentinels having the early positioning. Septify, big win. Maintains the last bit of camo, dissipates though. But the time continues to tick up for Cloud9. Massive slays there. Tusk with the win on the first hill. Septify winning uh, about half on this hill for Cloud9, but they go two down. Losing half the squad means Sentinels have the opportunity, but Sparty pushes in a little too early. Cloud9 go three down, though, and Sentinels look like they're in position to hold on to the White Hall. Boo Boo Dooboo with the shock, and he's got plenty of it to work with. I feel like this guy. One of the best shock rifle users, but certainly one of the best at just getting the shock rifle. I swear, it just every time you switch to his screen on this map, he's got it in his hands. No. He, does he get the stick? Filthy! He does. Other player does get away, though. Septify sneaks away through bottom. How middle. did Septify survive, though? Yeah, I, th I think he just dropped off midbridge before the nade blew up. But I think Boo Boo knows that. I'm trying to gatekeep it. Sentinels do currently have the hill. For now, though, Falcon gets taken down. Was using that shroud for cover. Who knows if this player's somewhere in the hill. Trying to bait him into walking into his reticle, but can't land the shot. Three members of Cloud9 in the hill, and they're looking to just overpower it with sheer gunfire. Three go down for Sentinels. Falcon hit the last player alive, but he goes down, staggered out. Blender potential here for Cloud9. Eli, they're going to go up 2 0, and again, earning this team wipe at this lo location and time on the map could earn the early rotation. They're going to have a little bit of meat left on the bone, though, as Sentinels spawn up. Their decision is do we GG go next, or do we fight? Helplessly, the final seconds of hill time. Look at this. This is manipulation here from Cloud9, letting it get to the 99 percentile. They're going to allow Sentinels to think they can steal this hill. And if they wipe Sentinels, they are going to earn that early rotation. And next, they do! Three go down for Sentinels. Oh. Diagram earns the camo. And that should be it. Rami could earn the hill all by himself. And he does. Enemy team scored. Gonna be very curious to see where Sentinel spawns, though. Looks like they got a nice even spread across both gold and the A side, which is exactly what you want for this hill. They do want to fight into that elevator quickly as they do. They take down Tusk, Skeptify still. 
contesting the elevator side. That's the most important part of the map to hold for this hill, just to guarantee the other team doesn't spawn behind you. Ubu gonna take these angles from the hill. This is definitely one of the easier hills to fight from, so Ubu able to output lots of damage while also accumulating that hill time. Sentinels down 0-2 in this game, but they earn the first 50% on hill number three and continue rolling. Now with positioning, Sparty locking down the backside, looking to protect and defend the hill. But for now, with everybody alive, they're gonna play for that opening break strike. Lethal gets it. Septify goes down, Sparty goes into the hill, and Sentinels continue to score. I think Sparty was intentionally staying in the elevator until he was certain those players on Cloud9 had spawned up. After seeing they had spawned, knows he can safely move into the hill without worrying about them spawning behind him. Getting some hill time here. They're actually quite close to already capping this with burning very little time off the clock. That votes very well for them. After going down 2-0, to zero and Sentinels are very much back into this now. Right back in it. How huge is that? You can't go down 3-0. That's it. If uh, Cloud9 take that lead with two and a half left instead, we got ourselves a ball game, a one-score game. Plenty of time left on the clock and plenty of opportunity for Boo Dubu here to earn those cross-map battle rifle shots, utilizing it perfectly. He should win this battle to get Septify, but no, oh, Rami sneaks up underneath through the camo and takes him down. A little bit of tunnel vision there from Boo. I mean, I understand the thought, like you don't want that player to get damage on your teammates as you cross, but you have to think he made enough space already. Could have probably just crossed into the seaside after forcing that player down. You can always deal with him later. Rami taking advantage of that attention. Gets the slay. Sentinels continuing to spawn on the A side. The good news is Cloud9 have not been able to get much hill time at all yet. And they're able to break into the seaside. Can they get the slays here though? This is really tough for me, Eli, just based on the eye test and what we know. Falcade is not having a superhero performance here in game three. And we said that was about the only way from what we've seen so far that Sentinels could win this game in this series. Falcade is a mere mortal here in game three and Sentinels gonna need much more what we saw in games one and two if they wanna come back down one, two in this match. And they could go down one, two in the series. You might think that little break they had after the reset might have cooled Iced off. Him. Yeah, I mean, he was red hot while they were still playing. That was 30 minutes, it felt like. We got a couple of games in yeah. before we got back to this series, so not sure exactly what occurred on the other side, but Falcon is absolutely cooled down, as to have Sentinels as they go forward down. Diagram earns the final spree. Spart Sparty a little staggered out, and these are forcing blender positions and potential here for Cloud9. They're looking to finish strong. If they go up 3-1 with one minute left, Eli, I don't think there's enough time left for Sentinels. This is a major gut check moment for Sentinels. Do you force it? Do you try to get this oh. leg? Oh, look at this though. They get two dead as it rotates, but this bottom mid hill definitely one that is very difficult to sit in without burning too much time off the clock. It, it's going to be a minute and a half before they score this hill, Eli, and at 1-3, I don't know if Sentinels have the time and space on the map. They don't have the lives, that's for sure. Two go down, Cloud9 with all four still alive, and that's going to continue on. Three go down for Sentinels. Staggered out is Sparty. Again, the last Spartan standing, and he might not be standing for much longer. In a long-range fight with Diagram, does enough to get a good amount of damage as he continues on through the long haul, pushes through. Sparty looking to set up on the C platform, but he doesn't recognize the two players for Cloud9 right behind him. Tries to force it a little bit too hard there. You got to know that Cloud9 are just going to be playing that positioning on the C side. They're baiting. They yeah, they only stepped in the hill right there to grab the camo. Tusk is going to get away with it. But yeah, I mean, with 45 seconds on the clock, even if Sentinels do secure this hill, the next one moves to batteries, which is also very easy for Cloud9 to just sit back and bait it. This is all bait. And I guess if you're Sentinels, you got to recognize that. I got to check my corners because Cloud9 aren't going to be stepping in this hill. Cloud9 are going to be positioning themselves to earn the back smacks, mm. which they just about do right there. Tusk trades out with the camo. Normally not a great play, but up 1-3 with 30 seconds left. They'll take it. Three go down, though, for Cloud9. And Sentinels have to maintain continuous control of this hill. They need, at minimum, 30 seconds left. If they're, if they're to make it a 2-3 game, any more t seconds off the clock just makes it more and more unlikely that they can come back. Gonna have to secure some slays first, though. It's a step-by-step -step process. Step one, get the slays. Step two, get in the hill. Step three, stay alive. Step four, get ready for the next. It's gotta all be perfect execution. This looks doable right now to at least send it to that batteries hill, but they're gonna have to play that hill perfectly, even if they get to that point. Sentinels back against the wall, needing perfect, flawless Halo and extending out to earn those slays does not work in Sentinel's favor. The clock continues to tick away at the 99% oh What? Lethal with the windmill! Finally gets the last shot, but it's the moment. 
is the pressure starting to mount for Sentinels. I can almost palpably feel it for them. I don't know. It kind of looked like that guy was supposed to die to me. And I think that's probably what Lethal is thinking. That guy probably should have died, but it's all good. They can go next. I will say, looking at this, Argyle flag. That sets up for Senny. Sentinels, Aqua right? Slayer. Yeah, this actually is quite good for Sentinels. I mean, I've always considered Sentinels to be one of the better Argyle flag teams in the game. I mean, I feel like players like Falcated, Sparty, they know how to control the vents which are so important on this. They're also very good with the grapple. We'll probably see some grapple flag runs. But on the side of Cloud9, haven't really seen them on this game type. You know, they're not usually in this position to be studied as much as the other teams. But I mean, they're proving that they deserve to be here. Man, if Cloud9 are going to do it, if Cloud9 are going to send Sentinels home in top 16, I have to collect myself there because, again, that just does not sound real. A lot of people pinging Sentinels as a top three potential finisher here this weekend. And, my goodness, they, they might not even get to three wins in any of these series. This is unbelievable. But, again, Cloud9 are going to have to earn it. And I think that'd be the case regardless of what games four and five look like, Eli. But, like you said, this sets up really well as a get back, bounce back game for Sparty and the use of that sniper rifle. He's going to have the chance to do just that on Argyle. I think you're right. I mean, if you think back to... One of the most exciting games that we saw in these open bracket offseason tournaments was Sentinels versus Optic on Aqua Slayer. Game five, Sentinels win it by one single kill to send Optic into top six. That's why Optic started this tournament as fifth seed was because of Sentinels, right? So, I mean, you have to think they obviously can't look a step ahead, but I kind of got to give them the edge in that Aqua TS should they get there. Argyle, CTF up next, and it's going to take multiple team wipes. It's going to take the process being played perfectly. And I almost feel like Sentinels getting baited into playing the process a little too quickly because they're not getting the slays that they're used to from not only Sparty, but even Falcated in that last game. He had just previously earned 65 kills in games one and two, and there in uh, game three just did not look the same because of it. Cloud9 are able to take it. What's it going to take for Sentinels to get back? In addition to Sparty getting back into his form and looking like that MVP we saw in the offseason, I'm going to pose this question and take a quick break. I'm going to go run and get some water, let you riff on that, Eli. But what's it going to take for Sentinels to come back? And what does Cloud9 have to do to secure it? Uh, I think that, honestly, what Sentinels need to do, they need to get comfortable. Right now, it doesn't feel like they're comfortable at all. It feels like something's off. There's something wrong with the energy. Something's got to shift. I don't know. I feel like Lethal's just got to crack a stupid joke with a wry smile, some sarcastic nonsense, and get everybody to laugh a little bit. Remember, you know, the good times that they've had in all their scrims and tournaments that they've played so far. I mean, this is the lowest that we've seen them in so long. So that's what I'm looking for from Sinos. But on the other side is Cloud9, maybe trying to manifest their destiny with a win here, take down the juggernaut that is Sentinels, prove that they belong to be here on land and that they could be a top contender.
I need a water. Now, no, please. Whereas I tried to do my best deal with the mech so. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, that was Chat can hear me. They're LOLing. Mike's unmuted. Keck W. I see you, Eli. it again more continuous hcs action live from arlington as phase clan take a 1-0 lead on darkest hour we're getting set for that game four between sentinels and cloud nine sentinels back against the wall down one two in this series on the other side we haven't had a chance to see much of this series but darkest hour go down 1-0 but they've been competitive they've been really close and here in game two only down two not looking too bad against the Juggernaut that is FaZe Clan. <clears throat> kind of what you want if you're a team coming out of open. Don't really expect to, no one really expects you to win the series, but to put up a fight is a big deal. Definitely gives you some momentum into other games, but they're not just putting up a fight. They're really potentially in a place to take a game here. Only down by four though. This next sniper gonna come up in the next 10 seconds. And if they're gonna win it, it's gotta be off the back of that sniper in my opinion. I think that's the key, right? For these international squads, for these open bracket squads, to take every single advantage that you can. One of those being the element of surprise, Darkest Hour. Lore Gaming probably don't have as many scrims in with the likes of FaZe or SSG or Optic or even uh, Cloud9 or Shopify Rebellion. So the lack of familiarity could hurt some of these squads despite being better on paper as Darkest Hour ends up going down a little bit more than the two that we saw previously. FaZe have opened up the lead that we might have expected up seven as Snakebite has the snipe at the Snipe Tower. Yeah, this is exactly what you did not want to see on the side of Darkest Hour. Any member of FaZe Clan with the Sniper is going to be scary. If it's coated in this red and black camouflage, your face is probably going to get ripped off. Looks like Onboard and Haynes attempting to get control of this nest side. At the same time, other members are wrapping through the back of the tower. Like this push, kind of like them to also travel through maybe top mid at the same time to apply one more lane of pressure. But so far, this this lane has been enough. Ah, oh, Snakebite going to play keep away quite literally with the use of the Repulsor and by dwindling down the wow. resources of that sniper rifle. I think one shot was only left, one or two, just a couple for Darkest Hour to use and work with. As they're still down seven, Renegade pushing up on the nest side of the map. He's got the QT to work with and a couple stickies as well. All right, he's going to rotate here. We've seen this man put the QT to work. We've also seen him use the Repulsor sticky combo. Interesting couple portals here. We're trying to be a little bit unpredictable. Doesn't find himself in the action just yet. Sees his two teammates fighting Big Door, knows his portals at green. Immediately portals behind Double them, and it kill. feels like they set that up pretty far in advance. That was a very well-played situation with the QT. I love the recognition there from Renegade. As soon as he saw the back of the head of, uh, excuse me, the front of the head of two opponents, I should say, right. he hit the QT to earn the back of the head and earns the double kill on the wall sheet because of it. Renegade still staying alive. No more snipe to work with. No more life as well as Common takes him down, 27 to 36. As Yaxon has a camo, if he can earn this one on Snake Bite, no! He would have been able to continue on with a camo that could have brought Darkest Hour back. Instead, FaZe extend the lead to 10. Look at this. Royal 2 just on his perch. I love that positioning from him because no matter where he gets attacked from, he has an escape route. If they come behind him, he curb slides forward. If they come in front of him, he just drops down to the pillars, rotates through, gets the double kill. Faze looking dominant here in the latter stages of this game. And Eli, is Royal 2 having like your dream matchmaking teammate match right now? Sitting at 9, 10, and 6. He's positively contributing to the stat sheet, but he's also positively contributing to the slays that you're earning. If you're one of the lucky teammates that get to call <laughs> Royal 2 a teammate, man, my goodness. And on the other side, Snake Bite, he might even be the, the even more ideal matchmaking teammate. 7 kills, 12 assists, only 6 deaths. Unbelievable performance here from FaZe, but. We expect that. You're not wrong. I've got Royal 2 on my team in matchmaking before. I probably could have just put the controller down. I don't think I had to do anything. He just <laughs> Woo! 
<laughs> it's just non-stop. Royal 2 killed. Royal 2 killed. Royal 2 killed. But I, I guess I'll just hold the oddball. This man is absolutely unbelievable. Has been for a long time. Look at the play here, too. Just predicting Darkest Tower oh. to rotate. And it feels like... This game was, when we hopped on board, it was 16 to 14. It was, two it was a kill two game. kill lead. And now it's a 17 kill lead. The, game, the lead has only grown since we hopped on board. Now yeah, life comes at you quick. I should say death comes at you quick when you're playing against FaZe Clan as they're gonna secure this game two and a 2-0 lead in the series as we await the start of that game four. Oh man, Eli, I can feel the anticipation occurring. And I imagine a little pep talk on the side of Sentinels. Put yourself in Chig's shoes. Imagine you're the coach of Sentinels. What's the rallying cry heading to this game for Argyle? I mean, it's got to be like a, you were in the bathroom when the, <laughs> you told you teed me up for this, so I'll just repeat some of it. But I feel like the vibes just got to be not so intense in a way. Like, yeah, you got to take it seriously, but like, I feel like when they're in their comfort zone and they're not nervous about it like I, I just want lethal to crack a sarcastic joke and just get everyone in a right you know what i'm saying and I, loosen maybe, up a little bit maybe if i'm chig if i'm the coach behind them just like maybe get the guys you know to loosen up and kind of feel comfortable and play the game that they know they can play because we just have not seen them in the form that we're used to seeing them and something is different in the air something's up with the vibe i don't know what it is Obviously, they're playing against stiff competition that are also stepping up. So it's we can't just say it's Sentinels playing bad. It's obviously these teams all showing up against them at the same time. But we're just not seeing that usual performance out of players like Spark, Ubu, and Lethal. Honestly, this feels like Falcated is the main guy that's really like holding strong here. But all of them need to step up if they're going to beat a team on fire as Cloud9. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break while we wait for the action to start off. We got casters on the A side. We're going to send it over to them as we check out the main stage before this game four. You mentioned it earlier, very good individually are every single member of Law Gaming. So it's not like they're going to be scared of challenging these Optic players, but it's when it comes down to the team shot and some of that chemistry, they're going to fall behind and natural positioning, control. Optic are so well versed and lucid. With the camouflage now, just trying to suss out where those players are going to be pushing from. And Optic looking to try and make this a 4-0 sweep. Lucid, happy to hold. Just wait for information. Nothing coming his way. But his teammates elsewhere are handling business. Enemy team. Two members of Lore Gaming look towards Big Door. They've made it over to the back green now. they made the cross. Noble and tapping buttons will pick up a couple of kills. Not too far away from claiming their first hill against Enemy Optic Gaming. Took the hill. And a real opportunity to get themselves into the game. Enemy about to score. If they can get a point here, maybe they can start to think about a potential comeback. Very difficult, but it has to start somewhere as Optic may just leave this one. Doesn't look like they're in a place to challenge it. As I say that out of nowhere, they're able to drop down onto tapping buttons and they will be able to secure the fourth and final hill to win 4-0 in map number one here. Law Gaming just couldn't keep up. Off the gaming, in cruise control, in game one, Lord just didn't have the firepower required to put up a real challenge. It's got to be said. Optic knew this wouldn't be the real challenge today, but it's the perfect warm-up so far. Yeah, and they are focused. It doesn't look like they are playing in a way that they're under underrating the players they're going up against. I think they would have seen the result against Bittersweet. They would have seen how Law are playing against complexity, and they probably said, okay, we do need to be careful here. We can't just kind of half-ass this one. We need to put everything into it to ensure that we can actually take them down in emphatic fashion. And I think that was what was demonstrated there. I mean, it was about two minutes before Law even got a kill on the board. Optic just made sure they asserted some dominance in the early stages. Taking a look at the tail of the tape. Optic outslaying Lore 50 to 27. So a very clear difference in slays. And you can see that on the scoreboard, finishing 4-0 in the end. And Lore did threaten in that fourth and final hill, but really, after gaming, we're able to break the setups rather easily. I think one of the struggles when you are an open bracket team and you go into pool play, 
you would never really have been able to prep for the teams that you're going to be going up against. So starting strategies is always going to be difficult. Uh, yes, okay, when it's Optic Gaming, you've probably studied a lot naturally anyway, but when it comes to specific maps and modes, it's always going to be tough to try and keep up. Slayer Recharge is going to be map number two. It's something we learned yesterday with Optic versus Complexity. Optic starting strategy heavily focused around camo, of course, but they were countered by Complexity because of that prep that Complexity had done. Don't think it'll be the same situation here for Lore. I think Optic are going to have a little bit more free range off the start of the map. And if they do get that control, if they get camo and shock, this one could get ugly. It's interesting you bring up the fact that Lore, being one of the open bracket teams, they probably don't get put in situations that they're used to. Backs to the walls, having to break a setup against a really good team. And that was something we spoke to Jimbo about most recently, that Quadrant is the only real team in Europe that give them that sort of challenge. And for Lore, they're perhaps back in Latam, they're one of the best teams and they don't get put in situations that Optic are doing right now. It is tough in some of the other regions to get that same practice to try and replicate what the North American teams are capable of, especially the structured ones like Optic Gaming, like FaZe, those who really will pummel you into the ground. But Lucid, I mean, he had a great game to begin with, as I would expect, especially on Live Fire. Lucid, it usually seems to be his playground, the way he manipulates the map. So I wouldn't expect anything else in game number one here. Seeing Dead Zone stats on your screen as well 1.44 KD, 17.9. And he was brought in to be the difference maker. A really disappointing end of their season. This is disappointing. They finished second in their second World Championships and they make this change. They felt it was time for something fresh. They're looking for Dead Zone to be that man. And it was a disappointing final qualifier for Optic Gaming as well coming into this tournament. And that's why we see them at fifth seed rather than a top three seed, which we're used to. And you know Dead Zone's going to be thinking, well, is this my fault? Am, am I the problem here? So naturally you come into LAN then with a little bit more pressure, but also that kind of fire inside you to perform better. And we know Dead Zone has always been an incredible LAN player. So he's probably thinking, ah, whatever. It doesn't matter if we're fifth seed, fourth seed, third seed. We can beat whatever is in front of us. And that's certainly how Optic Gaming are going to feel here. And sadly for Law, they may just be one of those teams that is just getting in the way at the moment. And they might just be brushed aside by a very angry Optic Gaming, I would say. Well, Lore will be standing in that way for, at minimum, two more games. They've already had a pretty historic run as far as things concerned for the Latam region. They'll be doing them proud. We heard Brazil in the back getting pretty loud when they beat Bittersweet. So you know he's happy to see his team perform. I mean, it's always great to see other regions get into the latter stages of a tournament. As Europeans ourselves, we were always back in the Europeans as well back in the day when they struggled to do so. As we're into game number two, Recharge Slayer. And you can see Optic straight away down, grabbing that camouflage, trying to dominate the bottom of the map. But it is a good reply here from Law. Sadly for Law, this is another one of the maps and modes they did lose during the open bracket, one of the three that they lost. So again, it's not a great omen, but at the same time, that might allow them to kind of study it and work out why they were losing it as Optic already reply with two kills of their own to get back into the game. Four go down for Optic. Lore have map control. Should have Shock Rifle to boot. Greenwall will spawn over towards Glass. Tapping buttons, waiting in blue patiently. This is an ambush setup. But this is where Lore should be able to disrupt Optic Gaming. Individually, very talented, can win gunfights. Just try and get in some gunfights. Try and find those Optic members that are trying to get into positions. But we'd see two go down on the side of Law. Optic members just holding hands at the moment to make sure that there is no 1v1s possible. It's always a 2v1 at least, if not a 2v2. That's the concern, right? You see tapping buttons in blue. They're waiting and just taking the chance, gambling on Optic, rotating through long haul. Instead, they go through Whirlpool and they I managed to isolate two members of Lore Gaming, and it's pretty simple for Optic. And that might work against the team that plays a little bit faster, but we know that notoriously Optic Gaming, a slower team. They like to play with more structure. They will wait. They will be more patient. Even when they're down, they'll say, look, I think these guys will probably move eventually, as now Optic Gaming are right back into it. And they had that shock rifle. You were maybe thinking Lore Gaming had got hold of it, but they had not in Trippy. Firmly keeping it in his hands and just about stays alive. Optic down by two. Trippy with a shock rifle on bat ledge. 
trying to dish out some justice. Let's have a little listen and see how they're managing things. Push out C flat for you. Push out C flat, three shot C boxes. Wow, watch out. Do you want to drop the tower? Do you want to drop the tomato as well? And they're both tempered. Bottom mango absolute. Is it bottom tower absolute? Just sitting there. He's dead right now. He's absolute mango pit. I'm being shot by bottom tower, bottom tower. Front tower, we... Yep, front tower, front tower, Joey. Front tower. Shock rifle down top tower, I think. Okay. Uh, I don't see it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Absolute bottom end. Turn on the bottom end, dude. All right, here we go. Game number four. Sentinels down one, two in the series. Cloud9 looking to advance even further beyond the open bracket, potentially into champ bracket, and they're looking good after Septify's headshot, but. Lose numbers in the process. A team wipe, in fact, for Sentinels gives them the opening break win. Lethal already 3 and 0. Oh. Strong start out of Sentinels. Also shut down opposing team sniper player. If they're able to also steal that sniper, we know how deadly Sentinels can be with two snipers in their hands. Right now, Ramy trying to play off the back foot here. Tries to get some space on the pistol side. Gets shut down. Septify comes off spawn. Takes out Lethal, who I think also had a sniper. Oh. At the end of this brawl, it's going to be very interesting to see who has that ever-important sniper control. One, one minute off the clock, and the battle is for the mid-map once oh. again. And Sentinels win it with the snipe. Sparty looking more like Sparty, at least in the feed. The headshot on Septify. Rami trying to bring his team back, but no. They do not have the numbers. They do not have the positioning. This is going to be an easy 1-0 start for Sentinels. Looking good on that mini reverse sweep comeback. I know we love to watch the flag go in, but man, I wish we were on Sparty's screen for that. Killing spree to start it off with some insane snipes. I just saw headshot after headshot in that kill feed. That's exactly what we're used to seeing from Sparty. Septify and his teammate trying to roll through and get some control. Oh, Sparty's on one. Sparty definitely has woken up six and one. Like I said, I feel like this map is kind of his playground. Whenever I've seen him on it, doesn't matter, land, online, matchmaking, tournament, play. This guy is always putting up insane numbers on this map. Cloud9 up 2-1 in the series, but the next two games set up really well for Sentinels, and they're showing just that here in the opening moments of game number four with a 1-0 lead and Tusk on the other side. Again, a battle for mid-map. Ventilates, or excuse me, works his way up to the ventilator system. They take three down. Falcon is the last player alive. He goes down, and Cloud9 are right back in it. Yeah, but that's a massive kill from Boo Boo Doo Boo right there. Just slowing down the push just ever so slightly and also staying alive. He does get taken down, but you have to think if he didn't stop that player, this flag could have already been pulled. So 100%. great defensive effort here from Sentinels. Yeah, that was a massive play there from Boo Boo Doo Boo. One kill can sometimes make all the difference as we see just that. Cloud9 seemed like they had the advantage on the map to push through and at least pull. They're not even going to do that. Instead, they're going to have to start that battle again for mid-map control, but they gotta worry about Sparty laying in wait. Gotta worry about the snipers too. The snipers came up at the 9.30 mark. I think Boo Boo Doo Boo has it for the side of Sentinels. Not sure who has the Cloud9 sniper right now, but keep an eye on that kill feed. Yep, Boo Boo Doo Boo hits the body shot. Sparty in perfect position to land the, tr the kill. Boo Boo gets a headshot as well, and you have to think the Sentinels might start to make some progress into the Cloud9 base. Sentinels are starting to look like Sentinels, and that spells trouble for Cloud9. They go two down, all four up. Four Sentinels as Sparty continues to push on through. Like a VIP. Oh my god! Ooh. Boo Boo Doo Boo protecting him with the snipe, but instead it's Tusk who takes down Sparty with the headshot. Boo Boo Doo Boo takes offense to that, pushes up towards Tusk, but he goes down, gets stuck by Lethal. Cloud9 earning a, earning a few more slays. But now, after that slay from Boo Boo, things reset oh. 2v2 for now. And again, mid map being vied for Septify. On the other side with nine shots to work with, so he's not only got his snipe, but he's stolen the other as well. This is an over-stacked sniper. Skep needs to play his life here in a more meaningful way. It looks like Lethal knew where he was, but it doesn't matter. Body shot, bandit combination, hits. Skep's going to play his life bottom middle. It's a little bit sneaky, right? A little bit less likely to expect him to be there. That's why he takes that route, but still facing pressure. Finally gets the shields back, and he used the grapple to quickly rotate into safety. I think this is where he's going to set up shop until he loses the sniper. A little bit harder <laughs> to hit shots like this. What a shot from Septify. Shoots through the thrust, the fire blowing down. And that's a fire headshot for him as he's sitting here at 10, 3, and 4. QT in the suit, I would imagine, of Sparty as he's got it more often than not. Nonetheless, it's in Sentinel's favor. As to is the lead is 
This one's got about five minutes off the clock, but if Septify can earn a couple more of these headshots, we could see the first pull for Cloud9. Did you just say his snipe was fire? Uh, aren't we a little too old for that lingo? That's young man <laughs> lingo, Hunter. That's literally what I saw. You're right, it was fire. Regardless, <laughs> he does get taken down. Lethal still holding this line here mid-map. It's going to go top middle. Seeing if he can get a kill here, but just kind of rotating back and forth, probably listening to callouts. It's definitely an awkward position to find yourself in. There's two massive doorways that someone could travel through. He's trying to protect both simultaneously. Boo Boo controlling the vent system. Like I said, Sentinels just kind of prioritize and win this fight for the vents so frequently, no matter who their opposition is. Tusk with another sniper, though, and he's been really impressing me. I feel like his snipe is, is something that people don't really talk about. His individual skill isn't talked about enough, but this guy's been making plays all tournament so far. Tusk with the snipe and plenty of shots to work with. Great recognition of low shields there from Lethal. Lines up the center mass body shot to take him down. As Cloud9 have their first pull. Ooh. Tusk with a couple more slays could get that flag a little bit further on the map. And he does a good job to take down Boo Boo Doo Boo. But the flag gets reset nonetheless. Nice defense oh. here from Sentinels and a nice snipe from Sparty. Let's switch to his POV. There we go. Thank you, Observer. We want to see this man with the snipers. Only got four bullets left. Here we go. He's going to get one. No scope to the body. He gets taken down. I think he also gives a snipe bullet to the other squad as well. So not as effective as we're used to seeing from Sparty. We'll see if Boo Boo can maybe do something with this sniper. He's going to try to return this flag. It's not in a great spot. You don't want to stand out in the open like this. Somehow doesn't even get looked at, though. Looks like Cloud9 maybe wrote that off as going home and decided to just play for map positioning instead. Two pulls for Cloud9, but two easy resets for Sentinels as the sniper control has been strong. And Eli, that's exactly what we set up was the advantage of Sentinels. They got a ton of gunnies, a ton of riflemen with the snipe, and they've done well with it. Boo Doo popping off, Sparty popping off, and really, if you could just get Lethal and Falcate going with it, they'd have a full array of snipers on the squad popping off with it. But for now, it's Boo Doo with one shot left. He's not going to be able to make much use out of it just for now. Looking to stay alive, reposition, and take down Septify. But he sneaks away. No, he does not. He goes down shortly after. Now Rami at low shields doesn't have much help. He should go down Ooh. shortly after. And numbers are starting to grow here for Sentinels. And we talked about Sentinels being so good at this map, but I'm starting to think about it. It's because it's kind of a step-by-step -step game type. You know, they are so good at making sure, playing patiently, playing disciplined through each step of the equation, slowly inching their way across the map. If they ever fall into disadvantage, maybe taking a few steps back and then getting a few kills and moving a few steps forward. Right now, Cloud9 are trapped in their base, but Sentinels don't see the opening yet to pull the flag. They're playing it step by step. And it's not the end of the world if they don't get a flag pull. As long as they keep Cloud9 pinned in their base, Cloud9 can't really do anything about it. If Sentinels want to climb back to the top of the mountain, the summit, you could call it, as I'm sure he's watching somewhere in the gaming universe. They're gonna need to play good defense here for the final four minutes, but the ventilation control has been the difference. Sentinels has had somebody there occupying the space the entire match, and it's made the difference, however oh. little it is. 1-0, but Lethal goes down just as we talk about the vents. It looked like Cloud9 have it for now. Tigram with the suicide in the kill feed, not sure. If it was to his own grenade or if he fell off the map, probably off the map, knowing this game mode. <laughs> We've seen some of the best in the world do it. Renegade. Oh! oh. Septify! Jump shot! Headshot! Has a repulsor to use as well. And Eli, the equipment is so important on this map. He does secure it. Can he secure another slay? A no scope, no less. No, for now. He goes down to no shields, but maintains his life. How did he sneak in a body shot? I didn't see that hit. That was that shot that he said he was fired. It looked almost like a shot to burn ammo, but he actually hit somebody with it. Right. Um, so... Wow, very impressive stuff from Skep. He's been the one keeping this team alive in this game, by the way. 18 and 11. Most kills in the entire lobby by a wide margin. And they've got the flag out. This one looks to go all the way home. Only player left alive on the side of Sentinels to stop it is Boo Boo Doo Boo. But he gets spotted out and taken down from some great shots from Diagram. Suddenly it's tied up. Sentinels do not have this in the bag yet. C9, tie it at one. Three minutes less than that on the clock. And what felt like full control, Eli, for the entirety of the match is now a tied game. And you're making Sentinels sweat a little bit. You're making Sentinels visit the respawn screen once again as Cloud9 have a slight numbers edge. And they're pushing through with it. 
new sniper rifles are up in 20 seconds. To me, that is going to be the deciding factor. If somebody can score again in regulation, you have to imagine it's going to be off the back of securing their own sniper, potentially stealing the enemy sniper, throwing it off the map. Just give yourself that, that resource advantage. Slaves trading out across both sides. Snipers are coming up right now. Can Sentinels throw off the Cloud9 oh. sniper? Boo Boo gets the kill on Tusk. That's going to open up potential double control of the snipes. Boo 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 might not just be looking to throw it off the map. He's going to look to control it instead. Wow, and all eyes are on him. Yeah. They're just sitting in the back of the base. Yeah, you got to wonder what else is Sentinels doing while all this attention is on Boo -Boo Everyone's looking at Boo Boo. You thought you, maybe that would allow them to push up on the map. It does. There. Okay, there we go. There's Sparty. There's Boo Boo Dooba, but he goes down! Oh. Huge shots cross map for Rami! Spur life for them, three go down for Sentinels, and now Cloud9, with 90 seconds left, have life! Someone's gonna have to rotate and grab that sniper. Looks like Tusk has it, he's got it in the hands. There is a sniper on the side of Sentinels as well. Looked like they were maybe in a snipe off. Tusk still has this, still has plenty of ammo to work with. Only a minute left on the clock. They wanna make an opening right here, right now. Would rather win this now than go into OT. But the defense looking very strong from Sentinels right now. One minute left, tied at one. Sentinels, if they go down here, go down and out at top 16. Don't even get a chance to compete in the championship bracket. And Eli, the consequences could be far greater than just a lowly top 16. But for now, Sentinels stay alive and stay as a team of four. Yeah, I mean, no, no one really having a bad game this, this time either. Everyone's kind of stepping up, but you could say the same thing about Cloud9. Well. While Rami doesn't look great in the kill department, it seems like every kill he he's got run, has though. been consequential. That's yes, right. and he got the yep. flag run. So yep. He opened up the run, scored the tying flag, as less than 30 seconds are left on the clock. This one feels like both teams playing for OT. Yeah, I don't think either team is going to have enough of an advantage to comfortably run a flag. Keep in mind, if you're desperate for that flag pull and activate OT and die, sometimes the other team can counter off of it. So I think, yeah, both teams probably would rather just let this one go to OT, but looks like a, a little bit of a last-minute push here, but definitely not in position to pull it. We're going to overtime. Sudden death overtime. overtime. As Jeff Steitzer sets the stage for the final five minutes of what could be Sentinel's competitive life here, starting off with Lethal pushing up off the sniper side of the map. These opening break slay is going to be so crucial. The opening break win won't necessarily net you a win here, but it inches you much closer to victory as Falcated earns the opening break, takes down Diagra. As I believe we'll have a reset there, guys. Unfortunate observer crash. Oh, no. As, oh, that hurt. That, that, that one hurts. We're gonna do our best to get you guys back into that. Let's uh, let's head back to Alpha though for the time being. We're gonna look to regroup, reset on OT. Oh, never mind. Observer stays alive, respawns, revitalizes the chance to witness what could be an incredible finish here. Four minutes left. Both teams still with an opportunity here. Two down on each side, but it's Diagram with the snipe. Does he hit the headshot? No. Falcon it inches away with his life, and Diagram continues on with plenty of shots to work with. This is why we have a second Woo! observer in the lobby, just in case. You can tell the settings are a little different. FOV, screen shake. Hey, we're going to go. Whatever. It's all good. We're <laughs> in the game. That's all that matters. Going to rotate through here with the sniper rifle on board with Diagram. And this guy, I feel like Diagram's that dude to just make it happen when it matters most. It's a huge kill. Shoots those grenades in case the player is chasing his one-shot teammate. And look at this. He's already in the base of Sentinels. Knows this player's one-shot. Probably looking oh. to hit this slay on Sparty, but Sparty too smart. Tusk takes Tusk him down, him, though. And this Diagram gets another good. slay. Lethal trades out, but not before going three down. Falcon and last player alive. And the last hope for Sentinels to stay alive in this tournament. But two go down for Cloud9. And for now, the flag is going to wait just outside the Sentinels' base. They got the stop just when they need it. Yeah, that was looking real dicey for Sentinels, but... Last player alive makes the heroic effort to slow down that flag player. Falcated still alive from that place. Picking up slaves, controlling the vent system that's been so good for them. By the way, next set of snipers up again in 10 seconds. Boo has got one from the prior set of snipers that spawned. 
But this next set of snipers is going to be very important. Next score wins. Two and a half minutes left here in Sudden Death. Eli, we've already got to cast two, uh, or excuse me, one double OT here. We're about to see another. Grammy goes down to low HP. Lethal takes the high ground in the ventilator system and looks for now to just stay alive, maintain that ever crucial mid-map control. Now with more shots on the diagram, he cleans him up. And it looks like if Lethal can stay alive, no, he goes down. So to this party and Cloud9, it feels like multiple times in this game, in this series, when it looks like things are swinging in the other direction, they find life, they get the team wipe. Falcon is the last player alive. He goes down staggered, and Cloud9 will have the chance to earn the snipe and this next pull. They've got two snipers right now, Tusk and Seth, both with snipers. A lot of damage on the side of Cloud9, though. Sparty's going to clean one of them up. Skep going to lose that sniper. Tusk goes down as well. These were both the snipers. They just got taken out. Almost at the same time, Diagram picks one of them up, trying to play defense from the bottom of the base. Not really a great place to do so. Doesn't have many options, though. Rami picking up a kill on Sparty gets traded out. This one's going back and forth. 90 seconds left, still tied, but it feels like Cloud9 have the slays and the momentum to get a last second pull, a heroic potential play to secure the game and this series win. As Lethal stays alive at the bottom mid location, but he goes down 2v2 for now. QT up at 10, and Tusk just looking to stay alive. Again, re-control that mid-map, but my gosh, Eli, this one, I feel like we're barreling towards OT2. Feels like it. Just a minute left on the clock. QT is going to be up. Hard to find value out of it on this map. Also a bit risky to even go for. You know, mid-map, very easy to look at. But both vents currently in control of Cloud9. They can land some slays here from this advantageous positioning. Could be what they need. Two kills go in favor of Sentinels, though, and with 40 seconds, can they even get a pull here? We'll have to see. Uh-oh. Three go down for Cloud9. Tusk, the last player alive. Looking to make a hero play as he takes down Sparty, and that's massive. Much like when Boo Boo Doo Boo stopped Cloud9 as the last player alive, it felt a lot like that, as we're not even going to see a flag out, despite what looked like strong presence and control from Sentinels. 20 seconds left. Look at this positioning from Lethal, just playing patiently. They're not going to desperate for that flag pull. Rather just go to a reset than for something that ends up biting them. Both teams know how oh, important this is. No! But wait, Sindels have the flag out. They must have G-slid it out for it to be mid-map already. <gasps> or, or a grapple play. Was that a grapple play from Boo Boo? I think so. But Septify has the steal. He takes down Boo Boo Doo Boo and stops that run for now. Diagram now. Low HP, takes down a low HP Sparty, and the desperation not going to be enough for Sentinels as they try as they might, aren't able to get that flag through the mid map. And my gosh, Eli, did it look like they might just have had some last second heroics, but instead, we're heading back to a second OT. We, we need multiple resets in multiple games to, to decide the outcomes of these matches. That's how close and competitive Halo is. And we're just starting season three. All right, guys, we're going to let the Observer get back into this one, take a quick break, send you guys back to the Alpha stream, but don't go anywhere when we return the conclusion of this epic Game 4. Oh, with the position he found himself in, he knew that they were going to try and desperate the flag. Let's take an angle where they can't shoot back at me until it's too late. And with three minutes 20 left on the clock, Optic hold the lead. It's now back over to Lore to see what they can do. Can they find any of that same energy we saw in the early stages? But as we see the likes of the Heat Wave suddenly in the hands of Optic Gaming now, this could get ugly, especially with Trippy having it in his hands. He knows how to play a Heat Wave. He knows the positions to find himself in, and he gets a double. That's three dead. Optic can now push off of this. Laura started the turtle, four dead. Lucid pulled flag out. Spawns over towards the fridge. Acid's going to be the initial pick. That's going to be big trouble now for Lore. Drift in the front base. Needs help, not gonna get it. Dead zone is there. But it's too dead for Optic. They might have just been able to relieve the pressure, Lore. To keep this game alive. They go down by two, you will fear the worst. Flag has got returned. Lore, survive. Still very close in slays though. Only leading by two are Optic Gaming. As now the Optic fans starting to believe that this one is looking more and more likely like a 3-0 series. Lord just need to pull something out, and that overshield is probably one of their last chances to try and take an advantage in this one. 
They've been doing really well at getting the overshield so far, but Optic getting some big kills here. Is anyone in position to grab it, though? Laura only been outslayed by two, but that could be about to get worse as Formal picks up the overshield. It's completely gone. He got one. It was tapping buttons. It was an important kill. Acid, oh, wow. though. Beautiful bank shot nade. Laura have got to be able to push up the map now. They've got numbers advantage. Lucid is alone in the engine, but that's what the spawns are going to be. Formal down to no shields right off the rip. Lucid gets a back whack. The fight on the car side. These last few moments are vital for Lore. They've got to get something going. Good drift. Does just about get the third kill. Optic Gaming off the spawn, they're finding those players who have taken that damage. Again, it's the communication from Optic just to ensure that players are not getting away on no shield. One minute and ten now left. And I like what I've seen from Law. They're already guaranteed top 12, of course, progressing into the bracket, but I think they are a real threat to compete with the top eight teams. But there's still a little bit of life. There's still a chance that they could maybe make something miraculous happen in this series. 50 seconds, though, for someone to step up. Someone to be the hero for Law Gaming. This could be the moment then. Lucid alone on car side. Lore being made to oh, fight for lucid. every inch, but Lucid, when you're hitting fives like that, time isn't, doesn't even need to be a factor. As we head towards the final 30 seconds, Lucid gets another kill. Somebody needs to stop him. How many times do we see that happen when Lucid, one of the last players alive, and he still pulls off a double kill? He's been the thorn in the side of Lore all game long as Formal also gets another. 18 seconds, but three are dead for Law. They're gonna have one last ditch attempt to try and get onto this flag, but Optic can now just hold the line here. The green wall will well and truly be set up. Formal turret, sitting bottom middle. We're running out of time. They're not gonna get close. Noble will fall, Law will fall to the Optic Gaming Sword, 3-0 the series score. And it wasn't as dominant as perhaps expected, but I think that we have to give credit to Law there for how they played and how they forced Optic right to the very end in what was a closely contested tie. But the score will say 3-0 overall in the series. We have to take our hats off though. Law will be progressing through to bracket play because they took down Bittersweet early on. But it does confirm that Optic Gaming topped their pool and they are looking pretty hot here in Arlington. Optic on top, taking a look at the stats. Tapping buttons with 27 kills, leading the lobby. And looking at the slays, Dan, Optic only winning by four in the end, but if they had that all important little patch in the middle of the game where they got those two flags back to back. Yeah, at the start, they were getting out slayed by plus 10 at, at one point. They just, it was a, one of those starts where they didn't really know what was happening. And again, that could come down to just the sporadic nature of how Law were playing. They were all over the place. Even though Trippy got the overshield in the very beginning of the game, watch what happened afterwards. It was a Law Swarm. Well, we don't see it, but it was a Law Swarm where they said, look, we can actually gain control of the map. We know that Optic are going to focus on the OV, and then we'll just take down the player as long as we all work together. And I think that Law. They're good on Aquarius capture the flag. That's definitely one to note if you're one of the teams that might face them later in the bracket if it does come back up in the series layout. We saw a couple of triple kills from the likes of Drift, the likes of Noble, and we know what Acid and Tapping Buttons can do. This is not the last we'll see of them today for sure. It's Welcome back to HCS Arlington. We are still awaiting that OT2 between Sentinels and Cloud9. But for now, we're going to give you guys a little bit of game action. Space Station taking on business. Up 2-0 in this series. Looking to put the finishing touches on this one. Legend already 5 and 1, of course. Teammates combined for two kills. He's got five. Just legend things, you know. Eco, though. The shock rifle here. Being absolutely disgusting with it. Taking out last shot. I feel like this is going to be a hard setup to break. Teams playing against SSG during this hill. Feels like SSG just know exactly when to apply pressure to those spawners, when to sit back and bait them in. Bound and flying in with a double kill. Legend makes it a third kill, and... 
This hill is all but over. They're gonna probably quickly rotate through the long haul. Get control of the next one as well. Space Station with the 1-0 lead, the extra hill, and this is extra coverage, bonus coverage, extended coverage that would not be possible without the support from the community because of you and the support subscribing to the stream with those prime times and even just sitting through the, uh, the ad breaks, if we do in fact have one, is massive because it allows us to broadcast the B, C, and D streams for Halo. Without it, we would not get eyes on and commentary on some of these incredible matchups. So thank you so much to the Halo community for your support. You guys enable us to live a dream and cast all of this incredible action continuously, not only online, but on land as well. <laughs> not just air and sea, but also land. <laughs> But no, he's exactly right. And I, I certainly appreciate you guys. I mean, this was... I only started casting, what, a year ago, Hunter? About a time, this time a year ago, yeah. Yeah, and uh, just been accepted by LBT and the continued support from the community to let me come to these tournaments is unbelievable. I don't even know where I would be without you guys, so we do thank you guys so much for all the support. While we've been yapping about that, though, business, finding a tied-up hill here. Impressive. Good stuff. I mean, this is what you need to do if you're going to somehow build some momentum, potentially win the series. But Space Station, I don't think are going to make it easy. To set the stage again, keep in mind, business need not only this Game 3 win, they need to run the gauntlet and reverse sweep SSG, who many people would say is the number one team in the HCS right next to FaZe. Space Station does have the number one seed. They did win the online major qualifier before this. And after business goes down to their, call them arch rival, Native Gaming, they will go home without a chance to compete in the championship bracket if they're to lose here to SSG, but they're putting up a good fight. Three go down for SSG, and looks like business for now are going to have a chance to descend on this hill, but Eco's got something in mind. If you look across that stat page, <clears throat> what sticks out to you? To me, there's this one guy in the lobby that has only died one time. That's just Stella. insane to me. <laughs> how, how is he that proficient with his life? Eight and one. Seemingly just rotating with perfect timing and positioning. He's on your screen now. Senses that there is a player underneath him correctly. Probably heard the footsteps there. He oh, uses the this. grapple to close the gap. Last shot runs into another member of Space Station. And look at this. Man, this guy just wins piv after piv. Knows the exact limits of his timing. How much help he has. How much time and space he has to work with calculations going on in his mind no one will ever understand but him here we go bound with the camo knows these players are coming through long haul sees a grenade comes in decides to just go ahead and shoot instead of maybe getting greedy with the camo and i think that was the correct play there. ssg and a legend looking to put the finishing touches on this hill with two down for business they feel comfortable with it but I love the patience here, the process being played, recognizing the spawns are up for business. Legend goes on a little bit of a hunting mission to take one down, secure more slays before they secure more time as we see business, despite having two down, they're gonna desperate into the hill. That's gonna lead to an easy kill there on the last shot. Not playing their process quite as well as we saw on day one, Eli. I mean, SSG just played that process perfectly though. I mean, as soon as they recognize business coming off spawn, let's block the elevator. Legend rotates through mid-map, has a teammate coming off spawn at C. That teammate then shrouds Legend, or Stellar, to ensure that he can safely get into the hill and get another kill. I mean, look how perfectly they're working together. This team is not just scary in the level of individual talent, but in how well they seem to click together. Yeah, we said business not looking as good as they did on day one. Day one, they're playing open bracket teams. Right. Day two, they're going up against professional competition, which is a whole nother level. Enemy Granted, though, took the hill. Tolik, Manny, those are guys that historically average top six placings on land. And then you got Avenue, one of the triplets. He's cracked. Last shot, the world champion free for all. Grand finalist at last year's Halo World Championship. So business have the roster, just not executing. Yeah, it's, it feels a little silly to even call them an open bracket team, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> they lost their seed. They were supposed to be in pools, had to earn their way back with Avenue, the newcomer to the squad. But going against SSG when Stellar has the shock and seemingly in flow state, doesn't matter who he's playing against, he's going to make it very difficult to do anything. Last shot with a nice slide chow there. Makes it difficult for Stellar to confidently hit that headshot. Only does enough damage. Break the shield before being taken down. Bound with another camo. So Sandbox being heavily controlled. I, you can tell that Talik 
was intentionally placing himself there to find where Bound was coming from with no the candle, way. but it doesn't matter. Bound still oh, finds all oh, he's four. He's popping off from the grave. He doesn't even need to be alive. He doesn't even need to be playing the video game. He can right. be at the respawn screen, still find slays. That's just how good Bound is, and that's just how good SSG is. is they look prime to 3-0 sweep business and put to, put to rest their tournament run. And they're not forcing it either, right? Like, you can tell they're just kind of letting every play breathe, talking yeah. through it, making yeah. sure that they're in the right spots to help one another. I think back to when they're Legend three, yeah. I think back to when Legend just moments ago had a chance to secure that hill number two for SSG, but then wisely dipped back to uh, the Mauler side and hit, hit a flank, worked his way back to bridge, and then back into the hill. The process is just way smoother for Space Station, as too is the gameplay. Four go down for business, and one more score for SSG should shut the door on business. And look at this spread of positioning. They're forcing all four players of business to spawn bottom gold pipe. Stellar's here to immediately apply pressure. Probably doesn't even care that he died right there because he ensured that his team got that cap. Now a 3-1 lead, and because they've been playing every play so patiently, a lot of time burned off the clock which now plays even Enemy further into their advantage into the end game. It's the last shot, and it's the last remain. opportunity for business to come back here. Put up a good fight in what we've seen in game three, but Space Station, too good, too strong. But then you've got Avenue, who Enemy in the offseason was a fill-in on a lot of those championship teams that won tournaments. Avenue uh, and Diagram filling in for a lot of teams. Booba Dooboo, Sparty, I remember him teaming up with them at one point. Not having the same success here, though as business try as they might have had good sequences but again this isn't so much what business is doing wrong it's just what ssg is doing right for now though it's a 1v1 three players down on each side of the map what can avenue do with the time and space he goes down with the shock stellar just always right time right right place wraps around 30 seconds on the clock this is basically impossible business gonna have to somehow kill space station repeatedly for two consecutive hills from the hill, it's not looking possible. I think this is gonna be the end of the run for business here. Time ticking away as the shields tick back up for Stellar, as this will do it. Not enough time, not enough opportunity for business as these final moments are just technicality. A couple more kills, assist, and death added to the final stat sheet. Legend in particular with a double kill to shut the door emphatically as business goes down 0-3 and goes home as well. Space Station looking very impressive, man. I mean, the way that they play that, yeah, it didn't look like a complete stomping, but it was like a, it was almost like a, like a python just slowly, yeah. just closing in and tightening around and just, suffocating them. There's no way for them to really get back into the game. They didn't have to do it in a flashy, crazy, fast-paced fashion. They just played in a way that almost made it impossible for the other team to win. And I could see that strategy working against some of the world's best as well. Kind of got the sad boy aesthetic going with the uh, raindrops on the windowsill, <laughs> but it's nothing but smiles for SSG Ooh. as they take that series. And Eli, I'm over here tapping both feet, all my toes, for this next matchup. We're going to take a quick break, though, as that it feels like HCS. They want to make sure that Observer is back in the lobby and secured for what looks like one of the most incredible finishes of the tournament so far. OT number two when we return. We've seen Collect pop off plenty of times with it. Native Gaming still clinging to that narrow lead. A no-scope there for Collect. Pugilistic with the fist takes down Mighties. But when you play dangerous games, sometimes you're going to get burned. But I think they're going to be able to stave off any... All right, here we go. A full reset, but it's sudden death. Next score wins as Rami pushes up along the left side of the map. The opening break could open up an opportunity for Cloud9 to upset Sen. Yeah, it definitely looks like opening strat successful so far for Cloud9. It's certainly in firm control of mid-map. Diagram positioning himself in front of the base, ready to pull a flag should they get more slays. They do uh -oh. sit Skep with the headshot. This could end quickly. And look at this. They're in perfect positions for the spawn kills, and this uh looks very bad for Sentinels. All they have to do if you're Cloud9 is find the spawners and apply pressure. They're exactly doing that. If Sparty goes down, it's over. If Sparty doesn't get a chance to push forward on the map, it's over, and Cloud9! 
quickly are gonna win OT2 and send Sentinels home as top 16 finishers in the HGS opener. Sentinels not even gonna get a chance to compete in the championship bracket. I am at a loss for words, Eli. None of us, not a single person expected this. Sentinels, one of the most consistent performers in all of the off season. Top three in the qualifier. A one seed. Amazing. This is the first time a one seed's ever gone home, right? A were one they, seed's never one seed? not made it to champ bracket. Yes, they're a one seed, Eli, in pool C. How? Oh, how? oh right, yeah. How? Yeah, you're you're probably right, actually. To, to, this is to history. To have the number one seed in your pool and finish top 16, I don't think that has We've ever We've never happened. seen that before in, I know Halo Infinite, but maybe even Halo history. Here's I a, hate to go that far back, but this is an unprecedented result from the likes of Sentinels. Here's a look at that. those rules we saw briefly. They lost to Proton Gaming late last night, lost to Shopify to start the series, and now it's a Cloud9 who clawed their way out of the open bracket <laughs> and take down the Titan that is Sentinels and send them home. Unbelievable stuff, man. I usually have plenty to say. I usually just go right into it, right into it after a match but Eli I am absolutely speechless nobody and nobody anticipated these results yeah, maybe you anticipate rebellion sneaks in and gets the the one seed in their pool but certainly sentinels get number 2 right no they get number 4 last place in pools and the first sent packing unbelievable cannot find a win so taking a look across the board here at the various pools. Tenrai, I believe, is actually Darkest Hour. Just face it. Still shows Tenrai, by the way. So Darkest Hour. Now finishing pools. One and two. They're going to move on. Yeah, Quadrant two and one. So Quadrant going to be winning that pool. So three out of the four open bracket teams have knocked out a pool play team. Am I, am I right? Only business. Business is the only open bracket team that gets sent home. Yeah. Lore extends on. Darkest Hour extend on. Cloud not extend. What an unbelievable tournament so far. What an unbelievable start to day two. And you know what, Eli? This is what HCS set up when they kind of shuffled around the format. We expected more competition by not giving some pool play spots to a couple regions. Now, Mexico, to their credit, they earn it back in blood. They actually not only qualify from open bracket to pool play, but they're going on to champ bracket. So Mexico still retains that spot. But by not having A and Z here, that's one extra spot. But my God, that... That's one out of 16. You look at it just fractionally, mathematically. That's a massive opportunity at opening in the lanes of Halo as Cloud9 take it, steal it from Sentinels, and send them home. Unbelievable stuff here. No org, by the way, on your screen. That is the Lore Gaming, the Tapping Button Squad with Drift, Noble, and Acid. But we're going to take a quick break here, guys. Don't go anywhere. We're only getting started here on Championship Saturday sort of push from foe right here. Jimbo just trapped in the tower. They all know where he's at. Oh, never mind. Oh my God, what a shot. Where's the pressure gonna come from, right? This is, Wutem's just looking at the center of the map. He's just waiting for information to come. If he doesn't get information from his perimeter players, then suddenly he knows, like, okay, they're gonna just jump out in the middle. But they decided all to come from the long haul side. And while Wutem, he might be feasting oh. with his first triple. On the HCS stage, kill. killing spree for Wutum. You're gonna see Foe spawn towards A. They have to fight through Mikwin, and he has a shock rifle primed to hit some heads. This is one of those win conditions that we talked about at the start of this match is McWin starts off a potential killing spree here. Shock rifle double kill. Look, the players coming in from the backside. These players from Foe staying alive for as long as they have has caused absolute mayhem. Wutem gets up into the center. They're going down. Three, all four go down for native. Those two players cause absolute mayhem by staying alive. Well, he has a player that was there. Jimbo took him down. Oh! Double kill. Right, so that's Jimbo saying, hey, you know what? I, you don't say it first, then I can get the shot down. And <laughs> As we're going to start to see a little bit of desperation reek here for Native Gaming. Instead, on the other side, it's Midas with another flag out. Thor looking to end it right here. And that flag just saved his life. Because that flag hit the top of that pole, he didn't go through the elbow quick enough. And they, they weren't able to take him down. <laughs> Collect goes down. No He's way. still alive. Mighty's still alive. The flag's still out. It's only two players up, but no one can stop him in time. <laughs> They're going down. It's only me. Win. The flag's away. Mighty's is able to do this. They're just moments away. The first game for.
for foe can happen right here, right now. EU on top. Yeah, right now, Bittersweet, Bittersweet honestly just outplaying complexity in a majority of the situations. That's why they have the 2-1 lead. Got significant slay advantage as well. You see some teabagging coming out. Cherished disrespecting his elder, Ryan Noob. Don't know how that's going to play into factor. There's some players you really don't want to teabag, let's be honest. But this is his first time that we're really seeing him with Space Station. Well, he's got a sniper in his hand, so we're Oy, that's going to hurt a lot. Barcode receiving that sniper. And now another one. APG is now going down. Four down for native gaming. They, they just go in, shoot, and worry about the next thing. That it's just not that opponent. In the back. I mean, <laughs> like, that's insane, stellar. Like, I just saw your finger point and I was like, something's about to happen and oh my God, yeah, something really did happen. Native's gonna need to find a 3-4 down here and try to get themselves a little bit closer. No, oh, he's able to get the stick. Three down for Space Station. Let's see if Native is able to recover from that barcode with the shock rifle. Wanted to get that triple kill. Unfortunately, Legend will fly by and take him down in a really fashion manner. But <laughs> bye bye, he ran out of, of ground to step in. He said bye bye. I, 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 it looked like intentional the way that he straight off the map right there. It was so aggressive. Yeah, absolutely level. Here we go. Game number three on its way. Space Station just one game away from sweeping. Native and well, Legend gonna make that a little bit easy for himself. Double kill, and it's a flag that is out as four players of Native Gaming go down. It's oh my yo, that is a tech I have not seen yet. Legend got some sort of glitch slide going down the down the middle lane. That is sick. To check the angles, making sure he get it right. That shot is not going to be enough. Only the shields will go down. Uh, a couple other players gonna come move right in front of Boo Boo Doo Boo, and he'll be feasting because. Oh! As the second shot cuts through, Boo Boo Doo Boo doing just enough for his team to maintain this hill. Spectre. Able to find that next kill, and with this sniper rifle. Oh. <gasps> that was like a, like a miracle <laughs> stick from the yeah, sky. I, I don't know what kind of. That, that must have stuck almost underneath his chin or something. We saw it go right onto his Spartan's body. Well, Cam was out, but Spartan still has plenty to work with. The grapple back for the headshot. Ooh. King Nick goes down. follows. Double, Double kill. kill. Killing spree for Spartan as he unleashes on the rest of Proton Gaming. You, you got the straight ribbon hoodie on. This is like the, what is the screen one? There's anything on the back? I wish. No, nothing on the back, but no. I'll say I like it. I like the straight ribbon hoodie. I think uh, someone has the, uh, oh, here, Louie's got the, uh, the other straight ribbon hoodie on. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. Well, what's ironic about this is that that overshield, you might need to stop running this flag to get towards that overshield to help secure this final one through. Kills on both sides. This is a big play. Boo boo, do boo. Oh, he goes Killing down. Spree. But Spartan got a great spawn. Look at those nades. It's going to be able to keep Sam off. Not going to be enough. Overshield's there. Not going to be enough. Oh my. It's the overshield that makes the difference. It's same situation. This time, Sentinels was the one that needed to drop the flag and try to play for the overshield. They just weren't able to do so. The overshield of Gilkey gives them just enough shields to withstand the nades and get the return. Proton Gaming up two to one against Sentinels in our best of five. Up two one in this series, but Boo Boo Dubu's got the camouflage. He's on the map and has the uh, and has Ooh. the equipment that made him famous for camo plays. Oh, no, my oh my god! I agree. He's about to get it. He's about to get it. He didn't. He knew Sap was didn't want it to just pop out. He knew. He didn't want it to give Bubu Dubu that overkill. That's going to be another one down. Are they trapped in that zone, or is Sentinel trapped with them? That's the real question. Because right now. We're starting to see Proton Gaming just one-up Sentinels and Zap is going to become a Grim Reaper with that Shock Rifle. Three players down for Sentinels! Three players down! 
Sentinels, they have to win here and now. It was 249 to 120 just moments ago, and Proton Gaming are looking to do the impossible. No te mames, no te mames, no te mames, no te mames. They're just doing it. They're just taking down Sentinels over and over again, not letting them breathe whatsoever. The momentum has completely shifted. 244 is still counting. Proton Gaming is about to close it up. It's about to claim victory in any moment. 248, 249, no, it stops. 249 and it's over. Proton Gaming demonstrating that it is possible to defeat even the greatest in its own map time. We thought it was over. We said there's no way. The best Solitude Strongholds team. As we see Drift just playing with the spawns and oh, they're just playing with their meat. This is a phenomenal work from Laura right now. They have just been dominant against Forsaken. Hay que tener mucho cuidado hey, esta yeah, yeah, última. I, I just realized what I said. That's so funny. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Wait, what? That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never mind, it's, it's all good. <laughs> I'll, check it, I'll, I'll check it later. Pero ahora, cuidado, perfecto de parte de la escuadra de Forsaken. Están empezando a hacer el push. No lo está consiguiendo. La granada de plasma, qué bonito stick para ahora que me regalaste. Doble muerte. Aún así, la colina le pertenece. No, you, you thought you had it. You thought. But Quadrant come in with the steal at the last second, and that's got to be a blow to the confidence. Not only that, but Glory lurking with camo shock rifle, shutting down top A, such an important position for this hill. Lamentablemente no logra concretar las kills, solamente los escudos van a caer. We're loco, looking for more, but... And there, we see the snipe just barely misses. But can SWAT Alpha get there in time? The spawners of Cloud9 are coming up now, and they did spawn in the mauler. It's a huge shot. Oh no, mami, que... Tirote se acaba de aventar Lebor, evitando que se le acerque. Mira, nada más otro, otro. Dame un tercero, Lebor. Dámelo, papacito, por favor. Dame un tercer tiro. No lo va a conseguir. Un empate en este Slay. Can they use this next round of Slays to tie this one up? Ay, ay, ay. No inventes. Lebor, hazme un hijo. What a fantastic play, using that grapple, right, to, to re-approach the gunfight, using lo vio. it effectively. <laughs> doble, doble. Doble muerte de parte de Goriloco, que agarra al invisible con los calzones abajo. Están rotando, no hay nadie que apoye, ni a Goriloco, ni a Lewar, van a caer. Y esto puede complicar, esto es básicamente el inicio del fin. Podríamos estar viendo un juego número 3 con la serie empatada. Qué buen tiro nos regaló. Diagram, qué buena doble nos regaló Diagram, qué buena triple nos regaló Diagram. SWAT Alpha precipitándose básicamente en cada oportunidad que pueden. Franco tirador en manos de Strike y se va a llevar una, pero no consigue. Se, eh, bueno, más bien la consigue, pero no con un solo tiro. Ese va a ser el tiro decisivo. Hacemos una doble. Ay, 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 esa triple. No, se la van a quitar. Qué groseros, qué envidiosos. De plasma tampoco. Cuidado, se está quedando sin balas, pero se nos queda sin vida. Cambiamos ahora a Tolik de Business, que se está despachando a la escuadra mexicana. Triple muerte. In the hands of Manny. He's oh, pressuring their back. Pace, he goes up high from the top rope. There's one. Here's number no, two. Man. As he's just tearing apart Lore with this sniper rifle. Triple cap. Muy bueno para business. Están empezando muy bien este tercer juego. Logran tener una amplia ventaja. Doble muerte de Avenue. Está buscando la tercera. Le obtiene. Quiere el overkill. Lo quiere ir a buscar. Trata de conseguirlo. Se le está escapando. Se le está pelando. Y se le consigue ir. No consigue. El overkill. We just can't get an overkill on stream, and I'm getting frustrated. 30 seconds. Hand business. Hold on. He just repulsed them into the other player. It does enough damage for the shot to count as a kill. He's going down. Perfect shots. Only one player left. There's nothing more can do. The time just continues on. They've reached 80 seconds. 20 more to win. Esto es lo que necesita business. Esto es todo lo que necesita business para poder ganar y seguir adelante. No hay nada que esté sucediendo en pantalla. Estamos perplejos. Pero en estos momentos son solo 4 segundos. 4 segundos es todo lo que necesita la escuadra mexicana para llevarse la 
victoria. Veamos si aplicando una Juan Escutia. ¿Quién se va a aventar por la bola? ¿Quién se va a aventar? ¿Quién va a evitar que nosotros ahora somos los invasores? Tres segundos es todo lo que necesitamos. Van a agarrar la pelotita. Cuidado que la quieren mover. Cuatro caídos para Business. Cuatro caídos para Business. Esto se puede acabar en cualquier momento. Agarran la pelota. Va a caer. Últimos dos. Tenemos juego cinco. Another kill that goes unanswered. They're trying to desperately find the finish. There's a player bottom in. The retreat. Oh, the thrust isn't enough. That player stays alive. No, no logra conseguirlo, pero su equipo, su compañero logra hacerlo. Falta una nada más. Falta una. Consigue la kill 48. México está en el pool play por lado de winners. Logramos nuevamente hacer historia. Tenemos a Lord calificando. Después de una serie que se pensaba inganable, right after we thought as Mexico that everything was over, that it was done, that we were packing our bags back to our country, Lord just comes up and does the impossible, making sure the last two games count. When we thought they did it, I'm now a Lord believer. Squad Squad Alpha, van a tirar los tres caídos ahora. Se está complicando mucho la situación. Tienen que entrar 233 a 244. Ah, le pertenece a Squad Alpha. Pero aún así, Base siguen siendo de Darkest Tower. Siguen puntuando la ventaja de México. Se está desapareciendo poco a poco. Virtually tied in the 240s. Darkest Towers are trying to come back, but Squad Alpha have control of the Sea Hill. And potentially this no, match. Mommies. But after going down, no, that's going to give them a chance. Darkest Hour a chance to regain. See on the flip side, they're looking to milk A as well. Ay, as Cory Loco finds the kill and potentially the win, but Darkest Tower still have map control. Tres control of BNC. They've got to drop in it. They do. As Cory Loco looks to keep SWAT X Alpha's life alive here in game one. 245. No Dos caídos para la escuadra. Tienen que agarrar, tienen que tocar, no. tienen que tocar. Lo que sea, esto se acabó. La escuadra de Darkest Tower toma este primer juego de una manera increíble. Increíble, impresionante. Obtener la escuadra mexicana, el control de la pelota. Podríamos estar viendo que están tratando de tener el control. Pero, uy, excelente, excelente entrada que tenía. 10 segundos es lo que necesita para entrar. Y van rápidamente. No consigue. Agarra la pelota. Oh. Y es el control. Este es el colapso que está buscando. Este oh. es el colapso, pero lo van a agarrar. Esto se acabó. La primera ronda no le va a pertenecer a nadie. Oh. 69, 69. No puede ser. ¿Quién ganó? No que se ver. Ay, no puede ser Alfa, la tabla hace de nuevo. Roman, esta primera ronda. Larceny, Swat Alpha steal it at the end. Three seconds left on the clock as the oddball goes down. Three go down for Darkest Hour. Common, the last chance for Darkest Hour as he gets the sleep, but the numbers advantage was too strong. It's a mush pit at the bottom of A as Swat Alpha rock out to a 1-0 lead here at game three. And for Zilla, this is exactly why we called this the reverse sweet trampoline. If to potentially tie up this game three, if not, SWAT Alpha are gonna start the road to a reverse sweet rotation going through to C. Are they gonna make it? Yes! Unbelievable! With one HP and a dream! That member of the Darkest Hour crew, Comet, strong sides his way to victory. Two one second wins in a row for Zilla. This one's going to a round three. By Tires Rue. What will break?
afternoon, Arlington, Texas, and welcome back to the 2024 HCS Arlington Kickoff Major hosted by Optic Gaming. And I know you guys have been watching all of the action this morning because we had pool play going on and our open bracket teams filling in their spots in the pools. They were at work yesterday trying to get that opportunity to get on the main stage today. And my goodness me, have we had some upsets already this morning. Yesterday was filled with upsets, potential and offer opportunity and today is more of the same welcome to the desk i am lottie joined by wes and tony gents day two it's saturday we know what that means championship bracket but we've had a bit of a shake-up and day one was definitely the start of the shake-up here and it's only gotten shakier clutch how are you feeling about yesterday yeah i knew bandit starts would kind of mix things up and allow players to maybe catch fire and impact the outcome of series more it looks like that was the case as players have caught fire especially through the open bracket they've already started to create upsets they certainly have indeed and tony when we go back to the off season we knew things were going to get mixy right we knew that these teams were out for blood and the competition was going to be fierce as ever did you expect how fierce this really would be even day one and coming into day two Hey, you know, every tournament we come in and we say there's going to be some surprises, but man, there were some real upsets in pool play. So I didn't predict that. I'm going to be honest with you, but it was definitely fun to watch. It certainly was indeed. We're looking right now back at some of the highlights from yesterday. And these were really great for a lot of our teams. I think when you look at our big three coming in and the opportunities for some of the dark horses that were also trying to squeak their way with an upset, we certainly saw some. And some to note as well, Shopify Rebellion were absolutely fantastic and also Europe foe. I think they had a lot of pressure on their shoulders with what Quadrant managed to do last year. And they've come into things and have really shown shown signs of competition. Still a lot of work to do for Foe, but they have looked strong against the strongest competition they faced. Though they didn't turn those series into wins necessarily, but it gives you hope and it gives you a little bit of something to pay attention to as especially this Saturday rolls around where bracket play becomes the most important for these players to continue to catch fire. And they were heating up with complexity especially. I mean, we saw some body shots being had in pipes there in gold on recharge from Rhinoob against Hello and welcome back to the LVT Halo coverage of the pool play. We got Cloud9 going up against Shopify Rebellion. Cloud9 just shocked the world. Sentinels 03 in pools, and it was all because of the heroics of Cloud9 getting that done in a 3 1 finish. Absolutely unbelievable. I don't think we've ever seen that where a number one seed has fallen that early in a tournament. And now Cloud9 tried to continue on that trend. They're up 1-0 in this game, and they're not stopping anytime soon. I feel like they got a huge momentum boost from getting that win, and we're continually seeing them just find kill after kill. Septify doing his best to patrol, find those players over at green, gets that information to his team, and now they lay the trap. Notice how they're playing a little bit more patient here. They want those players to push towards Ness. As long as they keep their bandits connected, they should be able to melt these players quick enough. But no, Shopify Rebellion able to get through, find the picks, get the kills, double in the feed, suppress. Now, accumulating that much needed hill time. Shopify Rebellion, I feel like this is the first time that we've seen them get any sort of point on the board, on the hill itself, right? They, they haven't scored yet, but in that first hill, they really didn't put much contestion in this time around doing much different suppress jumps up gets the shot down range able to take down the players of cloud nine coming in from that dummy side and look at this, this is an interesting fight right rammy all the way back on the opposite side of the map but he has two players of rebellion hunting them out rebellion that seems a little bit early to be making these long flanking plays and 
rotating out. We'll have to see if that influences their spawns. As we see the camouflage coming up, this was the reason why they rotated so far away. But as those players died over at tower, now you see the impact of making that rotation. One, they lost the camouflage. Shotify is able to get it. But Shopify Rebellion also spawned all the way back because of those gunfights that we saw 30 seconds earlier on the other side of the map. This allows Cloud9 to have a little bit better positioning, though they do lose the bandit fights at the end of the day, lose their access towards that hill. And we're going to see Rebellion to capture this second hill. Suppress gonna be able to get that sniper rifle as well. All the goodies in their bag and while well, Suppress trying to take down his brother. That's right, guys. Suppress, Diagram, fighting for first place in their pool. These guys, triplets. Their brother, Avenue, was playing on that business roster. All three of these guys made pool play. Unfortunately for Avenue, his day is done. Top 16 placing after going 0-3 in pools. Now Suppress and Diagram fighting for their next chance in the pool play. Suppress still with the sniper. Seems like he has that tendency to flick Enemy up and to the, the left score. with that snipe. Once he keep this thing steady, well, there's the first shot. The second one goes astray. Tusk able to get the kill. Sniper on ground, and you see the fight continue towards that camo spawn. Sniper towards the hands of Mental Septify, trying to do his best at just keeping Shopify Rebellion away, but there's really not much you can do. He lived for much longer than I would absolutely anticipate. And you can see the trades come in. Cloud9 in control of the outside of this hill. Like they're, they're just wanting to breach in and Septify is gonna be the one that allows them to continue on forward. Quantum Translocator in the hands of Mental trying to work with his teammate to pick off the player in the hill. Rami goes down two more to deal with and you can see he's gonna get aggressive here because he has that Quantum Translocator. Four go down for Cloud9. Diagram spawning all the way across the map. Mental's gonna have a great opportunity just to stand tall, not let them get any closer because of it. Mental able to take down Diagram. No one from Cloud9 seems to be close enough to put an immediate contest in. Tusk gets the screens. The scale from Soul Snipe comes in from behind. Septify still alive. No, Septify with the double. Septify breaks it through. Cloud9 just ticks away. They get the second hill. Cloud9 found the break on Shopify Rebellion. Get the huge hill capture. And Septify gets six in a row to help his team propel forward. Three minutes of neutral time, a 2 1 score between these two teams. Cloud9 with the advantage, and you can start to see them potentially slow this game down because of it. Tusk, over by the back tower, trying to do his best. Able to find kills onto the soul snipe. Players come from the backside and nest. Tusk, reality is for him, it's not about getting these kills. It's all about staying alive, but he is literally in a triangle of opposing players. They're coming from the left and right, but he's still alive. Oh, in fact, Tusk, Going to be able to find another assist. He's getting so much value out of his life. Another player comes through. It's going to be a third assist for Tusk. He stayed alive for so long that his teammates able to come off a spawn, take the long trek to come help him and get the kills to get in this hill once again. Cloud9 look like a completely different team from what we saw earlier in this tournament. All right, they lost to Proton Gaming. Proton will finish the pool play two and one. If Cloud9 is able to upset Shopify Rebellion here, we will have a three-way tie for first place in which three play uh, three teams will be two and one in the pool. Then it will come down to map record. So it's also important for Cloud9 here, not only to get this win, but also to win 3-0 if they have the opportunity to. That's the way you guarantee yourself a first place finish in your pool. Shopify Rebellion was a dominant team yesterday. They won 3-0 and 3-1. They'll have a huge advantage as long as they can take some games away from Cloud9. They can almost guarantee themselves a first place pool finish, but they have to win some games. It's not even necessary for them to win the series. They have to win multiple games in this series. Shopify Rebellion down 3-1. Coming on to the cast with me, Eli the Ninja. Welcome. Thank you for coming on. Of course. Getting to see Cloud9 pick up where they left off. Already up 3 1. The first time seeing this. They've already got snipe control. Does get taken down, but this tower side is going to be heavily contested for both teams here. 
see all those players in Cloud9 spawning at the back towards A, but they do have control of this hill. And although Rebellion have great access towards this hill, they really haven't been able to take them out. Damage downrange. Soul Snipe's going to be able to find two. Is there anyone from Cloud9 to clean him up? No. Cycle gets the third one in the feed, and three go down for Cloud9. That's exactly what you want to see if you're on the side of Rebellion. I actually like that they're controlling both A and the B. I'm sorry, A and C side. You can control both sides of the hill. Makes it very difficult for Cloud9 to push in. Rebellion finding more and more slays, getting more and more time, potentially making this a three to two game. Right now, the fighting out the tower side was going to go in favor of Suppress, and that all but guarantees this hill for Rebellion. Red one step closer to forcing a sudden death hill. Tush trying to stay patient. Will catch mental off guard and that shot rings true coming back to help towards this hill another player sitting at nest you can see all four players of cloud nine playing towards this hill ready to uh, play a strong defense as rebellion spawns so far away yeah right now rebellion is going to have to play this patiently they got to find a few slays before they can break into the cloud nine setup Cloud nine also stepping out of the hill as they do get slayed yeah they both went back into that dark side and well suppressed comes through they they really were suspecting a player to be hiding right there usually you get out of that hill you would expect someone to be in there i thought maybe they were trying to play mind games where they just jump in the hill and maybe get an easy back smack yeah they actually rotated all the way through a which is interesting i kind of figure the tower side's a little bit easier access point through that nest bridge to get into this hill so i don't want to be in a if i'm you know, during You're this also hill. like kind of hedging your bets, right? If you do lose the hill, you'll have the better rotation for what would be the sudden death hill. Right. When four players going down, you can see Tusk first one alive. And look how much, look at the three players of Rebellion standing towards tower. They're literally in cycle do this by himself. I think they know exactly where Cloud9 have spawned, so they don't even need to be over here. If they can just cut off the access points to the hill, cycle should be all fine on this side. They've Got a majority of this hill done already, and a couple slays. Make it three slays, all dead now. And this looks like it's going to be a tie game. What previously looked to be in all Cloud9's favor, suddenly it's going to be sudden death. And what's so surprising about, uh, about this is we've seen Cloud9 almost like three cycles in a row go full four down. There really hasn't been these trade outs. Cloud9 has been on their back foot and tumbling down this hill. They need to change it up. And well, Tusk might be the key to that. He's been able to find two kills with this camouflage. His teammate found the third. And you see the spawn of Mr. Soul Snipe all the way at the back of A. This looks to be one of the strongest positions possible for Cloud9. This looks so good. Rebellion have to make a good push. They're going to have to send multiple players through multiple lanes. We got Suppress coming up. Cuts. Cycle going to cross top mid. Soul Snipe and Mitzel going to hit the nest side. Kills are trading out in the kill feed. Looks like a 2v2 situation for now. Cycle gonna have to win this fight. He actually trades out. That's great for Cloud9. They might be able to maintain control, but Soul Snipe, last player alive, is gonna sneak all the way behind and he's actually gonna get the kill. Maybe two. He's gonna step in the hill and get some time here and all of a sudden, this is flipped completely on its head. Now it's Rebellion in full control of this hill. And the timing of that kill could not have been any better. It was right before his teammates spawned up. He gets the kill, removes the influence from tower, and then now that all of a sudden, his teammates are able to help at sea. Soul Snipe still staying alive, knowing how important his tower control is as he gets more and more damage down range. Once again, two down for Cloud9. Tusk might just be the third as he joins them on the respawn screen. The fourth goes down as well. Rami will spawn up, but there's no help to be found. Cycle like last player alive on the map, seemingly for a moment. He's going to rack up a solid amount of hill time, repulsing the grenades that were trying to fly over that tire's location. And now he identifies there's two targets coming across top middle. They get some great grenades down. I think they banked those grenades off the pillar. Great grenade if you're ever pushing into this hill. This is a good push from Cloud9. But look at this, Suppress just playing his life so well back tower. This player top tower forcing the trade. But it's Cloud9 in the hill for now. Cycle and Mental pushing in. Kill that last player alive. And this looks like it's gonna be a win. A comeback victory for Rebellion. Yeah, unless Rami's able to get here in time, no shot he's able to get there. Yeah, they're down 3 1 wow. on those hills. Cloud9 came out the gate strong. They captured the first hill without Shopify Rebellion even being able to step foot. The second hill was very similar to that. Uh, honestly, Cloud9 
I thought they were looking like a whole new team rejuvenated, but sometimes you just you just slowly lose the game. And it, it's yep. always tough when you're in that spot when you're just like knowing you have that feeling that like this game is getting away from us. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. This is a feeling that I've gotten many times on that game type especially. I don't know. I feel like King of the Hill can just it can feel like everything's going right until it isn't, you know, and it's really what it was the story for Cloud9. Shopify really stepping up in a big way. Shopify, keep in mind, had to wait a while before playing in this. So a little bit colder, you would say, than Cloud9, who just came off a hot win over Sentinels. But only takes about half the game for them to warm up and swing it right back in their favor. Well, what's so interesting about it is Shopify Rebellion, like, we're on the opposite side of the venue, right? Like, you could not be further away right. <laughs> from this stage. But probably, like, seven eight minutes before this game started i saw them walk past our doorway so i was like oh right. wow like okay we're gonna be able in it a minute until this game starts no they get right on the pcs i they might maybe shot box for 30 seconds and said all right let's go like let's get this pool like we're behind schedule let's, let's right, get this yeah. thing going yeah i don't think the refs were gonna allow it obviously there were some tech issues uh happening in the cloud nine sentinel series so i believe this is our last pool play match yep of the entire tournament and then after this, we'll be able to jump into that championship bracket. But Shopify, one of my teams to look out for. I mean, I was having a conversation the other day about, like, outside of the top three, what's a team that could just randomly win a tournament? Shopify is on my list for sure. They just seem like when they're clicking and firing on all cylinders, they are so fast. They're so precise. They seem to have such good control of momentum that... It almost doesn't matter who they're playing against. They can just take over a game. Well, the one thing about the Shopify team is just how much they grind, right? Well, during the off season, it didn't matter what kind of tournament it was. They were signing up as for and ensuring that they got as much practice underneath their belt before they came to these events. Um, they got some really young players, some really talented players uh, in particular. And then you also have experience from uh, from Mental being in the, the Gears of War scene, has won multiple championships there. And... and Honestly, I feel like the the player that's made the biggest difference for you know this core group that that joined is uh, Mr. Soul Snipe. Man, yes. it feels like he's taken a whole new approach to his game. He looks rejuvenated. He looks like a monster when he's playing with these guys. I have to agree with you. I mean, Soul Snipe. Ever since the Bandit came out, he just seems like a totally different player. I mean, we knew that he kind of earned his chops in that Halo Five era, single shot, five shot weapon. I think he's just kind of back in his comfort zone. His movement is almost unmatched. I feel like he's not talked about enough in that movement discussion, but I feel like he has some of the best, cleanest, most accurate movement in the game. This guy right here, Cycle, though, he's what? He was most assist in almost every LAN event last year. He's just outputting insane numbers for damage. Yeah, he's uh, he's interesting because you know he doesn't often have like the flashiest stat game. But if you were just to like put a, a camera on him the entire game, you, I think you'd almost be shocked at how much damage he puts yes. on the map. He, he's, um, I think he's one of those rare prototype players that exceeds at being a middle player. The, the, the players that just love to be right in the middle of action, they're not necessarily always about pushing, but they're always gonna make sure that they're connected with a teammate. Yeah, he's always like pushing his boundaries, staying alive, just being in the mix. You'll see him get three players to one shot and then duck out with no shields and the rest of the squad comes in and cleans everything up. It's impressive to even be in that mindset of playing this game, especially at such a young age, because oftentimes new players that come in, especially like I think of the triplets a lot, when I think about players suppress one of them, where they're always hunting for the kill, right? They, they, they find the damage, they're like, all right, it's my time. Let me let me just go forth and unleash the dogs on these guys. Cycle almost is like the exact opposite, where to him, it, it gets he gets his satisfaction from assist. Well, not even necessarily getting assist, just like shooting his gun and staying alive. Yeah. It's like Pistola-esque in a, in a way. What he likes to do is, is like shoot a target and then just find a new target. Like that target's gonna take cover. He'll call it out. His teammates mm. are so fast that they're gonna fly to that guy and kill him. And then he's already got two more people one shot by the time the first guy he shot is dead by his teammates. You know, it's like, how do you play against that? If you, no matter where you peek out, you're just facing so much fire power from this squad. I mean, across the board, insane firepower. Mental, I think, has really stepped up his game as well. This guy just seems to get better and better and better as time goes on, and he's really coming to his own. I feel like Mental's also been the definition of putting in the work to get to this point. Yeah. Uh, like, he came in, he, there was a lot of hype behind him when he first came in, in Season 1, 
but the results just like weren't quite there for a long time uh eventually shopify rebellion has like just stuck with him knew that he was eventually gonna figure it out and now well they're in a, they have a chance to be first out of their pool uh and and have a, a great matchup in the winner's side absolutely i mean this was certainly one of the toughest pools for sure if not the toughest i well, mean I, I don't think anyone thought it was going to go this way, though. You know? Right. It's not. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think a single prediction had Sentinels going 0 and 3. But when you look at the teams that they played against, it kind of makes sense, right? Like Rebellion, we've been talking about capable of beating anyone on any given day. Proton, I feel like, kind of in that conversation as well. They're kind of a wild card team. They've Proton's been... like flown under the radar, right? Yeah, exactly. They've been. They had a top six finish in one of the open qualifiers, so they've been putting in the work, but. Back on board here into the Recharge Slayer. Rebellion in Cloud9. Rebellion has that 1-0 lead. Currently down by one at the beginning of the Slayer. Rebellion trying to stay up on this high ground. Soul Snipe able to shoot down onto his opponent. Gets the kill and the trade is in. Cloud9 with an advantage early in this game. You can see Rebellion just stuck inside these pipes. And here comes... The Calvary, Septify gets the first. Tusk is waiting at the doorway to go. Suddenly the help comes in from behind. Rebellion stands strong in the pipes, but you still have a loose rat to take care of. Diagram getting behind ball players. Not quite able to get the double, but the trades are coming through. It's chaos in the wow. pipe side of map. Every single player dying, seemingly. Only player left is Cycle, but he just got here. Another trade comes out between Skeptify and Suppress. Is it, did we decide if it's Sept so, or Skep? The, the, the lore behind this, right? Okay. Septify, I say Septify because that's the generally what the Halo community is sorry, Kong. Yeah. He said when he when he originally made the tag, it was going to be Skeptify. That was his intention. Mm -hmm. But people just started calling him Septify. So he said, hey, that's it. It's just, okay, interesting. So, yeah, I remember he, he came in chat and said it's Skep with a K. So, oh, that's right. His brother was the one that said it. You're right. So it's always interesting to see, you know, the creativity behind their behind their names. I like Skeptify more personally, yeah. just because it's like you're a skeptic, right? Like, but it should be with a K, not a C, because like scepter is another word in the C English language. Better with, than a K. Yeah, like science. <laughs> you gotta use the phonetics of the language you speak. You know? Yeah, at least it's not Mr. Soul Snipe. I've seen the that. gamers getting my list. I'm just I'm just getting Mikey. <laughs> it's all good, but uh. Really, I, uh, my my main focus in this game is is going to be the brother between uh, the brotherly battle yeah. between Diagram and Suppress. Uh, the, these two have been just grinding for their moment. And honestly, like t t tip out to Diagram, right? Like got on this team just before the the major qualifier made the difference for them. Uh, it seems to get out of open bracket and to be playing as good as they are. Yeah, he's definitely on that list of like hired hitmen. If there's somebody that needs a fourth. You just You can always count on one of the twins to show up and be ready for it, right? I mean, that's exactly what Avenue did. That's kind of what Diagram was for this team. Diagram did this before with uh, that native red roster, I think, when they had an issue as well. So just uh, another hired gun. Both of them pretty similar in the score line right now. Diagram 3, 2, and 6. Suppress 3, 4, and 6. <laughs> I love <laughs> like that from Tusk. Like, Tusk was intentionally tried to hit the nades. He's like, I couldn't do it. You know, sometimes you just got to be like, okay, I'm going to hit it eventually. <laughs> right. It's like the play was over, right? The player's gone. But you got just for your own satisfaction, you got to make sure you hit those grenades. And two kill lead for Rebellion. As Rami gives himself a little bit of cover. Playing towards this long haul knows that the players are over at C flat. What about the smart smoke? I haven't seen that used before. Knowing that there's a player over at C using that shroud screen to get up those stairs and into long. Yeah, I think the evolution of the usage of that shroud, we're still in the early stages of it, right? Especially for this map. This map, definitely the map that I think needed it most with those cross angles. The players find it more creative ways to be useful with it. This is one of the few maps that has a lot of one ways as well. Uh, you, you, you can set up a one way onto that triple stack, looking out into the pit. Uh, there, there's a few that you can get onto the, the glass area as well. So it's 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 cool. I want to see that kind of put into use a little bit more. I almost want to see a shroud screen on a map where there's not camouflage. Because oftentimes it's going to be used to secure the camouflage coming up in just two seconds. Right. Yeah, that's kind of how we always saw it on Live Fire. I'm glad they took it off of Live Fire as they put camo and QT on it. But yeah, three kill lead right now for Rebellion. This seems like it's gone. So many trades throughout this game so far. Mental only really standout performer with a six point spread from his kills to deaths. Big part of the reason why they're in the lead right now. But the pace has really slowed down here. Both teams 
kind of just trying to find that opening, playing that damage game. Want to make sure they have some type of advantage before they move forward in this rebellion. They're going to get that advantage and extend the lead by one, at least oh, one or that's... two more. Yeah. That's beautiful. Soul side, right? He, he took the challenge. The player was behind him, but using that doorway to cut off the angle, the, the help from behind, it's, that's just beautiful from Soul Snipe. I think that's the under talked about skill of, of these Halo players is how in tune they are with the geometry around them and controlling which angles they're visible to to isolate fights against single opponents while in the back of their mind understanding the geometry of where other players are spawning on the map, so then positioning themselves so they can't be shot by spawners. That There's so many things going on in the back of the mind of a pro Halo player in the middle of a fight that you might not even realize. And something that you normally see in like more tactical slayers, like or tactical games like uh, CSGO or Valorant, something that we really haven't seen explored that much in depth. It's almost like a name to these guys, but... Right. See more and more kills coming down the feed. Rebellion have opened up this lead 10. First time we've seen that double digits at this point, and now these trades just do not feel good for the side of Cloud9. You need to start finding unanswered kills. What, what really, when you're in this mode where you have to find unanswered kills, how do you change your game style to accommodate that? You gotta just play your process. Like it almost feels like they're trying to force situations when you kind of have to just let the play breathe for a bit. You know, really gather that intel before you make a decision. It feels like there's at least one member of Cloud9 in most of these engagements that's just kind of trying to force it to work out, or maybe using partial information instead of the full picture of the play to make these decisions. And as time has gone on, this game has just gone further in the side of Rebellion. That he's, I guess he heard the camo, is that's why he yeah, turned Yeah, I mean, he's not picking it up. It was just like, it was like Tony Throw Skater, like, just, yeah. just 180 grail, uh, hit, the, hit the rail and yeah. grinded his way to victory. 44 kills, just six more for Rebellion to take this victory, and this is where you're going to start seeing the game really slow down. Cloud9 have a lot of space on the map. A little concerned about how much space they've taken, just because you're, you're kind of leaving that player at A to, to potentially just get picked off. It looks like they did send a player to, to play a little bit close, so it looks like pairs and... <laughs> set to fight. I like this. Oh, okay. I mean, Rebellion don't have to move, right? I just missed the jump, but it might be a good thing. Oh, he keeps bonking his time, head on the time. roof. You gotta, you gotta late jump it. There you go. Finds a target, but there's two more on left and right. They, they, they Tries to they, isolate. They, oh my god! What? If you're gonna make that play, you gotta get that kill at least. You could see, kind of see the play in front of him. Could have got that kill and then backed out, but just dies for it. And that might have been the nail in the coffin for this game. I, it's so interesting because it's like you see the thought process, right? And it's just like great idea. Yeah. Probably the worst execution. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, like bonk the head a couple of times, couldn't quite get up there. It was it's sick when he hits the jump, right? It's a, also, it's like, I understand bonking the head. It, it's a jump that does not come up a lot in competitive yeah. Halo just because of how open that spot is, but very powerful when you can get into that top uh, position without player seeing. I think it was a little unfortunate there was someone at bottom tower that could see him right away. Like, if he was able to get behind the, the player sitting in that corner, get the back smack, and then use that pick to open up the doors for his teammates to push through. Maybe a little more success there. Yeah, I think it's just the way Shopify played it, though. I mean, they had three guys in there. They're all watching the different entry points. There's no way that they could pop. That was actually the one way that you could feasibly go in without being seen, but Suppress obviously was watching that, too. So, I mean, you can kind of position yourself at the bottom of that staircase where you could watch both the the mid bridge and the top window at the same time. Another player was just waiting if somebody goes across catwalk. Well, extremely smart to sit there, right? Yeah. Like, you can watch that door from many directions. Mm -hmm. He shows the one spot. It's probably like the only spot where you can really watch both at the same time. And he has cover with the pillar, which is what he used to win that fight. That pillar, he was just kind of jiggle peeking it, and that's why Skep wasn't able to finish the kill. It, it, it was interesting because there were so many prerequisites that were needed for that play to potentially be successful. The first big one, right, was uh, was the shock rifle needed to be in the hands of the players on Cloud9. Uh, because Diagram having that shock rifle all the way at, uh, at gold prevented that, that player at the top uh, tower from really looking out and, and trying to explore the option of, of peeking because if you peek, well, your head's gone. Yeah, I mean, I, I just really respect the way Shopify played that too, though. I mean, they have, what, a six kill lead? at that point and decide like we can just chill they have to come to us next camo is not for another minute anyways like they're gonna get antsy and try to push in which is exactly what happened i also think cloud nine probably should have sent a player long haul 
to like start the engagement from the silo side. Right, because you can, you maybe could have like pulled a player out of tower right. towards C plat before Skep jumps up the front, but maybe they didn't think they had enough time to do that. I mean, it's so hard to make decisions like that in tense moments like this because you don't know if you're even going to have the time to make that rotation, right? Like, mm -hmm. what if Shopify just make a push into A and kill your guy in A? Like, suddenly everything falls apart, so they just kind of force it. But Shopify's patience really paid off. Well, it was really interesting to see. Like you said, like you usually have another player sort of initiate. Having that player jump up to initiate was a uh, was yeah. Like you don't choice. want that guy to be the first eyes. Like, like I guess I could see it working out more if he gets the back smack right away. Like if there's a player just back towards him, right. back smack, and then suddenly everyone else is gonna move their reticle up, and then the players push through the doors mm -hmm. at the same time. But and that that might be one of the most coordinated plays that I've seen in a Slayer in a yeah. while. Right? Yeah. Like because Halo is always so fluid. Like you don't have these like set plays like you would have in CS:GO or Valorant where players are, are waiting on exact timings of each other. It's only really possible in situations exactly like that, where a team decides to just set up, wait patiently. The other team recognizes, all right, we haven't seen a body in quite some time. Last time we saw somebody peeked out of tower, they must all be at sea and tower. And try to fabricate a play based on imperfect information is all you can really do a lot of the time in Halo. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but Cloud9 have made a lot of great plays throughout the day. I don't see it impossible for them to come back, but What's really impressed me about Shopify is their pace modulation. They're able to like speed up and slow things down. They're not like forcing situations. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like working together to play through them. And that's really what to me separates those top six teams from the rest is like how well they're adapting on the fly. So like uh, it's it's so cool to see the levels of Halo. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, do you remember like the first time? That you experienced that where where you were like okay yeah i'm pretty good like i'm on this pro team and then you just play another team and it's like oh they're they're playing halo in a way that i haven't even theorized oh yet. yeah no i was an idiot in my <laughs> beginning of my career i had a gun that's why i was good at free for all but then i get in the team environment and i'm like these guys are doing things i hadn't even thought of they're making it impossible for me to play the game all right guys while we wait for this third match to start up looks like we have some action on the Alpha stage, we'll go pick it. Uh, we'll go put it over there to listen to. When this Aquarius flag game starts up, we'll be right back. Stifling them. That's what I was worried about. The exact timing of that camo grab led to so many points on the board. The four dead hit at the exact same time as the camo grab. And Sika uses that elevation, uses those sidelines to perfectly pick apart the SSG roster. They have crossed the 210 point mark. Now, this is the interesting part of the game, though. A couple of kills went over to SSG, and they've managed to get control of one of the strongholds. Now you're going to see the battle bottom middle. Snipe Drone gets a kill onto Bound, stays alive as well. Sika gets another, and it's going to be all up to Legend against his old team to keep. Keep his team in the game. Oh. Can he get the stick? The answer is yes. But the reset does come in bottom middle. All four dead, but because of that, Bound is able to get here, and he should be able to beat the spawns on the timing here just by a split second or so to finish B. Scoring back in the hands of SSG, but damage being taken by Bound. Staying alive is so important, and he cannot do it here. SLG and Snipe Drone combined. All the kills going over to the Quadrant side of the stage right now, and they flip Enemy. B. Back. Quadrant now in the home stretch. It was a big play from Legend, but wasn't enough. Look at the board. Somehow a hundred point difference here. Let's see what happens at C as well. 230 on the board. 20 points to go for Quadrant. What a run they have made here in game number one. It's a triple cap at the 240 mark. It's going to be desperation here from SSG. They have to cap something and they have to cap it now. Legend in the 1v1 and Snipe Drone will take him down. A huge kill. They give up C. But the battle is going to be for bottom middle. Bound gets one. Snipe Drone will stay alive, though. Stella, last alive here for Space Station Gaming. It's all up to Legend now. Stella will fall. Glory steps back into B. And surely this is the final moment. Should be able to. Let's see what happens in A now. All focus on A. It's Split going to have to back. Split spawns, though. It's going to be three players now from Space Station spawning at C. And that might be a blessing in disguise. And Quadrant cannot convert in these final moments. Is it going to be the same story as yesterday? As and Eco gets the camo. SLG last player alive. Eco with the camo. All four players up on Quadrant, though. Let's see how this plays out. 246 mark. No room for error whatsoever. Eco gets spotted out with the camo. But he's still going to find one. And he takes the shields down to Seeker. Ooh. He's trying to wait and bait for this bottom middle. And they will keep control here. SSG of B and C. This would be unbelievable. What a run they have to take here. It's going to take, require a lot more slays to bring this game back, but they've already got two dead. They maintain the staggered spawns as well. They trail by just under 100. Important thing here for Quadrant. 
even though they are leaking points right now, the camo didn't turn it into a triple cap. If that happens, oh, big from Glory, then maybe SSG are right back into this, but kills like that from Glory and openings created like that could give Quadrant the chance to move up the map and turn over one of these strongholds. Glory was last player alive. He does not have the opportunity to push. He was in a momentary 1v2 and finally gets taken down. Now still staggered spawns. It was three dead for Quadrant yet again. They're coming off the spawn here. Space Station has to do this about two more times if they want to win this game. Have they learned from yesterday? Quadrant so close in so many of these games, but it was these final moments. They are agonizingly close here. Four points is all they need. But that four wow. points might as, be, might as well be 250 oh, no. as Stella is starting to take over this game. Huge from Stella. Oh. He doesn't take any damage. No trade, no damage at all. Oh. Stella with a triple kill at an unbelievable time. Seek is the only player alive. It's Cafe spawns. It's Camo for Stella. Are they about to do the impossible? Stella just changed the game. Now moving in on A, it's going to be an easy reset. The kills are just starting to stack up oh boy. in the favor of SSG. It's four dead for Quadrant. And SSG are back in with a triple cap. Last push here for Quadrant. Off the rip. Cafe spawns all four players up. The final battle. He's just standing here with Camo. He's just waiting for an opening, waiting for a pick. That's There's it. two players in front of him. He gets one, he can't get two. But Quadrant, they lose two members, and SSG will come back to win game number one. Oh my word, what a way to start this series in one of the most back and forth strongholds and undoubtedly the biggest comeback of this event so far, trailing I believe by 150 points or so. Quadrant at the doorstep with 230 for quite some time. And SSG forces about- Hello and welcome back to the HCS. Arlington watch party. Halo, I got joined with me, Tom Taylor. Teach me how to frag like a pro. You guys how to frag like a pro. And obviously, you have announced Trey Ripley's back. You're here at the venue. How does it feel? It feels great. I mean, first of all, what a crazy game that was. And I want to give a shout out to everyone over at the LVT team for uh, just putting on a great show. You know, it's awesome to see the community coming together. And uh, if we if you didn't get the volume there, just basically said, hi, everybody. Welcome yeah, right. to the show. So <laughs> I may have stepped on the cable on the way over like a stupid noob. But uh, it's just great to be here. It really is. So we have a straight up in booth. Um, we ended up, you know, having a really awesome day yesterday connecting with the fans but now the tournament really starts and, mm. and the pool plays over we just saw what it's going to be like in the championship bracket what a comeback right there uh from ssg yeah, my big thing my big question for you who in the hcs reminds you of yourself from back in the day oh man it's tough to say i, I think that what we need right now is a little bit of passion and i feel like spartan's got the passion mm. and he's you know very vocal in the way that he goes about things but you know what I'm looking for and looking forward to is kind of that new wave of players like who's going to be the next people to step up like Frosty like Royal 2 um, you know Lethal the players that came in and, and kind of asserted dominance in their right form the Shotzi's out there so I'm mm. looking forward to seeing who's going to be that next wave but uh, I'm looking for the players that get excited that communicate with their teammates that have a lot of passion um, and there's a lot to be excited for, especially since we're kicking off the new year. Yeah, honestly, a fantastic start, right? Straight ripping coming out. I see everyone wearing either that blue or white hoodie uh, in the side of the venue. Obviously, everyone's been hyped for it, but also there's like some questions about, okay, like what does it mean when Straight Ripping's back, right? You guys already announced like Razor is a big sponsor yep. for you guys. Like what, what is the future plans for Straight Ripping? Yeah, so the future right now is obviously focusing on this event, making sure that we're having a blast this event because there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. So really, it's just about showing up and having a good time. But the next steps would be, you know, we're going to do some events, some side events, some production stuff, work on getting a content team together. Hopefully soon that would mean, you know, getting a pro team. But realistically, there's no rush in order mm. to get towards that level. It's about just executing everything at a high level and not biting off more than you can chew. But the reception has been amazing. We've had so many people reach out to us that are so excited for us and the community support it means a lot it means a lot because we're we're just as excited um you know to get this thing up and running and to continue to do more big things the, the goal the overall goal is to be one of the best organizations in the world right and to be one of the top esports brands in the world um and that's where we want to be and and that's where i think that the hard work's going to take us right so i like obviously like you know you've been associated with straight ripping for a long time we've seen them come in and out of halo a few times at what point were you sitting down and saying to yourself, like, I, I need to relaunch the straight rip and brand. It needs to come back. Well, when did you have that moment? 
I think for me it was going and seeing the because we were heavily involved in Halo Five, right? We had fourth place at the World Championships. You know, a couple of players on our team were Ace, APG, Renegade, Eco. We had, you know, we worked with the team over in EU. Um, we had Rami, Nemesis, you know, Musa. So many great players playing our district ripping in Halo Five. We had skins that was fantastic. And then there was a little bit of a a downtime. Infinite came out. I started playing Infinite, but really, you know, what Small and I were doing, and Small also coins to open with me, is we were working on our own professional careers, right? So I was working on launching Clutch One. Everett mm -hmm. is over. Small's over at Craft and doing a lot of the large PUBG activations. So a lot of the stuff that you know we were doing was honing our skills to be able to bring that stuff to the table. Um, so I think for me, it was seeing the welcome of when we collabed with SSG and seeing you know half of the crowd walking around in straight up in blue, having the conversations with people, that really got us excited and, and really made us believe that we could do this. Yeah, I mean, you're basically one of those like founding members of like, e not even just like Halo Esports, but just like Esports as a whole, getting it into that mainstream. What do you think, uh, what experiences are you going to be drawing back from those old days to, to help revitalize the straight ripping brand in Halo? Really just making things exciting, things that I would want to watch, right? And, and do stuff because we're excited to do it. I think that's the number one thing is we want to give back to the community. We want to grow the Halo community. We want people to enjoy the stuff that we're putting out. Um, so a lot of experience in terms of the business side of things, the player side of things, the fan side of things, really just bringing that together and making something special. All right. Every time I see a Halo tournament, whenever the announcements come out, I always see one thing. I want T-Square casting once again. So I'm going to I'm gonna put, I'm gonna make you put on the, the caster hat once again. We're going to get right into this. So it's a 2-0 up for Rebellion right now. Cloud9 trying to continue on. If they win this series, they have a chance of getting that first place finish. In particular, two players I'm looking out in this game. T-squared, Diagram and Suppress. Yes. Triplets from the same family, born on the same day, playing against each other for such large stakes. Right now, after game number one and it kind of being so late in the day, I think a lot of this series is kind of already written. I don't want to, you know, obviously if I was casting in the HCS right now, I feel like on, on this broadcast we can be honest, we can keep it straight up. There we go, this there series we go. is We're over, okay? Straight, this series is over. Rebellion's taken this one, I think, but I would love to see the series work itself out because right now when you're down, when you're about to take game number one and it kind of slips away from you, then you're down 2-0 in the series, you have to almost play perfect Halo throughout the entire time. So let's see if Cloud9 can really keep that up. A lot of mistakes end up happening, you know, and if you have a mental mistake, then you're going to kind of go down that spiral and you may just lose a little bit of energy and then Rebellion will take that energy from you. So that's what you worry about when you go down 2-0. Um, then you can see like a return flag along the way. I would love to see the series go the distance, but right now I feel like Rebellion played very well yesterday. I spoke with Gilkey, who was my local for a very long time growing up in Syracuse, and I love cheering him on. I, I go, what happened in your series against Rebellion? He's like, we got swifted, you know, 3 0 pretty hard. So I think Rebellion's playing at a really high level, and uh, they're definitely going to be forced to be reckoned with for the rest of the tournament. Look at this Cloud9. They, they desperately pulled that flag time and time again, got it, scraped it all the way to the home base just for Rebellion to swoop right in, get the kills, and get their first flag on the board. The counter cap was immediate, and the pressure isn't done yet. Soul Snipe on that high ground, but Tusk able to find the big kill. Cloud9 going to be able to take a little bit more space on this map, but the Rebellion push not over yet. Not at all. Tusk's doing a great job staying alive, and you may see, like, oh, he had one kill at a certain point, but he's holding it down when it comes to the assists. When I was watching some of the previous series, I saw Rami was playing phenomenal. I think that his callouts are also top notch. Really watching him grow as a player. Um, he, he was originally someone that was a little bit on the quiet side, and he's really stepped it up in terms of communicating. Now Tusk is starting to heat up with a nice perfect there, and the flag is taking place. It's all about spacing here, so you want to make sure that everyone's going and escorting the flag back. You do have someone that snuck over from the Rebellion side, so they have to be careful because they did have mental unaccounted for, so it's a big 1v1 right here. Momento backs down from the fight, but will reapproach. Let's just fly the assist comes through. He knows this one's clear to pull. Rammy bottom mid causing mayhem, but Mental stays alive. And oh my, it's all up to him. He's the last alive on his team, but still in the base can take the one on one. The thrust not enough to take Mental down, but he takes the reach out. Not going to be able to get that one, but did he buy enough time? Even if they get the flag cap, what they do, you know what that does is that kind of evens the spacing of the map, which allows Suppress to kind of advance and get a little bit of extra kills. So instead of being counter capped or whatever it is, 
The damage is done in terms of staying alive that long in the base, but it's being answered right back from Cloud9. Nice double kill there from Suppress. Bit off a little bit more than he could chew as he wake, makes his way into the Cloud9 base, but what a great play there from not only Cloud9, but also the players from Rebellion, especially Mental, getting into the opponent's base. It's not often that you, you make an engagement in three seconds and see all four players and somehow come out with two kills. So, you know, you'll, you'll take the benefit. Cycle. Getting that overshield on. About half of these extra shields to work with as they get towards this flag. Out towards the util side. This is the traditional run that you normally see on this map. Well, wait. Diagram's on, overextended on the P side, but his teammate causing Mayhem Tosk once again. Slowing them down on the util. He finally goes down. Rebellion. They've won the slays, but this flag far from being home. Yeah, a little buddy system happening over here for Rebellion. Working together as much as possible. Nice trade coming in. But the flag is being ran, and again, as silly as it sounds, you can really take this all the way back to Mental staying alive at the base. I know that was about a minute and a half ago, but it really starts to add the pressure on, and you didn't see the investment until a little bit later. And that's exactly what happened for Rebellion. That's why that play earlier was so important, because Cloud9 could have continued to kind of steamroll that and snowball that effect, but it looks like now they're still getting a little bit of map pressure, some top center control here for Diagram. Well, investments starting to compound onto each other. Rebellion double the score up and Diagram starting to lead his charge towards his base with Soul Snipe able to get two. That's gonna slow him down. Diagram playing slow. Gets that kill, Joy stopping the spree of one player for now, but it seems like Rebellion have just been able to completely answer any push that Cloud9 has tried to accomplish at these last two minutes of gameplay. You have to hand it to Cloud9, they're holding strong here. They're definitely sticking in this one. But they're going to need to get some sort oh, of momentum. No. Big triple kill going for the overkill. It's going to be able to get it. Cycle going absolutely nutty. He's Maybe outside. a kill tag. Ah! No! Robbed. <laughs> Robbed. <laughs> Killing spree for Cycle and uh, just bullied Cloud9 out of their base. You see them all spawning on that util side. And Cycle has not stopped being the tip of this spear. He is driving himself into Cloud9's rib cage. They cannot breathe. He gets another shot. Overshield on suppressed body. This flag more than halfway home. Cycle gonna take a celebratory lap back towards his base. Pretty sure Post Malone made a song about this. He be going Cycle is the remix that's coming out. That's an absolute phenomenal job coming in from the Rebellion squad to be able to capitalize on getting the cap as well. And when we were talking about Cloud9 needing momentum, it just gets shut down. There's Rebellion starting to go absolutely dummy with it. Ridiculous plays from Cycle. He went on an amazing killing spree. I think he's thrown together about six or seven kills throughout all that. Septify gonna take a little bit of that energy coming through, and now it's just starting to feed throughout the entire team. That might be the best life you'll see today in the tournament. Just the way that he was in front of every single player. And Diagram, one of these tricky, slippery players. He, he has that natural raw talent when it comes to the game, one of the best shots in the game. Has really elevated this Cloud9 roster ever since he was added just a few weeks prior. And he's got another flag on the way. Now there's still five minutes left in this game to work with. Cloud9 definitely not out of this yet. I like that play, taking the player down to no shields. I believe that was Cycle in front of the base, taking another player down to no shields, almost killing two players single-handedly and is able to do it. What a job to go and bring that flag towards P2, back off, check for the spawns, and Cloud9, right when they look like they're done, is able to get the flag, but here you go. Four and a half minutes left. They're gonna have to string something together here. Oh, Cloud9, wow, another two kills. Up in the feed, flag is out, and the last remaining players are at the top of their base. They have no access to even look at that flag as it gets through the bottom middle of the map. Not a run you see often as the overextending spawns of Rebellion do give them access and shut down this flag, but it's gonna be a two on one. Septify needs to hold strong. Unfortunate right there that both of the players were no shields. Rami doing whatever he can to try to defend the flag carrier, but maybe it would have been a better opportunity to stay alive, let Septify come in, but split second decisions. You never really know exactly how it's going to work out. And unfortunately for Cloud9, that flag ends up getting returned. And Mental with the fastest flag run we've seen in the game so far is able to get this flag all the way back to his base, virtually untouched. And he's going to be able to slam this one in. That's going to be a 4-2 to two lead here. One more cap. Three and a half minutes remaining for Cloud9 before they end up finding their fate and who they're going to end up playing in the championship bracket. I, I feel like Cloud9, every time we've seen them get that flag home, it, it's been an absolute battle of war that they come away from. Rebellion, when they've been pulling these flags, like they're frolicking through a field, right? They're, they're smelling the flowers, whatever it is. There, there really hasn't been any pressure from Cloud9 to stop them yet. Mental high ground down sees his target the thruster 
not going to be enough. Diagram, huge kill on the overextension. And like you're saying, being able to get these flag caps where you're frolicking, which basically, if you're unfamiliar with frolicking, means kind of meandering through a meadow or going wherever yeah, you would right. like to go as you please. <laughs> Almost like you're on a little mushroom trip. So it's very nicely done. Very nicely done by the Rebellion squad here. And the thing is, is when you keep this type of control, it allows you to burn more clock on the time, uh, time on the clock. It allows you to basically keep control of the map so you can potentially put in this final flag capture as well. And that's not what you want to see if you're a Cloud9 fan or if you're playing on the Cloud9 team right now. You have to be able to string multiple caps together, get some momentum. The one thing that you can say for Cloud9 is that they've kept this game close, and that's kind of been the story of their day so far. I've watched them lose 50-47 in a handful of games. They're right there, but they just need to get a little bit more momentum to be able to, to get these wins under their belt, and unfortunately for them, this looks like this could be a 3-0. Uh, we're in the fourth quarter. Two-minute warning on its way. Cloud9 need to be averaging what, a minute a flag cap here. You're going to have one last overshield to play with, and Shopify Rebellion in position to get this overshield as well. And I don't think there's gonna be any real pressure from Cloud9. So they got everything against them coming into these final two minutes. Nice kill there from Cycle. He's really started to pick up the kills in the kill feed. You can see it's sitting at 21 and 15, suppressed with 30 and 16, overshield in the hand of Mental. Two options here, go back and spawn trap or toss the flag out and utilize that to defend. And that's exactly what they're gonna do. Gonna be able to sit there and Take multiple players down to no shields, what distract the final player, hit him with the zip the doo -dah, no shields there, and you're able to put a ton of damage in. That's the final flag going in, and Rebellion takes that one. Again, great plays from Cloud9, but it's just too much momentum coming in after you're up 2-0. Yeah, that last <laughs> that last gunfight made me felt like uh, I was on a mushroom <laughs> trip, but that, that was absolutely unbelievable. Shopify Rebellion get the job done. That first game, it almost felt like it took all of that momentum away from them. They came off that high of beating Sentinels. Uh, then they were up 3-1 in that game. Can you, can you talk a little bit about what that does to you as a mental, losing that first game when you're that underdog and not being able to recover? It's tough because game two wasn't necessarily close. If they were able to, as we take a look at some of the replays, there's the overkill of potentially kill tag coming in from Cycle. It really just hurts because that's a lot of the majority of the day from Cloud9. Whether it's game one or game two, they're constantly and consistently going down 2-0. And very rarely do you end up coming back for a reverse sweep. It also takes a lot of odd, a lot out of you. And there's a lot of games to be played. You have to kind of keep your energy levels up here early on a Saturday. So. They're getting ready now, and you got to put the pass behind them, refocus as we move into the championship bracket. Yeah, plenty to play still today. That's just pool play, guys. We're at right, 2 o'clock. Still got lots and lots of Halo to play. Do not go anywhere, because we're going to have more and more Halo action to bring you guys. T-squared, it was awesome. In fact, Absolute I, pleasure. I, I still want to talk a little bit about what you're doing here with the yeah. Straight Riffin brand. Uh, there's so much more to be uh to be shown oh you know what maybe maybe we get a little bit extra casting going on because we got opt okay well okay observe observers know that we're watching no Wait. no maybe oh. maybe they're baiting the baiting they're baiting oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, maybe we're gonna be able to watch the opt game but no 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 they said they said t squared no we can't have them on the on the cast but um it, it's been great to see the brand back yeah just um just really really want to kind of see maybe a resurgence of these old school brands coming back right no doubt yeah, they got the straight ripping you know not not to say like you know i want to see triggers down back i want to see i want to see all these old school brands coming back i'm glad that you're kind of leading the way for potentially these brands to come back into the halo i mean obviously we're, we're gonna bleed blue we're straight ripping for the for forever but what's the one old school brand that you would like to see re-enter into the halo scene it'd be fun to see you know triggers down bth i know maniac is you know doing his stuff with the bth merchandise and mm -hmm. he has an eye for it but i want to give a shout out to someone that you know i had a conversation with and one of the old orgs that is back is darkest hour mm -hmm. um had a conversation with talent one of the first people that i talked to when we got here and i think that's the the best things about these events so if you you know can make it out to one of the next events you know throughout the season whether that's going to be going into london atlanta salt lake city or the championship in seattle come out to these events they're an absolute blast um you know just being able to interact with everybody have the conversations it's really what all this esports stuff is about is being able to share the friendship and the love for halo together but uh, i just want to give a shout out to talent you know 13 years off in the community he was a pro in halo 3 um started in halo 2 really young kid back then and 
Uh, now he's a full-grown ass man coming coming through and has <laughs> has his own organization. So um, that's one tall dude. He's 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 a big guy. It's easy to find him inside of the venue. But he's he's a you know a really nice guy, and you can tell that he's serious about getting his players involved. And there's a lot of passion there. So um, that's already an org that's coming back too. So so hats off to those guys. It must feel completely different. Like when you think about those old school days where you guys were 15, 16. Like everyone in the scene <laughs> was like 15, 16. Now you're coming back, and it's like okay. You're suddenly the older guy in the scene. How does that how does that transition feel coming back into Halo from that different mindset where you, you've lived like an adult life now? Yeah. You're not you're not just a kid getting in, drinking whatever uh, whatever's beside you. I yeah, mean, exactly. you guys were putting some vile stuff in your bodies yeah, back. Yeah, the, the hangovers day. are a lot worse than my back hurts. I think mm. those are probably the two changes that's happened throughout the years. So um overall it's great though, because again, as you get older, you start to cherish not only those moments that you have, but when you're not competing, I think that having the conversations with people is a lot less stressful because when you're competing and if you ever do run into the players and they seem a little, you know, on edge or a little too focused, that's because a lot of times they are focused on competing. So, um, you know, being able to, you know, sit here and I'm sitting there watching Walsh, well, you have these conversations, you know, I'll talk to people until they don't, they're like, I'm sure you got something to do. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> and like, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll just talk to people as long as possible. And, um, you know, I think that's probably my favorite part, honestly, just coming back and hearing people's stories about how they got into Halo or or, you know, reminiscing about the first event that they went to or, you know, just talking about the event that's going on right now. It's awesome. Well, I want to reminisce a little bit. Can you can you walk us through your first LAN experience when you oh, came man. in? What was it? Was it an MLG back in the day or was yeah. it just some closet or LAN? Yeah, we started before. Well, I started before MLG was a thing. It started as something called Halo 50K. And that was Anakin and Dolblex. Anakin ended up becoming the commissioner um, of MLG, and then he ended up becoming the head of Apex Competitive, and he still does that for the ALGS. So um, Sundance and Sepso, who started MLG, they went to that event, scouted the staff, scouted the players, realized that there was something special inside of the Halo community. They launched MLG, and we would have lands down in Florida where it was Halo 1, you know, whether it was Blood Gulch or playing 4v4 or derelict free-for-alls. Um, you know, just ordering a bunch of pizza and having a good time. And, you know, this is back in 2002, 2003. Um, back when you didn't have to have eight monitors and eight Xboxes or PCs to play, and you could just show up with two Xboxes, two big-ass TVs, all four people had to sit next to each other. I think that was one of my favorite things. And it's a little bit of a lost art nowadays. It's great to everyone have their own headset, their own setup and stuff. But back in the day, it was it was really cool to see everyone kind of sitting in really close to each other all on that same four-man split screen. And that's why you see some of the viewing experiences that MLG used to bring was that four-person split screen. And then you go into the one screen. Um, and that's because that's exactly how people used to play. Oh, I, I mean... I think players are probably a little spoiled these days. I mean, a little honestly, bit. They have I mean, glad someone monitor, had to their say own it. headset. But you know, <laughs> back in the day, you guys weren't even wearing headsets. I, like, how was it sort of calling out on that four box setup? Because obviously, you guys are all Lose your sitting voice. next to each other. Lose, yeah, you yeah. have to scream over the other team. And then it's like, how do you even tell who, like, you guys, it's like, you're on the top left, I'm on the top right. That's how why the shit talk was even better, too, mm. though, because they couldn't just drown you out. You could just, you know, stand up and say something and people had to you know, that's where a lot of the epic stuff between me and gandhi ended up taking place and um we were a part of the original creation of the astros so final boss carbon and straight ripping we all got the first prototypes ever created and then after the first event players complained they had to ban the the prototype headsets because it was deemed too much of an advantage but that was the first headset that was a console um headset with a microphone and you know we still have those prototypes uh, somewhere at the Astro office. So uh, it, that's a pretty cool story. They, they even had our little Halo emblems engraved in <laughs> right. them. Uh, the owners of Astro paid us like in an envelope of cash. It wasn't much, but they were like, I remember like being in a cab and he was like, hey, thanks guys for helping out with the prototype. And like, gives us like, I think it was like a couple hundred bucks each or something. I was like, all right, it's cool. I feel like I just did a drug deal on the back of a cab, but uh, yeah, it was cool. Well, that's like a direct line of like, you can go back to those men, those uh, those days and see like, how much of an impact just you guys wearing Astros like Astros became a massive company huge, huge. and it's like you can see that little snowball that that happened yep. so often back in those days and well you had so many like you were known not only for your gameplay but for what you did outside of your gameplay right yeah. obviously everyone knows that you got yourself getting fragging like a pro yeah you know, obviously tips, yep. you got all that going on you were on the Dr. Peppers right like yep how does it feel like to, to be almost like that first gaming superstar? Yeah, it feels great. I mean, it was definitely when you go back and look at it, you're like, wow, I did all that shit. And it's really cool to you know see. But I have a lot of, you know, 
memories that I share with my family and my friends. And you go back and look at it. It's, it's a lot of it doesn't seem real because um, it, it just was like it became normal, I guess, mm. once you started doing it. But it's exciting. I mean, you know, ESPN, the magazine. I think one of the coolest things that we did was we did a make a wish for someone with melanoma skin cancer, Jack Apple, and he ended up going into remission after that, but he wanted to come to the straight ripping house and, um, you know, get trained by us. We had something called straight camp. We shut it down after two weeks. We opened it up just for him and his friends and his family came through all inclusive at the straight house and trained them. I think that was probably one of the most badass things that we did, but it was awesome. I can't, I can't even begin to tell you. There's so many stories about how much fun that we had. I think that's the one thing to take away from all of this is that we had a blast. These events are a blast. Sharing Halo with your friends, mm. nothing gets better, whether it's the stories that happen inside of the game or outside of the game. Um, and again, if you haven't been to an event, I highly recommend just coming to one. Now, you did so much. You accomplished so much in the game. You accomplished so much outside the game. I also think you were one of the few players that kind of pioneered the, the quote-unquote shit talk. So I, like, from <laughs> you, you know, I, I, like one of the GOATs, what do you think top five Halo shit talkers ever? Like, can we? Can oh, you... for sure. Top five shit talkers. I think Zios was up there. Walshy was pretty good. Um, Gandhi was up there. Uh, Elamite's definitely up there. Um, and then it's, it's hard to say who the fifth person would be. But I think that Spartan's kind of getting in there. Well, so that so only one new one. Is, is, the, is the art of like sort of the shit talk dead? I think the passion is kind of not where where i would love to see it. i would love to see people get a little bit more excited about wins i think that's kind of you know it depends on what your personality is right it's like you know we, we were all jacked up and we were just stoked and um you know we were very passionate about it but even if you win and you don't show the emotion you're still extremely passionate you have to be passionate to win so um i would love to see you know more loudness and that's what kind of got me excited yesterday when darkest hour ended up making it into pool play they erupted, and, and that eruption and that excitement is is really what I love. Yeah, I was like, I think I saw a picture of Talent like sitting on the other side, like, yeah. like putting him to sleep. I was like, okay, okay, Talent still, still. Yeah, has I that, love that, that stuff. I think that's fun. No, it's like, and hopefully, you know, maybe when when there's another straight ripping team, you know, you got to coach for at least like one turn. Yeah, I'll give them you know? shit talking lessons. You, you got you got to be like a coach, but you never put on the headset. You're just talking yeah. to the other team the entire time. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 the goal for sure. But um. One last thing I wanted, I really wanted to, to go in is I wanted to figure out at what point in your career were you like, okay, this is gaming is just like a really fun thing. I love going out to these lands. When did it transition more into this is a profession? Like this is going to be my life? I think, you know, especially because I was really young, I, was, I won my first tournament when I was 15 and I started competing when I was 14. Um, for me, my path was I was a little bit of a troublemaker. I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, probably too much time alone at home and I was like all right well I love this gaming stuff but it, it kind of happened immediately for me uh, mainly because of kind of just where my, my path in life was taking me I loved gaming so much and um, you know I went to my first event and I was kind of hooked and then never really envisioned how it would you know take off how it did but I knew that there was something that was drawing me towards it so um, I, I think that, you know, you'll know kind of just by competing from the first time, whether you do really well or you get absolutely dumpstered, you'll know soon. Right. Absolutely. Guys, we're back into the action. I'm, I'm going to have you put your caster hat back yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. If you'll have me, but Optic Gaming going up against Proton. This is going to be over on the Delta stage. Gilkey with his new kind. Like you said, you've known Gilkey for quite a while, and well, he's already put in some pain to Optic Gaming. Yeah, he's, he's a beast. One of the things that really impressed me about Proton Gaming was their communication and their energy. I think that if you're able to, when you're competing, you don't really notice this when you're, you know, heads down and the monitor and you're so focused on playing. But if your energy levels are high and you're communicating really well, that means a lot of the stuff in the game is going well. When you're quiet, it's usually because you're losing. So there's times that you have to get out of your head and you have to just focus on communicating and keeping the energy up and not be selfish about over calling out or doing small talk. And I think that's what impressed me the most about Proton was the energy levels that they were bringing. And they were playing at a very high level. The issue with Proton is they just got done playing their first match. They played at 1030. They 3 0 Cloud9. And then they sat around for like five hours or six hours. <laughs> yeah. That messes with you it really does because a lot of times you'll wake up you'll have a coffee or whatever that may be you may start to have a little bit of a crash and it may take you a little bit to get back into it and i think that optic gaming 
they benefited from having to play more recently. And I'm not saying that's the reason they're winning, but I think that Proton was playing at a much higher level than being down 1-0 right now and being down in game number two. Well, Lucid going to be working alongside his long-term duo, Trippy, on that camo side. It looks like it's a little just disjointed. Dead Zone's just trying to find someone. There's no one for him to find. Sniper rifle in that back pocket. Still has eight bullets left. And the first head gets peeled. Finds the spawner right away. Sab lasts alive. And Proton just continually seeing that respawn screen. Communication, energy, but also power weapon control and map control are the two most important things. Having your superstars play the best as well. You can see Trippy has a ton of assists feeding that right into formal. If you're, you kind of end up looking at it, it's like, hey, who's the best player on each team? Or is everyone kind of equally skilled? But who, when they're playing their best, is going to be the most unstoppable? And to me, I think that Formal has all the accolades out of everyone in this lobby to say, hey, this guy is the best player right now. I mean, obviously, Lucid has been amazing throughout his career. Dead Zone, aka the old Penguin here, phenomenal as well. But Formal's resume speaks for itself. And if you can't stop these guys when, and give them the weapons, this is this you know, this is the outcome that you're going to get. Yeah, obviously, he's uh, he's always going to be a part of that console GOAT talk with his career. Dead Zone, the new rebrand, new man. They're all high. Look at them just running low like rats. Like, they're just <sighs> terrified of Dead Zone up top. They do not want to mess with him top center. And Dead Zone's okay with just sitting up top right here. He may want to consider, you know, having someone that he can bait. That's the issue right now is everyone's kind of overextending and they're playing really smart on the Proton gaming side. But Dead Zone needs someone to bait. Otherwise, he's going to end up still running into this issue. First player out. The bait comes in from Lucid. Got that damage down. No finish for Dead Zone, but definitely made his presence known. King Nick will take another shot to the body as well. You start to see the collapse coming in from the other side. Everyone getting ready for this camo play. Lucid will be the one that gets away with that. And I feel like we've seen Dead Zone. If we, if you, he's probably traveled like five feet in this entire match. Yeah, he's no been doubt. on that tower this this entire game. Sometimes you don't have to really travel. He's getting a lot of body shots, which is going to do the trick. The one thing I was worried about is that they were going to run into continuous three v three v fours on the side of Proton Gaming, but that's not the case. Dead Zone now ends up running out of sniper ammo, and this is the right place. Start to advance with your team. He was just locking things down. Nice combo coming in, but the bait and switch too strong, and you could see that. Lead just continues to get in the way of Proton Gaming. Wow, Gilkey somehow living through that stick. I, I honestly don't know how, but he got the job done. 41-28. Optic has just been consistently putting this score up and away from Proton these nades. Okay. They, 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 I, I've never seen so many check nades come out. And they, they, you almost thought they had like hit markers in that situation. Obviously, they probably heard some Spartans grunting, but... My God, Optic, they, they are just working as a unit every single time. It feels like you see two or three players collapsing in on an, on these guys from Proton. Here comes the 20 bomb coming in from Formal, and that's just an absolutely huge stat line. Looking at 19 kills, 8 deaths overall, positive 11. You can see it's a 16 kill differential. A lot of this having to do with the man on your screen right now. It's just the positioning is on point. Listening to callouts is on point. And there's really not much that you can do right there. Optic Gaming looks like they're going to end up taking that game. Yeah, remember, guys, there was a reset before. So there was a differential to play to Optic reaching that. And you can see Optic Gaming taking the second game in their, winner, their winner's quarter final recharge. King of the Hill to come up next. And... I don't think it was a 50 0. No, it wasn't. You ever, but you ever it looked like 50 0. It, it, it might as well have been a 50 0. If you get staked, you should get put down to zero. Oh, okay. I like, <laughs> that's, I like that's that rule. I, li I like the rule. I like the rule. So, yeah, Proton, they, they did get some kills. We'll get that uh, eventually fixed over there. But honestly, what's the uh, what's the biggest deficit you've ever seen in a Slayer? Like on, on Well, we, got, we had a comeback against us, um, Ambush. I think it was like 49 to like 42. And it was crazy. Uh, to lose that game, but th there's been some wild comebacks. I mean, in, in tournament play, it's hard to say, man. I'm losing. I'm getting old. You know, yeah. I, it's hard. To, it's hard to recollect on that. But one of the greatest comebacks of all time actually happened to us at a 49 kill area. I remember there was um, there was like a 49 to 38 comeback or something on a lockout mm -hmm. back in the day. I forgot who. But there's been some there's some had some epic comebacks before. The issue right now is again, you could see that stat line. 
from formal was ridiculous, but also Optic is playing at a really high level yeah. right now. Something happened to Proton, whether that's just like energetically. Uh, I'm curious to see kind of what their comms would be like, you know, throughout all of that. Well, sometimes it's like Optic maybe just like that level higher, like that level better. It always feels like in, in the pro scene, at least since my experience when I joined in Halo 5, it's always been two tiers of it, right? You have the pro players and you have like the champions. And so for the beginning of my Halo career, it was always, you know, the guys uh, that were formerly on Optic, now on phase that that uh that core was doing it now it feels like we have the optic the ssg the phase like it's, it's like those three teams can win a championship and everyone else seems to be on the outside yeah and again it really look if you look at it it's also about like the support system that these players have they're making more money which is allowing them to be less stressed out when they're competing throughout all of this proton's scraping just to find an organization mm. to make it into the event and i think that's one of the things that i look forward to when Straight Ripping would potentially make a comeback is being able to provide a support system, support these players so they can continue to follow their dreams and help them um, stick together. I think that when you're looking for orgs or when you're looking, um, you know, on the outside looking in, these guys have what it takes. It's just about having that, you know, teamwork and that support system behind them. Yeah, honestly, it's uh, it's always fantastic to um, to see organizations pick up teams just because you know it. Like it's such a relief players to be able to play and not have to worry about where the next paycheck is going to come from that they can just continually focus on halo what's what's pointing out to you right here space station and quadrant that game number one the comeback that space station had it could easily be two to one quadrant yeah, but just... this is this is when the tournament really starts right and you could see the big names the big organization organizations they're not playing around and they know exactly what they need to do to get the job done i'm looking forward to this complexity shopify rebellion series i think the bottom half of the bracket in terms of the first round looks more competitive and then in the semifinals, i'm really looking forward to what looks like it's going to be off to gaming versus phase uh the one player that uh that i'm kind of curious about your thoughts on everyone's been talking about him today uh over from europe on foe wutum a, a mouse and keyboard, mouse and keyboard. Player, 17 years old from finland kind of like paving a new path yeah what, what do you uh what are your initial thoughts on the young kid first initial thoughts were great hair second thoughts were holy shit he's playing on mouse and keyboard <laughs> and then immediately was this guy's nasty af so uh I, i'm impressed honestly i'm impressed to see a mouse and keyboard player it gives a lot of other mouse and keyboard players hope going forward it's not easy um when you know a lot of games are being dominated by controller you know going in seeing the apex scene a lot of players right. switching on over to controller has been kind of crazy but i'm impressed i'm thoroughly impressed it's also great to see European Halo doing as well as it is, right? Quadrant yeah. taking games off SSG. Foe's been looking really good. Uh, what do you think has been the difference between, you know, back in those Halo 3, Halo 2 days where the Europeans weren't quite able to, to keep up with you guys in these major tournaments to, to now? I think that it's just amount of time, you know? When you look at it, it's almost like that was maybe their college competing years, mm -hmm. and now they've, like, are playing in the pros after like maybe a couple of years inside of the college league because the pace is different and you have to get used to that type of pace. So when you go and you start to see exactly what these players' strategies are, you get used to their play styles. Um, I, I would just say whatever it is, they've had to work their asses off to get to where they're at. So uh, no matter what it was, it's probably just the amount of work that they did. Well, here we go, King of the Hill on recharge back on board with Sab, able to get that early camouflage and this is a do or die for proton right here their series on the line and Sab is going to get some great rewards right That's here proton start. they all go down oh no this is formal that we're seeing on screen they have the thing so uh, okay formal doing formal things yeah formal doing formal things but look at the you know stat line across the board they already get control it's like they know exactly what proton's going to do but this game has this series hasn't been close, and I'm not expecting this game to get any closer. Again, this goes back to the energy and the mental work that you need to do. It's very easy to get in your head and just be a little bit frustrated, even if it's just a sliver. Um, and then again, every time that you kind of lose a little bit of energy, the other team ends up gaming a little energy. You can see a little bit overextended right here. Definitely would love to see him back off. Ends up losing two teammates, at least doing a little bit of work to get some kills, but obviously feeling extremely confident to be able to poke out. This is one of the most important areas to go and lock down, and you love to see Formal actually lock this down himself because he's been you know deadly over here, and we also saw Dead Zone being deadly over towards Top Tower in the live fire game. So they're just controlling the weapons and controlling 
exactly what they want to. Proton really can't do anything right now. Uh, I, I'll point out, Formal has not died yet. Uh, four that kills, means he's four die. assists. Nah, nah, trust. I'm too good. You see, look, look. Got lucid and dead zone where we're on the case they're making sure that he does not die and well, he's gonna give himself the smoke and now he can grapple that camo through the smoke as well but no lucid's gonna steal before you're gonna go that's kind of ridiculous cool. i mean your boy's four and oh and you're just not gonna give him the camo and there it is because he doesn't have the cam maybe lucid knew he was gonna die so he grabbed no the you know loose is preventing him from getting the killing frenzy from looking too good and and, and taking all that's the true. starlight away because formal gets that camo he's not going down like he's got another five kills in him yeah he probably wouldn't have died until the next series maybe even lived throughout the entire tournament so yeah, we, honestly, we don't really know like shame on lucid <laughs> go 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 it really go, be your own people him. sometimes honestly it's unlucky but you can see for uh, optic in fact have just such a long trek to make to get towards this hill proton finally going to be able to get some time and well okay well dead zone drops right down double kill for him and it's going to be up to suspector to stay alive at the back of this hill everyone's playing so well right now and if if lucid is playing the worst on your team you know you're in a good spot and that again not saying that proton you know is weak individually by any way shape or form it's just that optic has really stepped it up a notch and you feel like with some of these teams, they're just waiting for this moment for the championship bracket to start. They can't wait for pool play to get over. They know that they're going to take first in the pool, and they just are looking forward to getting into the semifinals. Really, you know, your semifinal match and your finals match for these top teams are the most important. These other teams are just kind of in their way. A suspect are somehow stayed alive through that whole optic gaming push. Found formal. Looking the other way, almost the one, uh, hits the 180 no scope, but suspect are able to get that kill just in time and. Well, Proton Gaming continue to score, and now it's Gilkey who's taken over the power weapon for his team, and that smoke going to be a great, uh, does a great job of preventing them from shooting him out of the hill, but no hill time final right now. Proton playing slow and patient as they get ready to collapse in on these Optic Gaming members. First one down, so Spectre's been on a rampage. He only has four kills in the game, but he's been alive for so long, the double kill double comes through, kill. finally. Taken down, but Lucid joins the rest of Optic Gaming on the respawn screen. Camouflage is up, and Proton getting a second win. Gilkey trying to stay alive here while he's in the hill, also controlling the weapons is big. Trippy's going to be able to find the camouflage, so that should be able to reset the map in the favor of Optic Gaming is they're going to have to move all the way across the map to get control. And you can see they've already set up on the opposite side of the map here for Optic, so... It's going to be important to have a breakthrough for Proton Gaming. How fast can they end up breaking this setup? And Trippy misses the melee. That could end up possibly biting them. And Proton getting a little bit of momentum. Formal is able there to clean up the kill, though. So more hill time going to be going on over to Optic Gaming. It's difficult to get into this hill when they're already set up, obviously. So you're going to have to be able to get some picks here. Hey, spawn reigns supreme. You got to break it to get yourself in. Proton trying to come in from multiple... Passageways, it's going to be trade for trade, but Trippy's going to cause mayhem. Get behind everyone, kill on the first, assist on the second, and Proton will have to go back to the draw. No, actually, they did break into that A spawn, so although Optic get a huge double kill, they're not going to be able to prevent Proton from getting those A spawns and having such quick access to this hill. Yeah, it looks like no one anchored on the team, which, which is a little bit of a mistake there coming in from Optic Gaming, but... They're out slaying so hard right now, it's not going to really matter. Nice job there from Trippy to be able to live. He's going to get right back into the hill. Now you're going to want someone to anchor. You're going to want someone to make your flank on over towards the right and try to get into the pipes. And it looks like they do get a pick on the Proton side, but a little bit of overextension. Trippy going to pick up one dead zone, going to pick up another, and it looks like more hill time going on over to Optic Gaming. I think we're seeing the big difference between the, the bandit rifle and the battle rifle right there. There's just some of those long range shots. When they hit, they hit fast and players will melt in your sight. Trippy not missing himself a shot here. Has had a fantastic start to this game as well. 12 kills and 10 assists working towards that. I guess what what is the, the triple double of Halo? Well, it used to be called like so there was like all whites because it would flash white, right? So uh, we call it front page news. Mm. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I was going to say back in the, like, I think Halo 5, they had the triple double, which was like headshots, kills, and assists. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think headshots is, is a little iffy to be on that number. Maybe like 10 power weapon kills. It should always be like most kills, most assists, least deaths. Yeah, okay. I think, yeah. I think that's a solid one. That's fair, right? And then if you get like most hill time too or most objective, then you're just an absolute beast. I'll say Trippy's working towards that. He only has eight deaths this game. Lucid with this camouflage picking this hill. And you can see the Optic just able to push out through that long haul. 
preventing them from getting towards glass. The ace spawn is going to be coming in for Proton, but Lucid well aware and set up. No one pushes the doorway right away, so those pre-fire nades won't do much. And I think he just got a blank melee on land. I think that he meleeed the ground below him, actually. That you melee think, looked like so? he missed. Yeah, I think that it was the sound like of the box. It sounded like flesh to me, it's not, It sounded like the box, mm. so I, I don't think that that was a blank melee. One of the things to point out, though, here is that typically it takes about you know 10 15 minutes to warm up especially with your brain so it's not surprising that this is the most competitive game out of the three but you're still seeing optic gaming playing at a higher level they're going to end up going three one inside of this hill once they are able to secure this one it looks like with control of the power-ups and also a little bit of hill time just milking as much as possible they're very close to being able to secure this one and go up three one Two players from Proton are going to be able to control that C plot. You can see the other two open up in the batteries. Optic prioritizing the players from behind as Proton's going to be able to get some time. But Optic putting the numbers down. And the players over at that backseat, they're not quite able to get into that hill time. And suddenly the neutral clock is going to be playing a factor at some point in this game. With only 54 seconds of time where you cannot be in that hill, Proton needs to start to make a move fast. Yeah, they also can't really desperate this one, too. I feel like this is their moment. If they end up going down 3-1, they have to play perfect. At this point, they still do, kind of. But... It's, it's a thin line between Optic. Maybe they desperate and try to get these last seconds. It looks like the call was made. Let's slay. Let's not make any major mistakes. Let's also, like you were talking about, milk some of the time off of the clock. There's no reason to just continue to go one after another and die here. Let's focus on getting kills, get map control. We'll eventually get the hill time with that. And now you end up running in to a really sticky situation with only 25 seconds left. And the 3-1 low neutral time game state is so hard to come back from on reach it's just because of the position of these next two hills right this yep. one obviously bottom mid the next one goes into battery so two of the most exposed hills back to back proton you have to play more than perfect to win this game perfect. yeah no one's gonna go in the hill here for optic gaming they understand what the deal is let's just slay nice shot there from formal again adding more kills to the stat line everyone's gonna have to desperate towards bottom center now nice kill for suspector but it's not really gonna mean much tick 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 it's about time here for optic gaming well, it's not over quite yet, but with two seconds left, it's just a matter I, I, I of time. I will do something that we cannot do on stream. This somehow <laughs> happens. Jeez. Two seconds Naked left. Lab. Well, well, you know, some, some sort of mushroom situation going to happen. <laughs> but, uh, not two, again. Two seconds, and there we go. They get them out of the hill. Optic Gaming clean up Proton 3-0 to zero as they send them four down. And uh, honestly, uh, Optic just look great. Like, Proton's not, like, I think Pro Proton's people are going to... Proton came out flat. Protons need to bounce around. It's yeah, energy, you, gotta, you know? Like, they energy. were too stagnant for a while, and then they just kind of dissipated. Um, you could see, you know, just just a little flat, like, kind of like an open soda. I feel like the casual time. fan will come in and be like, well, Optic was supposed to 3-0, but, like, this Proton gaming no. squad is very good. Like, Not at all. Yeah, it, it's they, this is a very good team. I think this is a great indication of how good Optic is because I, I don't want people to, to sleep on Proton and just think this Proton was supposed to be easy. Proton wiped Cloud9. Yeah. I, I watched that series over at the Featured Station, and it was, you know, someone had two kills in the pit flag because of how fast that was, and they were just absolutely going nutty overall. So, really nice job from Octa Gaming. Yes, obviously, this is the Optic Major. They're kind of favored at home court, and they have been known to be a pretty nasty team overall. But uh, a very well-played game from every single person. They put on a lot of different performances in terms of individual and teamwork. And you just got to be impressed, you know, overall from the way that they were able to perform. Well, we started with Shopify Rebellion and their pool play. It looks like they finally got themselves ready on that C station. They're going to be going up against Complexity. This is the series to watch. By the way, what do you think about this complexity roster? I think the complexity roster is good. Ryan Hoop is probably one of the best teammates that I've ever had. Um, I think that even though me and him kind of dis you know disagreed in certain things, uh, mainly about the practice schedule. Um, there was a time where I was had a little bit too much sponsor obligations or whatever that may be after we got second, and we we disagreed a little heavily. But I think that Ryan Hoop is probably in the game and out of the game, you know, just like a, a perfect teammate that you could have. It really opens up the map for you. All right, T-Squared, we're going to say goodbye to you. You've been here for a while. I think we've gotten the, the whole Tom Taylor show, right? But any last words you want to say to chat? you got all these people watching. Anything you want to just get off your chest before you leave? Yeah. Um, 
first of all, I'm sweating a lot, but I just want to give a shout out to LVT. Thanks for having me and thanks for everything that you do to the community. Shout out to everyone in the chat for staying active in the uh, Halo community. What's up, vicinity? How you doing? Um, but yes, thank you everybody so much for your support and you know, we'll, uh, we'll be back. We'll be back very soon and I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys some more. All right, guys, go check out Straight Ripping on the socials. Get yourself followed. Stay along with everything they are going to have to come in the if future. If pre-orders are available, straightripping.com. Check yeah. it out. Go check it out, guys. We'll be right back with more Halo action. Team score. Double kill. All right, hard to follow up on the mic. The same headset T squared just had on. That was incredible. Great job to Tools and Tom as they take us through the opening start of Champ Racket. Here, Eli, we have an opening winner's round one matchup that we deem to be the most competitive of the winner round one matchups, but so far it's Rebellion getting out to a 100 point lead. Yeah, the thing about this game type though is we know how much that snowball can roll down the hill for any team really Double to get into control and force those spawns. It can be very difficult for the other team to do anything about it. But make no mistake, if Complexity can't find their way out of this situation, they should be able to flip and do the same thing right back to Rebellion. Rebellion doubled up for now on Complexity. And if they can secure the trip cap here, they could sprint into the 200s for now. C flipping into Complexity's favor, so they're not going to get the trip cap or Rebellion, but they Ooh. are going to continue scoring, are going to continue on with the high ground control as well. As you can see, the remaining two players alive for Complexity at the back of C, and the push is on. Rebellion snuff it out, push straight through, take down the members at C, and this map is going to flip on its head. Rebellion should likely take C, but oh, Complexity off the A spawns are getting control of B, but not for long as Husk goes down to 1 HP and eventually back to the respawn screen. It's one of those game modes that it almost feels like you're doing a relay race when you're in control because you're just sprinting from one side of the map to the other. You spawn kill on this side. All right, turn around. Let's spawn kill back on the other side. And you see Suppress doing that as long as he can. Finally gets shut down. Probably going to come off spawn and get right back to it, though. Complexity still trying to find their way into scoring position. Capping B and C at the same time. Feels like it'd be hard to do both, but they do. A gonna flip to Rebellion, and suddenly this is the best Complexity's chances have looked to score a lot of points. Complexity with control, and Eli, these two teams earmarked by the community as top six finishers at HCS. So everybody seemingly not only earmarking them for top six, but saying that if one or the other aren't to get it, it's probably because they're gonna take on each other. Granted, this is in the winner's side of things, so they have an opportunity to continue on with that token in their back pocket, but you wanna carry it on into the winner's round, especially with how well the big three are doing right now in winner's round one. They are up all, it looks like, uh, on the upper side of the bracket, especially so, almost sweeping through their uh, through their series as Rebellion, though, up double on Complexity, holding on to it, but they go four down and Precision 
descended. The last two members alive for complexity, and they're both going to look to get some hill time. Suppressed, though. Mini getting some damage here with control of B, and Ooh. he's going to get it. Yeah, complexity holding on to B there is so massive right now. He's going to easily just flip control right back into Rebellion's favor, but that last second reset going to keep complexity scoring for now. Cycle getting a kill, though, trying to break out of this side. So interesting how many fights happen over here on the A side, considering this is typically considered the weakest stronghold. You know, you really like that BC setup, but the thing is, if you're playing the spawn trap properly, the other team has to play for A first. If you can go in and disrupt that, that means they won't even have a chance to turn and get B or C either. Final 30 seconds, half a minute needed for Rebellion to secure game one, but Complexity have second thoughts in control of B halfway. Now 60% cycle, looking to break it up, but no, he goes down 2v2 for now. Oh, but Soul Snipe has the camo. This could disrupt any plans Complexity have for a comeback. Look at the way he sat on one side of the pillar to isolate a single target. Looked like his process was to kill one and then the other, but a third member shows up. So his plan is foiled. Complexity do a great job to keep one another alive in that moment. They're going to secure B, maintain scoring position for now, but Mental getting a double kill, putting Rebellion in great position to flip it right back. Now you're exactly right previously, Eli. Until you have 250 in a stronghold, you can't feel comfortable about it. We just saw Optic on the A stream down 108 to two, I think, and then they won 249 to 108. So right. things can go any direction. This is a game of runs in strongholds. And just as complexity to make a run back at it, Rebellion secure A, B, and C, needing just two seconds off the double count for each second. And that's going to be enough. Rebellion secure the game one victory over complexity. Such a back and forth game, but it's always, it feels like, well, I shouldn't say always because you just told me the opposite, but it seems like the team that gets that early lead, typically that's what it comes down to. You know, at the end of the day, yes, complexity had moments where they had full control, but all it takes sometimes is one time for it to flip back because that lead was already established. They're able to close the game out quite handily. Rebellion looking very strong early on in this tournament. There's always the element of making the other team chase when you take the early lead. And while we don't weight that as heavily in strongholds because of the way the game of runs works in it, you still have that edge. You still have that benefit of Oh, okay. I'll play this patient. I'll let you get in the hill, but I'm going to take you down and take the, hill right, take the hill right back. Saw a lot of that there from Shopify, forcing complexity in some sequences to overextend as they're able to bring it back. Make Shopify maybe sweat a little bit, but that trip cap at the end secured the win emphatically as Shopify look really good. And this is a team that, through pool play, looked pretty good. We saw their last match against Cloud9, and they're carrying it through into the champ bracket. Complexity, though, have an opportunity here on Live Fire. They got some snipers on their team and could absolutely take this series right back. Man, this series layout is so interesting to me because I feel like Recharge, King of the Hill, and Forbidden CTF, some of Complexity's best. I think Complexity has some unique strategies on Forbidden. They seem a little bit ahead of the curve. They've been able to take down the likes of FaZe, Optic, in these online tournaments on Forbidden. So if I'm Shopify, if I know that, I'm saying we better also win <laughs> this Slayer because if we lose this Slayer, Complexity could reverse 3-1 us in this spot, but we can at least force a game five if Complexity are to take these next two. Don't get me wrong, Chump, if I have a chance to win, Recharge and Forbidden for sure, but I just got to give the edge to Complexity in those ones. You know what? I, I think this might be faded recollection, may or may not, but I'm pretty sure when... Complexity went down 0-2 to FaZe Clan in one of those recent open series games. Three and four were Recharge King of the Hill and Forbidden CTF before Complexity ultimately reverse swept FaZe Clan. So even if they're to go down 0-2 in the series, they got life. They have the previous experience to do it. So I, I think you're right for Shopify. They're up 1-0 in the series, but you can't take things lightly. You really want to push and press for the 2-0 if you're a SR fan. It's feeling like a game five in the making, right. in my opinion. <clears throat> I think that either team really could win this live fire. It's going to come down to that snipe and tower control that we've seen be so powerful throughout this tournament already. Just gives you better chance to get that camo, makes the spawns. You, you have high ground positioning compared to most of the other spawns on the map. So we're going to see that kind of style being played here from both teams, I would expect. But I also expect maybe a more intricate, strategic, like chess-like gameplay when it comes to these two teams facing off against each other. They're so similar. I think Shopify maybe 
the, the kind of team that relies on speed, I mm -hmm. think, and just overpowering people with their sheer force of will and firepower. Complexity, more methodical style, but I could absolutely see both teams kind of slowing it down in a Slayer. Oh, here we go. El Clasico, and it's no longer online El Clasico. It's on land phase. Optic Gaming in the winner semifinals with a chance to take that token to the winner final. Still having to figure some things out, though, on the uh, lower side. Quadrant, like uh, Tom had mentioned, could have been up 2-1 in that series. Yeah. Instead, going down 3-1. And here on our matchup that we're featuring on LVT Halo, Shopify have a 1-0 lead over Complexity. Eli, anything stick out to you as we take a look at the bracket so far? I mean, the, the top three are still the top three. They are by far and away looking the most strong on this tournament. Like, you know, there's some arguments to be made. Now we have a top, like a big six almost, when you talk about Sentinels, Rebellion, and Complexity kind of rounding out those other spots. But Sentinels already out of the tournament, and yeah. these two are now fighting to see who has the honor of, of even challenging one of the top three. Because right now the top three just seem untouchable to the rest of the tournament. But I think of the people left in the tournament, these two are certainly the ones that could contest them. You're exactly right, Eli. When Sentinels went down, the two teams that had to get the most hype about it are Complexity and Rebellion. They stand to gain the most because of Sentinels' poor performance this weekend. They're gone already out of the tournament. And now it's really just Complexity and Rebellion in the way of each other as they fight for map control here on Live Fire. A TS starts off with a one kill lead for Complexity. Early snipe control in the hands of Complexity. Descendant has been ascending with the sniper rifle, in my opinion. This guy's been absolutely a monster, as has been Precision. I feel like Precision's been putting up the type of numbers that these top three have to be turning their heads a bit. Like, who is this guy? What is he doing? That's the rookie of the year, man. You Could gotta, you, you know more than anybody oh, probably yeah. how cracked Precision is. We got a lot of chance over the last 365 days to watch his POV from behind his shoulder. It's always, that's why another reason Tom was talking about coming out to an event, come out to an event just so you can stand over the shoulder of these top players and watch their gameplay live. It's cool to watch from home. It's a, right, great to watch from the LVT Halo stream, but if there's any best seat in the house, it's here at HCS Arlington as Complexity maintain that lead, not only by one now, but now up by a potential multi-possession, looking to extend it to five kills, but no, Rebellion. We're getting back down to three. Complexity, a little bit of back and forth. 13 to eight. Any team that features Ryan, who going to be good at Slayers. Going to see a bit more unorthodox plays. Maybe a four-man stack to one side of the map <laughs> here and there. It's, I swear, it's always Ryan who's team to do these crazy plays sometimes. Just complete dismissal. They just say, hey, this doesn't look like a good situation. Let's just all completely disengage and re-engage on another part of the map. Those kind of plays can be highly effective and hard to predict. I wouldn't be surprised if Rhino has this idea to take advantage of the physics in Halo Infinite and all sit in the corner all together like one right. super Spartan and then <laughs> shots ring out and then four players appear out of nowhere. It just seems like something complexity might do is they go three down though and that's going to give a free camo grab to suppress with it. What can he do? Looks like he's spotted pretty quickly, wisely retreating, recognizing he doesn't really have any teammates to to play as bait. Descendant kind of overextending in that moment. Not sure what he was going for in that moment. It's kind of the feast or famine aspect of Descendant though, right? Like when he's on fire, absolutely unreal. Definitely overextending a lot less than he used to, but still some of those bad habits come through. Suppressed with the snipe and he's deadly with it. A couple of grenades might be deadly enough. Geometrical around the corner. Bouncing around like a basketball bounce pass. Take down us to one HP. Descendant goes down to one HP. Gets cleaned up by the body shot. Us still there, but oh, Suppress has forgotten about him. That's going to allow Huss to get some shots in the back. He takes advantage of the positioning and takes Suppress down to one HP. Suppress with the use of the Repulsor. Gets up top to top snipe and still has plenty to work with. Great job to stay alive there. Look almost like Huss was going to get the flank secured, but instead he goes down and Suppress goes up. Rebellion go up in this match now by one. Yeah, honestly, just perfectly played teamwork from Rebellion there, just having each other's backs. No one really over -chowling. They got to one shot, they just backed up. Another teammate swooped in, and that's what brought them back into this. Previously down by four or five kills, now in the lead. And this is that positioning that we talked about as the game was loading up. If you got snipe control top tower and the movement of suppressed, you can apply a lot of pressure. This is going to now be in Cycle's hands, so still in the hands of Rebellion. 
They do a good job, even when their Cypher player dies, to make sure that stays in their hands. Yeah, massive. To make sure that even if you go down with a power weapon, you retain possession of it on the squad is Suppress drops it, but Cycle picks it up, looking to pick up or Suppress left off three players for Rebellion at the Sniper Tower. It's going to make it even more difficult for Complexity to break down that power control as they spawn on the camel side of the map with, with it up in 30. It seems to be just the going strat on this mode. Just get the Sniper Top Tower. It's Keep it simple, stupid, right? Like, it's not that complicated. You get the good gun, get on top of the map, and just chill out. <laughs> it looks like they're doing a good job across the board from the matches we've seen. Live Fire Slayer, this is just how teams are winning this map. No Rebellion's going to play it by the book here. Us, though, trying to rip a page out of the book. Maybe set fire to it, but it's not going to work. Mental's going to grab the camo, and they're going to go right back to that tower. Now Rebellion set the stage and then burn it down. Up seven now as Mental pushes through with a 10-5-5 five, five stat line, doing a great job, 2.0 KD, and even more with the efficiency on the assist. But my god, I take a look at the assist column, Soul Snipe with 12 of them, and that's impressive. And you know what? That's wow. fitting for Soul Snipe on a map like Live Fire. Soul Snipe has such good positioning. He's going to be putting damage into the back and sides of opponents. That's one of the ways he's earned his 13 assists now. And you look at the assist for complexity, that's nearly four times the amount that they have. Unbelievable teamwork from Rebellion as they ride that to it. Now, a big lead. It was a five-kill lead for complexity not too long ago, and Rebellion feel like they're about to run away with it. While you're ogling at their assist, they just completely changed up the game plan. I think it threw complexity off. They all left the tower and just collapsed into garage, knowing that complexity were likely trying to set up a play there, catch them off guard, go... Get them four dead, run across the map, kill some early spawners, and I don't think Complexity has a means to get back into this. If there's any team that can make a comeback like this, I would say Complexity's high on that list, but 11 kill deficit into the 40 seems very difficult, as well as Rebellion is playing. Uh, the path is there, but it's treacherous. It's not quite clear. It's not paved. Complexity are going to have to build it themselves. And it starts with Ryanu burning some shots into the back of Soul Snipe. Talked about how good he is at finding the position. But now Ryanu finds the slay back of the head onto Soul Snipe. But Complexity are not back in this match. Rebellion build on their lead up 14 with just five kills oh. left. Nice no scope there. But you'll wonder what else can Complexity do? It looks all but over for them. Four kills needed for Rebellion. Look at this whole snipe stat line, man. 10 kills, 16 assists, oh, 12 deaths. He is in the mix. He is just flying in, dealing maximum damage. Suppress, 17. Suppress just flying in, getting free kills left and right, and it's a triple to seal the deal, and that lead just continued to bloom as the game went on. 17 assists is a crazy number for a Slayer. 17 kills for Suppressed, 17 assists for Soul Snipe, and that's got to be one of the highest assist counts we've seen in a Slayer this weekend is, my goodness, Rebellion in what feels like the most consequential winner's round one matchup in the sense that these are the two closest team in power rankings in seeding going into this event. But Rebellion, they look like one of the big three. Right. I mean, I've... I'm gonna get called faded again, but <laughs> Eli with this crazy take. I've been saying, if there's anyone that could just randomly win an event that's outside the top three at Shopify Rebellion. Yeah. Straight up, like, if they're playing their best, they can potentially take down some giants along. Of course, they'd have to play perfect against all of them, which is an insane task. I'd say a pretty low probability, but I can kind of see it happening. It's possible. In the many parallel universes in which we exist, they're winning a tournament somewhere in there. <laughs> These two teams, in addition to Sentinels, put in the most work in the offseason. And I, I think individually, uh, on the side of uh, Shopify, Soul Snipe not only winning 4v4s, he also won that first free for all, that 5K hosted by the US Marine Corps. And success all around in the offseason for Shopify, and it continues on complexity. We got a chance to interview Ashes yesterday, and it was really interesting what he said. He thinks that they can come out and win this event, but they built this roster and team meticulously to be in final form at the midway point of the season. Eli, what, what do you take from that answer that Ashes gave us in the Halo community? I mean, that just means that he has like a, a bigger perspective of what this team could be. And they're still in the early stages of what they're trying to develop, but they're still showing massive signs of greatness through and through. It's just a matter of like ironing out all those moments that end up mattering in the grand scheme of things. And right now, I mean, if this isn't their final form, I'm scared of what they're going to look like midway through the season. 
At the same time, though, on the other side, you got Shopify, who they've been a squad for longer, I think. They were one of the first squads to form in the offseason, led by Best Man, their coach, good friend of mine. We used to team back in the day, Halo, two days. And Best Man's a great mind to have behind these guys. I mean, just a calm presence to, you know, keep them in shape, make sure they're held accountable, showing up for scrims and... I mean, I don't know. There's something special about both of these rosters, honestly, but they're special in different ways, in my opinion. Well, Complexity are down 0-2 in this series, but the next two games set up preferably for Complexity. This is the route they took. We talked about the path. This is the path they took to reverse sweeping phase in one of Complexity's best performances in the offseason, but that was online, but it was against phase. So I, I don't know. I think you can take from that. And I, I think Complexity are probably relying on some of that previous experience. They're probably saying, guys, we're down 0-2 in this matchup, but look at the way the series layout plays out. It favors us getting back to game five. And I'll say another thing, another comment about complexity. They're so calm, cool, and collected. I saw them before they took on Optic yesterday, which was their premier match in the in pool play. And I, I thought the way their conversation was, the tone of their conversation, it, it felt like they had already played Optic and they won and like they just sounded so calm and they weren't really pressed or stressed. They seem like they have the confidence to take down anybody this weekend. We've seen that, but will we see it here against Shopify? Will we see complexity continue on in the winner bracket? Space Station, uh, wait, lying in wait after, after this, so you don't get much of a reward for winning this series in the sense that you got a really difficult matchup up next, but... It's there in front of Complexity. The series layout, most importantly, Recharge, King of the Hill, and Forbidden CTF, two of their better game modes, the two ex exact game modes that they used to reverse sweep just a couple weeks ago. So it's it's possible. It could happen. It definitely looks like that. I will say that something that T-Squared said when he was on cast did resonate with me about just energy levels, right? Like, yeah, all these teams have a range of performance, right? They got their A game, their B game, their C game. Feels like Shopify is definitely on their A game so far this weekend. They've been damn near unstoppable in most in every series so far. Complexity, it kind of feels like we're getting their B game because when they're on their A game, they're going to make, make it competitive with Optic. It didn't really look that competitive against Optic yesterday, if I'm being completely honest. But Agreed. I don't think that they're really hitting that that highest note that we know they're capable of just yet. Complexity haven't hit their stride just yet, but... Fortunately for them, it's a best of five, and they still have life here on Recharge. What are going to be some of the keys, especially as it relates to the new changes coming into Season 3? Is there anything that, in particular, that, let's say you are Coach Ashes, Ashes what would you tell the boys right here going into uh, game, three, game 3 Recharge, King of the Hill? I would say these guys are going to try to play fast and disrupt our process, but be ready for it. Set traps, because... Complexity, the type of squad that play for that anchor position for every hill. But I think Shopify know that mm. and they're going to try to play into that as an advantage for them to buy just launching two bodies at the anchor point as fast as possible, killing Ryan Oob because he's hiding behind a box somewhere, you know, waiting for a squad to come up. Don't don't give him the opportunity to make those sneaky plays and just overwhelm them with sheer force. But Complexity could potentially bait that if they're thinking ahead of that counter strategy and, and start setting traps where Shopify are flying into their own death. You bring up a great point. Uh, that's a, something we've seen frequently throughout the weekend and online in King of the Hill for Complexity. They get to the 99.9% .9 and they step out of the hill, which in theory is the right play to make. But when the other team expects it, it could become the wrong play. Eli, talk me through what it means to make the right play, but when it's an expected play, it could be wrong. I always remember playing against Walshy back in 05, 06, and be like, Mikowski, you're one of the hardest people to play against. You know why? Because you're a stupid noob, and <laughs> you do stuff that I'm not expecting. Yeah. <laughs> so could, could we see a little bit of that here in this series? It, it seems possible. Now, the thing about these two teams is like they, they know each other's playbooks so well that they've started to conjure counter strategies to the counter strategies that they expect the other team to employ. You know what I mean? Like there's, <laughs> we're at that level of Halo now where like if I'm coaching a Diamond student, I, I'm telling him how to play the game and I'm giving him as much information as I can give him, but it's just a different game being played at this level, right? Like these guys know those fundamentals for the game type, but they also know that because their opponent is going for that, there's a way that they can play ahead of that to make it 
more difficult for them to ever get that hold into the mode. And I don't know, th there's so many great minds on the stage that are about to be playing on this this game type and it, it's hard to predict really how it's going to go. I think that Ryan Oob's one of those guys that will think many steps ahead, like a, a chess grandmaster, if you will. But at the same time, he needs, they can't be on their B game no matter what to beat Shopify if they're on their A game. It's 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 one of those stages in Halo 2 where they're where like it, Shopify on their A game could probably beat Phase Optic or SSG if those teams are on their B game. I don't think they are this weekend yet, but it's like if you're on your B game, you might not be able to beat any of the top six. Feels like we've uh, reached the point in the tournament. Reminds me of an uh, exhibit, Pit My Ride, maybe Pit My Halo now. <laughs> you put strategy inside of your strategy so you guys could strategy more strategy. Exactly. It's just. <laughs> The throwback it's, to MTV since we had a T2. Right. A second ago. I'm, I'm pulling out all the 0506 references after watching <laughs> Tom. That was really cool to see, man, especially as someone that got a chance to play okay. with him a lot back in the day as we hop on board with more gameplay. Sab with the snipe in his hand, and boy, is he good with it. Opens up the no scope and the scoring for Proton. Oh, we just get to see that one. We just get to see Haynes' face Worth. get ripped off, and then uh, we're going to go it. right back to it. Here we go. It's early control. From Complexity, see, we know, I think Complexity's strat, because I've been watching their, their scrims, is they just don't even go for camo off the start of this. They, let's just get control of A in the hill, and who cares if they get camo, we'll, we'll, we'll find where he goes and kill him later. There, well, there you see that strategy deployed, conceding the camo to Soul Snipe. But now, because of the camo, he's able to grab Shock for free. And now at the back of the B pillars has an opportunity to not only secure some slays with that shock rifle, but he's he's getting some time as well. Love this play here from Soul Snipe, baiting people in with his positioning with the reticle centering. He's got some potential headshots, but I love how nobody pushes through into that reticle on the long haul side. Great recognition of the situation from complexity, but not enough. So Ryan with the last player alive, he goes down. All four go down, and in one fell swoop, Rebellion likely take hill one. Do you see what Rebellion is doing? They just forced all of Complexity to spawn long haul twice in a row and gave them no escape options. You saw the positioning. They had top gold, they had back silo, they had A, and they are just putting them in the absolute blender. This is perfect spawn manipulation. And this is the type of counter strategy that I talk about that I expected to be employed against Rhinoom's team. Rhinoom, they had a plan once they spawned long haul. You saw them separate and try to take space on either side, but Rebellion is like, yeah, they're just gonna send two long and two to white, but we're gonna be there waiting, and they just killed them. And now they're already halfway done on the second hill. Perfect spawn manipulation and a perfect individual start there from Mental, hitting eight and O oh before going down. Back to the respawn screen is suppressed, utilizes the shock rifle pad to combine for some damage. Rebellion get back in it, two go down on each side, three, make it three for complexity. As they're able to get back in the hill, but it feels it feels like a weak push in that sense. Rebellion, right back on their steeds, right back with the numbers advantage, but Huss trying to mitigate some damage, trying to earn some slays. Can he get through to C? He does for now, but no, Soul Snipe, not gonna allow him to even breathe, but three go down for Rebellion. Two go down for Complexity, make it three. It's Precision and Cycle, the only two left. Precision's got to make a play here. If he dies, I think this hill goes to Rebellion. He's facing heavy fire. He has survived long enough to give Complexity some time and space, but not sure if it's going to be enough. Huss going to try to get in on this side. Sees his teammate Ryanu, but they were predicted. Nades come in. He's already one shot, and he gets blown up by the remote detonation. It just feels like, yes, Complexity has a process, but Precision is currently 0-7, which I have never seen from him. He's been shut down every step of the way and every single play Rebellion has an answer for. Can't win it early, but you can't lose it early, and you have to wonder now for complexity. They got plenty of time left in regulation, four minutes, but they can't go down 3-0. Rebellion just looked too good, and if Rebellion go up 3-0 in this match, they likely win the series 3-0 as well, as they're looking really good here against complexity. A series, Eli, that we anticipated to be one of the first game fives that we've seen this weekend. Right. The competition's been so close, but I don't think we've seen a game five yet. We haven't. And looking at the series layout, we saw the potential for it, but honestly, it was just observing the energy and the pace that Rebellion is playing with. It made me kind of walk back on that and say that, you know, maybe Rebellion's just going to counter complexity in a hard way. So far, they've proven to do so. Well, that's what it looks like Rebellion are doing. It looks like they're out complexity, 
complexity. It's, that's it's a, really a new word. Yeah, again. That's, I think you're right, actually, right. because complexity do like to play this fast, aggressive style, but with, you know, doing it in an intelligent manner. But the problem is Rebellion also play that way, but it almost feels like they just have more firepower. Calculated chaos and complexity. Can't answer to it just yet. They do have the lead in this third hill, needing this one in particular to come back. Right, looking to get away, sneak away with the camo, but no. He goes down. It does not burn. I think I just heard it get grabbed. I believe Descendant has it. As he looks to push on through. No, he does not. I wonder who grabbed that camo, if anybody, for, uh, for complexity. Mental 14 and 3, 6 assists, absolute monster numbers early in this game. And you're right, man. If they get this third hill, this could be all but over for complexity. Only saving grace would be how much time is left on the clock. But yes, this is the third hill being planted. Suppress already rotates to the next. And this is exactly what I talked about. They're going to predict for complexity to try to make these rotations to the next hill, but he's exactly. one step ahead every this single is, time. This is exactly it. Wow. Rebellion are playing perfect Halo, and I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, Eli, talking about that game five, but taking on SSG in the next round, that feels like it could go to, it could go to a game five if both are even playing at their A game because Rebellion looks to have brought their A++ game here today and this weekend at HCS Arlington is... They are dominating a complexity roster that had a one seed in pools, the, the fourth seed to be exact. Rebellion are looking to switch that as suppressed at the back of the seat, looking to stay alive, defend his turf, and that's all Rebellion have to do at this point. But I think they're going to go for four. They are, in fact. They got a quarter or so already on the board. Three go down, though, for Rebellion. And if Complexity have any chance, they need to come back right here and secure this hill without letting any more time off the clock. Much easier said than done. This hill exposed to Whirlpool, Batledge, obviously backseat Silo, Long Haul, Sneaky. There's so many parts of this map that Rebellion can just kind of chill and wait for someone in complexity to start desperating for time. Can honestly just sit under Batledge, wait for the hill to light up, jump up and shoot the guy out. Doesn't mean to burn some time off the clock, but. That's not their style. They're going to play in your face. They're going to play aggressive. They're going to force you to make decisions. More and more difficult decisions. Soul Snipe predicts that he's likely to die soon. Just burns a single shot out of the rifle. Only two left. Shock rifle is going to go down, but it's got to be reloaded. And it's only got one shot even after. So it might be bait for whoever picks it up. Look at this. Mental does not care. Tries to get the remote detonation. Barely misses the shot on it. Dodges the grenade. Dodges two. I think these members of Complexity probably expect him to be weaker than he is, and that's why he's able to get a trade. But great dodges of those yeah. grenades to keep Mental in that one. Yeah, Mental, ha uh, <clears throat> excuse me, having himself a great game, 19, 8, and 7. The top performer in terms of slays and even almost assists, like least deaths in the lobby as well. There's that triple-double we were talking about. As Mental having an MVP performance, but Complexity with a foot in the hill could potentially score there first. and. Going down two with two to go. Don't look now, but Complexity are back in it. If you'll recall, we're talking about how good Rebellion's playing, but if you'll recall, Complexity against Optic in this very game type made that crazy rotation when it was tied 3-3 from A all the way through Gold Pipes, all the way to Long Haul, all the way to Blue Pipes to secure the victory in an emphatic fashion against Optic. So we know they've got the playbook, but that's what I'm saying is Rebellion watched that game. They saw what they did. They understand why they do what they do. And perhaps that's why they've been able to counter them as four go dead, four complexity. Hill player just sitting safely in a shroud in the hill. And yeah, Rebellion looked to just stamp the fourth hill on this one to end it right here, right now. Rebellion could play for time, but instead they're going to play for that fourth and final score. But Ryan Noob has the shock. And an opportunity at top goal to earn the high ground. And a couple more slays lining up his sights onto Mental, but he's doing too well to descope Ryan Oob. Great shots, long range with the bandit. Mental gets cleaned up, though, focusing tunnel vision, you could argue, on Ryan Oob. Precision takes advantage of that awareness and finds the slay. Can Complexity find another hill? They need to just simply get in it, because if not, Rebellion are going to steal it. They're at the 75% mark, needing just a few more seconds of time. It just feels like... The shock rifle shots falling flat for complexity right now. Whenever Rebellion has the shock, they're deleting players off the map. You gotta at least match the other team's pace and slays if you're gonna come back into this. 
Shroud getting placed out there. Descendant gets a kill. Okay. okay. Starting to look good. Mental kind of flying in to try to clean up some last second damage. Ryan Noob needs huge. to get this kill this, here. This is the game right here. He needs to stay alive as well. Oh, look at this. Does choose to be that anchor position. Wants to give time for his squad to show up. Looks like it was a good decision. Stops the rotate in from tower. Ryan Noob thinking a step ahead here. He stops that rotation. That's, oh. the, that's the veteran leadership for Ryan Noob. In a situation where you'd think he'd have to overextend, that you'd think he'd have to stress and press, but he actually steps out of the hill and might just have complexity stepping back into this game. 1v1 against the pressed! And Ryan Noob wins it! And potentially this next hill for complexity with one and a half, a one fifteen left on the clock could just make it a one-score game. But three go down. Rebellion looking to secure this match in this series. Wow, that looked like the conditions they needed. It was cut out for them, and Ryan was doing as much as he could, but it ends up not being enough. And we see Rebellion on the backs of Mental with, what was that, 29 and 10? This man is unlocked. By the way, I talked to Best Man first day I got here, and uh, he said that Mental was having controller issues. He, he, I guess he got used to that new scuff controller, but he used a software he can't use here. Had to get a gambit last minute. Wow. He's been adjusting to it, but... Uh, that, that's incredible to see him even be able to play half as well as he usually does, because that's a massive <laughs> yeah. change. Eli, you know this. Of course. Uh, people in chat know this. The controller, it's, it's not a controller. It's an extension of the human body. Yes. That's it, how you interact with your Spartan. you got to be so in tune with your controller that you can be your absolute best self. And I feel like, I guess Mental's just been putting in the hours to, to get used to it, and it's clearly been put on display. This series was was dominant, to be completely honest with you. I mean, yeah, Complexity looked good at times, but Shopify, clearly the better team, at least for this series. Mental is him, and Shopify are that dude as they take a 3-0 sweep over Complexity. Move on to take on SSG up next. We're going to take a quick break, reset, get some water, hydrate. We invite you guys to do the same stand up, stretch, you know. We're about halfway through this marathon race. We're still... Looking ahead to plenty of awesome Halos. We'll be back on the flip side with more of that. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back from HGS Arlington.
most, most, we call that an active player. Yeah, right now it's Jimbo and Mighty's in the KDE ratio that really need to figure it out so far here in round two. If they want Bo to erase the story that they start series off a little slow. Cloud9, however, everybody breaking the 20 kill mark. Everybody has some ball time. Enemy well spread ball. out, well played by the entire team as a cohesive unit, and that is the difference so far here for me in game one. Round two still, just 10 points separate the two. The ball being rotated out by Scoreball, but Rami shuts that rotation down himself. Yeah, and ball is exactly where Cloud9 would like it, in the garage, but looks like they opt to now take over towards tower. I really like this play. When you have an option to bring a ball towards a location where you could potentially play ball it, I love having that option in your back pocket. It looks like they're kind of sitting here in the center towards Plasma with the cuts and deciding where the pressure's coming in. Putting the ball inside Bo's court to charge and push where they want, but there it is. Very successful push from Bo. They get the kill and once again, get the ball immediately from Cloud9. Out of majority of cloud Nine setups, we're not seeing a play ball scenario. Very difficult to hold that unorthodox cut set up. Bo are able to break it. Now can Bo hold a setup is the big question. Continuously playing from behind is not a way to live your life here in this game. Yeah, one thing I also like about that, uh, the ball over towards Plasmas is I feel like you have to fake towards one way or the other. You can't just stay static in that spot. It's not a very strong position to hold. However, if you have your ball carrier, start to run over towards tower and then just double back towards scoreboard or the reverse of that. In some way, trying to fake out the spawning team so that they can overcommit towards one of the directions and then you get a more successful ball rotation. Cloud9 get the kills, they get the ball back in hand. Three go down for Bow and they're gonna try and rotate this out towards this camo. There's one player to deal with, he's dealt with very quickly. Three members of Cloud9 focus on Wutum there. Wutum shortly lived. This ball getting rotated to house could end this game. A similar setup again, Cloud9 just... Welcome back to the HCS Arlington coverage here at LBT Halo. I'm Tools. Joined with me is Frizzilla. And, well, we have a little special cast for you guys here today. Quadrant going up against Lore. French is be uh, the best team in Europe. Or second best team in Europe. Going up against the best team in Mexico. So we're going to do an English-Spanish cast here. I'll be uh, I'll be handling the English side. Frizzilla going to be handling the Spanish, ca uh, the Spanish cast. Así es, mi estimado Tools, vamos a comenzar teniendo a la escuadra mexicana en estos momentos teniendo un excelente approach, un poquito abajo en el marcador, 20 a 1, que es lo que está componiendo y atrasando un poquito las cosas para México, pero no, porque una buena kill, cuidado, lo van a estiquear, tres caídos para México y tanto así como para Quadrant, y esto puede complicarse un poco. Well, only one player live on either side. Gonna make this an easy grab for tapping, but the pressure was immediate. Trying to rotate this out towards his teammates, get a little bit of space, but Laura's gonna have to make a final stand right here. His quadrant is applying a pressure from all lanes, and what's happened, caught off in the rotation. Agarran a tapping y cuidado que esta puede ser también cuatro caídos para la escuadra mexicana. No va a ser posible poder continuar con la eh, captura de la bola loca en estos momentos. Y ahora el momentum cuadrant nuevamente lo mantiene. Zika. Get no place alone. You're see the rest of the quadrant really just set up and expect the push to come from where. The question is where does this push come from? With camouflage coming up in five seconds, quadrant I think would be perfectly content with leaving this ball for now and just setting themselves up for a successful camo grab. Excelente, las kills, el camuflaje activo ya está listo. Cuidado, tapping, recibe muchísimo daño. Ahora van a sorprender el repulsor. Me lo van a mandar volando, lo van a intentar estiquear. Logran sobrevivir a tiempo. Dos caídos para la escuadra mexicana. Y cuidado que Drift tiene el camuflaje en estos momentos. Ball in the hands of Snipe Drone. Camo did go into the hands of Drift, so he'll have access to Brazil, but spotted right away as that nade made him expose himself for just a little bit too long. And now Drift will go down and the rest of Lore will join him. Quadrant not really feeling a lot of pressure. Lore hasn't been able to to really cause them to, to get to have any sort of discomfort in their in their holds. 
Cuidado. Glory tiene ese francotirador que puede ser mortal. Lo tiene nuevecito de paquete. Se acerca a la zona de top mid. Puede ver y está viendo el enfrentamiento. Tiene la mira a su propio compañero. No jala el gatillo porque pues es su compa. Dos caídos para la escuadra mexicana. Uno para cuatro. ¿eh? Y en estos momentos se está dando una pelea de granadas. La ventaja sigue siendo clara. Qué bonito tiro, Glory. Puedes darme otro. No se pudo. Te lo ganaron. Pero aún así, la escuadra europea. Francés hasta cierto punto nos está regalando unos maravillosos snipes. Glory continues to dominate for his team. 13 kills in this game. Double positive as he gets number 14. Noob combo out. Lord just have been ineffective against this quadrant roster. En estos momentos, esta primera ronda le pertenece a la escuadra francesa, Quadrant, anteponiéndose 1 a 0 en, este, eh, pri en esta primera ronda de bola loca en contra de Lord Gaming. Lord Gaming cayendo en estos momentos, pero todavía con la posibilidad de levantarse. Franco tirador ahora en manos de Glory, que puede hacer cochinadas como lo acabamos de ver. No quite able to wrap himself back in time. Lord, gonna be able to find Glory and that sniper down over this tower, but SLG just able to cause mayhem, getting the double kill when it mattered the most. Fake backs those players off a tower. Now Lord feeling pressure immediately off spawn. Sika smart to push up past those screens, trying to push those players back as camouflage was coming up. Uy, cuidado con el repulsor Noble, va a caer Drift también, Acid ya, tres caídos para la escuadra mexicana, Tapping logra hacer una kill, pero las cosas se ponen cada vez más complicadas. Primeros puntos de esta segunda ronda, importantísimos, y si quiere Cuadran seguir a la delantera, tiene que evitar que la escuadra de Lord Gaming siga adelante con esta presión que les está ejerciendo y no dejan poder agarrar la pelota en paz. Low for now, here comes the push. War will send three players at once. Snipe Drone was able to have his pickings on those three, was able to find the first, but Noble will be able to hold this ball for longer as his teammates spawned over at A, collapsing on the final player. Well, he's going for a rotation, but Glory was able to, he, he, he jumped over the head of Glory as he was rotating the ball, and somehow they just never encountered. Uh, Noble sigue manteniendo muy bien el control Ligera ventaja de puntaje para la escuadra mexicana Tienen el control, se están posicionando en la zona de atrás de B Y pueden poner un muy buen setup Si es que no tiene, si es que Cuadrant no llega y los hace completamente como ellos quieren Así que si quieren mantenerse de esta forma Y quieren mantenerse puntuando y evitar la eliminación de este Mayor en Arlington Tienen que ponerse vivos Buena idea resetearlo de parte de Noble Noble sabe que se complica las cosas con dos caídos y empiezan a rotar porque Quadrant está muy muy cerca. Quadrant Translocator moving into the hands of Lore. Once again, they're gonna have a little bit better of a shot here to try to collapse in, but Lore goes on this long flank. He wants to isolate this QT player and will get the kill in time. Lore suddenly find themselves down on this respawn screen. The last two players' positions are known. They'll have to try to escape, and this is going to be a great chunk of time that Glory and the rest of Quadrant will be able to get. Quadrant, pasando el score que tiene hasta el momento la escuadra de Lord Gaming. La rotación se está haciendo notar. Van a salir algunos cuantos volando. La calaca, la bola loca sigue en su lugar. Sigue básicamente en esa zona cercana de A. Excelente, ahí el repulsor para subir, se van a topar a uno del equipo mexicano, buena la kill que hace Glory sobre Noble. Y esto hace que se complique muchísimo más la situación para la escuadra mexicana, aunque intenten puntuar, toman la delantera, pero la pregunta es, ¿por cuánto tiempo? Hold on. Quickly trying to make their way through. Glory sends them up into the sky, but in the sky, Hill reigns supreme. Able to find the kill, and the rest of Quadrant fall. Four going down as Quadrant will come off the respawn screen. Noble able to get the sniper. I would like to see him throw that ball, right? It's not his responsibility to get the time. It's more that he needs to hit these snipes. Los snipes están haciendo llegar de parte de Noble, pero me lo van a llevar directito a ver los 10 segundos de reaparición. La calaca pasa a manos de la escuadra francesa y europea. 
complicando mucho la situación para Lord Gaming, que se está ahora luchando y debatiendo si es que pueden romper el cero que Quadrant tiene en la zona de B. They got the sniper, right? They threw that ball up, but they weren't able to throw the ball far enough, right? So eventually Quadrant comes back. They're able to win those fights, get the ball time, and throw that ball up. They're able to dictate the pace. I mean, it's been the real difference in this game between these two teams. Because so often it's more trying to react to what Quadrant's been doing. They need to start to change that. And that might just happen with this hold right here. They have a strong position on the map. Quadrant will have to play through into Lore Gaming. And they also have some power weapons to utilize. This is an important moment for Lord to ice up and start to controlling their destiny. Excelente, el Quantum Translocator de parte de Noble se mueve, se quita del peligro, pero aún así la pelota tiene que ir por ellas. No, está solo Snipedrone, lo que significa que pueden acercarse. Le regala la pelota, le dice, ¿sabes qué? Ten, te la regalo, hazle tantito como quieras. Y ahora con este trade, pues puede ser la entrada que necesitaba la escuadra mexicana para poder empezar a puntuar. Excelente, la King de Noble se tiene que cubrir ahí detrás del marcador. Le están aventando granadas, el camuflaje activo ya está en el mapa y y puede ser esta una situación muy buena para la escuadra mexicana si es que logran eh, romper el ataque eh, francés. Almost as if, uh, I was honestly a little bit surprised that uh, he didn't try to rotate that ball. Instead, throws it out and tries to just go head first into the players of lore, trying to buy his camouflage time to get to the fight. Acid drops SLG down. The camo is about to dissipate. It's up to SLG to get some value, but so far just cannot find that headshot. SLG's camo largely ineffective. Se está recuperando muy bien la escuadra mexicana. 56 a 55. Todavía mantienen muy buen momentum. Dos caídos para ambas escuadras. Tienen que pensar muy bien sus siguientes movimientos. Logran conseguir la pelota. Les están cayendo como la crane de techo. Tienen que tener cuidado. Cuadran en cualquier momento. Puede empezar a atacar. Y mira nada más. Se están haciendo. Pero aún así van a repeler el ataque completamente. La rotación se está haciendo ver en estos momentos. Y se complica ahora la situación. Tienen que dejar la pelota atrás. Porque saben que eso solo complica un poquito más. Retener el balón. Really can control this game if he can start piling on these headshots with Sniper Drone found too. Suddenly, Jerry's position is in danger as he tries to finish off those kills, but an early reload's gonna be costly. And while well, this is gonna have much more ramifications than you can imagine, right? Not only is Quadrant gonna be able to steal away this lead, they're also just in a prime position now, We're scoring at 70 in the 70s. Building out that lead, but the neutral time at 50 seconds, they can drop this ball and just have a lot more freedom to work with, knowing that the neutral time is on their side. And with another three going down for Lore, suddenly we're looking at a desperate attempt to get back towards this ball. Las cosas se complican mucho para la escuadra mexicana. Están recibiendo bastante daño, están recibiendo bastantes kills en contra. Incluso aunque los Slays estén técnicamente muy cerca, aún así les está costando mucho trabajo. Excelente la paciencia, mira nada más. Lo hagan nada más quitarle los escudos tapping. Se lleva a Snipedrone, que les estaba, que se estaba volviendo una piedra en el zapato. Ahora con el control de la pelota tienen que vencer esos 20 segundos de diferencia. Si logran conseguirlos, ya están del otro lado y pueden comprar competir por una tercera ronda. Dos caídos para ambas escuadras. Puede volverse tres, pero Squadron se está yendo con la pelota. Suddenly, Quadrant able to move this ball. They're just within 10 seconds of winning this game. Noble has camouflage. He does find the rotator first. Now, has to find this kill. Remember, there's only 10 seconds of neutral time, but he gets flanked. He goes down. The shots weren't there. Is anyone from Lore quick enough to get to this ball? Three, two, one. No one is there. Lore will drop their first match, uh, their first game against Quadrant after a tough, tough round two. And unfortunate situations that arose from simply being unable to get the control back of the ball. We just saw Quadrant going over and over, just being so flawlessly taking back the control in every single situation that they could and just making life impossible for Lore inside this map. Yeah, it, it's a. Uh, it felt like a much better attempt on the second round from Moore, but Quadrant clearly uh, were playing the better game at the, at the first half, and uh, they were able to ice up in the second half. Some big mistakes from Moore that they'll need to clean up as we move into this lair.
Absolutely, and here we have what's been darkest hour against Rotten Gaming. What a way to open up with a great headshot by King Nick. It's going to be a stronghold map on recharge, and we're back to English on English casting, but oh my god, make it a double perfect kill with the shock rifle. Common going to be able to get that shock rifle for his team, and really it's all going to be about taking space in these opening moments for Darkest Hour. Get yourself to a power position with the shock rifle, and this is an aggressive play from the shock rifle. Looking for the perfect opportunity just to go inside and cause as much damage as possible. We just saw two players right there from Darkest Hour, maybe just hiding from what could be. Oh my goodness gracious, hold on, come on, with a really great shot, making a triple. Can I get the overkill? Can I get that quad? Well, maybe the time is out, but still, what an amazing play by Common. Common just doesn't seem to be able to miss with this rifle in his hands. One more bullet to work with before this thing runs out of ammo and we'd be put right back on that respawn. And uh, honestly, Common is dissecting the backs of Proton Gaming. He's just had such a great sense of timing, always in that right place, right time. Patience is key, and ooh, that was close. What we're seeing is that's just commons flying around, making sure every single shot counts. Proton Gaming now on the disadvantage. Triple cap that could soon turn into a really, really difficult scenario. Scoring continues for Darkest Hour as Common has, I, mean, I believe that's like number six in a row. And there we go. He'll end with seven kills in a row before he hits that respawn screen. Fantastic work from him. And Yaxon oh, almost wins in the 1v2. A consequential fight as Gilkey will be able to get away with the camouflage. Huge thing to have camo. Unfortunately, it will get deleted by Ember. No more camo, which means Proton Gaming has to do a little bit of extra if they want to get the game tied up. So far, Darkest Hour still making sure they are scoring. Yogi not able to win that fight over at bottom B and now Proton this is a dangerous situation for them yeah the they're all gonna be spawning on top of each other oh no the split comes in there look how fast they were for though they push immediately in they split out those players but it's not necessarily the end of the world that they lose a right here I mean they lose C right here because they'll just transfer the hill over at a and they'll keep applying pressure on spawners until there's some resistance from Proton Gaming. So far, it seems that uh, Darkest Hour has been able to just hold on to every single zone that they had and claimed. And BNC still, Proton Gaming, two games of advantage, but Darkest Hour still looking really clean on this third game, hoping to make it a fourth. My hand's able to get some great shots in. Not able to get away with his life, and you can see the rotation from Darkest Hours. They're trying to shore up their numbers at A, but unfortunately, sometimes when you come to help your teammates, you can come at a price as well. His teammates went down as he got there, but we're back into our main action right here. Quadrant versus Lord Drift. Gonna start out strong as he plays through the bottom of the map. Was not able, he was trying to throw that, uh, that shroud screen on for the camo so his teammates could come grab it. Has it recibiendo muchísimo daño. Quién sabe qué pasó. Me lo agarraron completamente a bombazos. Está pisando mina tras mina, tapping. Ahora con el camuflaje, excelente acercando. Se quiere llevarse la kill. Consigue la kill sobre Glory y va a seguir adelante. Cuidado. Se está viendo un one v one ahí en el tope de ese balcón. Drift va a terminar ganando. Lo van a sorprender. Lo excelente. Si es algo que los mexicanos sabemos hacer muy bien, es volvernos slayers por excelencia. Tapping sabe que tiene que huir tantito, pero aún así ver en switch entra Drift, sale tapping. See Noble on this long flanking play away from his team. So as this pressure comes down, he's going to be able to watch those escape routes. And this is a brilliant collapse from War. They're going to be able to find all four of these players. The question is, does anyone from Quadrant take someone down with them? It might be a clean wipe, and it is War playing a perfect game of Halo on that collapse. ¿Qué nivel nos está enseñando en este momento Lore? Y sobre todo, pues, la adaptabilidad que pueden llegar a tener. Tuvimos un juego, uno muy, muy cercano, muy pegadito, básicamente. Pero en estos momentos, Lore Gaming ya está utilizando ese momentum negativo que tiene encima para volverlo momentum positivo. Y lo estamos viendo ahora. Tapping, consiguiendo todas las kills importantísimas, todas las estrategias. Me lo van a mover y no va a poder concretar esa kill. Pero aún así, mira Drift, seis kills, una 
muerte. Se está volviendo un, un, un jugador importantísimo en el equipo. Deficit went to six. Quadrant keep chipping away, but they need to find themselves a clean wipe here with camouflage up. If they can clear out C and get this camouflage, it could be a complete shift in momentum in this game. The, uh, the shotgun player goes down. Drift trying to find some space for his team, but Glory, in the meantime, was able to walk away with the camouflage. Quadrant will have the advantage in these gunfights, but certainly still a lot of work ahead of them in order to cut down this five kill deficit. Sigue siendo una amplia ventaja la que tiene Lord en estos momentos. Noble, esperando, siendo paciente, excelente. La paciencia puede recompensarlo. Va a recibir muchísimo daño, pero la asistencia se hace notar. No fue en vano su muerte. Cambiamos, ahora es Nightroom. Está en la zona de B. El de Arcade, cuidado. Granada en Red Room. Esta puede ser peligrosa. Recibe muchísimo daño. ¿Hay kill o no hay kill? No tenemos kill todavía. Va a intentar pushear. Excelente. Trade ahí de parte de ambas escuadras. 16 a 21. Que se hagan 22. Tenemos 6 kills de ventaja. Que ahora sean 7 para la escuadra mexicana. Glory set down as Noble gets that kill. That's going to give them this B lane to work with. You can see the spotters quadrant all the way at the back of A. Lore can dictate the pace of when they want to push. Biggest thing to say right here is to stay coordinated at all points in time. Do not give up free deaths because you get just a tad, a tad bit too aggressive. Acercan por la zona de rampa. Tienen ahí unos excelentes tiros. Aún así, la presión que está ejerciendo la escuadra mexicana está siendo muy, muy pesada para que la escuadra de Quadrant pueda responder. Simplemente se está volviendo un ataque constante. Los, los chicos de Quadrant no tienen la forma de contestar a la agresividad que se está dando. Y Noble, con esa doble muerte, sigue haciéndola de tos para la escuadra francesa Quadrant en problemas. Oh, we'll anchor out a Bravo spawn for his team. Notice a quadrant. They're spread out on this map. Seek is by himself. You're starting to see the pressure come through. Acid, perfect timing on the help. He's going to be able to help on the other side. Sika goes double down. Kill. Double kill for Acid. Perfect team play right there. He gave up his life, but in order to keep that numbers advantage for Lore, and, well, this is dangerous for Quadrant. Suddenly, Lore are just knocking on the door and getting to the point of no returns. Quadrant have to stabilize soon. 24 a 33, no hay mucho que Quadrant pueda hacer en esta situación. Se complica mucho. Estamos hablando de 9 kills de ventaja. Y Tapping simplemente haciendo UV y poniéndose en una situación muy peligrosa. Cae ante Glory. Pero aún así, la escuadra mexicana siempre sabe con qué responder. Y mira nada más, el que sabe también contestar es Zika. Llevándose a uno de los chicos mexicanos que sean dos. Está completamente vuelto a aceite que puede complicar las cosas. La granada de Drift va a poner un fin. Pero la ventaja mexicana sigue subiendo. Quadrant slowly building their way back into this game. Cutting down on that deficit, but still a lot of work ahead of them. And that shotgun not going to make it any easier for this team. Glory's in trouble on the other side. They will be able to find the shotgun player, but it's going to come out of cost. Both these players' positions are known, and Lore has just the better advantage. Snipe Drone's going to be the important player in the back. He gets the first pick. That's going to cause the rest to collapse it. Drift and Acid doing their best to stay alive, but is Snipe Drone able to find the rest? Yes, he will. Snipe Drone accounts for three players on his, uh, by himself. The only problem at this point for Quadrant is that they might not have enough runway to make this comeback a reality. Snipe Drone doing a great job finding that flank and getting those kills, but there's just not that many deaths left in this game to give up. Seis kills es lo que está separando en este momento la, el empate entre Quadrant y Lord Gaming, que se vuelvan cinco. Ahí encontraron una kill más. Acid va a ser el que va a caer la presión, la paciencia. Todo esto nos vamos a detener tantito. Shock, eh, stock, stock, rifle en las manos de Snipedron, que intenta dar unos cuantos tiros, no lo consigue. Shroud Screen. Y ahora tenemos a alguien de Quadrant con camuflaje activo. Pero aún así, Lord Gaming manteniendo muy bien su distancia. Nada para nadie. Dicen que aquí no pasa nadie, mucho menos. Menos las divinas. Camel player starts to take some space. It's going to be all up to Glory, really, to give his team a chance. The player starts to move forward. Glory, with that quick flank because of that camouflage, he needs to finish off these kills. You cannot get traded. Drift gets the kill. Lore, closer and closer to finishing this one off. Now a 10 kill lead with only four kills left to go. Lore, look to even up this series. 
tapen buscando una víctima, no lo consigue. Aún así, el movimiento que se hace esperar de la escuadra mexicana está siendo muy positivo en estos momentos. 10 kills de diferencia, algo completamente distinto a lo que vimos en este primer juego. Quieren ya cerrarlo, pero al mismo tiempo saben que si se extienden, si se fácilmente podrían empezar a caer. No quieren sobreextenderse, no quieren caer en peligro, ni mucho menos en acciones que puedan comprometer el estado del juego actual. Y simplemente Lord Gaming marcando las asistencias, haciendo todo lo que vale y haciendo que esos trades sean muy, muy peligrosos para la escuadra francesa. Dos kills es lo único que necesita la escuadra mexicana, que se vuelva uno. Estamos a nada de ver a México tomando un mapa sobre Francia. Just one more, just one more. The boys are rallying. They find their targets over on the B side of the map. Quadra desperately trying to hold on, but at this point, it's just a matter of time. This would be the best comeback we'd ever seen. And there's just nothing they can do. Yes, Trapped in the corner, tapping buttons. Shuts them down, 50-39. We're tied up one apiece. Tightening the, the things up, man. I mean, the Quadrant just falls a little bit behind the Mexican team right there, 50-39. That was an impressive recovery from the Lord Gaming roster. And honestly, just maybe we might be able to see a game five if mm -hmm. we continue with this with this switching games around. No, I think I think a game five is almost like a certainty at this point in my mind. I think these two teams are just so close to each other in skill. But look at this, 243 to 242. We got a close game between Proton and Darkest Hour. Darkest Hour's tournament life on the line. They have to clutch up in this position. This is a really dangerous situation. Like you mentioned, tournament line, basically, This is all or nothing. Can we be able to see yet another result? We like we saw Native Gaming against the Space Station, which is just complete hey, comeback. There's no one there to get into the hill in time. It's over. Proton Gaming able to take down Darkest Hour 3-0, but don't don't let that scoreline deceive you. That 3-0. Very close. Every game felt like it was going down uh, to the wire between those two teams. Feels like we're seeing the, the, the competition in the HGS just keep getting tighter and tighter. Exactly. Like, even if they don't go and absolutely uh, try to get that uh, at least a game out of this series, they go away without really closing it up, the series. So it's even like you might lose, but at the end of the day, you're you were this close to just winning all right folks we got some more action over on the alpha stream we're gonna pop that up when we get into this game three we'll be right back with quadrant versus lore gets the flank over towards bottom control double kill on the board for woodham and he's not stopping he's going for the seat he's thanos right now i'll do it myself knocks two players in no shield finishes up the other two you want some too buddy Wu Tum, done, done, gets the kill, takes the stronghold, and it's a trip cap for Poe early on. Cap, and does he decide to press his advantage towards A or just hold towards control? Looks like gonna wait for a moment, and the push comes in here from Poe. Is this an overextension? Mighty's goes down, Wudum goes down, Jimbo goes down, and what looked like an aggressive play to take a trip cap is now going to turn into an all four down for Foe. And you would hope that that would allow you to get more than 10 points on the board, unfortunately not for the side of Foe. Cloud9 back in control and in the lead even after that great play from Wutum to kick it off. And you have to say that's just a straight up mistake there from Foe's side. You have to know when you can press your advantages and when the other team has a strong spawning position. Elevator, it's a really tough spot to collapse on until you already have the advantage, until you have someone with a secondary angle. And they kind of trickled in one by one. And now because of it, they're down by 20 points. 20 points, but they are in B. B doesn't get transferred though. Diagram with the assassination on the Wutum. Resets B, Cloud9 continue to score. Cloud9 looking good after a scary start. Fight on triple stacks, PSU gets the help first. Looks like Septify is gonna help Rami down there in the bottom center, and Rami just still being a nuisance down here. Good just damage. Has to decide if he's gonna stay down here for Camel, but realize it's still 15 seconds away. Gets a bit more active in top center. Good damage, damage, good information. Multiple players, no shield. They're all gonna spawn elevator here, Rami says to the rest of the team. And this is a containment process. Camo coming up. You don't want to overextend. The push from Bo is a focus on the C. One player by the middle. Can't quite get Diagram just yet. Eventually, Wutum's able to get that kill. But it makes it long enough to where now Rami has snuck away with the camouflage. Look at that. Rami gets it with his second life. 
I would say, especially on a map like this, where camo is so easily accessible in the bomb center, you're only going down there unless you're hiding and trying to bait something or going down last second. And so I like that play from Rami. Get up, get active, don't leave your teammates in a three on four for 15 seconds. Score. Instead, he goes up, like I said, gets active, and then gets camo later, and it falls into his hands. A and B now in the setup for Cloud9. Rami spotting multiple players trying to do the camo jump. That's not the way you want to go, foe. Rami takes them all down with the assist of the rest of Cloud9. They're pushing the trip cap. They get all four down. Let's spawn them over towards A once again. Wash, rinse, repeat. Let's see if Cloud9 does the same play that Foe did. Are they going to challenge here at Elevator? Looks like Tusk does Im immediately try to push towards Elevator. Does anyone else push on in? Diagram also falls. Not sure if that's Elevator challenge or someone already in position, but this could be history repeating itself. That grenade from Rami knocks the player to no shield and the turbine. His team is able to pick up the kill. Three go down for Foe again. Rami is popping off right now. Four down for Foe. They push the trip cap once again, spawning in long haul. And if you're Foe, the lead already up over 100. You have to find a way to get some slays. Rami has been in more melee and up-close battles, I feel like, this series He's than anyone scrapper, else. Man. He is Jeff, just Jeff, swinging. Cross, I, Jeff. I'm going to be careful if I'm walking by him in the elevator in real life or if I'm walking by him in the hallway. I am just going to be, you know, making sure there's plenty of space. No lunge distance between us. Rami's walking extra wide this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Two players from Foe trying to push towards glass. The headshot from Septify, not good enough. As that player, not to no shield, but not picked up. Two on two split. B finally getting transferred over, but here comes Septify with every intention of getting the reset. Multiple members make that such a difficult fight for Jimbo. The reset happens. A being transferred over by Foe. Unfortunately, in the meantime, C being transferred from Cod 9. It's a complete flip in the map, but somehow. Welcome back, Quadrant versus Lores, back again. Game number three on its way on Tools. Join with me is Verzilla. We're doing the English-Spanish broadcast, and we have Strongholds on recharge already. Noble with the camouflage to work with, working with his teams to find the straggling players in Quadrant. Ya se la saben, papacitos. Aquí tenemos de todo. Tenemos de, de lo que calzan los americanos, los vecinos del norte, los que están del otro lado del charco, y pues el Chile mexicano que aquí tenemos presente también. No solo en el micrófono, sino también en sus pantallas, jugando y posiblemente amenazando con offsetear a la escuadra francesa. So far, SLG and the rest of Quadrant have been able to recover, but keep in mind, for Lore, it's important to get an early lead here. This, uh, this Quadrant team, extremely potent at strongholds, especially on this map. They know how to abuse teams, get them into spawn traps that you just can't recover from. Vemos que está Novo utilizando la plataforma para llevar un poquito de daño eléctrico a los que estén ahí pisando. Sigue utilizando el Shock Rifle, le queda una bala, va a caer. Glory se va a llevar una excelente doble muerte para empezar a hacer espacio. Base, no, nada más Base está tornando color carmesí y esto significa que la escuadra francesa cuadran está empezando a puntuar. Glory. Staying on the back, being this pivot foot for his team. You can see right now, Quadrants have so much presence on this map with players all the way at it, uh, all the way across the map. Glory trying to cut off this cross, but say they just have some rough timing. As Glory's trying to do his best to get that kill, but tapping buttons comes out on top. Lore was able to break through to A. All of Quadrant put on their back foot. The AC hold is in with camouflage coming up. This is a huge advantage that Lord needs to take, uh, that Lord needs to continue pouring on. Los chicos de Lord Gaming están, pero así locked in. Están complicando mucho las cosas. No voy con camuflaje activo. Cuidado que esto se puede poner peligroso. Excelente. Va a agarrar a uno de los chicos de Quadrant. Va a buscar otro. Tiene que retroceder. Sabe que está recibiendo bastante daño. Va a treparse por esa zona de la caja grande. Puede rotar. Mira nada más. Qué excelente kill. Se va a llevar a uno también. Va buscando a otro. Tiene que bajarse, pero al mismo tiempo se sube. Ni que fueran los chescos, carnal. Ahora busca a alguien más. Tiene que toparse a alguien enfrente, pero no lo hace. Sabe que ahí hay alguien amenazando. Nah, se lo va a llevar, pero me le van a terminar sorprendiendo. Cae. Y Lord Gaming sigue puntuando. Perfect shots from Snipe Drone to get the double kill, and suddenly the trip cap is in effect. This is where Quadrant's at their best, when they're able to put three on the board and start to constrict and turn the tourniquet 
on War Gaming, cutting off this blood flow. There's nothing to come. Acid, the last alive, and the trip cap keeps pouring on points. Captura triple, Quadrant, ahora poniéndose a la delantera. Veamos qué es lo que está cocinando la escuadra mexicana, Lord Gaming. Empezando con un poquito eh, de... Ajá, ajá, ajá. Empezando muy bien en C, recibiendo un poquito de daño, pero aún así, manteniéndose a bordo. Tiénense, empiezan a rotar. Hay algunos en B, les van a resetear lo que estaban haciendo, pero aún así, empiezan a caer, tienen que retroceder y empezar a pensar muy bien cuál será el siguiente paso. No pueden cometer tantos errores como antes podían, porque si no, esto puede ser game over para Lord Gaming. Lord just playing a step too fast right there. They, they get that hill, but they immediately try to get into the second. You gotta play this step by step. Quadrant, so deadly when they get these trip caps into effect. You cannot play a step too early. If you try to push out too quickly and a player falls, Quadrant will take advantage. You can see how quick they are to push you back into a trip cap. Glory will have the camouflage to work with a grapple to use as an escape vector as well. Everything is going right for Quadrant at the moment. It's going to be up to some big individual plays from Lore. They have to shut down Quadrant soon, or this game could get too far out of reach. Se está complicando mucho las cosas en estos momentos. Va a caer Acid. Sigue siendo una piedra en el zapato ese camuflaje activo. Glory. Con ese camuflaje está haciendo estragos poco a poco a la escuadra mexicana. No los deja moverse, no los deja estar alrededor y simplemente recibiendo tanto daño. Dudo que la escuadra mexicana pueda durar un poco más, pero cuidado que también Zika tiene ese Shock Rifle que es poderosísimo en las manos correctas. Oh, well. Able to trap down on that player underneath. Enemy team score. Lower. Scoring four now, but quite the distance to overcome down by just under a hundred points in this game. They're going to need a full minute at minimum of holding some combination of a uh, two or trip cap. And, well, Noble got the word. He says, hey, let me isolate out these players. They're weak at the tower. He gets the one that was straggling over at pit. The other two are weak at tower. They know about this. Lord can play fast in this position. This is an opportunity for them to go for three, but Glory got behind, gets the trade. Quadrant able to stabilize for now, but still in danger. Tapping buttons, looking for the last player. Trip caps in, Sika does get the kill. Massive kill from Sika in order to get A back into the possession of Quadrant and to get them into a scoring range once again, 167 and counting for Quadrant. Estamos hablando de más de 65 puntos de desventaja para la escuadra mexicana. Se están empezando a mover, pero tienen que tener muchísimo cuidado al mismo tiempo porque si no son cuidadosos puede pasar este tipo de situaciones. Amenaza con un triple K, pero logran defender muy bien. Uno caído para ambos equipos, dos para Quadrant, que está empezando a caer. Esas granadas de Noble. Noble consiguiendo esa doble muerte, esa doble muerte que está siendo muy, muy importantísima en estos momentos. Recuperan el control de BC, niegan el triple K y Quadrant ahora tiene que empezar a atacar. You see the hills transferring uh, powers right now. Alpha gonna move over to Lord Charlie, to Quadrant. Right here, this is where Lord can make up space. The mama's rapping buttons. Are you kidding me? What a shot. The grenade pushes him up. He still hits the head, doing so much for his team. They have to continue on this rampage. Qué jugadota se acaba de aventar. La neta sí me sorprendió. Hasta el Tool ya está sacando los mexicanismos. Y en este momento siguen puntuando. Se está volviendo cada vez más complicado para la escuadra eh, francesa poder poner al nivel de los mexicanos pero aún así estamos hablando un poquito más de 40 puntos menos de 35 puntos de diferencia y esto aquí puede ser el colapso que Quadrant estaba esperando Two back into the hands of Quadrant. Sika gets shut down there, and that's going to be important for this lore game roster. They'll have access towards that pipe room, preventing Quadrant from getting those beneficial spawns. Instead, Quadrant going to have to battle out from that C position. Going to be a tough road ahead of Quadrant to get into B, but they have a lot of time to work with, right? That 40 uh, point deficit that lore has to overcome will work into Quadrant's advantage, but you cannot play too slow. You have to be successful within 
at least 20 seconds here. Se está volviendo cada vez más eterno el tiempo a penitas y Tapping logra ese tiro critiquísimo para poderse llevar la kill. Resetean B y siguen puntuando. Cada vez se me está, pero así va siendo horrible el fundillo de todo lo que está pasando en pantalla. De verdad, México está teniendo una oportunidad única para volver a hacer historia. Lo hicieron en Worlds y lo están volviendo a hacer. Quieren volver a repetir la hazaña de seguir adelante en el Championship Bracket y llegar al domingo de campeonato, llegar al Championship Sunday. Noble knows that these players are coming close by. Lori's working on B with the camouflage. Tapping buttons is trying to find a tapping buttons, just doesn't know. Got from the top rope. Glory gets the people's elbows to connect. Able to get inside this hill. Will transfer ownership quadrant back into a scoring position, but suddenly the game much tighter than before. It's up to him to hit the big shot. Killing spree as Glory continues on his rampage. This is the most important moment of the game. Lore have to get the soldiers together, decide how they will push forward. But Glory, he might have plans of his own, pushing quickly towards the sea. He could find some unsuspecting players, not expecting an aggressive play like this. Vemos cómo están en parejas, cuidado, reciben muchísimo daño, se lleva la asistencia a Glory. Es aquí donde puede aprovechar para introducirse directo a C y posiblemente quitar esa... ¡Uy! No falla el tiro, pero no va a ser suficiente. Más que suficiente, diría yo. Ah, no se está... Se está volviendo en este momento de color azul, de color mexicano, pero lamentablemente no va a ser suficiente. Estamos en los últimos momentos, posibles últimos momentos de la partida. Glory nos va a regalar una segunda, una doble muerte. 249, esto se acabó. Y cierran con broche de oro. Con un triple cap. Just a fantastic work from Quadrant at the end of that game. They, they waited for their moment. They saw the opportunity. It all started with Glory working on that long distance flank. Eventually got into the right space, right time. Kill after kill go in their favor. And because he was pressuring so much on the other side, he was able to apply pressure for a triple capture. Those trip caps just make all the difference in professional Halo. I know so often you'll be in match week. Your teammate will say, hey, we don't need three. We don't need three. Do not push. Do not push. Let me tell you what. Right now, for uh, for everyone to hear, if your teammate is always saying that, hey, we only need two, don't listen. <laughs> always be pushing. Always be going for that trip cap because you can see one good trip cap is the difference between winning and losing the game in this uh, in this level of Halo. You know I do be pushing for that third hill. I don't no, care. I'm gonna always, keep going. I, I'm gone. For Algas, no breaks, going straight for that triple cap. Gonna get as many points as possible. But still, Lore, with an incredible performance so far on this weekend, just making sure they get through the day. But also, we have complexity against All Native wrong. Gaming, trying to go and live another day, going and try to get four championships on it. This is game oh, one wrong. of this first round in the elimination bracket. Complexity. <laughs> Fell earlier to Shopify Rebellion. Complexity having a lot of high hopes for their tournament. They have to get past this roadblock ahead of them. Native Gaming, a very good squad. You'll see the Native team in blue. Complexity will be in red. Sniper in the hands of the one and only Descendant, able to get a great kill. And now with the Sniper in hand, he needs to line it up perfectly. He needs to move, gets taken down. And now that Sniper gets switched by to Kulek on Native Gaming. Collect. Doesn't have anyone that's going to be close by anytime soon. What really is the responsibility to collect is to listen and try to find the first pick. Unfortunately for him, his teammates are going down, and this is going to make him play on his back foot, where he has to be a little bit more reactionary rather than being the one that dictates the pace. Oy, trying to get a shot will get him straight out of there, not able to turn around and shoot. That's still three down for Native Gaming. The skull will be in the hands of Hus, and boy, are they still going at it. 48 and 41, great use of the QT. <laughs> Unfortunately, a great, great job getting out, but right, it was, uh, it was a rock and a hard place. There was a grenade in front of you, or there was two players staring at your portal on the other side. Just no option to stay alive in that moment. And you can see this ball gonna be fought over on both sides, right in that middle uh, position by the screens. And finally, it's going to be Native Gaming that comes out on top. Complexity. They have this first round, so they do have one round to give, but they're, they're going to have a long road ahead of them on this push. Look how patient they're being. 
They have to play through this nade. The flank is coming in on the other side, and uh, the flank wasn't even needed. These players are complexity dropping so early in these gunfights. And now that Mikwin has this camouflage, you really feel for complexity in this spot because Mikwin's going to block out green. They're going to absolutely know where those spawners are going to be at, but we're going to transition back. Game number four. Quadrant knocking uh, knocking on the door to victory here. Just one more game, and they'll secure themselves a top eight finish. Se complica cada vez más la situación para la escuadra mexicana. Tienen la colina y bajo su control. Quiere decir que todavía pueden hacer una diferencia muy grande, pero con un, un punto en esta serie de diferencia, puede ser este el principio del final, pero al mismo tiempo... Podemos hacer la 5 de mayo y mandarlos derechito a visitar a Napoleón. Trapping keeps pushing Double forward. Kill. Double kill for him. And Quadrant keep finding themselves one or two down. They just need to get all their resources up at once. Half four players coordinate their push and break. You still have a little bit of time to work with here as Lore Gaming is only about halfway done with this hill. Plenty of time for Quadrant to work with. Enemy team took the hit. Ventaja importantísima para la escuadra mexicana todavía. Tenemos a Drift con el Shock Rifle. Puede hacer bastante daño. Mira nada más. Ando esperando a que alguien pase. Tengo que alzar la voz. Como de que no. Ese jugador de cuadran ya casi no tiene escudos. Es más, no tiene escudo para nada. No lo vio. Decide que es momento de que tiene que cazar. Está al ataque. Está a la ofensiva. Tiene que andarlos cazando. No logra dar el tiro, pero aún así excelente. Trata de reposicionarse para evitar cualquier tipo de ataque. La granada que la va a regresar directito a su casa. Directito al center, se lleva otra kill excelente, se posiciona en la colina. Y mi estimado Tools, that's a capture for Lord Gaming. Fantastic work from them. Quadrant is never really in a spot to even try to win that hill. The sticky comes in from acid. They have control of the back loop spawns and had presence towards A. They got the spawner over at A. They know that the pressure is going to be coming from long haul now. Look how Drift immediately moves his attention to the push. Coming in from that driveway position and LR. So far, I mean, look at the time that they're getting. It's just Quadrant are, are ineffective at getting here in a quick manner. He visto muchísimas veces a la escuadra mexicana poder sacar comebacks así y simplemente complican demasiado la situación para la escuadra francesa que está teniendo muchas dificultades. El trade, nadie va a tener la colina en estos momentos. They need to start getting themselves in the hill. Four down for Quadrant. Where does Quadrant spawn? Look how far away they are getting that hotel and lift spawn. They're going to have a trek ahead of them. Maybe, just maybe they can get there in time, but they are going to have to desperately push. And I don't think they're going to be able to do so. Two players going down, they know to just concede. Instead, they push a player over here towards Flowers. They know that the spawn that they want to receive here is this black blue spawn, but they have to take care of tapping buttons. He's causing mayhem. Quadrant has the hill, but they have no map control. Nothing they can do here. Quadrant has been left ineffective time and time again. This has just been a dominant performance from the Mexicans of War Gaming. Básicamente sacando todos los ops de todo el poder posible. Están sacando todo lo necesario. Qué tiro se acaba de aventar Glory. Por un momento me estaba volviendo yo francés. Ulala, uh, de atreverían unos a decir. Pero simplemente se complica mucho la situación en estos momentos. México tiene que asegurar esa tercera colina. Si quiere hacer que nos lleven a un quinto juego y mandar a los, a los franceses de vuelta a su país. Acid has the last laugh inside this hill. Sniper is going to be the only player alive, but look how far away he spawns all the way at loop. And this constantly, the battle for Quadrant has been fighting for the hill. It's been fighting for a position to fight for the hill. And when you get into this cycle, it's so hard to break. You have to be reliant on your entry frags. This time, they were able to find Drift, follow that up with Acid. Suddenly, Lord's Gaming's position is much more fragile. You need to see Quadrant play fast, play aggressive, flip out these spawns, be the one that dictates the pace. So 1v1 on the map for just a little bit of time. Drift going to be able to get this camouflage. Quadrant has control. Drift with the camouflage, though, can cause all sorts of mayhem. 
Nada más, ay, me lo aguanta peor. Refoment para el buen drift. Tiene que tener cuidado, sabe que tiene una ligera desventaja. Me lo van a sorprender. Tiene que retroceder, no tiene escudos, pero aún así tiene lo necesario. Intenta defender a su compañero, no lo consigue. Se le va a escapar entre, se le escabulle entre las balas de esa Bandit Evo. Cuidado que esta se complica. Van a perder el camo. Dos caídos para la escuadra mexicana. Tienen que empezar a atacar, pero al mismo tiempo pueden darse ese lujo de dejar esta colina caer ante la escuadra francesa. Si es que tienen un plan B, porque estando a la mitad, tienen que buscar romper el cero de Quadrant y parece ser que lo están logrando. Three down for Quadrant. Sí, que Glory tried to work so hard together towards that hotel. They did a great job of finding the initial pick. The problem is they weren't quick enough to take down the rest of War Gaming. The spawns too close to the hill, and Quadrant now once again find themselves on the other side of the map where they have to battle through in order to try to get some sort of response here. This is looking more and more likely to be a War Gaming third hill, but War also slowed themselves down in this position. Look, they're not necessarily eager to jump into this hill. They need to focus Enemy on those initial slays. They started to lose those slays, and well, Quadrant have battled their way back towards this hill. War Gaming two down, Quadrant in control. This next gunfight going to determine who gets this third hill. Push definitivo para la escuadra mexicana si es que quieren llevarse esta colina. Todavía tienen tiempo, todavía tienen la oportunidad. Granadas volando por todas partes y al mismo tiempo Cuadran sale al ataque y se posicionan ahora en el marcador. Uno a dos. Camuflaje activo en las manos de nadie. Lo acaban de volar por los aires. Se acabó. SLG cae. No hay camuflaje activo, pero tampoco hay mexicanos. Acid, el único que queda. Tres caídos para México. In this hill, they got the early rotation. Both players of war coordinating at the same time in order to take down that player in hill. It's gonna buy them some much needed time. It's all gonna be up to tapping right here. He needs to find this initial slay and start to prevent Quadrant from spawning close to this hill, looking for anyone. Tapping. Still living at this back loop. We see two kills in the feed for Acid. The rest of Quadrant here. The rest of Quadrant down. Four go down Quadrant. Lord with a dominant position on the map as you see Quadrant spawning all the way at the lift. Ahora es momento de la escuadra mexicana de mantener el control. Puede ser esto lo que necesitaban para ponerse ahora 3 a 1 encima de la escuadra francesa. Excelente el uso del Troster. Se lo van a llevar aún así. Dos caídos para Cuadran. Puede volverse 3. Gloria en peligro. Va a llevarse a Noble. No pasa nada. Tiene que seguir adelante. Aún así, tenemos dos caídos. Doble muerte. Buscará la triple. Buscará la triple. Ahí tiene la triple. Por supuesto que no. Drift es el que se va a llevar la doble. Y esa granada perdida de Cuadran. Cuadran va a hacer que se compliquen las cosas. Uno nada más en la dos, en la colina. Cuadran defendiendo Lore al ataque. Right back in, these players from Cuadran following. The last two are in the spawn anchor, but the flank from Noble is here. Double kill as Noble continues to put in work for his team. You can see tapping buttons has been the MVP of this game thus far, but it's thanks to the work that Noble's been putting in. 14 assists for his team, and he's starting to light up the kill feed. Noble is doing everything possible to keep his team alive. La jugada aventando la granada de plasma con todo y repulsor. Last shot, medalla, último tiro. Consigue un poquito de esa asistencia. Lamentablemente no sigue adelante. No cae, pero sus compañeros de equipo siguen acá. Ahora están haciendo tiempo. Queda un minuto en el contador, 60 segundos. Y esto puede ser algo grande. Sí que got the camouflage. This can be the difference maker. Quadrant only have two numbers up. I can see Sika exposes himself just for a little bit. He has two players ahead of him. They find the camouflage. They hunt him down. More gaming back inside the hill, trying desperately to stay alive. Noble will dodge the grenades. And does he have enough time to capture this one? Yes, he does. Three to one. 48 seconds of neutral time to play with. It's Slayer for Lore Gaming from here on out. Quadrant have to play. Perfect. Una colina muy complicada para Quadrant. 
tienen 30 segundos para trabajar. SLG con una excelente doble con esa granada. Slick Zika se va a llevar otra kill. Noble, el último mexicano en pie. Ahora cae. Cuatro caídos para los Reseteamos y esto se complica. Zika did an incredible job getting behind those players and getting the most important kill. What that does is anchors out those loop spawns. It's going to make life a lot easier for Sniper and Lord. They're sending players from both sides. Two going to come in from the hotel side, but as that happens, they push out through the LR. It's going to be up to Sniper to hit some great shots. He gets the double kill at the bandit, but the nades too much. Drift able to get the big kill. Players still over at the loop. Sika wins it for now, but the rest of the lore on their way. They know how important this position is. Tienen todavía un colchón. Si incluso si pierden esta colina, tienen otra oportunidad de ir completamente por el juego de Slayer que necesitan. Cuidado, Acid va a caer. Se complica bastante las decisiones que está tomando el equipo mexicano. Y esto significa que nos vamos a una sexta colina. El intercambio, el trade que se está dando. Uno vivo nada más para Cuadran. Snipron es el único que queda con vida. La colina a manos de la escuadra francesa. Last shot, Acid se lleva una doble. Está buscando la triple. Quiere detener el avance de las tropas francesas como lo hicieron los mexicanos el 5 de mayo. Just 10 more seconds to hold on. War, one step closer to pushing this thing to a game number five. Shock rifle, drift, camuflaje. Una receta que está destinada al éxito. Intenta darle ese tiro, no lo consigue. Se le van a aparecer dos como Teletubbies. Esto puede ser complicado. ¡Oh! Se lleva un tiro, pero no logra seguir adelante. Si esto se vuelve un dos contra uno. Tapping, el último mexicano con vida. Esta colina está en los últimos cuatro segundos y puede complicar bastante o, o, al equipo mexicano o puede llevarnos a un overtime. Tienen que jugar perfecto ambos equipos. Esto se está volviendo de intercambio importantísimo. Esto podría ser el juego 5 que buscaba México. Damas y caballeros. Nos lo vuelven a lograr. Nos vamos a juego 5 contra los franceses. Basically said game 5. Yes. Buckle Basically up. game 5. We're going to Slayer game 5, ladies and gentlemen. Quadrant against Lore. It has been an amazing series so far. Lore, Mexico, one step away from making the upset of a lifetime. Beating the second best Europe team. And basically continuing into basically what could have been or what could be the championship Sunday bracket. Honestly, live fire is where it's all going to go down. The, the problem for Lord is that we've been on live fire before and the result wasn't pretty, right? A 2-0 finish for Quadrant where they've had a pretty dominant game of oddball. Things have to change. Obviously, oddball and Slayer, two very different game types, but it felt like Quadrant was just a little bit more comfortable last time they were on live fire. Absolutely, I mean, but things change. I can make, I can pull off my magical 50 pesos again, man. <laughs> you know they do be cursing some players, but for the sake of being neutral, this could go for anyone. I mean, I told you, this could go one-to-one, <laughs> -one, head head-to-head. And what we're seeing is consistent results from both teams. 2-0 for Quadrant in Oddball Life Fire. 50-39 Street Slayer for Lore. Say, saying you're neutral, I think, is a little over the top. But here we go. Foe in that game, number five with Cloud9. So Foe, the other European team, also going the distance this time against Cloud9 from America. Proton, 3-0 over Darkest Tower. Complexity and Native just started their series. Looks like Complexity was able to take that first one. So the elimination bracket is as tight as I've ever seen it. I don't, I don't think I've seen an elimination bracket have so many close games to start off at, uh, the champ bracket Honestly, this is the most competitive Halo has been in quite some time. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, it's actually really, really good how we're seeing just not the same teams on the same placements. Like, it has now become so dynamic with the bandit starts, the different changes that we've seen on the maps, and it's just been really a hard time for teams to just being able to just keep up. There's a lot of teams that keep improving, a lot of teams that just keep climbing and climbing up the ladder, and with surprises like, for example, Lore coming out of the open bracket, Cloud9 coming out of the open bracket, we still have a lot to see like full cloud nine two to two quadrant lord gaming two to two that's like a lot of really really incredible stuff and this is just like the middle of the weekend we still have a lot more halo to look and to be hyped around game five i can't even begin to just think what could go down with these two teams guys we'll have one game five quadrant 
coming up, but we have this game five as well on the alpha, and we have complexity and native gaming going at the same time. So we'll try to keep as much action on your screen as possible. Here we go, complexity native. This is game number two, the Slayer. So important in this series, especially for complexity. Complexity, they, this is a series that they need to take 3-0, maybe 3-1 if if the games are close. But complexity has been expecting to, to get a top six finish here at minimum. They are really shooting for top four. They need to put away a team like Native pretty early on. Exactly, they need to go just focus 10 seconds until that active camo shows up on map. And we do remember those old dark times where there was a rocket launcher in the middle of the streets. Perfect shot right there by Bigwin. Just making sure that slays count. His team is at a disadvantage and with camo on the hands of Barcode, they could turn this deficit into a positive thing. Barcode's gonna be able to have a little bit more freedom on the map. He, unfortunately, I don't know if he heard that player that ran underneath him. and. Well, Barco suddenly finds himself by himself. No one to help right away, but he is able to find the pick. Barco opens up everything for his team. Great double so far. Barco able double to utilize kill. that sniper, oh, not sniper, rather uh, that active camo, but now he will get taken down. Precision able to stop the reign of terror that he was giving his team with that with that active camo. Great kill by Kulik. Now getting some shots. Red Room in danger. Mark. And just overall the pressure. He needs to get out of there immediately. Four kill lead for complexity. This is going to be just so tough for native gaming to, to break out of. But this is how you start, right? You get the three down. You start to get a little bit more presence on the map. Find the isolated players and finish them off. And that's the thing. Like, even if uh, if native gaming is three uh, three teams uh, teammates down, they're still able to recover. They're still trying to push forward. It's a four kill deficit, which seems like a lot. But when you start playing... The, at least this high level of Halo, it becomes so complicated for them to just call a slight advantage and truly an advantage because it can change at any given moment, especially when APG has a lot of double kills, could go for the triple, but no. Problem native is they, they've continually have kept the game within arm's reach, but they haven't been able to really cut away at this deficit. It feels like they're stabilizing at this point, but they need to start putting complexity on their back foot. Get more of those three, four downs and try to find some sort of spawn cycle. When you're on streets, it's so easy to be able to translate quick kills into spawn traps. So far, it's been nothing but advantage for complexity. Trying to go for that kill, we'll use their pulsar, but we'll get taken down. Now it's a hus. Guarding the angles, making sure no one passes by PD. Barco will be taking him down. Teammates falling everywhere. Four down for complexity. The game's starting to tighten up. This is where Native needed to be. APG and Mikwin team up together to two veterans to shut down the new blood of Descendant. And now this is within reach and with the complexity all gathered up at B of Native Gaming can find an easy blender to run these players through, suddenly this game will be tied. Precision with an incredible double kill, trying to move forward. Now it's Kulik, the one that's trying to get it. We'll get the trade. Unfortunately, it will not lead into anything. Get taken down. Now Barcode trying to shoot. You know why? It's like we last see him, but he's now doing really, really good so far. Making sure his team approaches. A lot of... Ooh ups and downs and this is going to be a down complexity is still on the lead widening the gap yeah natives running out of time they have to basically uh, overcome this deficit within the next few kills you got maybe three or four deaths to give up here before you make this one more competitive as we approach this end game, you can start to see the game slowed down considerably as well. Native suddenly realizing how important every death is and how they just cannot afford to get unanswered kills. Absolutely. Only eight kills remain. Native Gaming getting really, really left behind. Active camels on the map. They need to find a way to just go there and connect. 
those kills that they need. Seven kills. Active camo in the hands of precision. Following a player from Native Gaming. Trying to get a shoot. A shoot. That's a way to get them out. Just sneeze on them. Five more kills left for Complexity. They cut it down the floor. This camouflage is just an absolute pain for Native to deal with. And suddenly it feels like an inev inevitability that we will see this finish in Complexity's favor. Vemos ahí. Basically what could be, could be a win for Complexity. Two kills remain, 34, 48, make it a one, make it 49, make it 50. We're done here. Complexity takes it. 2-0 so far against Native Game. Combo five, combo five. Disappearing, I'm disappearing. Good play, just combo if you want. Who's combo? On it, on it, or high ground? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch out. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, I love that listen and I love that play from Woodham right there. We were critical before saying he didn't do the correct flank play at the start of this game. However, that last one was spectacular, executed perfectly behind enemy lines, gets the double kill, gets the third player weak. The other thing I noticed during that listen was I love the calming voice from Wonder Boy. Loved it. Very concise, usable information. Reset. Reset giving useful information, saying Camo's up if you want to push for it. There's sometimes you'll hear coach and you're calling saying, Camo, Camo, we gotta go for that. Yeah. And you hear those sort of comms and you feel like you have to panic and force it. But he's let his team know that Camo's come up as an option if they feel they have the right position to go for it. Love this play from Wutum as well. Reeve locates top middle. He's able to clean up the kill. A five kill lead so for Bo. Able to stay alive with a quick flick of the repulse down to his feet. Lifts him up, and I love that flick from him for that. So good. He That double kill in the garage, that flick was nasty. He's given his team the lead here. 11, 5, and 6 from the young gun so far. The push on the green is where his eyes are focused on a kill and some damage to be able to collapse with his team. Four down for Cloud9. Such big brain plays and positioning. Always one step ahead, knowing where potential spawns are, where the team is going to be, and ready to pounce Five on those opportunities. Look remaining. at Woodham. He's doing this dance right now. Doesn't know if they're going to push out towards the side just yet. Now he gets a little information. He knows he's going to be the number one target. He's calling for backup, and he's hiding. Get now they have some eyes over from the nest. He knows he's safe. The garage push isn't coming. Now what he has to worry about is, is the push coming from the opposite side of the map? Is Woodham going to be left out to dry during this next fight? This happened at the beginning of the game. Is it going to happen again? Such a difficult place for Cloud9 to try and play from right now. No kills to be given over at eight. Kills separate the two, and Wu Tum smells blood in the water. He knows players are no shield. And here <laughs> comes Wu Tum. Just going for those kills, going for the trades. 10 kill lead here for Foe. I would argue that Wu maybe came a little bit later than I would expect it or like there, but still, great timing window, realizing that Camel's coming up. There's not going to be more than one over in that garage, and he's either going to get a one on one or he's going to be perfectly in time to get the flank and get the kills on Cloud9. Now, Cloud9 down by nine kills. What do they got to do here, Clutch? The body shot from Wu Tum makes it such a difficult question to answer. Wu Tum is going to have so much presence on the map. Mouse and keyboard snipers are something to be feared, and Cloud9 had to find a way to get the snipe out of his hand. Wu Tum. Sees all of his teammates pushing forward, so he's going to try and leave tower. Knows it's a pressure from Bridge is a probability. Oh. Diagram hits some perfect shots, but unfortunately, he hits the tab button. Everybody on his team has gone down. Now 45, 46 kills for Foe. They need four to go to find themselves for a top eight placing. Yeah, and I feel like you got to be in one of two camps here. Do you slow it down? Do you just try to drain out time and let Cloud9 make all these pushes, or do you stick with Old Faithful? Do you keep on pushing, keep on being aggressive, 
and force these next fights. And look at Mighty's trying to get behind enemy lines. I don't think Cloud9 is going to fully expect this. No. They feel like this game's going to slow down. Mighty's gets sniffed out by Septify. Chick now trying the exact same flank. Is he going to be punished? It looks like he's behind enemy lines, but spotted out again by Diagram. Two giving up kills there by Foe. Not dangerous yet, but you don't have many more of those to give. Don't worry, Wu Tum's got you. 47th is acquired. He's back tower looking to make some pressure. Oh, oh my, me with the no scope to make this a six kill game now. Everybody on Cloud9 trying to play their lives perfectly. Rami relocating top tower, hits the quick scope to keep his teammate alive once again. No deaths can be given though. 48 to 42. Full sniper in the hands of Rami. Camo coming up. I feel like Foe, they can't just forcefully try to go for this camo. Instead, here comes a nice pick from Rami. Now just a five kill game. So Camo little is going to be crucial here. If Bo get it, they can sneak behind enemy lines. They can pick off a random kill. However, if Cloud9 are able to get this, they are still oh no. driver's seat. Here comes the push. Back flank from Mud. Two kills picked up by Jimbo, and you hear. Damas y caballeros, nos vamos ahora al Slayer que estábamos esperando. Juego 5 y una ventaja importantísima para la escuadra de Quadrant. More down early in this game. 20 to 8. Quadrant have been putting on the beating. Noble and the rest of the lore have to start finding these unanswered kills. Lower this deficit and get this game within his arm's reach. It's going to take time. Right, don't expect it to happen right away, but you have to find yourself at least within striking distance before you get to that 40 kill mark. Esto se está convirtiendo en una situación muy, muy difícil para la escuadra mexicana. Tienen que tener muchísimo cuidado. Sniper en manos de Noble. Ya hemos visto a lo largo del fin de semana, sobre todo el viernes, de lo que es capaz de hacer este muchacho con el sniper. Y justamente es lo que estamos viendo. Busca a alguien más y donde pone el ojo, pone la bala. Back with the sniper, able to find the back of one. No oh, ah! mames! Noble gets the kill. He's trying to stay alive. These lives are so important, no. but unfortunately, Quadrant able to find him before his shields come back. They get a sniper with four bullets in it, and you got a man with the name Sniper in his gamer tag. This could be disastrous. 19 a 25, la ventaja todavía es mínima, ya la de, lograron hacer más pequeña, pero aún así, Quadrant mantiene el control del Power Weapon de Sniper Drone con el Sniper, con el Franco Tirador, porque me reclamaron otra vez que no decía Sniper, que no decía Franco Tirador, más bien, ay, 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 intentaba conseguir el tiro que quita los escudos, pero no es suficiente, lo sorprenden, el Sniper regresa a México. Flying forward, tapping. Working alongside Drift. They've gotten this game within reach. Remember, guys, this game started them being down 20 to 7. Now, on an impressive run. 14 kills to just the five of Quadrant in these last couple minutes. Quadrant completely changing their game, slowing themselves down, but this sniper of tapping guaranteeing kills at this point. Camouflage coming up now. El camuflaje va a ser una jugada importantísima para ambos equipos. Puede ser excelente el tiro, el trail, la asistencia. Viene la otra, viene por la segunda. Lo viene persiguiendo o lo va a derrotar como de que no. 28 a 25, tres kills de diferencia es todo lo que tienen. Ahora el camuflaje activo puede pasar a ser de tapping buttons. Cuidado, granada de plasma no conecta, pero hace que retroceda, retroceda a la escuadra francesa. La pelea es por el active cam. I'm happy, not able to get the kill, but the nade does oh, connect. No, no te ma mames! No mames! mames. Wait! <laughs> oh boy, Acid. Able to get them within one. Quadrant have consistently been on their back foot for these last few moments. They have to stop this push of Lore Gaming, but tapping buttons makes it even. Can Lore Gaming take the lead? 29 a 29 es algo que nunca habíamos visto. Se estuvieron preparando para esto. 29 a 30, la escuadra mexicana toma el liderato por primera vez en este juego 5. Viniendo de una desventaja de aproximadamente 15 muertes. Algo importantísimo, algo impresionante. Empiezan a caer, pero la diferencia se mantiene igual. 32 a 31, Francia está ahora sí que contando sus panes más finos. Ignore everything that's happened from the start of this game. The game starts 
now. 33 to 31, just a two kill lead for Quadrant. But Lore Gaming starting to feel a little bit more disjointed on this map. SLG able to get the assist and stay alive with this sniper. This sniper gonna cause so much chaos on this map. It's important for Lore Gaming to find SLG and take care of him right away. The Quantum Translocator, he can go back at any moment with this sniper, but his teammates win the fight outs on the other side. Suddenly tapping buttons has a six bullet sniper as his team has the game tied up. Tapping buttons controls the Mexico Destiny in this tournament. Cinco minutos restantes. Tapping button. Si en el flanco tirador puede empezar a hacer bastantes jugadas peligrosísimas para la escuadra francesa en cualquier momento. Está esperando el momento específico, el momento perfecto. Sabemos que están en esa parte de short, pero al mismo tiempo saben que tienen que tener muchísimo cuidado. Es su vida en el torneo lo que se mantiene en juego. Están ambos equipos a 25, no, a 15 kills de seguir adelante. Y todo lo que necesitan, excelente el tiro 35 a 36 México Con una excelente, excelente forma de mantenerse de pie Camuflaje activo en el campo Taking the sniper kill But trades on the other side Hitting North Stipes Dabbing buttons in trouble Trying to get himself away They have to concede the camouflage for now No, lo avientan y casi se lleva la kill Pero no va a ser suficiente Dos kills de diferencia Tres ahora Quadrant está solamente a 10 de poder Nueve ya de coronarse el campeón En esta ronda uno de eliminación No va a ser suficiente Tienen todavía esperanza México solamente tres kills atrás de los franceses SLG caused chaos with this camouflage. They didn't spot him. Tapping buttons goes down. Another one's to find the trade, but those nades do so much damage. Look at Quadrant. They're flying to the attack. I don't think Lord Gaming. No, they're coming from behind. They're behind you. Coming back for the fight. It's a three on three in such a close quarters battle. Quadrant starting to come out on top. The lead suddenly expands to five. Lord Gaming, the hopes and dreams of Mexico on their shoulders. Can they lift them up? Cinco kills de diferencia es lo que separan a México de empatar con Francia. Y cada vez más los franceses se nos están poniendo más al tiro. 47 a 43. Esto puede acabar. 48 a 43. Nos estamos acercando a los últimos momentos posibles. 48 a 45. Todavía no cae el que podía ser el penúltimo en dar la serie para los franceses. Todavía no. De Noble con el francotirador. Danos Noble, por favor. Danos el empate. Tres te estoy pidiendo, cabrón. Tres te estoy pidiendo en este momento. Es todo lo que necesito Con que hagas tres Acábalos ahora México perdió en el juego 5 45 a 50 Es el score final México se queda sin ese último empujón Que necesitaba Que perdemos ante Cuadran Pero Cuadran con un ejemplar Forma de dar el juego Con un ejemplar forma de seguir adelante Se mantiene en el Elimination Bracket Cuadran Finish it out Absolutely icy performance from them. They had the massive lead. Lore were able to pull it within reach. But it comes down to some vital plays at the end of the game. Quadrant able to keep EU's journey in life. And that also means we have two teams that have now been, uh, secured a top eight placing from Europe. And honestly, Lore deserving of a top eight placing. They won't get it today because of how this bracket worked out, but it shows to me how good International Halo has become. I mean, it, do, I, I, do I really have to make a statement? We are looking at an even game all around, just trading left and right. Everything that just happened was just pure Halo action. The improvement for all of these regions is like actually really impressive mexico went from not being able to go from pool play to now being a really strong team that's just decimating anyone or putting up a lot of fear into the teams that are automatically cal qualify to pool play all right folks look at this game fives on both sides of bracket complexity native still going on 2-0 in the lead for complexity we'll get ourselves into that game as it's an elimination matchup. Native Gaming in danger of being 3-0'd by Complexity.
they now have to really think how they're going to move around this disadvantage. A little bit of a back smack, that not quite a back smack, still killing spree for Barco that is now standing on the hill. B is going to be switching to blue and they are going to be losing A. Still, they are going to be capturing and basically this could be over in any moment. A couple of seconds before Complexity claims that 3-0. Great shots out range, Barcode working within his team to try to make something happen, but unfortunately, it's a little bit too disjointed at this time for Native Gaming. They only have this Bravo Hill, and Collect, although he made all his way to A, what he did is he went and influenced the spawn, saw his teammates spawn at the elevator, said, okay, you guys have this, I have to capture space on this map. They have can consistently confined to their own hill, and Collect's trying to do all that he can, but the shock rifle of Descendant is just too strong. Trying to get those shots, now doing pursuit with the with the grapple, not going to be capable of taking down the kill and living, but it's going to get a nice trade. BNC now on the color of red from complexity. Still, native gaming trying to deny that capture by taking B. That's going to be a yes. Ryan Noob. Careful, he's really close and could be preparing himself to be able to attack either A or B really quickly and swiftly. Complexity's gonna slow down and just wait for information. Once they have it, they'll go. They got the player off the cross. That was a cue for Precision to go check in, but there's two players in native waiting for this push at A, and it's just the worst possible timing for the side of Complexity native with a much needed wipe of those players at A. Just have to find the straggler over at B. It's a big kill for Mick. He's gonna hit the big shot when it matters, but it's a one on one and it's a win for APG. Able to keep them off B, but not able to get the reset. Complexity are able to get a B just in time, but now Native Gaming have this shot of a triple cap. Camouflage is up. Native had the position and the camo now. This is a dangerous spot for complexity. Mm -hmm. Kula just casually flying by, trying to get as many information. Great stick. Something big happened there, but a lot of three go down for one of both of these teams. Now a little bit of difficult situation. APG able to run away and keep, keep himself alive. Mikwin's working on that top A, and Mikwin also has the camouflage. He wants to be able to try to make a quick flank here. He can't take too long because players are going to be pushing forward as he pushes on the other side. He knows that he has to come back to defend at A, check all his corners, no one here at home. But at this point in time, Native know how quick this game can get out of hand if they give up control of the map just one time. From here on out, expect to see a little bit more of a passive Native gaming, trying to find individual picks and stop the pushes of complexity rather than playing for a trip cap of their own. With this patience, they are basically just trying to tire them entirely. And from that way on, keep up with the scoring now two captures for native gaming right about now but complexity quickly switching them barcode look for anyone within the shroud screen he will be able to find it but complexity scoring and at 233 points every tick feels heavy for the side of Native Gaming. They can not play slow anymore. They have to continually apply pressure towards these hills. We have a double cap, not going to make it a triple. Complexity able to get a hold of C. Still, Native Gaming denying any single chance of Complexity to just being able to capture Look more at complexity than Complexity over on the over on the top cross. There's two players trying to get into A. Collect was able to battle out on the other side, but Precision has flipped over that A spawn, and APG having to try to do his best to counter the players at B. This is tough for Native Gaming, and with all these kills going down, Complexity in a dominant position. Ten ticks needed. Only Collect the last player alive. It's desperation for Complexity. Their tournament hopes dissipating in front of them. They have to need. They need a miracle now. Make it a triple cap, only three seconds away. They really want it. It's going to get take, make one taken down. 249, 250, and that's another day of life in bracket. Complexity moves on against Native Gaming 3-0. Top eight finish for Complexity to get the 3-0 finish for Zilla. I had a great time with you. I'm gonna bring us on camera. Because I want to I give a shout out to you in particular. 
right? I think you did a fantastic job today. I want you guys all to go on Twitter, whatever it needs to be. Go give this guy a follow. What, what's your Twitter first? It's going to be at Versilla54. You can find me basically in every single platform with that name. Uh, honestly, just really stoked to be th here. Thank you so much, Luis, for that awesome spawn. You have right there my my Twitter. You can go and follow me. Uh, honestly, this has been a dream come true. Like I said, it, uh, it, it was always my dream to come and just cast Halo, to be able to uh, put my passion, not only from Spanish, but also in English for all of you guys, and to be able to just do it uh, in any place, like a land environment, like a mayor in Arlington, Texas with LVT, it's just a dream come true. Like I said yesterday, that's where my grandpa wanted me to see. So I'm here putting up the work. I really hope you guys enjoyed uh, that double casting. I really just hope it is up to our liking. If I can, I, I'll do it again. But, uh, Lord is out, but still, there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, I think this will not be the last time we'll see each other. So hopefully we we'll either be on the next uh, mayor, it'll be on the, maybe on another HCS open series. You can always follow me uh, just being around or really close to Halo. Yeah, guys, this guy's been grinding over in the Lat AM scene. Does a fantastic job over there. We'd love to have him back on, especially for some of these uh, Mexico versus America matchups that we've seen. Guys, fantastic day from us. We're going to transition out and get some new casters on board. But before we go, if you've been enjoying the stream, what's well, those simple things you can do to help support us, right? There's like so many of us out here that we had flights, we had hotels to, to book. It was an expensive ordeal. So you know, if you have a sub available, please use it here. It helps us continue doing what we do today. We'd love to, play, uh, to bring as much coverage of the HCS as possible. That's all thanks to you guys at home. So thank you all. We will get our new casters in for our next matchup don't go anywhere TikTok, haters wish that I slip. No, I don't miss. MJ all hits. Watch me pop off, I'm the king now. Moonwalk to the ring now. Keep on wondering how. Let that choir sing now. Ten, nine, paid all my dues, waited in line. Eight, seven. Now it's about time that I take mine. Six, five. King of the jungle, heart of a lion. Four, three, two, one. Watch out, here I come. All right, Arlington, here we go. It's the grand finals rematch you've been waiting for from Worlds last year. Optic versus FaZe. This one is going to be an absolute banger, I can tell you right now. Hey, look, I can't predict the future, but when it comes down to these two teams and what we have seen, with them, it has always been lights out Halo gameplay and some of the best Halo Infinite we've ever seen, honestly, across the globe and across the last three years. I'm joined by Wes and Tony. Fellas, you've got a really good death segment here, and I'll tell you that much Whee! because we got some stats for you today. But first, before we get into all the nitty gritty here, let's talk about what we've seen today, what we've got coming up next for you guys at home, what you might have missed, because a lot of the scores have been coming in. Complexity this morning, 3-0 Law Gaming. Law also felt the wrath of Bittersweet here, but they managed to pull through 3-0. and And then we've got Optic Gaming also then taking Law Gaming, unfortunately, off the map entirely. 3-0 sweep for them. Space 
station. They met Quadrant in our first winners' quarterfinals. 3 1. Quite a bloodbath, actually, from Quadrant trying to answer back there against SSG. And then we've just seen Foe. 3 2 Cloud9 in an absolute brawl on the main stage. Went all the way to it, and Foe, they managed to squeak it out. Wes, you actually casting that one. That was electric, wasn't it? Shush. I was sweating up there, and I know the players were feeling the pressure because it turned up the heat, but just in time for this next match. What an appetizer that series was because now the main course of our Saturday is served. It's the winner's bracket semifinals, and these two matches have got all of my attention moving forward. Tony, looking across the bracket, it was always meant to be this way, surely. FaZe versus Optic in the semis. We've seen this number of times now where these two have met in the semifinals. And it's always bittersweet, isn't it, for our fans here? Because these are two top teams, and one will get bumped down relatively early here into the elimination bracket. Yeah, when you look back at pool play, you knew that FaZe and Optic were going to come out number one in their pools. You knew they were going to make it up until this point. And we knew SSG were going to get here as well. The real question was, who was going to be that fourth team? and we know Rebellion is now, but it was, it was written. It was in the script. We <laughs> knew we were going to be here from the moment this weekend started. We certainly did. I got a note as well. You mentioned Rebellion there. Uh, I'm so impressed with what we've seen from them, Wes. I think going up against Space Station, it's going to be the tallest order for them. But from what we've seen, the promise that being able to battle back when it mattered most, being down, trying to kill momentum from other teams, it shows a lot of signs of life here. Absolutely. Everything you want to see from Rebellion, and especially now that Sentinels is out of the tournament, we said it in the pre-show, not very often do those top four teams ever really get top four. So Sentinels leaving the door open for our top four to have a shuffle. I think that Rebellion team is primed to be inside the top four by the end of the weekend. But where in that top four, I think they can go as far as those players want to. And as long as they're playing well, they're going to be difficult to, for anyone to out. Well, we don't have to go too far for a prime time match because that's what's coming our way on the main stage. Starting off with Optic Gaming, this roster is one to be feared, has been for quite some time now. But I want to know how they're going to fare up against FaZe, up against their foes from last year, the ones that they fell short to in the World Championships. Right now is the time in their home arena in front of their fans to kick back and do it with an absolute band clutch. You said it best. The home of Optic Gaming will host the rematch from the World Championship. You made the team change from APG to Dead Zone for a reason. It is to win this series. You do not let anyone come into your house and kick your but that is a rule in where I'm from, and I know Optic feels that way, so they need to get up. This one is personal. Tony, on the other side, we've got FaZe. They are looking primed and ready to go. They haven't let their foot off the gas since the World Championships. They come in here as the number one seed. What are your expectations from this team? My expectation for them is to come out and win. I'm sure that's their expectation as well. It was back in that grand finals, win that world championship, where Optic went up those first two games and FaZe went eight in a row. They're still the number one seed coming in. They're still the favorites for a reason. Optic made a team change. They want to win this, but I don't know, man. FaZe, they're looking clean. This is the biggest rivalry we have in the HCS. Both world champions from the first two years going at it and FaZe love the position they're in. The villains, the ones trying to ruin everyone's day in the crowd that represents the green wall, and that will put the smile on their face at the end of this series if they're able to get it done. It's two different championships from two different years going head to head on the stage right now, folks. Let's get into this game. It's gonna be Optic versus FaZe. Let's meet your teams.
It does not get much bigger than this in the Halo Championship Series. Face Clan and Optic Gaming, both of them the recipients of World Championship rings, both of them the recipients of a World Championship trophy. And we're in the winner's bracket now, Andy, and we get to see who is starting off the season hottest. All roads led to here, right? This is the matchup that we came for, especially here in the Optic Arena in Arlington, Texas. This is the match that the Green Wall also came for. But they're going up against the defending world champions in FaZe Clan. Here's a t look at your series layout. Starting off with a little bit of oddball live fire here. Slayer Streets game two. Strongholds Recharge will be your game number three before we get to King of the Hill Solitude and Slayer Aquarius. And usually I say, if needed. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to say that this time because I've got the feeling we're going to see these, Andy. Yeah, I was going to say, let this one go the distance, folks. As a let's go optic chant erupts before the game even starts. Cannot wait to see these two teams. It feels like we've had an explosive Saturday. Amazing results. You might have just seen Wootum, the first mouse and keyboard player to play stop eight. We saw amazing matches earlier from SSG and Quadrant. Smiles on the face of Royal One, looking very cool and calm heading into this one. And this is going to be an absolute banger of a series. Well, there are the Optic Ultras. There they are in the front, ready to cheer their team on. The Lucid Fan Club are out as are the former ones as well. And let me tell you, even though this is the home ground here of Optic Gaming here in Arlington, it's definitely a smattering of FaZe fans in that crowd as well who will want to silence the Optic Ultras. They absolutely will. And big, tall order here for Optic. I got, got to catch Lucid a bit earlier. He was telling me, you know, it, it just feels good. The team's firing so well together. And now as we get ready to get into game number one, he said, we've shaken off the rumors. Everyone can stop talking. We can focus on what we need to do here and they go up against the defending world champions. What a statement this would be for Optic Gaming. If they were able here in this series to send FaZe to the elimination bracket this early on in the event, how much would that do for the team change? How much would that do for this squad to kick off the season with a main stage win like that? With the players are ready, I'm pretty sure the crowd here in Arlington is ready as well. As we are in to game number one of our winner's semi-final, FaZe Clan versus Optic. We're starting off with the general. Let's see what Snake Mike can do all right away, ripped off. That's gonna be too dead for each side, but I tell you what, when we've seen this matchup last year, of course, there's only one player that's different on the stage across these two rosters. That's gonna be dead zone on Optic Gaming. Unsurprisingly, all eyes on him continuously throughout this weekend, and this series is no exception. Here comes Renegade. Renegade has a chance to make a play, do some damage, get out with that QT that he collected on his way forward. And it looks like even though he got some good damage down, it's gonna be Optic who are getting the better of this fight. He'll be forced to retreat back to his teammates. Early ball time here for Optic Gaming, but just a touch of it. 10 seconds or so, nothing really too huge to talk about as Renegade continues to output damage. The only problem is damage does not get converted into kills for them here as Optic holds strong. Yeah, exact same thing I was thinking. It was really good damage and really good QT usage. He's able to get a lot of damage, but as you say, not able to get the cleanups from the teammates just yet. And off the break of that, you're gonna see now Frosty with this camo in hand. Needs to make a push, they're already down by 20. Trying to play off the damage here. He's also got a pistol to work with as well, which means he can pop, pop, pop away at those shields and capitalize on that damage. And ooh, a little bit of a swing and a miss. Very nice. And there's that pistol that gets him out of trouble once again. 23 points still to Optic, though, as they do finally force the play ball here phase. Ooh, a little pancake from Frosty as well. He hits the melee before he hits the repulse to get the little bit of a rare metal there. Finally, will fall. That was three dead for Optic, though. This should translate into a time here. Yes, it will. Snakebite's going to start the rotate. Here comes Formal trying to stop that rotate right now. Yeah, just kind of cut through here. He might be able to cut Snakebite down. Ooh, he's not shooting. Just, just about managed to get away, but Trippy will take him down, so the ball won't be collected by FaZe to keep that score ticking upwards. Optic and Formal there, by doing that damage and cutting through, have stopped a potential back green setup for them. Formal now off the back of it, knows where all of FaZe are and tries to sneak a ball back into his teammates, but FaZe were ready for it. Ooh, it was too dead when he went for the grab, but look at the timing there from Snakebite off the break. Gets the nades into Rat Tunnel, which translates then instead into two dead for Optic, so it won't be too much time on the board. The two teams right now tied at 14 kills apiece. Now, this is going to be a game and a series which is decided by moments. Yeah. One sniper rifle bullet that hits, one that doesn't. One kill that got away or one kill that gets collected. All of these will contribute to who comes out on top at the end of it. But early on here, Optic Gaming, they are doing a better job of just 
out rotating and getting that odd ball away from the face pushes. It's 33 points and rising. It's a strong start from the green wall. Yeah, it really is. Let's see what Lucy could do here. He knows the angle he needs to cut off, so he will move sandbags with the team. A lot of pressure coming in on Camelot's side. This hits the body, cleans it up immediately. Now he's looking for a second. Trippy gets taken down by Royal 2 in the meantime. And FaZe are losing members, and this should just be a case of cleaning up a couple of players. Although Lucy can't quite find where Renegade disappeared to, and that's going to cost him a kill. Look at that, yeah. You can tell just how carefully he was checking those corners in the end. Oh, my. Kill Look at the shots coming out of him, almost gets a second. That'll be a killing spree on the board. And just like that, Optic starts to pull away in the kills category, 21 to 16, and more importantly, on the scoreboard as well. They're up 55 to four. Bormann's got a snipe here on Cuts as well. Nice little body shot onto Renegade. That's gonna completely slow this push down. Now, so important it is to control this weapon. It's not about the flashy kill sometimes. It's about slowing down the push by doing damage. Now he's re-wrapping re towards his teammates on the pillars to provide that covering fire to keep them alive as FaZe try and continue their push. Pretty wild stats here on the side of Optic Gaming as well. Take a look at the big standout. It's Trippy. He's 11 and 6 at a time when Dead Zone and Formal have 3 and 2 kills respectively. Trippy popping off here with the numbers. And again, another body shot here from Formal just means that his ball carrier doesn't come under any pressure whatsoever. 75 points and rising now, and FaZe Clan probably starting to get a little bit concerned about the pattern of this round, because it, to be honest with you, it's been all optic and they haven't really had to do too much for it. Ooh, formal there. Knew he wanted to play the sniper rifle, and then even almost gets the headshot as well on the fadeaway, but now Snakebite with the QT. They're down 79 to nine and finally scoring. There's one team though, it doesn't matter how much they're down, it's just the fact that they haven't lost the round. Enemy has the ball. Where they can formulate a comeback and get into any game type, it's gonna be fades. We've seen it before, we've already seen it at ball this event. Dropped. As Frosty has Enemy the ball has in his hand. Ball. Big push on the earth. Camo side off the map at the moment from Opti, but that's oh, no, just no, no, play ball, no play ball. The play ball didn't come in. I think everyone's thinking the same thing. Frosty there, you, you couldn't tell from Snake Bite's POV. Frosty not in a position Enemy. to get the play ball. And Snake Bite was expecting something coming sandbags, and instead they stuck under him, and they really pushed that three-man push to prevent the play ball. Finally, it does play, but now 84 to 20. FaZe with a lot of work to do. Only one mistake really left for FaZe here. Optic pick up two kills, and that means they're going to pick up the odd ball as well. Row two with a double kill might give them a little bit of a window to push forward, but the clock is against them, and Lucid is running away from the FaZe push. 94 points and rising. Make it 95, and he turns direction. He changes direction, runs back to his spawners, throwing that odd ball down where they can contest it. Okay, ball played at 96. I believe Snakebite also had Camo off screen. However, with FaZe 2 dead, this really should be Optic's game here. However, FaZe turn it around. It's going to be three dead for Optic. Snakebite has that camo like you mentioned. Now there's the opportunity for him to get that first pick in the push, to get the information that he and his team require to create a little oh. bit of space. And there is that kill. Dead Zone did get one onto Renegade, though, so this isn't going to be a comfortable hold here for FaZe. Not going to be comfortable. This is really, really high stakes Halo here. They need to play absolutely perfect for what will feel like an eternity. Down by 60 points. Optic probably thinking we've got a few pushes here. Just take our time, get four players back on the map, get one kill, and then think about that odd ball. Trippy now, having seen the kill start to come in, tries to move towards that odd ball. It's a 2v2 on the map right now. Ball gonna be thrown away, but is it thrown away from the Optic push far enough? Deadzo comes in, he gets two. Is he gonna be able to turn it into a triple? Instead, plays his life smartly. More damage onto Frosty as the cavalry now arrives for Optic. This is desperate from Fate Clan trying to hold the Optic push off that odd ball. Wow, two dead here for Optic. FaZe so far winning that off of the play ball from Snakebite into the dummies. It's a really good play, but still a lot of work to do, of course. Three dead, three, two e one right now. Dead's on the only player alive for Optic. Only player alive, but still alive. Most importantly, however, he will go down. Snakebite will get that ball. Well played. Or as I say it, it resets. That's how long that scrap went on. Yeah. Long enough for that odd ball to reset to bottom middle, and that's great news for Optic. Oh, dangerous. Renegade almost dies bottom, and he gets taken down. He's the first to fall. However, 3v3 on the map. Here comes Formal. Formal backing up Lucid. Lucid gets taken down as well. Gonna have to slay around this ball before they try and do anything. Snakebite's buying so much time. He's throwing a shoulder at him. And in the meantime, here comes the rest wow. of the phase. Royal 2 falls down to get that kill onto Formal. Snakebite was taken down, but Optic lose two members. Now, can FaZe keep this up all in their hands, or is Trippy on the flank about to cut them down? And maybe win oh this boy. round is Dead Zone and Trippy. And it will be Optic who get round this corner with the up ball to close it out. Very, very good closure. You had to think that was eventually going to come with the enormous lead they had. But as you said, a lot of composure, a lot of patience coming in from Optic Gaming. Trippy gets the help he needs as he pushes in towards the pillar door. They will close out the round. And now look to do it in two rounds if they can. What a round from Trippy, by the way. Not only 
Ouch. The game-winning moment. He's 16 and 12 with 56 seconds of ball time as well. Doing it all in a big series is what he's known for. And he's trying to continue that in that first round and in this series. For now, though, the pressure is going to be top middle because that's where that sniper rifle has just dropped. The QT out is going to allow Snakebite to stay alive for just a second, but Trippy sniffs him out and puts him to sleep for a few moments. Got to say, really interesting uh, comparison between the points on the board in Ball and also the kills. That was a blowout round largely in terms of score for Optic Gaming. However, the two teams right now are tied at almost exactly 50 slays apiece. Trippy going to move that ball away again and. 2v2 on the map right now, so his bodyguard is going to be looted. Where are the face spawns? It's heavy on the Enemy ammo side ball. of the map. Trying to force their way forward. Trippy's oh, looking for a rotate out. They're trying to force the space over at green where their numbers are. Oh, oh, and having handed that ball off, Snake by forgot that Trippy was here and he might live to regret that one. Two dead here for FaZe. A good opening as well, once again, from Optic Gaming. 19 points already on the board. We'll see if they can continue in a blowout round, as we said. Let's get into a listen here in round number two with Optic Gaming. Watch out training, watch out training, man. Watch out this. You guys rats still, they're pushing big door, they're pushing big door. Trying to kill this. Three pulls should be up or what? Yeah, one guy top nest. Nest, John. Nest three shots. Good luck, good luck. Back to the back to the one absolute. Back to the absolute event. Back to the back to the one shot, absolute. Watch out training. Go back to the one shot. He's training, he's training. It's one shot. It's one shot. It's one shot. It's I'm in mean, weak. Same guy. Two shots on mid. Two shots on mid. White box. White box. Yeah, I don't see him. Enemy has him. He's absolutely double jump. He's absolutely double jump. The one up on Ovi. Frosty. On screen. On screen. Three shots on screen. Three shots on screen. Nice. Enemy has the ball. I'm going. I'm going. I'm fighting this. I'm fighting. Your lungs in. I spawned here actually. I spawned here. Enemy screens and two and eight, okay? Coming screens. Screens and two shots. Screens and two shots. Frosty. There's two there. 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 There's two Ball drop. That one. Two dead guys. Tower, tower, tower. Come first. 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 Watch out, nice three ball four deck, get some space here. Sniper, sniper, sniper. Yeah, sniper. 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 I spawn elbow, I spawn elbow. Could be nest. Ah. Could be green. I got sniper, I got sniper. Okay, okay, I'm yeah. hiding elbow right now. We're rotating this cuts, we're gonna be in the Nice, nice, two shot. Okay. Pillars, pillars. Hey, white box on mid, on mid, on mid, on mid, mid in the vent. Perfect. Two shot in the vent, one shot in the vent. Good jump up, good jump up. Can I summon? Three on three right Enemy halfway to victory. Come on, mid. One shot in the vent, absolute. Pretty good. Pretty good. One shot in the vent, one shot in the vent. Absolute fight, tires. He's one shot in the vent. On Ovi, on mid, one shot. Sniping cuts, sniping cuts. See, what's tires? One shot. On ball, two of dummy, two dummy door. Two. Well, Optic sounding composed and calm as they always are, but to take ourselves back into the game and look at that score, Optic have the lead at the moment, but FaZe with far more, I would say, consistent setups and ball time than they had in that previous round. Certainly looking much better for FaZe and FaZe fans here as three will fall on the side of Optic Gaming. Four dead, first spawner is up, that's going to be dead zone. And now right back in this game, of course, a Let's Go Optic Chance answers back to the score, climbing up here for FaZe, but a lot of interesting stat lines as we're just about tied here. Mark FaZe actually goes into the lead by just a few seconds. A lot of interesting stat lines to highlight. I'd say one of the most interesting is going to be Formal's assist for a lot of that listening. He had double the assists of anyone else in the game. It's what he does best, right? The human UAV. There's a nickname there for a reason. People playing off his damage. It's just constantly the player to play around. We're taking those good positions. Snakebite will get the trade back tower as Optic find themselves two dead again, but FaZe find themselves three dead. So Trippy turns his attention from kills and taking some more FaZe names to that Opal. Also worth pointing out here, a much more, a much closer game as you see five points only separating the two versus that first round, but really, really still close in total kills between the two teams. It's 71 to 68 in favor of FaZe. Frosty trying to locate where that player is. Enemy has completely the ball. lost him in his dead ball. zone. Who comes back to challenge and dead zone who almost just about gets away with it. Frosty hits the final headshot though with the bandit and now we're going to turn our attention away from the oddball towards the camo. Five seconds or so till it comes up. There's an opportunity here if they can get it for Optic to get that oddball out of the hands of FaZe. 
And now, dueling chance, you might be able to hear Let's Go Face Clan and Let's Go Optic Chance just battling it out just as fierce. Three do fall for Face Clan. Renegade's your last player alive. Camel's down. Should be a clean grab opportunity. It is for Lucid as well. They will continue scoring. They're down by just about 10. Lucid looks formal straight in the eyes and says, take this odd ball, I've got camo, let me make a play here. And look how heavy this push is. Ooh, look at this. On the camo side here from FaZe, it's all eggs in one basket. But they don't know about Lucid, but Royal 2 pokes back out off the damage. Manages to get that kill, but here comes the rest of Optic. Good afternoon and welcome back to HCS Arlington. We got an incredible matchup here. History on the line once again as Foe takes on Proton. Mikowski joined live with PD, the grassroots community's very own, out of the grass and onto the main stage here with us behind the scenes in his first ever cast. PD, welcome. I could not be more thrilled to be here. Mikowski, it is such an honor. LVT, the whole crew is unbelievable. It is, I, I am so excited. The amount of passion we're about to see in this Halo. I am thrilled. It's electric. On the other side, you got the Finnish Phenom, and people asking, is he finished? Well, yes and no. He's continuing on in the upper, uh, the lower bracket, I should say, with the potential to earn top six. Already made history in the sense that we've never seen mouse and keyboard get this far in the event. You guys gotta go check out Halo's Twitter feed because there are some incredible photographs of Wudum holding up that mouse and keyboard high and changing Halo history forever. The course of Halo history, it feels like forever. I gotta imagine more people watching at home are thinking, maybe I can do it too. Maybe I'll pick up mouse and keyboard and start playing Halo, whereas maybe they wouldn't because they think it's a controller game. Such an unbelievable moment to see that across the timeline when 343 decided to buff the MK, you know, bring a couple more MK players onto the scene and Wudum is doing exactly what we're so thrilled to see. He's putting on a show. Woo! We are on board with King Nick. That is an unbelievable stick to that player and vent. That's gonna create some space in the mid map for him and Proton Gaming. It's a crucial map, but he, the favor is returned as he is in fact stuck. Wudum, the newcomer. Foe, the newly formed team, going up against a Proton squad that was talking about with Eli earlier. Pound for pound, this has to be one of the most veteran teams in the HCS. You got King Nick, Sab, Gilkey, who goes all the way back to the 2000s. His career spans three decades. And then Suspector, who is in the Grand Finals, the first Grand Finals of HCS. So if Foe are to continue on to a top six finish and continue with their historic run, they're gonna have to take down a really good Proton team that nobody really expected to get to this point. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this Double team kill. had the expectation of a top four, but now, I mean, it looks like they can stop and stop anyone in their tracks at this point. So the team chemistry is coming together right when they need it. We're on board with Gilkey. He's got seven kills to his name, 7-0-2, oh, and, and he's got the sniper. There's two of them on this map. He's looking to take control. We're already three and a half minutes into this one. No caps. Argyle capture the flag. You can see this one go to overtime, even sudden death. It can be tight down to the last second. Thrilled for these eight players putting on a show right now. Gilkey earning mid map control with that impressive double kill earlier, and he hits another snipe, a sliding check, <laughs> slides back to the respawn screen. In incredible what we're witnessing here from Gilkey. He's an OG veteran, maybe old in the thumbs, but fresh on the sticks with that snipe. Eight and two now. As he looks to continue on, another no scope for the killing spree. No regard for human life as Gilkey continues on through. Does he have another one? Check. Send it back to the respawn. Straight twice in a row. Yes, he does. As three go down for foe. Gilkey almost single-handedly has pushed through into the back base of foe, making sure that they don't spawn there. And he's got to tell the boys to come on through. He's pushed through. He has the presence in the foe base, but Proton aren't going to get a flag out just yet. It is so unbelievably difficult to capture a flag on Argyle. It feels like sometimes you need three, four rounds of slays to even take the base, let alone capture. Gilkey doing everything humanly possible to take the base, but the defense from foe comes in and it almost feels like the map is neutralized. There's two down for Proton Gaming now, three down for foe. So we're kind of back to square one here, but my goodness, Gilkey, putting that sniper to work for us here today. I'll tell you what, Foe should be proud of the defensive effort there to keep Proton out of the base. Gilkey played it right, he played to block those back spawns, but 
Proton weren't able to push up and match up with his positioning in the back of Foe's base. For now, things are going to reset Gilkey back into the mid-map, back in the ventilator system, and he's got the kit to work with in the sense that he's got the long range with the BR. He can work with the DMR as well as he gets a little close with that grapple hook. Going to switch to the Bandit Evo for the finish. And he doesn't earn it quite yet. Instead, he's going to allow King Nick to finish that off. No. Took about a difficult kill here from Mighty's. Finally, King Nick finishes him off. And it looks like Gilkey only in his base still with a defensive effort, but he's got the snipe back in his hands. A full one to work with. Yeah, you got to wonder if the team almost called. You know what, Gilkey? You're hot. You come back. You get that. The amount of map he covered with that grapple shot as well. Almost half the map to come back and get it. He's your guy right now. You want this weapon in his hands. Gilkey with seven shots. Now six. Boot him. The finish Phenom. The Rising Superstar takes him down. As two go down. On each side, make it three for Proton, three for Foe. Back and forth we go. And like you mentioned, PD, with how difficult it is to score here on Argyle, you're going to need multiple team wipes to do that. But the multiple team wipes are, are occurring between both squads. Nobody's really been able to earn that map control at the halfway mark. And I think the respect between these two teams is palpable. You can feel it, the intensity. You know, you lose, you go home. How close this map can be, it can only take one flag, and that's three down for Foe. Could see an opportunity. Three down for Proton. As well. That's what we were talking about. Uh, team wipes are occurring, the ones that you think you need to get a run going, but it's all trades. It's all 1v1. Three down for one side, it's usually three down for the other. As Gilkey has the snipe back in his hand, has Mighty's down to one HP, takes him down, and with one shot left in this snipe, what can he do with it? Uh, no grapple this time. Almost looked like he wanted to. Used to it. Checking every corner. Oh my goodness, and that's exactly why he finds Chick hiding and hiding no more. He's hit the respawn, he finds a second player hiding, gets a killing spree. That's two down, Gilkey single-handedly takes down two. Is that enough space on the map, or has he simply neutralized it? Jump on board is Sab in the basement, able to secure a trade. These two teams so evenly matched, only five minutes remaining. Proton Gaming have a kill-death disparity as a team. A positive 10. A little concerning in the sense of OBJ efficiency. Now we know, again, on Argyle, it's very difficult to score. You need to have a plus 10, it feels like, to just to get a, a pull. But Proton, despite some impressive sequences, impressive performance from the likes of Gilkey and King Nick, they just haven't been able to earn much control. And I think that bodes really well for Foe. Hopping on board here now with the rising superstar, MNK's very own Woodham, as he turns on Sab but does not find the finishing shots. Instead, Sab wins it, survives at 1 HP, and is going to continue on with his life. We've seen a couple players in the bottom of the map almost have to get creative here. Someone might have to be the aggressor, sneak through behind enemy lines. It's going to be, at this point, it looks like one play that could make the difference. Or the check, he has found a snipe of his own. Has it here. Lining up his shot, playing patiently. Waiting for somebody to push through, but there's really not much presence on the left side. Instead, he looks right. Takes the face of Sab. Still one player to work with. And I think Suspector might have just snuck through. I think in 10 seconds from now, that could spell trouble. You could see some shots start to go into the back of Chick. I keep wondering to myself, where is Suspector? Where has he ultimately found himself? There's the shots in the back. But Chick answers back with the body shot. Takes Suspector down to one HP. Suspector finally gets cleaned up. And that's the process for Foe that they need to extend this flag past the 50 yard line. Unbelievable. Coach Mikowski knew exactly what was happening. Oh my goodness, the frag grenade kill comes in for Chick as well. He's doing everything he can right now with the snipes, the guardian angel for the double, and the frag prior. Doing everything they can to keep this flag moving. They had three down for Proton. Chick has a beautiful sightline, able to suppress that fourth player, and the flag comes in. That's one nothing for Foe with three minutes to go. Foe, secure it in the end game with just three minutes left on a map like Argyle. Feels like a two or three flag lead on a map like Aquarius as Chick continues on, on a killing spree. And before that, he was, uh, uh, a point had a point five KD now back to even impressive stress run for Chick, but three go down for Foe. King Nick and Proton have life, but he fumbles. Is that gonna affect the run? And sometimes this actually works out for him. King Nick down a one v one needs to win it, needs to hold Foe at bay, and all the while he's doing just that. Proton extend the flag out. They might just answer right back. The flag is meters away from being scored from Suspector Grapple Tech. Gonna be used to tie things up at one, and Proton answer right back. 
Unbelievable. We thought it might be a 1-0 finish. Absolutely not. Two electric back-to-back -back flag captures. Fo puts one on the board first. Proton answers immediately. What a rally and what a finish from Suspector with that grapple. Two minutes left. Two scores. One on each side as we're tied here in the end game. Hopping on board here with Suspector. Going to push up through the left side of the map. Has some pre-nades out. Doesn't spot anybody just yet. But two go down for Fo. And my goodness, we didn't see... Much of a much map controller, much of an aggressive effort from Proton, but they seem to really turn up the jets here recently. They've had the slays throughout, but now they have the aggression to match. I think it was almost a feeling out process with how important this stage of the tournament is. Both teams trying to understand when can we be aggressive, where can we take new li lines and be creative, and all of a sudden, boom, it just explodes into two flag caps, <laughs> but right back down to a stalemate. Everything means a little more now. Minute and a half to go. Again, feels like next capture wins. Suspector bided his time, able to get some good damage through the middle of the map. He sees a couple teammates go down. This is huge. Suspector needs to take down Chick because if he does, he'll earn this snipe. He does, and it's almost a full snipe to work with. You can see Suspector's uh, natural instinct is to get back to his side of the map and potentially steal it, but no. Woodham has it instead, and He's popped off with it all day in a 1v1 with Sam, and Sam gets the better of him, snipes him in the face, and Proton have the edge. Absolutely massive from Sab to shut down Wudum. We've seen him make countless plays today. Sab said, absolutely not. Not right now. Not here. Not today. We're on board with Gilkey. We've seen him do some serious work with this sniper. There's so many snipers on the map. It's unbelievable. It's 1-1. One, one. We got 40 seconds to go. See Sab, his teammate, uh -oh. with a sniper kill in the feed. Goki recognizes that. So you know what? Maybe I can take a high sight line. Foe hoping to be saved by the bell, but they might not get that opportunity. King Nick has a flag out, and with two snipes in possession from Proton, a double kill, two lives in possession of Gilkey. They might just steal it in the end. Gilkey goes down, but Proton go up in the match. Only 15 seconds left. What an incredible sequence. Do Foe have the time? I don't think so. Hold the line. Hold the line. Take some space. Don't just give him your base. Four seconds oh. remain. Is anyone near? Oh, Four down. down. Go Proton. Triple kill for Wudum. Sudden death OT. Are you kidding? Pie chart on your screen. And Wudum has an opportunity to tie it in sudden death. We saw back-to-back -back play captures earlier. Can we see it again? All four are live for Proton. Do they have any sideline right now? Unbelievable. Remote detonation stops that run from Wudum. And Gilkey might just win it here. Unbelievable sequence in the end game. Waiting with bated breath to see if that flag gets reset and dies despite being picked up by foe. They're not going to have a chance to tie it. Oh my gosh. Take the mic. I can't breathe. Are you kidding me, Mikowski? Proton Gaming take game one, two to one. I feel like we just saw four games in one game. How many ups and downs did both teams experience there? Proton comes out the victor. But if that's an indication of what we're about to see, this could be a heck of a five-game series. Oh, I should have done more cardio before this tournament. We stretched. Unbelievable. One of the most electric final two minutes you'll ever see in Halo. We didn't see much <laughs> scoring going on until the very end. Oh, I thought Wudu was going to score. And PD? It looked perfect. We set this up when we talked about the veteran leadership, the veteran playstyle from Proton Gaming. Who else makes that heads up play than a veteran like Gilkey, the remote detonation, to Un stop that run? Wow. Unbelievable. I can't imagine what these players are thinking right now. I, if you're foe, I, I mean, again, that's such a long game. Like, can that An loss, emotional game at that. Exactly. Can that emotional <laughs> loss at least drain you for game two? Does that carry forward? Can Proton ride that momentum? I mean, that was an unbelievable finish. And look at what we're seeing on our screen. Gilkey absolutely going on a tear with a sniper earlier in the match and ultimately makes the remote detonation to seal the victory. What a performance for Gilkey. Gilkey made enough plays to start off this game, PD, to, to make you think that they should have been up 2-0. We talked about the plus 10 kill death disparity. And they do score first. And it felt like that might be the only one of the match, but foe tie it. And then Proton, uh, or excuse me, Proton regains the lead, tie it. And then Foe nearly ties it in sudden death, but they're not able to. I, I feel like we should be in OT right now. We shouldn't be talking about the results of this match. What an incredible finish there. Ice in the veins from the veterans of Proton.
Yeah, you commented on it before the match started. We've got, you know, Wudum, the younger player, alongside Chick, Jimbo, and Mighty, whereas King Nick, Sab, Gilkey, Spectre, they've been there, they've been around, they've experienced it all. They come out with a massive victory in game one, but it is a best of five. It should not be a problem for foe to regroup, regain. They're in the pro bracket. They're in Elim round two. They are not strangers to this type of pressure. And I expect them to bounce back in a big way in game two. Wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. It's hard, to me, uh, hard for me to pick a favorite match Double of the kill. day. Friday, a little sleepy. You know, it, it usually is. You only have a couple matches in that day one of pool play that get you up out of your chair and jumping up and down and around like we have been here today because the matches have been incredible. This one's no different. And I'll be honest, just speaking from experience, Argo can be tough to play. Like, I'm not sure if people at home or what you think of it, Mikowski, but it can be a frustrating game. And, and for me, I've seen a lot of the pros recently, maybe it's just recency bias, see them play it slow from the beginning. Like, we didn't see a lot of action for like seven minutes, and all of a sudden it's bang, bang, two caps. So it's almost like they're trying to figure out how is the best way to truly capitalize on that map. I still haven't figured it out, but I'm uh, thrilled to be watching them. Wow, what a series so far as Proton take the lead, 1-0 in it as we set our sights to live fire, but something tells me, PD, this isn't gonna be a training exercise. This is the real deal. Lower elimination matchup, top six on the line. Winner moves on, loser goes home. Stakes are high here. Live fire Slayer, we've got the S7 top mid. We've got the camo now, could be a big play. We've got the QT back B. I would love to see some QT plays. They are always electric. QT, something to keep an eye on. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's come on cam real quick and let's give a proper introduction to the Grassroot Halo community's very own Passion United's very own. PD, welcome to your first time on land. I, I could not, cannot, will not say it enough and I will keep saying it. Nobody does it like LVT Halo does it. It is remarkable. To be here is, it's surreal. Almost doesn't feel real. I think that's the definition of surreal. What's the experience like for someone who's in the chat every single weekend watching the stream and now you're a part of it. Now you're on it. What's it, what's this like for you? Put the experience into words. I know it's just only been one game, but like you said, it feels like it's been a whole series. Yeah, that one game was unbelievable. Uh, what's the experience like? It Grateful. I think just so many nice adjectives come to mind. But at the root of it all, and forgive me, but passion, it happens to be... It's in the namesake. Passion, like, I, I think passion drives why I do this, yes. why I've continued to do this, and why I will continue to do this. It is so fun to be a part of this, and I can't thank you enough for allowing me to be here. Passion's what fuels me, and it looks like Proton are getting a full dose of passion. Up by six here to start, one to seven, nearly skunking them. With a 7-0 start instead, eight to two for Proton as... They do a good job to start off strong here. Take the lead. Yeah, nine to three, that's a great start. And you have camo, you gotta be feeling real good, but I imagine not comfortable and not satisfied. You're up 1-0 in the series. However, every map means so much at this level. Ah, oh, Repulsor, mind the gap, mind the veteran, Suspector, don't ninja him too. He gets another potential, mind the gap. Suspector playing tower defense control single-handedly with this repulsor earns another slay with the prosthetic elbow And it looks like proton are gonna ride the momentum and that's what you get when you win an emotional Elongated game one it filters into game two like we see here It is so hard as the team that loses game one and a lengthy game one at that to avoid the letdown in game two and Proton Gaming, it's easy to ride that momentum as we see Suspector and Gilkey have worked so well on this tower together here with the Repulse and Gilkey with the Sniper. Every person on Proton had four kills a moment ago. Teamwork, all-time high Proton right now. And I like how Proton are really simplif simplifying the strategy. Let's just hold tower, let's hold snipe. And that's exactly what they've done here, maintaining the lead, maintaining map control, and most importantly, maintaining the high ground is Gilkey. Suspector. Everybody for Proton having the stats that would really feel that make you feel like they've all put on an MVP for uh, performance. Gilkey at 6.0 though. I gotta shout out Gilkey, man. He was popping off to start game one, doing the same to start game two. Gilkey is not done just yet. These guys all, King Nick especially, 
in a renaissance of their career. They're finding a second breath of life. And this has been impressive. They, everybody counted Proton out as it relates to this roster. They're not dead yet, if anything. They've got plenty of life. Not even close. Are you kidding me? Gilkey with a double kill. He's doing it all. I think he frustrated the heck out of Foe living on tower for seemingly the whole beginning of the map. Well, why did he leave it? Only because Camo was up and he secured that no problem as well. He's on an absolute tear. And he might just be on an absolute killing frenzy. Not sure when that death occurred along the lines of the nine slays that we've seen Gilkey already accrue. Foe have 10. Gilkey could almost be one beforeing them right now as he Enemy does secure that 10th kill. Not quite the killing frenzy, but he'll take it. I think that sniper was just passed off to Gilkey. That's a great teammate who gave it to him. Camo snipe, not a bad combo if you ask me. Oh, I believe Camo did just run out, but hey, back to tower we go. And at this point, Proton could wall of death run into the middle of the map. And as long as they connect with the opposition trade out, they're going to take game two easily. An impressive stretch of gameplay here as Proton has all the momentum. And most importantly, the snipe control, the snipe tower control. Once again, if Foe are to come back in this game, I'm trying to set a path for him. They're going to have to flip the map on its head. Yeah, it's got to be frustrating knowing you really haven't had tower once, it seems, for foe so far. So how do you coordinate? You need maybe three going one way, one going another, some sort of a distraction. You're going to have to neutralize Gilkey somehow, which seems impossible at the moment. But my goodness, he's hitting absolutely every shot. Players are having to run, but Mighty finally takes okay. him down. Could that be what foe needs to get back in this map? How do you, how do you take down an elephant? One bite at a time. You can't just try to take it down in one fell swoop. The elephant's too big. The lead is too big for Proton. Foe need to play this match in sequences. They need to try to dwindle what feels like a 3-4 possession lead down to three, then two, and then maybe one if they're lucky heading into the 40s. We're going to hold out hope for them, especially from what we've seen from them uh, historically throughout the tournament. But my god, Gilkey, the domination continues. And now we're starting to see some body disrespect. We're seeing a little bit of extra passion in the game here. A little bit of flair from Gilkey. 11-1 and 2. Feeling great. Proton up 1-0. Looking to take a 2-0 lead. The familiar remote detonation. That worked quite well in game one. As he watches his back here as well in A. Gilkey pushing on through. Maintaining his life. He's got a repulsor to work with as well. Could get tricky with it. As he pushes on through the sandbags, now lining up some frags on the camo side. Has an opponent there. But again, Proton do not feel pressed and stressed at all to finish any of these kills. Instead, they're going to allow Foe to chase, allow Foe to grab this camo. But it seems to be all part of the plan for Proton. Foe might get a couple slays here from it, but those won't be enough. Yeah, I mean, at this point for Proton, with this big of a lead, nearly doubling them up, 37 to 19, trades are great. There's nothing wrong with them. In fact, I would almost want trades at this point. Just keep the other team in a bit of a blender. Mighty's got to find a way into this battle. He's got to insert himself in a big way and soon before this camo runs out. Expecting an overextension, expecting the left stick to be held forward. The shot's being hit from Z Mighty's, but is not able to secure the triple kill. Instead, Proton secure a doubled up lead heading into the 40s. Ah, geez, got to find a way to get some momentum, even if not for this game. Your series is not over if you lose this game. As pros, professionals, you are not out of this. You've got to build some momentum, at least for map three. Could be huge to see how they close this game out and can start game three. Yeah, this has reached what we like to call the confidence kills portion of the match, where foe aren't going to win this one, but they can start to put together, again, the sequences and the process to carry into game three. This series isn't over just yet, but this game likely is. I would be the first person to be absolutely thrilled if this comeback did happen. 16 kills, they're down. They have six deaths to work with, does foe. We see two do go down for Proton, so if it's gonna happen, that's exactly how it needs to start. Jimbo has the sniper as well. And we haven't seen what we have been used to seeing this weekend from Jimbo and his protege, Woodham. Could be a big reason why, in addition to the stellar performances from Gilkey and all the veterans for Proton Gaming. I talk about this all the time too. Play your 25%. When you see grouping and all four players are within four kills of each other, that means everyone's playing their 25%. The mathematical proportions are adding up for Proton. So too are the slays as everybody's within just three kills of each other. You can see King Nick and Sap tied at 10. As the slaying continues on, Jimbo, though able to earn a slay and 
Here we go. Some confidence kills have been earned. They avoid the spectacular, right? You're just start to, you're just trying to build a little momentum heading into the end game, regardless of what we expect from this final result. Yeah, it looks like the vibes on Foe have gotten a lot better in terms of the kills they're getting and how they're getting them. Jimbo specifically, what we've seen in this life has been remarkable. His ability to live on tower with the repulse, jump up across the movement tech, it, it's all been great. So everything does bode well for them to build into map three. But I mean, hey, they're still in this. They have clawed their way back. They're down eight kills and they have camo. I think Proton's gonna be a little concerned right now. Impressive to bring it back to two possessions. They could use camo to make it a one possession game. This is incredible. Foe have a little bit of life, but with every passing second and respawn screen that Foe visits, it gets more and more unlikely for them to make this comeback. Jimbo does get the slay, but it's 40 to 48. They need to play perfect Halo. They need to get these slays without trading out. And that limits some of the opportunities Jimbo has to play close range. He can't necessarily go for the melees like he'd want to because he'll trade out. There we see an example of that as Proton have the lead by seven, need just one more to secure it. They do, and Proton go up 2-0 in the series. Jeez, I mean, Jimbo on that life, I think that might have been a two-minute life there, and he secured a beautiful double kill at the end. You, you gotta like how they finish the game. I think they're down 37 to 19. They end up losing by maybe seven or so. They clawed back. They won the second half of that game, but Proton had done enough. Can't be too indicative of what we might see in game three, but the massive lead Proton built, they do secure the W. That is 2-0 Proton. Next up is Recharge Oddball. We saw a very tight Argyle capture the flag. Very curious to see how an Oddball will play between these two teams. Reverse sweep trampoline. That's what we call it. That's what game three is when it includes Oddball because it allows you the time to figure it out, to find what you haven't found yet in this series and in this matchup. And historically, going into games three on land, you have a break, a bathroom break. You have five, 10 minutes to collect yourself, take a deep breath. PD, I almost wish I don't know. Somebody like somebody like backed out to the main menu or something on foe. Like somebody did, did you know? Not, not nothing nefarious, but did something to kind of ice out the momentum that Proton had after that game one. That game two started very quickly, and because of it, the momentum absolutely carried over. You could feel it. You could see it. Yeah, you got to find a way to basically do a 180. You're down 2-0, uh, but you have to find a way back into this series. And how do you do that? Well, if you and I were playing 21 right now or the basketball court and you don't see me missing, maybe I roll you the ball this time. Maybe I don't pass it to you. Let's make you do something different. Maybe change it up a little bit. 100%. Gosh, I love that uh, example. I remember playing a lot of 21 as a kid growing up. And yeah, uh, just, the, you know, it's the game within the game. It's not just about playing Halo. The mind games are just as intricate and maybe even more important than the Halo itself. Yeah, just do something weird. I mean, you're down 2-0. you got to find a way back. Get creative um, on recharge. I mean, what can you do? There's a shroud screen. Not sure if you can really do anything crazy with that. Shock rifle. I mean, just make a make a weird play. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I mean, that's going to be up for Foe to decide as to how they want to do that. But something's got to change a little bit. But like you mentioned, like the reverse sweep trampoline, like an oddball, similar to what we saw in Argyle. That's a 15-minute game. Went into sudden death, so you know, plus a couple seconds. But either way long game win goes to proton they ride that momentum for game two recharge oddball we could be in store for a long game win goes to foe everything kind of changes a long emotional victory could do wonders for this foe squad right now and think about how close the games have been here in this series despite seeing a, a little bit less proficiency than what we're used to from the core now of this foe roster in jimbo and Woodham. if Woodham gets back on his steez and starts racking up the assist count doling out damage across the map recharge is such a great opportunity and, and, and playground to do that it allows you to work through the middle of the map and play efficiently maintain your life maintain damage and that's what i expect to see from Woodham. what else do you expect from foe if they're to come back in this one so i mean jimbo his movement tech i loved like truly loved the way he played his last life towards the end of that game the movement the patience i think that was a big deal so maybe a player like Jimbo can step up in an IGL role and make sure the team is almost following his lead and his pacing. Maybe it just takes one player or even check. We've seen him hit unbelievable multi kills on the main stage throughout his career in HCS. Maybe he just steps up and absolutely goes bananas. It could be one player that takes over, like you mentioned, Woodham. I mean, we've seen <laughs> this is unbelievable. MNK player, so young, doing such magical things with MNK for the whole MNK scene. Maybe he pops off again. Now we know how good MNK is with the S7. I don't think that 
Foe are at a disadvantage because we're going to recharge with a shock rifle. Reigns at the top of gold, back of gold. <laughs> Wudo popped off with it earlier in the day. It actually kind of took off us off by guard, uh, us off guard because of how sticky it is on controller. Mouse and keyboard not quite as there. But Wudum was with the accuracy, but unfortunately, off the start, it's Proton with the opening break win and a little bit of time to boot. Now we see King Nick holding the ball. We got Sab protecting the red pipes with that noob combo. We heard there's a rework coming in for that weapon, but not just yet. Mm -hmm. Seven points on the board for Proton Gaming. Good start for them. They have a bit of red control as well. All things Enemy bodes well if you're a fan of Proton. Very interesting on the uh, in the sandbox decision making here from Sab. He's electing to take the plasma pistol. Over the shock rifle, it's still there at the rack as Sab earns the sticky trade. Seven to seven, trade out in the feed and on the scoreboard as this thing's tied early. Yeah, very interesting. Not sure who ended up taking that shock rifle or if anyone. I think like it's still there, man. I mean, it's a pretty tough spot to get. So the respect between the teams, palpable, saying well, wide on the open. I can't get that. Nice trade comes in. Suspector. With the oddball in his hand, set up at the back of blue, and there's the there's the shock. It's in the hands of Jimbo. He's waiting for somebody to make a play with it, and that could just bring Foe right back. But no, Suspector works his way with the oddball, rotates to gold, says, I'll take that. And he hits another one! An incredible headshot there on Woodham. Opens up the rotation from the back of C to gold. I am loving what I'm seeing here from Proton Gaming. You can argue I'm a little biased. Halo. I mean, at the end of the day, we love great Halo, and Proton is putting on a show specifically Sp Suspector right now with his shock rifle. Oh, and he's got the sightline into control, and he's oh. making it work. He's got the double kill on the player and needles. Oh, and he's got the sightline on the chick. The chase is on. It's two down for foe. Make that a fresh two, and look at that. He'll do it all. Suspector makes some unbelievable plays and picks up the ball to boot. Aiden, shut down Suspector, shuts down the hold for Foe and now has the oddball back in his hands. I love the process there. Enemy Gets 12 seconds of ball victory. time, says, my role now is to earn slays, earns that, now has the ball back in his hand, perfectly playing his process, allows Foe the 10 seconds to get back, all the while he earns 10 more seconds, and then resets wisely, up by a minute here. They're gonna force, force Foe to chase. Yeah, that ball is out in an unbelievably difficult spot to get. Don't think that'll be quickly picked up. We see another trade come in. That's two down for both sides. King Nick looking to play the sneaky player in top red. You know, he knew he had two players. That's why he did it. Able to secure some damage, but ultimately is taken down. Is there an opportunity for anyone to make progress on the map? Gilkey. Lining up some cross shots, but for now, Foe have a good stretch of gameplay. Proton reset things once again. And Foe will have their best chance, it looks like, of the match to secure some time of their own and get right back in it. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to see if you're rooting for Foe. We got Mighty hanging on to that ball. Wudum, he's got the best sight line perhaps on this map. Holding top A, the spawn is so important. Sab comes in and does secure a trade that could be crucial. Taking Foe's position on A away. Suspector doing such a great job juggling the ball and his priorities now. 180s. But he goes down. More impressive stretches of gameplay from Foe. They've been able to cut this lead in half because of it. But it looks like if Mighty's can stay alive, work his way through the long haul and back up to gold, you have A spawns here for Proton on the right side. Foe occupying space on the left, but they do also have, looks like the gate being kept there on the needle side. Assist goes through as check take down, takes down one. And here's the flink. Mighty's is on it, but my God, the Spectre picks it out with the fist. It takes him down, Foe rotating the oddball all the while. A couple of slays for Suspector, but more time for Foe. The confidence of Mighty, just like you said, the spawn was in A, Mighty was aware. He cut through the middle of the map to get there as soon as possible, but the awareness of Suspector, whether that was a calm from a teammate, was absolutely immaculate. He picks up a double kill. That's a huge reason why Foe is now three down and Suspector's holding the ball in red. He traversed all the way from A, picked up a double kill, and he's safely in red now. Well, when a guy has the most kills, least deaths, most oddball time in an oddball, my God, MVP, you don't even have to have a conversation about it. It's a specter, it's him, he is him. As he continues on, and look at this, heads up rotation once again, the sense of pressure and pushing from foe is so intricate, delicate, and intellect, uh, intellectual from the likes of Proton as they've continuously played keep away with this oddball, that's why they're up big. Yeah, you need to milk every second possible, and when you realize you're under pressure, get that ball out of here. Proton goes three Again. down, but Sab, the only remaining player, is able to rotate the ball. So with three teammates dead, he finds the right 
play. And that's what Proton Gaming is seemingly doing every time. 99, 100. That's round one. They're up 2 0 and around. For Fo, it is now now or never. 2 0 lead for Proton and two keys to Oddball. That's rotating at the right time, right place, and resetting the Oddball at the right time, right place. Perfect. Two for two. Perfect. Halo played for Proton as they take a 1 0 lead in game three, a chance to secure the sweep and send Fo home. Yeah, Fo is top eight, but they want more. They want top six guaranteed. That's what Proton is on the verge of right now. Sab, lining up some shots. It's enough to take that player down to low HP, but with low shields himself, he'll elect to back up, and he's not playing for spawns here on the seaside. Everybody up for Proton Gaming, but with that oddball still at the reset, I like the pace. I like the sticky! Nice, uh, nice throw there from Sab. Perfect timing. As he, as he another one, it looks like he actually got stuck clambering and throwing the sticky at the same time. That diminishes the velocity that Sab would have had. Instead, he goes down, as the sticky does too. Sniper in the hands of Foe, and an opportunity here in round two to come right back. Need to win this one, though, is, but King Nick finds it. King Nick finds a double kill, and that's a trade win for King Nick in a 1v2, and he takes down both. I believe that was briefly three down again for Proton, and yet they come out with the ball. Uh, they're finding the right kills at the right time. They're rotating. They're playing the ball when they need to. Just near-perfect Halo from Proton right now, and the timeliness of their kills so important. The efficiency is immaculate. And here we go. Another perfectly timed reset. I, I, I'm feeling frustrated for Fo. They gotta be feeling maybe a little bit of that in the comms, especially in the scenario where they're down 0-2 in this series. What's the mental looking like? What are the comms sounding like? I'd love to go to a listen-in if we had the opportunity here. But we don't. Instead, we're gonna have to work our way through this match as Chick works his way through to the seaside, rotating. Like we've seen here from Proton previously, Foe have an opportunity. They're close in this round, but they can't let it get away from them like it did in round one. So difficult for Foe. You can almost see a pattern here. Proton Gaming and Argyle, they played it slow for quite a while and ultimately found the kills when they need them on live fire. They held tower for seemingly the first half of the game. They're just, they're able to almost suffocate the opponent and keep the main area of combat to where they like it, to where they are comfortable, and to where they have an advantage. Foe needs to find a way to break that pattern, whether that's bringing the ball to somewhere different or just making a four push in a direction a la Ryanu. But something's got to change here. They're down 35 to 9. Tournament life on the line. I expect things to get pretty nitty gritty here for Foe right away. As a double kill comes in for Wudum, that's exactly what they need. But again, Foe earn a team wipe but every team wipe is just to simply earn a reset it's never to earn more ball time and proton have done a great job never getting stuck at the top of a or the back of c or the back of gold with the oddball before resetting it with perfect timing and perfect pace but just as i say that foe cut the lead in half now down by just 15. wudum on a little bit of a killing spree here has another one potentially lines up it looks like he's got shaky shots but they're all on fire they're all on point as gilkey goes down wudum is having more of the game that we're we've been used to seeing and because of it foe are going to regain the lead i gotta wonder like m and k like what's the endurance like i've only ever played controller but when you get into the late stages of a tournament what truly is it like to be M and K when you've been playing for hours and hours and hours, days and days of this high level? Well, Wudum showing that it is possible, and he is doing it, leading his team. And yet Proton, though, they wrestle away the ball. They have a very small lead. That's all they're going to need, though, as long as they can close out this round. They advance and secure top six. Here we go, Proton Gaming once again, rotating away with it. King Nick on the opposite flank side, but two go down. Wudum combines to help for that double. As three go down, but look at that. Proton get the reset, but it gets caught by Mighty's. Nice interception there. Doesn't allow the nice reset like we've been seeing from Proton. Because of it, Foe are right back at it with more time and the lead once again. Yeah, it looks like King Nick might be the entry fragger, might be the first person behind enemy lines. Can he create enough disruption to allow his teammates to gain some space on the map and break this Foe setup? Wow, I thought they were going to regain the lead. They will, in fact, but they're playing this really, really patiently. They. Held strong for about five, six seconds where Proton wasn't even necessarily close by. Foe are playing patiently. They're playing their process, but Sab has camo. Looking to become that ghost in the night. The nightmares of Wudum as he takes him down. Oh, five perfect shots on Chick. Out DMR reversal. Perfy as he earns ball time with it. This is reminding, reminding me of the plays that we saw from Suspector earlier, earlier where he frags out and then finds more time. If you're going to be catching wins this late in the tournament, you need absolutely everybody on board. Sab 
incredible play with that camo. You know how important of a player you are when you have that camo. To secure that double kill, that perfect on the second player, huge for Proton Gaming. Both teams playing for time because of it. That regulation clock might not become a factor. It looks like we're going to see 1-0-0 zero, zero on the board for one of these two teams. For now, it's a 1v1. Jimbo versus Suspector, but Suspector goes down. Mighty's off spawn trades out. But hold the while again. Proton rotate this oddball to the back of C. And by the time folk get there, they're going to drop it off the drink. That's exactly what happens. Proton goes three down, but they play the ball exactly when they need to. The fourth kill does come in. That's a fresh four down. Jimbo has an opportunity to rotate this ball. Hits a G-slide, gets the heck out of dodge. Can they get this to back C? Can they take map and isolate the spawn of Proton? Oh, this is huge. Uh, Proton didn't get the A spawns. Instead, they got the gold Dorito spawns. That's going to give Jimbo at least five to ten more seconds of time. Enough time to regain the lead. 75 and rolling to 70 as Jimbo looks to hold on. And now we see a Proton-like play where Foe get the early rotation and re set. Three go down for Proton. Four go down instead. You almost wonder if Jimbo could have held on to it. But Woodham's there to pick it up. And Jimbo has the shroud treat. He's going to allow Woodham to get away. Long haul spawns for Proton. And they're in a little bit of a blender now. What an unbelievable play by Foe. You got to wonder if the comms came in and said, get ready. I'm going to play this. Bait them out. Because Proton went flying. I thought they had the advantage. But Foe completely turns it on them. Jimbo with the huge kill bottom middle. King Neck is on the flank. Eight seconds to go for Foe to secure a round three. Five. Four. Three, and I don't think there's pressure. There is actually. Melee battle goes down. Reversal goes through. But three go down for Foe. And with two seconds left to secure the win, Proton are going to have the oddball. And now Foe have to break through one final time or else Proton will steal it. Are you kidding me? Jimbo was the last remaining player alive and he just went down as well. So it's three fresh spawners from Foe. Can they orchestrate a push? Well, Gilkey doesn't want them to, that's for darn sure. He's got great damage here for May. He's got the flank on the people cutting across the middle of the map. Unbelievable damage. Eight seconds now for Proton. 93, 98, five seconds away from victory and a 3-0 sweep as Proton are gonna get one second away, but they go down. So two does the oddball, one second left. Foe trying to milk the win, they do! In round two, feeling just like that Argyle CTF, but in this case, they're able to ice up. Well, we saw what happened in game one. Will history repeat itself? It's now sudden death. Next round wins. Proton to advance, Foe to stay alive in the tournament. I love this series. It's 2-0 on your screen, but you'd be a fool to think that it's been that wide open. This one has been highly contested as Suspector. Earth the triple kill! Five perfect shots on multiple players. Looking like he's playing aim hero, as he's the hero for Proton that they need for now. As Gilkey rotates it away, gets a little stuck on the ceiling, but gets through with the use of the grapple. Deadliest catch, has the shot, and he puts it to instant use on his Z-Mighty's face. Gilkey! Don't hit the shot to the shroud screen. That's Chick, he's there. He gets the opportunity, he trades out with the three go down on each side. It's a 1v1, but King Nick wins it out. Proton continue to clutch up, but it's only gonna allow them two seconds of time as Foe now have it in their hands. This one's back and forth. The amount of slays required right now to get a true setup is unbelievable. We've seen Foe three down at least twice already in this, but the last player alive, it was Woodham at least one of those times, I think both of them, able to shut them down. And guess what? Only two seconds were put on the board for Proton, and now Foe has the ball. Five to two, early lead, but really not much in terms of ball time for either team. As another trade comes in, that's three down for Proton. Yeah, three. Four. Three kills for Suspector to start things off. Only two seconds of ball time to speak of, and Foe on the other side. Based on the eye test, seem to have their mojo back, and they're back in the lead, up by 10. Wow, are you kidding me? The perseverance from Foe. They will not back down. They will not be put into a corner. Got a small lead here. A bit of a setup, but they are not comfortable. They know they need the slays. Mighty with a crucial kill through to Turbine, allows him to press out and cross map for the double. That's three down for Proton, and a big opportunity here for Foe. Mighty's looking to earn another well-timed rotation like we've seen in this one as he tosses the oddball in his sights towards the long haul. Going to go on a little bit of a side quest here. We're going to take down Sab, but he gets a shot in him. Now Suspector, he can get it too. Plenty of damage going out for Z Mighty's. I'm surprised not to see a kill assist come up on the screen just yet. As Proton have control of the oddball, but with it down at the stacks, control going to be vied for. Now we're back on board with Kill Key. Seemingly behind enemy lines. I don't know that they know he's here. Well, now they certainly will. A little bit of damage. The wingman comes in. We love seeing that. Great teammate. Foe stays alive. 
Back, blue, the ball is rotated to bottom middle, so a bit of an artificial play ball. Nice trade there, Woodham and King Nick with the stick. It's a veteran play from King Nick, right? Dead to rights from Woodham. Make sure he has the stickies at the ready. All you gotta do is body stuff, hold that left trigger, left bumper, whatever it is that you... Map to the sticky grenade toss as Proton. Now, facing what feels like the first continuous stretch of good gameplay from Foe, but Gilkey has the shock in his hands, and if it's any indication what he's done previously with it, he's gonna pop off, gets the body shot, potential cleanup on the grenade. Great movement there from Jimbo, but it's not enough to stay alive as Gilkey retains control of that shock. And top gold, oddball at the reset point, just feet below him. And you've got the weapon to do it. If you're Gilkey, but the pressure is coming in quickly. He does go down the shock rifle. Trades hands. And now it's time to put in the closer. Who's going to ice this game? We only have two minutes remaining on the clock. Are you kidding? With the amount of respect between these two teams and how this series has played out, not surprised at all it's this close in the third round. And that's what happens, PD, right? When it looks like a free-for-all on your screen in an oddball, it usually means the clock is dwindling down. Less than two minutes left in regulation. Only 26 total seconds of ball time here. <laughs> Everybody seems to have forgotten about the uh, OBJ here, and they're just looking to slay out. You can feel the rivalry brewing. Everybody looking for slays before securing more ball time, but it's Foe making it away with that potential reverse sweet trampoline win here in Game 3. That's exactly what we chatted about. The long Game 3 victory could do wonders for Foe. King Nick has secured camo under a lot of pressure. Does fall bottom middle. Would have on the sneaky side, but everybody aware of where he is and what his potential is in the HCS. We've got to see plenty of them. 34 kills for Wootum. The most in this lobby with so many veterans, with so many superstars of Halo's past competing here in this match. Incredible to see Wootum in his first ever LAN appearance. Hardly has a thousand hours in the game. And he's soaring above the rest of the competition. And it's not like he's not playing OBJ. He's got 34 seconds as well. 35 kills. Unbelievable what we're seeing from Wootum. As Proton go three down, Foe are going to continue with this stretch run, and if they build enough of a lead, up by a minute plus or so PD with less than a minute to go, they can start to manipulate that clock. Absolutely, the clock becomes a teammate for Foe at this stage. Almost need to think Proton might have two, three more pushes at max. They're really going to need to maximize how they push, when they push. They need to wrestle away an advantage here. Otherwise, they will see Foe take this game. Just as we chat about that, it's three down for Proton, but Gilkey does have the ball. Able to scrape just a couple more seconds for his teammates able to come and help, and he does elect to play it. Very interesting. That's bait. That shock was bait, and Jimbo, the veteran himself, able to pick up on it. Saw the UI indicator that the oddball was reset near the bat ledge. Knew Gilkey was there, and now has the shock rifle to work with because of it. Less than 50 seconds left. A 54 to 12 game as Foe are finding their mojo. A killing spree for Jimbo. Killing spree. As he continues on with those perfect shots and that and shock rifle, plenty ball. left to work with. A full rack. We've seen a bit of a theme here in the last two minutes. It's a three down again for Proton. We've seen that maybe three or four times in the last couple of minutes. Now, Foe is electing to pick up a little more ball time. They're feeling secure in the moment. 30 seconds to go. They do toss that. So Proton, you got to think down to their last push. I'm not good at that. I'm not very good at math, uh, PD, but I'm seeing a plus 20 kill death disparity from Foe. Not only do they have the efficiency, but they're finding their slays. The gunny is back, and most importantly, it's back for Jimbo and Wood on the two guys that we talked about that needed to have a performance that we're more used to seeing from them. That's exactly what we're seeing from them, but Proton, with less than 20 seconds left, 17 to be exact, have one final hold. Can they do it? Ah, uh, Gilkey with a beautiful play with that camo. Now he's almost in the middle of the map. It's exactly what you want to do. You're picking up as much information as you can and securing a kill. But that ball does go down. That clock keeps ticking. Sab, the only player alive for Proton. Oh, is he anywhere near this? He's got very limited time to get to this. Proton earn a near team wipe. They take down three. But with the oddball over here, again, another nice rotation this time for Foe. And they do, in fact, take it. Steal game three. We got ourselves a series. Foe has life. They are absolutely back. Game one was neck and neck. That could have went either way. It did go Protons. Game two, albeit Proton came out hot. They came out heavy and they rode that to a confident Slayer win. But that oddball game three, Foe, secure the win. And now the task for Foe is to do exactly 
what the opposition did with that game one win, taking the momentum, stealing the previous game like we just saw Foe steal it from Pr Proton, and riding that wave, the wings of Pestilence, into a momentum-riddled game for Solitude. And this is a momentum-based game, uh, game type. Stronghold, Solitude. This one's building up for a potential reverse sweep game five. I'm getting excited. New first hill. It's bottom middle. I'm not gonna lie, Mac. I think we are going to see absolute carnage. I could be very wrong. Maybe we see the, the slow play, the respect between the teams, not wanting to take that risk, be that first entry fragger, be that first death. Well, I don't know. Something tells me we might, we might see absolute carnage bottom middle and just a battle for this first hill. That's why you earn confidence skills, especially in a Slayer in the previous game. Think about that too. Even though Proton won rounds one, round one and seemed like they were going to take the series, the confidence kills going all the way back to game two absolutely were important enough to make Foe feel like, all right, guys, we got this, but let's bring more of what we saw at the end game of game two into game three. And we saw that at one point it was what, like 32 to 14 in that TS? But Foe, you could argue, had a better end game. Uh, hard to win an end game and lose the match, but they were just down by so much, 40 to 20 at some point. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous, the double up that Proton did to Foe, but now they're right back in it. Foe has a chance, and if not for Gilkey, have it a little bit of a, uh, you know, an unfamiliar game based on what we've seen in this series, that was huge. So you got Jimbo and Wudum back on their steez. You had Gilkey kind of falling off a little bit from where he's been, and it's all led up to what feels like a reverse sweep potential. Yeah, it, it almost feels like a coin flip. Like, if Foe can carry this momentum, there's no reason they can't come out with a victory here in this game four. Like you mentioned, maybe Gilkey was absolutely frying game one and two. Perhaps he rises again in game four. I mean, we're seeing there's eight unbelievable players in this lobby. It could be absolutely anybody, but would be nice to see Gilkey after what he did in game one and two. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the bracket and update from HCS Arlington as Complexity taking on Quadrant in lower round two for top six where phase awaits. All right, that's what I was curious about. And how did... Optic takedown phase. Was that a 3-0? It had to be a 3-2, right? It was a 3-0! Oh my gosh! Optic with home court advantage, and they're putting it to good use. Talk about a confident W. I mean, we all know what happened at Worlds. Optic got out to a 2-0 victory, or 2-0 lead. Pardon me. Phase came storming back. May or may not have won eight straight games. <laughs> bracket reset. That is a huge, not only win, but 3-0 win over FaZe. That could bode serious momentum for Sunday. That's a monkey off the back win for Optic Gaming to switch gears here around the conversation. Plenty of great matches going on, and we're going to make sure you don't miss any of it on LVC Halo, and that's exactly what you said. We set it up. Optic going up 2-0. Could have almost been like a oh, 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 this is where we were against FaZe just uh, moments ago, months ago at the World Championship, but they don't allow the door to open. Instead, they shut the door. I should say slam it shut. Didn't get a chance to see it. No eyes on it, but that 3-0 kind of speaks to where Optic's at this weekend. Oh, and pardon me. I do not know my emblems very well. It is strongholds we are getting into. And it is a quick trip cap on the board for Proton. Gilkey's got the shock as well. A couple of win conditions satisfied, but he's already out of ammo. In trouble on dip, does go down. This is big though. This is what we talked about. We wanted to see Foe ride the momentum like Proton did, but instead Proton put a bad taste in the mouth to start game four. Despite that game three stolen Valor victory for Foe, they're not able to ride it into game three. Instead, Proton riding a hot streak, potentially into the hundreds for now, 69 to zero. Uh, this game type is absolutely bananas. You can have a massive lead and see it disappear with one setup. Would not be surprised to see either team do that in this game, but we see the killing spree come in for check. 7-0-2, oh, he has all of those kills right now. That's incredible, 7-0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. I mean, I've never seen a stat line like that as Chick is willing foe back into this one. And I'd again make the argument in the sense that, well, if Foe were able to keep it close and actually gain some control in the meantime, with nobody else getting slays outside of Chick 1v4 in Proton Gaming, that could set up well for them. But for now, Proton regain control of the lead and B. Now we see the BC Hill control for Proton. Gilkey bottom middle looking to protect it with his camo. That was a huge kill and knows it is contested. There's another player huge. nearby. No problem. Double kill rolls in and a bit of camel left to work with, but they lose AC. And now Gilkey looks like what he did in games one and two. That's going to be a massive win condition for Proton Gaming if they're to secure 
the top six fit. It feels like we're watching two Cinderella's play, I'd, I'd argue, PD. I don't think many people had Foe or Proton placing top six, but one of them's gonna. Yeah, almost poetic that they match up against one another. <laughs> the killing spree comes in for Gilkey. 10, 2, and 3, they do finally take him down. The BC hold still in place for Proton. Mighty's on ledge. Now, pretty advantageous position here, looking down, shooting into the barrel, able to secure a kill. But does this translate, though, into map? 22 to 101. Three go down for Proton, and that's going to give Z Mighty's B for free. Not even going to take a shot. And that's going to allow him to freely rotate up to A and potentially work his way for the trip cap. Cafe spawns for Proton. Shots going out from Z Mighty's. And they do, in fact, have the trip cap. What a response here. And this is exactly what we talked about. Chick continues on with his stellar performance. But now you got Jimbo, Mighty's, and Woodham off the bench. And on the board, Foe have life. Yeah, you get the three down, maybe four, and you put them in the blender. Trip cap was secured momentarily for Foe, but they do have to give up C. Now we see Gilkey trying to pressure C to hold it. No, it looks like that should be and is secured. We have a trip <gasps> cap hold this again for, for Foe. They're going to hold this through two cycles of slays. This could re regain the lead for Foe. And how does Wuda play this? Are they continue? Are they going to continue with the spawn trap? Split spawns. One on Cafe, three on A. But Foe and Wuda were able to pick it up. What a heads up play from the, you'd assume, veteran from Wuda. He's a rookie instead, but he's got great game sense. And another sequence, three in a row, that foe win. And that will, in fact, give them back the lead and potentially another trip cap. Yeah, the ability for Wootum, whether that was a calm that came in or his reaction time, to understand that tram spawn, isolate, get those kills. They had to give up A, but they still hold BC. The run they're on right now is huge. And the killing spree for Jimbo as well. It's all starting to click for foe at the right time. I'm going to give that... I'm going to assume there's some good comms there, but I think that was game sense. Woodham recognizing only one player on the cafe side for an extended duration of time, five, six seconds. He realizes, hmm, this doesn't seem right. Let me look over my left shoulder. A spawns were there. And because of the heads, heads up, whether it's communication or game sense, nonetheless, Foe have regained the lead and have regained in this series. My goodness, they were down, I think, 60 points. Well, now they're up 30 and counting. Chick has 15 kills to his name. And he's got a player trapped low lift, and they have the trip cap again for Foe. What is this? This is incredible. If not for that uh, meticulous start from Proton Gaming, Foe would be running away with it. And they might just. Trickling, though, is the blue on each A, B, and C. C, not going to go in Proton's favor, but A is. Can they stop the bleeding and regain B? Yeah, they still, Proton Gaming seem to be able to get one, but never two, but they finally do that. They get a couple of slays, and they're able to use it. Now, can they collapse? Can they keep their advantage? Can they roll with it, maximize, and be efficient with their advantage? Down by 60 seconds. Proton need what Foe just did, and that's sequences upon sequences, two to three, that you win outright, at least with three slays. For now, Proton going to continue the scoring as we hop on board here with Woonum, the Finnish Phenom. Taking down his opposition, King Nick, again, recognizing the, uh, the the location of the opposition through communication in this instance as he pushes up with Z-Mighties onto the snipe side of the map, has Gilkey low HP, but the repulse are not going to be enough, sends him up high, but Woodham stays alive! Three go down, make it four, and Foe are going to secure another trip cap! What an unbelievable moment for Foe, despite that kill taking so long to come in. I thought that might play a factor. No, the teamwork from Foe the collapse, the ability to strangle and suffocate Proton there and take the advantage. It is another trip cap for Foe. They got 197 and counting. They're looking to close this out. Mighty with the shock and camo. Top mid, this is confidence. Foe soaring and fouring. Well, in this case, fiving their way into the 200s with the lead. Another Double sequence kill. where they take down three and Proton have no chance. It's all Foe right now as they're going to get another trip cap and take all the momentum it looks like into game five. Are you kidding? You can see the passion, you can feel it. Mighty nearly fell off that ledge, and he almost ghost jumped back onto it. Everything's clicking right now. It's 242 and counting. This looks to be over. A's not gonna be enough, they need B as well. They're on it for now. A at 60%, but with Mighty's popping up with the shot, another body shot, Foe have done it! They've secured the opportunity to reverse sweep and continue history. Will Woodham ice up again? Woodham had 14, 15 slays in that game five on the main stage just a while ago. There's no way he does it twice, right, PD? There's, 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 there's no, no way. way. There's just no way. Or is there? But maybe there is. <laughs> there could be. There might be a way. I think there's a chance. <sighs> my goodness, Max. This is going to benefit Foe. It's Aquarius. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, and what a reverse sweep this would be. What a historical top six finish this would be for EU. And for the first time ever, mouse and keyboard. I know active somewhere with a foam finger. Oh, he's thrilled. It says mouse and keyboard on the index, and he's he's pumping it up right he now. He is over the moon. Even if he doesn't know what's going on and maybe watching casting another match, I sure he's got the energy. You can feel it right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All the MNK players. All the MNK players in chat. Gotta feel like, you know what? I feel like they used to hide, not maybe like claim mouse and keyboard, but my God, mouse and keyboard, be proud of it. This is unbelievable. This feels like a tonal shift. This feels like a tectonic shift in the Halo scene. If Wudum is able to do what he's doing on mouse and keyboard, does this not make other players think that they might as well give it a shot? I mean, Royal 2, he's one of the best mouse and keyboard pl uh, players as well in the world. He plays still on controller, but my goodness, maybe he watches some of the VOD back and he's like, man, maybe, you know, before the team gets on, we, <laughs> we run some matchmaking on MK again. I think it was after season one where Royal 2 on his stream was actually playing yeah. MK. I thought like, for a second, I thought, yeah. I thought I, for a maybe. second, because of the buff to mouse and keyboard, they added aim assist. Mm. I thought I was like, eh, this maybe might be more in an experiment. In the back of his mind, was he thinking, like, was there ever a chance? Absolutely, right? Yeah. Why else, you know, there's a purpose and passion in all these players' lives. They they don't do anything just for the hell of it. I, I think for sure Royal 2 is doing some, uh, yeah, doing some scouting, some self-scouting, if you will. And, uh, whew, my goodness, this is this has been an unbelievable series. That first game, I I, I lost my breath. I actually, yeah, I, I do, sometimes I, I lose my breath. I, I, I run out of words. But that was probably the most ever, and it's a reflection of just how close that game was. Foe, you know, you could argue, should have already won this series 3-1. I feel like they got all the momentum, and the series layout reflects it. Yeah, you got to hand it to, honestly, the whole team of Foe. Jimbo, Mighty, Chick, Woodham. At moments, we've seen every single one of them make just an unbelievable play. Shout out Chick, right? Because when Proton throw through a haymaker to start off after hearing that ding of the, ding of the bell to start round four, we'll call it, Chick was the only player, literally, I'm not, I'm not saying he's the only guy to have a good game. No, no, no. He was the only player through seven slays. Minutes of gameplay passed. Chick had seven kills. Everybody else for foe had zero. Because of Chick, he kept them alive. And that's what we called out in the moment was, you know what? This actually bodes well for foe. Faded take, potentially. I'm sure people <laughs> thought so in chat. But I said, Old takes exposed. This, this, I think this actually bodes well for foe because Wudum's going to start popping off. Jimbo's going to do his thing. And they ultimately ended up doing just that. And then Mighty's. We talked about uh, Mighty's versus Glory earlier. I mean, they're both looking like some of the top players in EU. And my God, the performance from international competition has never been better. It was the movement for Mighty for me. I I've said before, and I'll continue to say it, I think you can see the passion and the momentum in the movement of the Spartan. And Mighty almost fell off ledge when he had, I believe he had right. Shock Rifle as well. And he ghost jumped back up could, he had options at that point. He gave himself options and took himself out of the battle to get his new shields. And then he ultimately decided to turn around. And I think he either traded or helped with that kill on bridge. Like for me, that's just, that's the difference between being truly locked in. Like you have so many tools at your disposal at that point. He used every single one of them and they all looked so good. Especially when it looks like, at least in first person POV, like you're faltering, right? Almost missing that jump, kind of having to hit a ghost jump to get back up. But he was no worse for the wear. There was no shake in his hands as he sealed the deal at top mid where everybody could see him. I mean, that was unbelievable. And how many trip caps, it really goes to show. You play for the win, right? You play for the trip cap, right? There's a, there's a conversation in Halo, right? Especially with matchmaking teammates. Why are we playing for the trip cap and rotating for all three? Because of what we just saw from Foe. That is the example right there. You play to win the game. And when you start playing not to lose, you lose. Absolutely, it is when you have the momentum, you take it, you use it. When you have an advantage, you are efficient with it, you maximize it. Foe did that almost all game, but like you mentioned, Chick almost bought his team time. 100%. He opens that game, seven kills for him, none for the teammates. They're I've never down. seen that stat line before. I've never seen it in Halo Infinite For that ever. long, right? For that long. Hell, like go, go all the way back to Halo 2. I've never seen that. Seven kills for one player. Mm -hmm. I thought when you mentioned it, it was oh, seven total slays for Foe. They're you know, a little behind in the slay category. <laughs> I was shocked. It sent a shock to my chest when I looked down the board and saw nothing but goose eggs for a couple minutes. 
And it's really unbelievable the way that Foe has been able to regain in the micro, in the macro, and now they have an opportunity to make history once again in a game five. And PD, we've seen players finish top five in kill-death ratio on mouse and keyboard, but never both. I feel like Foe with Wudum could po possibly be in that category. I haven't seen the stats just yet. We've been too busy casting, but my God, a top five player and a top five finish on mouse and keyboard in your first ever land event where you had 990 hours of Halo going into the off season. I mean, I just, I can't believe what we've seen here from, from Wudum. We started off the broadcast actually with Foe called him a phenom, calls him a, called him a rising superstar, and some people hadn't even heard of him just yet. Now you're going to see why. I think I learned of him maybe four months ago, but it's been from zero to 100. Didn't know about him. Now it's M and K, Unite. He's our guy. He's got the controller. He's got controller stands who are like, uh, you know, if they get involved in the uh, input device war, he's probably got some controller fans. <laughs> he's kind of like, hey, maybe I go online and, you know, check out some mouse and keyboard and, you know, why not? All right, we are getting set for game five. After games two and four on lane, got a little bit of a bathroom break, and I wouldn't be surprised if neither team are using the opportunity to use the restroom. I imagine they are talking through intricate levels of strategy here. And Aqua TS, again, I think bodes well for Foe. A little bit younger in the, you know, in the tooth. And Aquarius is the fast track. And they have, again, Wudum, who I just think is going to absolutely tear it up. I asked him uh, yesterday, we had a conversation about this. Do you pick up the battle rifle? It's not as sticky on mouse and keyboard, especially long range. It's a little bit more difficult to hit the shots. And he told me that he's the designated battle rifle. He's the guy that's supposed to walk by it. And he says he'll pick it up every single time. Keep an eye on Foe and Wudum with the use of that battle rifle, maybe using some long range efficiency to allow his teammates to push through, get in the face of Proton. That might be the strategy that we see deployed here in game five, but this could go anyway. We're talking up Foe. We're talking about all the momentum they have, but this is where the veteran leadership leads to veteran ice. And that's what Proton has. That's the advantage that Proton has. They have to play to it. You might have some nerves on the side of Foe. I remember my first time playing on the main stage, my hands went numb. And I couldn't feel him anymore because the adrenaline was so much. I realized that's probably not a good thing. And for Foe, you have to hope that nothing like that happens to Wudum. It certainly hasn't. He's already had his opportunity to fry on the main stage in a game five. He was a top performer previously to earn Foe a spot in the top eight. Can he do it again with a top six finish? Proton, though, again, with all those veterans, all those dogs, all those guys written off. And I got to take an opportunity while I have a break to shout out King Nick, who was really left for dead. I felt like scapegoated for complexity when they had troubles and issues placing top 12 throughout last season everybody blamed king nick maybe he wasn't the problem i mean there's four guys on the team it's tough to point at just one when you're playing a team game if you're pointing at one guy doesn't bode well for the perhaps the whole team why well, you read my mind all the chatter about foe what they've done they've pulled this series back well let's not forget what proton gaming did two win games one and two and i think that veteran Veteran experience, it's a game five. You're playing for top six at the first major of the year. I, I don't know, you flip a coin. Uh, are we in the business of making predictions or are we going Switzerland on this one? <sighs> what does the chat want us to do? Uh, I don't know. Excellent. I'll question. say what I don't want to see from Foe if I am a Foe fan, if I'm biased, B-U-Y-E-S-T. They cannot go down 20 to 10 like they did in game two on Live Fire. You cannot afford the opportunity. I know they sort of had a... 20 to 10 start uh, mirror in game four, if you will, for Proton. I think they had the first 100 seconds or so to zero, just about. They were up by a minute for sure before Foe were even able to get on the board, much less a slay. But I, it's too deep. It's too deep in the series. The the consequences are too high. It's, it's, it's too important of a match. You cannot go down big for Foe. I think their rallying cry and win condition, at least to keep things, uh, to, to get things going, is to just keep it close. If they can just make it a one possession game, They've shown that they have the execution and the strategy to come through with one fell swoop, take down four cleanly. So as long as folk keep it close, it's going to be a game all throughout. But again, they cannot go down 20 to 10 like they did in game two. If so, I'm not going to make a prediction, but if that's the case, Proton will win game five. All right, Switzerland, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the long-winded way of saying Switzerland? No, no, Here we go, baby. Absolutely game not. five. There's Proton only one. with the opening break win, but it's Chick and Foe with the OS. Tying things up at two. Heat wave goes down. 
about a mid, and I wonder if anyone's going to be able to accrue that power weapon, the only power weapon here on Aqua, as we have a 3-3 start. My goodness, the pressure is high. It means so much. Top six for one, top eight for the other. So Spectre here, P2, such an important part of this map with this overshield P1. Able to secure at least one kill and the hunt to stay alive and help his team. Five to six, Proton with a narrow one kill lead. And if the Spectre can do his thing, it could build to even more as he pushes through. Flanking on the cuts of the car side, works his way underneath and then back into the generator. But he's got to worry about Woodham. Takes the Spectre down. Mighty goes down to one HP. King Nick is going to clean that up. But Chick, again. I feel like we haven't talked enough about Chick. What an incredible pickup for Foe. Another player, you talk about King Nick, left for dead. You can maybe argue the same for Chick. Knocked off of that Quadrant squad. Finds his home on Foe, Orgless. But with plenty of hope, plenty of fire, and plenty of passion. Be very interesting to see which team chooses aggression and which team chooses patience. It seems like Foe almost sat in that yellow gen, waited for Proton to come to them. They won the first slay, Proton won the second. We're still even at 11 early in this game. Well, it's dinner time here in Dallas, Texas, but there's not going to be a stake on your screen as this one's close to start. 11 to 13 as King Nick works his way through, picks up some stickies to utilize. So if he gets close, he'll work for a trade. We've seen King Nick do this multiple times. Goes for the wall, she has to explode instead. Hits it, but only gets that a player down to one HP. And King Nick goes down shortly after. Impressive sequence by Foe. You thought King Nick had just opened up damage to earn some slays, but instead, Foe tied things up. And just like that, though, Proton regained the lead. Only up one, now two. Now Proton with a minor advantage here. Now where did that OS go? It is in the chest of Sab. So not only do Proton Gaming win that slay and take the lead, they have OS. This is a huge moment for them. Sniff out the spawn and take an advantage. 15 to 17, Sab with a full overshield to work with and left sticks are being held forward. Heat wave in the hands of his teammate as well. That's huge, that's King Nick. As Proton have built themselves now a three kill lead. Sab has none of this overshield dwindle away base to damage. It's only gone away to time. Now, finally taking some damage. He'll win this melee battle easily, easily because of the OS, but goes down shortly after. Great job by Foe to mitigate that OS from Sab, but they go three down. And now Proton are looking at a multi-possession lead. This is where Foe have got to keep it close, but instead it does bust into that two-possession lead. A five-kill game. Two team wipes needed to get back in it, but it's still early. The margins right now are so thin. It seemed like Foe, or pardon me, Proton had a major advantage there. I think they came up ahead one in the slays through that whole engagement. So Foe able to throw up the shields, throw up the line of defense, and survive to fight another battle. Veteran leadership in the ice is what we expect from Proton, and they've got it so far, up 17 to 22, as King Nick sets his sights across the map, landing some shots, but because of the bandit's range and the opportunity to grab thrust, with the heat wave already in his back pocket. I love this play to push up, hold forward. Two back-to-back -back sequences where Foe get wiped. And now Chick is in a little bit of a blender with the unfortunate fridge spawns. And oh, that's even more unfortunate. More players spawn there on the split side. Two fridge spawns here for Foe. Proton can eat. Yeah, this is a huge opportunity. King Nick comes in with the reversal double, double kill with the kill. heat wave. Two down again, go foe. Now, was that split spawn, ad split spawn advantageous? It looks like some of them did survive on fridge. They have an opportunity here. Work together. The OS is about to pop, though. Oh, fist battle. Woodham wins it. How many times has Woodham won those close range encounters? I hear so much that Thousand Keyboard really had a, de a deficit in close range, but wow, Woodham more likely than not wins his ones with the fist as Jimbo and Foe win an overshield. They need to find value out of this, but the plasma pistol, the counter goes through, and Jimbo goes down. What a huge play. That could be the catalyst for a game five win for Proton. A massive momentum swing. We saw Foe win the battle on pink to secure OS. We thought that was their window to tie this game up. No, Proton with the noob combo shuts that down. Sab still working with the noob combo on car side. 28-34. We're past the 30 mark where Slayers officially begin, and Proton have a six slay head start. Sap continuing forward with that plasma pistol, but instead he puts it away. Five perfect shots onto Jimbo, and it feels like momentum and the lead are mounting for Proton. Is this closing time? They haven't done enough. We saw what Foe was able to do in the second half of the Live Fire Slayer. Uh -oh. Jimbo comes in with a timely kill. We, they cannot be trading right now, Jimbo. 
does his job to perfection there. 2v1, you should win this outright, and you need to win this outright without going down. No trades can occur here. Mighty's, he gotta stay alive. He does, down to one HP, half shields for Woodham, but he stays alive. King Nick on the other side gets the slate on the chick as Proton maintain that five kill lead, but forward are doing a great job to keep it close. Now within one, striking distance, only down four. Are you kidding me? Could we have it any other way? An unbelievable series to this point, looking like a tight finish. Now can Woodham Stay alive long enough to get some support on P2. Woodham has to stay alive here, and this is the most important overshield of the match. It might be the final one as Woodham wins his one. Takes down Sab. And if he can secure overshield here, Foe might just secure the comeback. Nobody's focused on the OS. Nobody's focused on Woodham. But you gotta pay attention to the kid that finished beat him. Has Foe tied at 38. And they have the OS as well. He waved to boot. Momentum mounting for Foe. They have a chance to steal it. What a sequence from Foe, and specifically Woodham. That pivotal kill, close quarters combat, the M and K difference, able to secure that headshot. Beneficiary of that, Mighty with the OS oh my God. and the Heat Wife. They're collapsing on the base, they've oh! got a lead. Perfect Halo being played from Foe. They're icing up at the end game. Overshield gonna earn that slay. And a killing spree for Z Mighties as Foe looks to make even more history. They were down seemingly all game while they're up four now. 42 to 38. Proton Gaming only has seven deaths to work with. Mighties on a spree. And if he doesn't die again in this game, calling it. I'll make that prediction. It's over. Two go down for Proton. And Foe continue to play Flawless Halo. I'm thinking there's going to be a trade, but there's not. Finally, King Nick takes down Mighties. Earns top mid, but not before a seven kill lead for Foe. How did this happen? The flip got switched and Foe have the lead and a potential miraculous game five win. Momentum has been utilized. Foe rode that momentum to seemingly three rounds of slays, maybe more. This is a big lead, 46-39. What can Proton do to turn this around? Woodham has done it again. The most slays for his team. Double positive just about once again. He got seven assists as well. Unbelievable. Woodham, the rookie, is going to ice up twice in game five in the lower bracket to extend Foe's life as history is made once again. Mouse and keyboard supremacy as Woodham and Foe move on. What a series. That's five games. There he Might is. have felt like 10. <laughs> Was Argyle that not our first sweet grand finals best of seven we just casted? Holy! Trampoline game three. It started with the oddball, which went to round three. I think that's a new phrase that might become popular in Halo. Because that's exactly what oddball is in game three. Reverse sweep trampoline. And my God, that's a trampoline jump with the repulsor boosted up as well. As foe, sort of new heights, new opportunities for mouse and keyboard. A top six finish for the finished phenom. But he's not finished yet. You read my mind. He's far from done. An opportunity to fight another day, advance in the bracket. <laughs> Foe, move on. Down 0-2 and down around in can, Oddball. Can we get these guys a damn org? Excellent question. I'm sorry. <sighs> we should keep things positive after such an incredibly positive <laughs> Build them up. Build reverse them up. sweep. But come on, man. If you're watching at home, you have an opportunity. You got an org. Can we give Foe some support? My God. Unbelievable. The only org, it feel, the only team it feels like here at Arlington without an org. There's teams in the open bracket with org representation. You gotta hook up Foe, man. You gotta get with Foe. Maybe Passion United. Somebody pick up Foe. <laughs> Somebody support these guys from EU. They need it. They deserve it. They absolutely deserve it. If they don't get something out of this, I think the whole Halo world would be absolutely shaken to the core. The performance that we just saw. The veterans of Proton Gaming, we tip the hat. We say thank you so much for an unbelievable series. What they showed us through games one and two, and really through games, all five of them, absolute battle. But Foe, ultimately, I mean, the trampoline, reverse sweep, the game three oddball. It was a win condition. They had to have it, quite <laughs> obviously. Needed to win there. But riding that momentum, Chick keeping them in that solitude, Stronghold's game early. They were down 60, but Chick had seven kills. It could have been worse. Gives well, his team time to stabilize. And then I, I that's a game Proton, I'm sure, would love to watch back and any Halo player could learn from. Oh. Aqua Slayer 
We see it time and time again. Epic games are played there. When there was, there must have been one moment where Foe had control. They wrestled it away, and they just wrote. I guess it was P1 with Wudum staying alive for that OS. <laughs> you got to think that might have been it. That was it, man. And I, we said it. It's like. It's like nobody, OS is up soon, Wudum's over there, but nobody's looking at it. So for, somebody had the cross, somebody had the positioning on the car side, which is ironic, right? You think you need to set up and really stack up on the P side for the P-based overshield, the, the P1-based overshield. But instead, somebody was across. Somebody was somebody was drawing attention across the map, and Wudum says, I'll take that, as he takes the hearts of the Halo community. Are, are there not some new Woodham fans in the chat? I mean, come on. I know Mama Woodham's getting hyped for this, yelling and screaming back home in Finland. And so are we, losing our damn minds for that incredible series. And this has got to be the first one when I go home after today and I'm watching back on VOD. All right, gamers, we're going to take a quick break. PD, congratulations. And GG's, brother, your first cast on land is a reverse sweep historical game five. I love it, man. Uh, we need to have PD on the broadcast more often if we're guaranteed reverse sweep game five finishes like that. Guys, we're not done just yet. We're going to keep going. We got the free for all grand finals after this. Don't go anywhere. More Halo is coming soon. Welcome back to an incredible day of Halo here. HCS Arlington has delivered, and I gotta imagine it's about to, about to deliver even more. Mikowski joined alongside me as Eli the Ninja, a couple free-for-all montage kids, rightfully so, taking you guys through the upcoming free-for-all grand finals. And Eli, I gotta ask you, man, what's it like to cast the free-for-all finals as someone who's been playing free-for-alls for 20 plus years? It's, it's, a, it's amazing, man. We, we've been getting to do this for the last few free-for-alls now. It's kind of a tradition at this point. And you know what's also a tradition? Watching Goober pop off. Not a shocker whatsoever to see him find him his way into the finals. So let's just run through some of the names that we have here. The names are black because when we switch to a certain POV, the name does turn white. I want to make sure we can still read it. But we've got Rob the Turtle, Gunplexion, Goober, Azurum, Avusi, Strikey, Switch It Up, and V Lego. So, super stacked lobby here. My eyes are definitely on Goober and Gunplexion and Rob the Turtle. Goober with the second place finish at Fort Worth. Goober with the second place finish at the Halo World Championship. If I had to make a prediction, I think this is the time. This is his time to ice up. So many times he's been runner up, but does he run up the score here and take his first FFA? He actually did win one. I think he won Fort Worth uh, last season. Let's see if he can win another one. Like we said, he got second place at both the World Championships. Switch it up, though. Finds his way in so many of these top eights as well. I'm kind of looking to him. Will he eventually have his standout performance in the finals here? So far, it's striking, striking first, but he's got three players on the heels. Switch it up. And Vigo. Is it Vigo? No, Lego. 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 Excuse me. There we go. Yeah, V Lego. I can see. Mm -hmm. One, three. That makes feel yeah, Okay. All right. Lego. Uh, with an opportunity here. Tied in the lead at eight. All right. Sorry about the strange audio bug. Try to ignore it for now, but we've got Strikey 
currently in second now. Switch it up. And Lego in first. And Lego now actually coming out to a lead. Now, if you'll recall, I think in the last FFA the, the regulators put on, Lego made it to the finals, and we wanted to highlight him. Everyone in the regulators chat saying oh. this guy is the real deal, and he is showing so as he's now currently up by two. Goober with a triple, though, gets right back in the mix, and Eli... This is a big change. Not only do we see the big change from Season 2 to Season 3 with the Overshield being added, it's absolutely changed the way we play 4v4, but maybe even more so free-for-all. Talk to me about the Overshield and how that relates. A power-up like that and a free-for-all, that's a, that's a big win condition. Right. I mean, this is the first Halo, I think, that we've seen a power-up such as the Overshield in FFA. We've seen camo on it previously, but in this, it, it kind of feels like you're probably going to get at least one kill if you grab it, but... The problem is it's also a risk to even go for it in the future, like at all, because everyone can see on the screen that it's about to come up. Everyone's going to be looking at it when it does come up, and you might just get fried trying to grab it. Lego in the lead with 15, but Switch It Up is right on the heels. So too is Goober. That rounds out your top three for now. Gunplexion, he's got the gunny quite literally in his hands, the heat wave, as he looks to push up on through, has a multitude of players and opportunities to take down in the fridge as he looks to heat up. No, but he goes down, drops the ever-important heat wave, and it looks like everybody's going to drop over there on the fridge as Lego retains the lead, but now Goober and Switch It Up are both only down by one. Yeah, Lego, though, gets a double kill at the perfect time, making a triple, take, extending that lead now to three. He's got the largest lead we've seen so far in this game. Several players now trailing pretty significantly. Got a few in the seven and nine range. I think we're trying to fix the audio issue. All right, guys, we're going to make sure that we got this situated. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. Free for all finals when we return. All right, guys. Well, we actually had a game crash, so uh, <laughs> uh, positively awesome. It's a full replay. All right, there we go. So it gives us a chance. I believe so. I, I think throughout the day, uh, precedent's it, been a, set yeah. that even if it gets down to 10 seconds left in the lobby, the, the yeah, whole match saw. gets reset. So yeah. we're going to play for a full reset. We got a chance to look at some of the players in the lobby. That first five minutes or so count more as a warm-up. Did you see anything that stuck out to you in those first five minutes, Eli? I mean, V Lego for sure. This guy, like I said, I casted a FFA tournament last weekend where he found his way into the finals and many people in chat were saying, watch Lego, watch Lego, watch wow. Lego. So I uh, hadn't really seen him previously, but clearly a uh, great FFA player. He must be practicing quite a bit with that regulator group that do FFAs all the time, including Goober. So yeah, it was interesting to see him <clears throat> with such a strong start. Yeah, keep in mind, this is a free-for-all finals lobby that... Features a lot of familiar faces, so to see someone that we've never seen in the finals before, I'm not sure if he was competing last season in the free-for-alls or what, but never made it to the top eight. Not sure if he made it even to top 16 or not. I've actually not heard of LEGO until today, but Eli, and sticking with the theme of finding new talent and up-and-coming superstars here this weekend at HCS, <sighs> a la Wudu, man. I still, I'm still shook from that series, man. Yeah. That, was, that was unbelievable, but this is so special this is so cool man you think that in season three all the names have been set firmly in stone like cement drawing on the uh, drying on the pavement but no there's still a chance to like write, write your name in it right and right and then have it dry as new players are popping off in year three that we've never seen before or heard before you'd love to see that no absolutely a few other new names in this ffa avusi not really a new name to me because I've seen him. I think we've also casted some of his gameplay right. in the Open Series. He we, was we did. on some of those squads. I know he teamed with Caden Despair. Shout out to him uh, at this tournament. But he found his way into the finals as well. Very talented group of players that we have here. Notably, a few players that got top 16. 
but did not make it to the finals. Command Station, one of those players that made it to the semifinals, but did not make it here. Shout out to her, always a contender in these. But it's been a while, I think, since we've seen Gunplexion in the finals, and I feel like whenever he does show up in the finals, he shows up in a big way. Yeah, we expect Gunplexion to stand up, get loud, in your face, I guess physically here on land and metaphorically within the game. I mean, that's just his, that's his style and that's his play style. Absolutely. And interestingly, his teammate, Rob the Turtle, also in the FFA. So it's a, it's always cool if you and your teammate both make it to the finals. You can kind of dap each other up beforehand and be like, may the best man win. You know, probably a little bit of friendly rivalry there. I know they actually joined my stream to play midship FFAs when midship dropped. Shout out to Unique. Beautiful map. Hopefully yeah. we can get to see that in more tournaments. But uh, yeah, these guys love FFA, and uh, they just love to show off their individual skill. Uh, this is why you play the game. This is what it's all about, those life experiences that you'll remember for the rest of your life. Uh, whether or not you either come out on top with the win, you're right, that little fist bump that they're able to share before the match starts, it's a rare experience that not many people get to experience. In fact, only eight people in the world get to experience as we have our final eight. A refresh lobby, audio issues are nixed in the bud, no longer exist, as it looks like everybody getting off the board except for Switch It Up, but don't be surprised if he gets right back in the mix. Gunplexion with four off the start. Hottest start you could really ask for the first 30 seconds of the game. By the way, also shout out to Strikey, a member of that SWAT Alpha roster. Made a deep run in the open bracket, ultimately fell short, but if you lose in 4v4, there's always the FFA, so I'd love to see him finding his way into the grand finals here as well. Azarum, last player I think that we haven't talked about yet. This guy, I've seen his name everywhere, especially in matchmaking. He's always a thorn in my sign, but he is popping off as well, now with four to his name. Yeah, watch out though, Gunplexion really popping off. Seven kills already, only a minute off the board. Eli, you averaged seven kills a minute. Probably gonna pop you into first place. Oh, the names are actually gonna change, so that might may or may not be Gunplexion. We're gonna keep you guys running along though. For now, HCS 356 goes down. 351 looking to secure the melee, does just that on the 353. A push, the chase grenade a little late, and he goes down because of it. Yeah, still eight. The number to beat right now, three players tied in six. See zero assists for three players. That means they're playing quite efficiently. You don't, really don't want to give away kills to other players in FFA. Oftentimes the best strategy, just kind of patrol these outskirts of the maps that are heavily trafficked. Get some good grenades down. Grenades a huge skill factor in FFA as well. But also just having good timing, knowing when to push out and finding third party engagements. Give yourself a free double or triple kill. Yeah, assists like helping the enemy. And you don't want to do that. And we see 353 go down, and I see six assists already on screen. That's that's a heartbreaking amount of assists. My God, if he just had half of that, he'd be in the mix. But instead, he's trailing, lagging behind as multiple players go down. We saw a little bit of that risk that you're talking about with the overshield. Multiple players going down before it, but 353, a lot of assists, a lot of shields now. Double up to work with. It's another assist, but finally adds a kill to the board as well. Was kind of in the right place, right time to pick up this... OS, I think two players traded out while fighting for it. So, ooh, look, piece of candy. Grab it and put it in the suit real quick. And uh, all right, we got the names refreshed for you guys. So looking back across, looks like we were correct with Strikey. In the top left, he's actually taking the lead. He's tied now with Lego, who's 356. And he is, I love to see that. You know, when a reset happens, you always feel a little bit bad for the guy that was in first place, but Lego picking up where he left off right there in the mix. Man, huge shout out to our production team behind the scenes, LBT Halo and Louis, Louis in particular, man. Sweating, literally sweating over there to get all of the names updated. We got Nighty Night observing as well as Lego does not have the lead anymore. Instead, it's Mexico's very own Strikey stealing it up by one. If I'm not mistaken, Azurum also from Mexico. Uh, shout out to Man. Priscilla. Talk about what is up with the international representation. Representation. This has been it's so cool to see so many players pop off from all over the world. Mexico having a great weekend. EU having a great weekend. This has been such good Halo. Absolutely, international talent on the rise. Absolutely, it's no longer just North Americans gatekeeping it. Now there's some. European squads gatekeeping other North Americans from getting it further in the tournament. Straight <laughs> yeah. up. Making some of, them, some of them look foolish, but tie game right now. Strikey and Rob the Turtle. I know Rob the Turtle and Gunplexion both had accolades in FFA back in the Halo 5 days. Goober, I think by far and away the most accoladed FFA player in the lobby right now. He's putting the heat wave to work. Only one 
Bolt to Plasma left in that heat wave. And wow, that's a rare overshield for free for Rob. What can he do? Can he take advantage of the opportunity to grab oh. overshield at full HP? It's a slay. Looking for more. Now, oh, earning a couple assists. Not doing much damage no. with this overshield. Finally gets a kill, but not before all of it dissipates. Only one HP left. And Rob does not get the value that we expected from that OS. But again, like you talked about, OS doesn't guarantee you anything in a free-for-all where everyone's gunning for your head. Absolutely. It makes you actually the brightest target on the map. <laughs> right, yeah. Damn near a beacon of light emitting from your suit. Hey, shoot, shoot at me. me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, you I mean, you get a little bit of extra shields, but also a lot of extra attention. And honestly, attention's not something you want in FFA. Mexico. Claiming two of the three first place spots. Rob does a great job. After not finding much value in the overshield, he finds the lead tied with a Zerum at 19. Now, Strikey pushes on through the P side of the map, has a double kill, back smack to his name instead, just finishes it off with the body into the glute heels of his opposition. 20 to 20, we've got two players tied, and they're both from Mexico. Wow, the two Mexican contingents in the lead right now tied, but this is anyone's game. I mean, looking down to seventh place is only six kills behind first place. Only nine and a half minutes left on the clock, but that's plenty of time for killing sprees to show up for any of these players. Right now, Avushi, really the only player lagging behind. Lots of assists to his name, maybe just getting a bit unfortunate, but he might be able to pick that up. Switch it up. He's turning up. And now, just two kills off the lead. There are at least four players who are right there in it. As we are approach just about the halfway mark or so. Nine minutes left. 23 kills. Enough to be in the lead. As it looks like, switch it up. Going to continue on. Looking for that 23rd slay to tie things up. He has control of P. This is a great location to hold. And he's looking to pinch down on the spawns. Turns maybe. Oh. This Unfortunate timing, but no, it's actually super fortunate. He finds the overshield. Eli, how many times have we seen the overshield just laying down P1 saying, somebody could pick me up? <laughs> yeah, it's like the forgotten toy in your in your <laughs> parents' attic. I don't know. It's, it's like just... coming home and, a, and you find like a, a, a rare Pokemon collection in the attic, right? Like yeah. a Charizard it's first a, edition. Boom, shiny, there you go, bro. overshield. Switch it up, push it on through now. The yellow base looking to secure more slays with just a trickle left of that overshield. He's going to push the emphasis. He's going to look, look to get involved right away, and he does earn the slay. Actually stays alive because of that overshield. And switch it up. It's just one kill off the lead, but Azerum is holding firm. Yeah, look at this. Sitting down, two kill lead for now. Two kills, not very many in FFA though. All it takes is a double kill from a close competitor. But he's playing a very efficient style. He's got the only four assists as well. Same could be said for Strikey. Both of Mexican players with very few assists, which means they are playing extremely efficient FFA. Bucci goes down, switch it up, goes up to the P side of the map. There's a thrust there just to his left. And that feels like a power up in a free for all. That maybe even feels more like a power up than the OS. He goes down shortly after, so too does the player that had the opportunity to grab OS as Rob cleans up. 25. Two players tied at 25. Whoa. 27 in the lead for a zero, but Rob's right on their heels at 24. This one's still close at the halfway mark. I am shocked that Goober is currently not that close to the lead comparatively to the rest of the lobby. I kind of expect a late charge from him. He just somehow finds a way to... Find a surge of kills at some point. When is it going to happen? Though? Don't forget, Flurisly at Fort Worth. We never mention his name until the last minute. So these players, yeah. despite maybe not looking like they're in it, you can never count them out as Lego. Previously in the lead before the reset. Now, after a good start, kind of falling off the pace a little bit. 30 for Strikey. It's now another member of Mexico regaining control of the lead. A zero close at 27. So to is switch it up. And that rounds out your top three for now. Yeah, Strikey taking a nice lead here now up to 31. Switch it up though, we've talked about him before. This guy's found his way in the top eight many times, but always fell short. Could this be his time to shine? If he can get a killing spree sometime soon, he could absolutely contest that first place position. Ibuchi, far off the lead, but keep in mind with $5,000, I believe it is, on the line, maybe even more, every slay earns you a couple more hundred, couple more hundred bucks in the back pocket after HCS Arlington weekend concludes as Rob the Turtle pushes on through to the top side of pink. Strikey though, has continued to build on this lead. Now sitting at 32, it's gonna take more perfect shots from Rob the Turtle if he wants to come back. Sending some nice shots, still a ways behind. Azerum, still the two players from Mexico in number one and two positions. 
Gunplexion, a little bit behind, but this is so close across the board. Avusi has picked it up. Lego falling behind a bit, though, picking up more assists than he had previously. And now all these players just kind of... It's a very similar flow chart, the way they come off spawn and rotate through the back of the base. You can really see the type of style that earns their way into grand finals, just winning gunfights around the outskirts of the map. Actions per minute, kills per minute, and that's what you're looking for. What sticks out to me is not only strike, he's 36 kills, Eli, up by three now. He's only got five assists. He's playing the most efficient version of Halo in the lobby, and that's why he's in the lead. You're exactly right. I mentioned it before, Azurum also just with seven. This guy's just playing better FFA than the whole lobby right now. Do they know something we don't? Are they gatekeeping us now? What's going on? Uh, that's exceptionally low. Uh, Strikey approaching 40 slays, and an eighth of those have occurred in assist. I mean, he is hardly helping his opposition, which is exactly the name of the game here in Free For All. Strikey doesn't need any more help, but he gets it in the form of the Overshield, continuing to build on this lead. Now up by a killing spree, and he's looking to go on one his own, but he trades out instead. Strikey, the first to reach 40. And now up by six, the biggest lead we've seen so far. Probably going to try to come off spawn and continue to grow that lead. Everyone else kind of in that 33, 32 region. Several players in there. Azrum though, still with 36 now. Lucy not completely out of it yet. Even the seventh place contender is absolutely not out of this. I'd say six out of eight. Lo six out of eight players are deep into the uh, in into the lobby, deep into the match, and in it. Full contention, but Strikey just won't die. Oh Strikey God. won't stop getting multi-kills as he earns another double, eventually goes down. But Eli, every single time he's trading, it's a it's a plus one, at least, net outcome. Exactly right. Now, deaths can become a factor if it comes down to a tiebreaker, but by far and away, the most important thing is to just get kills. So you don't mind launching your body into the action to just get as many kills as possible. Don't be afraid to die. You're only dead for six seconds. You'll be back on the battlefield in no time. It's exactly the style we're seeing from Strikey, just absolute brute force flying around the map, trying to pick up as many opportunities as possible. Dead bodies all over the utility when this player shows up. Rob the Turtle says, I wanted one of those kills. Now he can't see anyone, and this is where you get anxious. Three and a half minutes on the clock. You've got to come up in a big way. Rob the Turtle unable to find anything in that life. Strikey goes a couple of moments without getting any slays, and Azirum has inched his way back into it. Now down only three. As Strikey goes down, so too does Azirum. So for now, it's going to be third through eighth kill. place with a chance to come back in it. Goober, there's that run we were talking about. Double kill. He's now at 40 kills, and he's right back in it. He's third in the lobby despite being third to last just moments ago. Goober looking to his left and right and telling his opposition, I am inevitable. He always finds his way into the top three. We only ever see him win or finish in second, and it's due to these late game charges. I don't know what he's doing for the first half of the lobby, but he wakes up and suddenly comes to life. Now just a few kills back of that second place position. And only one kill separating first and second place. This one's getting close into the end game. Two and a half minutes left. And we're hopping on board here with Azirum, who ties it up at 45, looking for a potential oh. kill steal, double kill. He double gets kill. it, and Azirum regains the lead. Up two, does he have a triple? No, he goes down, and the grenade does not go through. And I think that was maybe even Strikey that he fought. It was, Strikey stays alive. Eventually goes down after, but not before trading out. 47 all, two minutes left. Oh my god, Goober gets a trade that's massive right now. You can't fall too far behind with just two minutes on the clock. Goober trying to maintain his positioning in this game, but right now it's looking like a three-horse race. Next closest behind him would be Gunplexion with 40, who's also on a late-game charge. But look at this. Azurum clutching up. It seems like he's finding so many opportunities. that Those kills do trade out, though. Oh, and he hits huge. the perfect shot. And he's got time to drop the body oh, disrespect so. as well. What level of confidence are we witnessing here from Azirum as he's up by two in the end game? A minute 45 left. Eli, which way does this go? Oh my god, if you have the heart to give the body disrespect in this moment. Like, brother, you're losing time to get more kills, but he said, I don't even care. I'm going to win this lobby anyways. He's up to 50 That's now. That's insane. Two ahead of Strikey, and he's not stopping anytime soon. He might have just became, he might be new on the stream, but he might have just become every, a lot, of, a lot of people in chat's favorite player. 120 left on the clock, but Azurum needs to secure more slays. He does just that, a clutch kill, but Strikey takes him down and gets to within one kill. Does he have oh. the double? Yes! We're tied double at 51. Kill. One minute left. This is insane. Goober slowed down a little bit. He's now down by five. He just can't match the insane pace of Strikey and Azurum. This last overshield 
With a minute to he go, Azram gets it. Gets oh my god! It. He gets it! And he gets to slay the reversal, no less! Oh, oh, on strikey! On strikey! That's the perfect time to do it. He's out of OS, but doesn't care. He's pushing this player, gets the trade, extends his lead by one slay. Strikey comes off spawn, ties it up immediately. It is a two horse race. It's gonna be one of these two, Strikey or Azram. Who's gonna ice up in the end? Strikey gets another. Azram coming off spawn. He's gonna have to get one of his own. He does, trades out, 54 all. Make it 55, Strikey's favor. This has gone back and forth so many times. 25 seconds left, Strikey with a one slay lead. We're hopping on board here with a zero. Can he tie things up? He does with the trade, 55 all. Right now it would come down to a tiebreaker. A zero has less deaths. They're both heading back to the respawn screen. 10 seconds left, a zero on board on the gold side. No. Blue side of the map, that's Strikey instead. Going his, moving his way towards top pink. Four, three, oh. two, oh, 55 oh. all, and a zero! Secures the sleigh with one second left at P1 and seals it for Mexico! No mames! No mames, a zero! No mames, a zero! Viva oh Mexico! my God! Reversal. <laughs> You guys could probably hear Frazilla in the background <laughs> losing his ever-loving mind. Oh, as Mexico secures first and second place, the only two representatives from Mexico getting first and second. Unbelievable stuff. Shout out to Lore who finished top 12 in the 4v4 as well. Mexico is here in making a statement. Eli, how does every free for all finals get better? <laughs> <laughs> it's the fourth one now. And what does the fifth have in store? But let's celebrate and let's recap this fourth free for all finals that we've gotten to cast together. And this is huge, man. Yeah, this, uh, this moments ago, uh, months ago, a year ago, would have happened in the darkness, in, in the depths of the, the venue with no recognition, no observer, no right. casting, no nobody in the shadows. getting to witness this. How? I am so glad. Look at this. This was on Strikey, by the way. This that was, was a 1v1 on for the win. Granted, he has massive advantage here. Eats a grenade Dude. from behind as well. Azerum, right time, right place. Just flying. Knows he needs a kill in the last second. Literally, as the clock is at, has one second on <laughs> the board, <laughs> is as he gets this last kill. And Strikey just has to shake his head. Which may be deja vu to SSG versus FaZe at the World Championship oh where it God. came down to triple zero. Just about did the same thing here on Aquarius. And again, I, I just want to thank HCS for allowing us to do this, for putting eyes on the grassroots, the up and coming amateurs who through performances like this, Eli, let's keep it real, find opportunities to now dominate and have success in 4v4. Last shot uh, didn't maybe have as, as good of an ultimate finish like he would uh, like to have seen this weekend. Top 16, but top 16 is still nothing to, to, to frown at. That's still an incredible performance. And I can't wait to see who else from these free-for-all lobbies takes their game to the next level. I, I think we're seeing plenty of that here. Exactly right. And I would say one of the bigger surprises is Goober not finding his way in the top two. And he I had mean, that surge that we kind of talked yeah, about. He, he did have a late game surge, Double but kill. ultimately unable to close it out in the end. But Wow, great stuff here, man. Oh, dude, this third-party double kill was so huge for Azira. I mean, there, there's how many moments? I feel like there's a lot of moments you could break down him getting the overseal and the fact that he had time. I got time today, <laughs> yeah. he says, tapping on his watch. Unbelievable. Let's take a look at the prize breakdown. First place, Azira taking home $2,000. Second place, that's Strikey. Uh, $1,200, you've got Goober, I believe, at third place. He takes home 800, 425 for fourth, 200 dollars for fifth, 150 for sixth, 125, and 100 dollars Rounding out your take-home pay for these incredible competitors. Eli, what an unbelievable free-for-all finals. Congratulations to Azerum. I know these guys had a lot to prove. Some players online saying that. You know, they're, they're questionable. We don't see these guys show up on land. Well, guess what? They just did. Nothing sus about that. If anything, it's, uh, man, sustainable. It's stupendous. <laughs> what we saw. <laughs> what we other saw. versions of sus, yes. <laughs> yes, other versions of sus. Uh, suspenseful. Yes, that's absolutely for sure. suspenseful. One second to go. 
keep in mind though, I, I will add a caveat. Yeah. He, he didn't actually need the last kill, but he needed to not let That's striking true, but it, it, it made for a pretty... Yeah. <laughs> he, but like, I think he was more so concerned with killing Strikey, so Strikey, Strikey would not get a kill. Yes, exactly. Because if yep. Strikey got a kill, that would be the difference. But even if they remain tied into the last oh. moment there... I hate Azure to say that was the moment, because it, it ultimately wasn't the moment, but it was one of capital well, I mean, that's with a, moments. That's with a minute, less than a minute to go. I think that's a massive moment, securing OS and then killing your next closest rival on the leaderboard. You always got to be gunning for that guy that's right there next what to you. What a great use of the thrust there. Avoids grenade damage to allow himself to continue to push up confidently down the generator. And my god, this one was back and forth. You know what? He like Strikey and Azura were really the only two throughout that Kind of made you, you think they were going to win it. What an incredible weekend for Mexico. They make history the first time making it out of open bracket. They almost made history getting top eight. We've never seen that before. They made history at the World Championship getting 9 through 12 for the first time. But now they make even more history as Azirum and Strikey combined for the one-two punch from Mexico as Mexico makes more history, earning their first claim to a free-for-all belt. Wow. Amazing stuff here in the action. Only getting started. We've got a banger series coming up, guys. But uh, we're not going to take There's it more Halo, now. There's me, still Eli? more Halo. There's more Halo. There's always more Halo. Oh, That's, isn't that crazy? There's always more Halo. All right, guys. Take a, take a quick break. It's not going to be very long. But if you're like me, I need to catch a breath. I invite you guys to do the same. Get some water. Get some snacks. Eat some dinner. Because we got more Halo when we return. I Enemy flag return. Just kidding. We're live. <laughs> no chance. No breaks. No, ga uh, no all gas. No food for you, brother. You're going to eat later. <laughs> all right. As long as you uh, feed it to me, I'll uh, take uh, that. Ayo. Ayo. <laughs> hey, we got an AO series here. Complexity <laughs> versus Quadrant. This one's good. And Quadrant, impressive win previously against Lore. You and I have Lore, I guess, technically winning that series in the sense that we thought they'd get top eight. But instead, it's Quadrant who, despite all the team changes, despite losing Legend, seem to be as good as they were last year. What's really interesting to me about this is if Quadrant does upset complexity here, it's going to be Foe versus Quadrant for top four. <laughs> oh, yes! So we would have oh, a guaranteed... Sorry, we're not biased. <laughs> we would have a guaranteed European finish in top four. But, dude, they got to get past complexity first. And keep in mind, throughout 20 years of illustrious Halo history, we've never seen EU place top four until last year. Are they going to start off season three with another top four? It's on the table. Woo! Has complexity and quadrant take their sights on Argyle CTF. Three minutes off the clock, and as is typical on Argyle, both teams still vying for that mid map. Yeah, snipers ever important. We've got a ton of insane sniper talent on this map, by the way. Looking across the board, I mean, can you? Is there a single bad sniper in this lobby? No. <laughs> There's not a single one. I say. I feel like Huss is good with it, but he doesn't prefer to use it because he's surrounded by crackheads, as you called them previously. Well, Huss, Huss, like the Call of Duty player he, he is, I almost feel like he intentionally plays for damage, center mass body shots to take players down to one HP, and he allows Precision Ryan Oop or Descendant to clean that up. That's just the kind of dude Huss is as Sika. He's him as well. He's that dude as well, one of the best snipers in the HCS, but he drops that nice, freshly minted Quadrant skin. Three go down, three drop for Quadrant. And for now, Complexity seem to have the setup. Oh, and if not per for Precision, little fumble there with the grapple. But he's going to get the flag out, nonetheless. Sometimes that fumble really matters, though, right? Like, he would not have taken that much damage if he just had slightly cleaner movement in that moment. Absolutely. Even the movement gods of the world make mistakes sometimes, though. Flag is not going to be able to make it very far. I think it's definitely getting returned. Quadrant earning a few slays that might be able to help them get out of the base, but Rhino getting a slay in the feed, they're going to continue to apply that pressure. Three go down for Complexity, and despite their push through to the base, their pull as well, Quadrant reset the map, and now we have all eight members in this lobby up and ready to duke it out. SLG with the snipe in the ventilator system has some support. Looks like shoots his teammate in addition to the opposition. Anybody can get it. Uh, if you're SLG with the snipe in his hands, but I like this here. It wisely backs up. He can sense the pressure here from Complexity. Looking to line up a couple shots in the reticle. And I don't know, though, if he keeps backing up even further, that just tells me that Complexity continues to push further. But no, they're going two down. SLG playing this very patiently, very cautiously. 
Well, he's smart, right? He knows that if he drops the sniper and a guy like Descendant picks it up, that could be bad news for his squad. So I think it's very important to really value your life in moments like this because you don't want to give that resource to someone else, and you also don't want to give up the opportunity to make plays like this. And the rotation from SLG from the backside of his base, right side, now to the front forward side of Complexity's base on the left side means Ryanoop had no recognition of his location. I think finally now they spot him out, but not before SLG empties out the rack in that S7 sniper rifle, and Quadrant are back in Complexity's base. SLG just being an absolute nuisance in Complexity's base. That flag's still gone. Probably going to get returned, though, it looks like. It does. Hard-fought flag here, but look how much, how many resources Complexity had to expend to get that return. SLG can just freely grab this. Got two dead on the side of Complexity, Ooh, but no. Rhinoob in the perfect position at the right time, as he always is. He's going to stop that from happening there. Ryan Aid with the heads up play there to stop what looked like a good potential run here for Quadrant. And again, Eli, it just speaks to how difficult it is to advance the flag, but they're able to clear Ryan from the ventilator system. Now you see a member of Quadrant there instead, but Glory with a potential run, he goes down right after, and this run is going to be even more difficult. I think for Quadrant now, the play is to just play for Slays. I mean, to be honest, looking at the, the Slays here, Quadrant having a six Slay advantage They've been the ones that seem like they're in the driver's seat. They're the only team that have given themselves a chance to cap it. Doesn't seem like Complexity's even got a pull yet. So the pressure just mounting from Quadric here. Glory looking to secure some of his namesake for Quadrant as he's got the snipe. Again, more set up here defensively at the back of the map. As we see Descendant in the vents. Looking to air it out. Wow, QT's all the way over, but because oh. of the trickle, Glory's able to pick up on it, but not before. Descendant picks up the slay, picks up the snipe, and Complexity have a run. Oh, another snipe from Descendant. Headshot, three go down for Quadrant, and Descendant says, give me that. He might just take the face and his first score. That was the first spawner of Quadrant, and it was massive for Sika to get the kill, but he only gets to survive for one more second before getting deleted by Descendant. And now first score on the board for Complexity, though. But the Quadrant. opportunity. Oh, triple kill for SLG. Can he make it an over? The opportunity to counter is there after three go down for Complexity. So many lives and resources used. That's going to allow Quadrant to get this flag to at least, at least the 50 yard line. If not oh past it, God. oh my God, Snipe Drone. No use of the grapple hook. He's just got feet like a roadrunner as he quickly works his way into the base and he's not gonna OE. He's gonna wait for the shields to regain. He's gonna allow his teammate to score it instead. Love the process here from Quadrant as they strike back, tied one all and Snipe Drone's continuing on with the double kill. Instead of a counter cap, you're gonna see a double cap here potentially for Quadrant. They've got it again. A double counter cap is what we're seeing here. They've maintained control ever since Complexity got that first cap. They've been simultaneously running flags and keeping spawners at bay. That is so difficult to this do in insane. this game. I've never seen a double cap like it's Aquarius on Argyle, but for now, the flag gets stopped. See, because the last player alive needs to get this hero play win. No, and it looks like now, Complexity are gonna get the counter instead. What? This might just be a goal line stand, but no, for now, Snipe Drone keeps it alive. He stays alive with the Snipe in his hand. Taking the opponent down to one HP. He's got one underneath him to worry about as well, and I think those grenades were for him. Instead, he's gonna finish it wow. off with the body shot to descend it. Has a good setup here to stop the flag. I love this. Goes down low and has the positioning despite being on the low ground. Ryan kind of desperate for that flag touch. Maybe they do. felt like it was his only option, but ends up being punished for it. The flag was bait all along. I kind of feel like that's the difference right now. Quadrant using the flags as bait time and time again, and it's paying off. Quadrant just double capped like it was Aquarius TS. I, 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 have, I don't know if I've seen Ooh. two scores back to back like that from Quadrant. As with three minutes left, three total scores. Oh, but it's in favor of Quadrant, as so too are the headshots. Snipe Drone continues to pop off with the snipe. Three go down for complexity. And with three minutes left on a map like Argyle, defense is going to be the focus. I mean, I think they're just ready to roll. They're getting into complexity's base. If these guys can never get to the 50 yard line, how are they ever going to pull a flag? Oh, defense is turning into yeah, offense. Says, no, screw that. We want to get three caps, Hunter. What are you talking about, brother? This is unbelievable. There's no way they go triple defense? cap like they're C9 in season one, needing three in 45 seconds. This is unbelievable. The pace of play that we're witnessing here from Quadrant, I said this yesterday, would make Lando Norris very proud because they're pushing down on the pedal. Oh my God. I mean, they're running these flags like they're in an F1 race, seriously, all the way from map, from side of the map to the other side. It does get returned, though. So now, 
Quadrant being forced to play defense. I like the play though. I mean, force complexity to respond to an aggressive action. That's going to burn more time off the clock. You can always shift into that defensive stance later if you need to. Yeah, this is a great strategy for Quadrant, right? Make complexity have to think about returning the score before they score themselves to bring it back. Two minutes left and a 2-1 lead for Quadrant. Will it stick? New snipers just came up at the two minute mark. Snipe Drone's got his and he's been popping off with it. Doesn't hit that shot. That's pretty hard at that distance on this map. You actually have to lead your snipe shot just a little bit. Even on land. He's gonna rotate over here, see if he can catch a spawner on the snipe side. Doesn't see one though. And now he's deduced though that the spawners did spawn in the back of the base. So process of elimination he's using here to find out where he can find a target. Something you have to do as a sniper on this map. And look at this, it's the vent control. We talk about this all the time on this game type. The team that controls the vents typically controls the pace of the game. How long has Snipe Drone had a snipe in his hand for? I feel like Since the game time. started. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does he spawn in with it? Does uh, he have he a loadout kit to choose from? Like it's Halo Reach? Unbelievable what we're seeing here from Snipe Drone as he continues on with meticulous control of that sniper rifle. And if he can just stay alive with it, Quadrant should. Gonna lead in the series, but he gets wow. pressed and he gets taken down. Precision takes him down, but Precision wanted that snipe. You could tell, you could feel it. Yes. He wanted it. And for now, Complexity are gonna have a chance. Quadrant's flag is out. Two down on each side, though. Sinnott does a little loopy twirl, <gasps> checking his back, kills his teammate. Unfortunate there. Teammate kind of ran into his sight line, but look at the movement. This kid always knows how to stay alive. Doing all kinds of tricky stuff, trying to get the touch here. He does contest it just by standing in the circle. Stops the flag from being returned, and he's still alive. How is this man still alive in the other team's base? Filthy gameplay on display oh here from God. Descendant as he's looking to spur a comeback with 20 seconds left. Complexity down one, and they need this score to stay alive in game one. Descendant works it through onto the sniper side of the map. Three players alive for Quadrant. They're going to have a chance to stop it. But how much of a chance will they have? 10 seconds left. Descendant approaches the final stump. And he does, in no fact, score with five seconds left. We're going to sudden death, OT. Oh my god. Just throwing nades at the flag to make sure there's no sudden death in regulation. We're going to go to the official sudden death. Five minutes on the clock. Only two snipers spawn during this. Two sets of snipers, I might add. Argyle has, out of nowhere, delivered the most intense action in CTF. It used to be kind of the sleeper CTF out of the uh, out of the three. Almost bizarre-esque. But I don't know, man. Maybe it's the switch to the bandit. Uh, not having that long-range battle rifle to just melt players across the map. People are playing more aggressively. And you can see it. You can feel it. The games have been great, but I imagine we have a crash. Yep, the melees go through. Ryan Noob's ninja is going to be all for naught. As this reset presents a pretty good opportunity, possibly, as I look over at Tools, to interview our free-for-all champs. Perhaps. Who knows? All right, we're going to take a quick break. Reset, re-rack. Don't go anywhere. We have this electric matchup and an interview with your free-for-all champion when we return.
Hello and welcome back to the LVT Halo broadcast. With me right now, I have the FFA champion, Azirum, and the runner-up, Strikey. That's right, an all-Mexico finish in top one, top two. First of all, Azirum, how does it feel to be the FFA champion? ¿Cómo se siente ser el campeón? Este, me siento bien, me siento tranquilo, no me siento muy hypeado, me siento feliz, contento, la verdad. Yo espero un buen resultado, pero no uno tan, tan bueno. Entonces sigo como en el estado de shock, asimilándolo. He says he's like uh, in shock already because he 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 wasn't expecting a good result, but not that good, and he's like uh, he's still assimilating the the result, but he's very happy for it. What, the moment that you won, everyone roared. It, it was so loud. How does it feel to have so much support and so many people behind you when you won the FFA championship? In the moment that the victory was won, there was a lot of atmosphere, a lot of force in the atmosphere. ¿Cómo te sentiste que te estuvieran tan, apoyando tanto? Dile que, o sea, me sentí como tranquilo porque yo creía que era mejor a tres. O sea, no me sentía como tan presionado por eso. He said he, 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 he thought he was a best of three matches, so he, he, was, he, he thought he wasn't over yet. And he, he was like kind of surprised it was over. Honestly, know. that explains so much because <laughs> you were absolutely stoic when you, uh, when you won. It looked like you were totally locked in. Uh, but what's the first thing that you? What? What? Uh, first of all, what does this feel like for Mexico? Like, do you feel like you, you've accomplished something for your region today? ¿Cómo se siente esto para ti, para México? O sea, sientes que la región hizo algo importante? Ah, sí, demasiado. O sea, top uno y top dos México. La neta, o sea, que el free for all se lo hayan, se los hayan llevado dos mexicanos. Bueno, sin contar los demás participantes y todo. La neta, me hace sentir muy bien, muy orgulloso. He's, he's very proud of our, our region because having one and two. It's very good for us because it, it, it uh, demonstrates that we, we can also fight for it. Right. Okay, the final moments, you guys were one and two just trying to come back. It looks like Goober had a big lead. And those final two minutes, what was the strategy? What, what, made, it, what made you realize that, like, I'm going to win this game? What was your strategy for the last two minutes to win? What was the strategy? Baiting the over. Todos aventaban. Yo no más farmeo kills. Baiting the over shield. <laughs> Wait for that bait, <laughs> basically, <laughs> because everybody was like pulling and dropping to the overshield. Right. Actually, I want to I want to talk to Strikey for a second right here. Strikey, second place, obviously, like not quite first. But how does it feel to to not only just get second place, but to get second place with with uh, with a one-two finish for Mexico? Yes, Alexion. Dice, ¿cómo te sentiste que fuera el final uno y dos para México a pesar de que estuvo muy parejo? O sea, ¿cómo te sientes con esta resultado? Pues me siento muy feliz, me quise llevar el primero, pero estoy demasiado feliz que al menos pues, otro jugador talentoso de México se lo pudo llevar. Y solo felicidad, pura felicidad. Says, I'm very happy for it because uh, it's a shame that I didn't want first, but I'm glad that another Mexican uh, partner that is very good, talented, did the opportunity to get champions. All right, guys, we'll start with you, uh, Strikey. Any messages you want to send back home? Anything you want to say to the, to the people at home? ¿Algún mensaje para la gente de México? Eh, pues le mando muchos saludos a mi mamá que está en Chiapas y la quiero mucho, a mi familia y a mi papá que está en Monterrey. Los quiero muchísimo. Saludos to mom and dad that are in Chiapas and Monterrey and he loves them very much. All right, our FFA champion, first of all, congratulations uh, once again. Any last message, anything that you want to say before we go back to the game? Play? ¿Algún mensaje final que quieras dar? Este, a toda la comunidad en general o a algún familiar como, o, tú quieras, como yo tú quiera quieras. Este, a la comunidad en general de Halo que sigan grindeando si lo que buscan es convertirse en campeones o algo así que sigan grindeando mejoren entrenen porque todo eso les dará mejores resultados y un saludo a mi familia ok for the Mexican and the Halo community as, as a whole uh, keep grinding keep uh, training uh, results come through just have to wait be patient keep grinding and for his family hi mom <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. We're going to head back towards the action in the loser's bracket. Do not go anywhere. Thank you guys so much for coming on. No, thank you.
couple of sweeps, a couple of upsets. There's been all sorts happening. 1-3-2. Yeah. Yeah, that 1-3-2. One, one, one game five, which actually was foe. So well fought from them. They have been pretty damn good. Well, she looking at the schedule, what's been your favorite match so far? I mean, I think the foe versus Cloud9 match that we got to watch earlier today, me and Wes got to cast that one. That was such an incredible match between, you know, foe eventually edging that one out. But as we look at this upcoming one, Rebellion versus Foe, you said a couple Cinderella's here, but only one gets to go to the Sunday ball. Oh. It is going to be tough between these two squads. I mean, can Rebellion bounce back from that last loss? Or are Rebellion just gonna find themselves in this match against Foe? And let's be real, the firepower that comes between those two teams, between someone like Foe versus someone like SSG, the fights are gonna be just that little bit easier. You're gonna get away with a little bit more compared to playing against Space Station. Very true, Walsh, and just to play on that pun even more, they both left their slipper in their <laughs> pools, and they What's need to pick it up right now on the main <laughs> stage in order to complete the look. I tell you what, though, I'm really excited about all of this, especially with the elimination bracket, really hot on their shoulders in terms of pressure. Shopify Rebellion versus Foe, as you can see, waiting in the wings on the other side of the bracket is FaZe, waiting for the winner of Complexity versus Quadrant, but back to our quarterfinals on the main stage. I've got to say, I'm a a little bit worried about Foe. I'll tell you why. At Foe right now, they've been waiting in the wings. I don't know exactly how warm they could possibly be, but not as warm as Shopify Rebellion coming off an unfortunate loss to SSG. They're going to be kicking themselves about that. I think they're going to be feeling like they could have actually taken that series from Space Station. So they're going to be out for blood to continue through to that semifinals. Yeah, I think they showed enough to where they should have confidence walking away. If you one thing, if you just got slapped around by Space Station and then still had to stay in the same exact spot on main stage and play a series immediately after, that would not be a good feeling. But the fact that they were competitive with a team the caliber of SSG, they should have some confidence, especially like you said, Dave, playing a team that is going to probably give you a little bit more space on the map, be a little less fast with their pace. I would expect Shopify to still remain confident, especially knowing that they come into the series as the favorite. They certainly do, I think, in terms of this and, and what has been achieved on both sides of the kind of, I guess, both rosters really, and who's had better competition, who's handled that better than the other. Well, she's talking about Shopify Rebellion first though, what was it about their series against SSG that had you excited about the rest of their tournament? What do you want to see from them here? We just saw so many moments of greatness. We saw outplays against some of the best players in the world in SSG, and we almost saw them take the lead in that series, almost bring it to a game five. They just had so many good things going for them in those games. Yeah, they did indeed. We talked about Cycle as well with you before in terms of the slayers and his slaying ability. Did he impress you going 100%. into that one? hundred yeah. percent. I mean, his just positioning, the way he's out shooting, the way he's doing peak shots against everyone, it's just, it's so impressive. It's very impressive. I've got to say, I've also been very impressed with the triplets this weekend, especially the one we're looking at on this roster. What has he been doing for this team? Because the shots have been out this world. Yeah, that's what Suppress does best, is he gets a snipe in his hand and he makes plays with it. We saw him popping off with a shock rifle. This is a kid that loves to soar, and we used to say four, but I guess it's five nowadays <laughs> with the bandit starts. This kid loves to get in your face and take space for his team. He is having a lot of success this weekend. Obviously, SSG shutting him down a little bit, but he still made himself a name in that series, I feel. He's going to be able to continue to play at that level. He's going to give Shopify every chance to advance here. Clutch, while I've got you looking on the other side of the stage, there's Foe. What can Foe do right now to kill this momentum, to try to gain some speed themselves and get a foot in here in this series on map one? Well, the good news is, is they're coming off of two back-to-back -back best of fives Game five wins, and that can build some confidence. That can build some momentum. Those Cinderella stories usually happen when teams go to game five, game five, and then all of a sudden you're like, we've been through the ringer. We've been in every situation so far this week, and we know what's in front of us as far as a stacked roster and rebellion. But as long as we find opportunities, we have been icy up until this point. As long as the ice doesn't melt, both should be confident as well. Yeah, you got one team that's happy to be here, one team that's coming off that disappointment to be here in this match. And like Wes said, you just take it series by series. Game Foe by is game. just saying we got another life right here. Let's extend this life. Indeed, I'm also so excited to see Wooten once again because I had goosebumps all over my body when they got that win across the table. I was so excited with the kids. So excited to see what he's going to do with the rest of his roster and how his confidence is also starting to grow, I think, as well. Being on that main stage, starting to get used to things as well.
But folks, it is time to head to our next matchup. This elimination match is going to be amazing. Who will go forward? Who will be going home? That is the question. Let's take a look at both of your teams. Shopify Rebellion. We said they were one of the most dangerous teams here in the tournament, and we talked about them being your dark horse team. But on the other side of things, maybe the real dark horse, maybe the real team flying under the radar. Foe, Shopify Rebellion, only one could make it to Championship Sunday. Foe has really impressed everyone this tournament. Of course, I got to talk about Wutum, a top six finish so far, top six placing so far. This could guarantee top four for Foe, but they've got to get through Shopify. Like you said, it's going to be a difficult task. Shopify is angry with their last loss. So far, we've seen Foe with their objective efficiency. It's been crazy against Cloud9. They actually lost the slave battle, yet still were able to win it in that game five. And when did things start? that King of the Hill versus C9. Well, that's where we're gonna start our series here. Game number one, King of the Hill on Live Fire. I talked to Wonderboy a bit before the show here, and one of the things he mentioned is he doesn't want his boys to lose that fire, to lose that energy. So coming into this first game, they've got to break that game one curse that they've had the entirety of today, and they've got to do it right now. We'll start off board with Wutum, the first one to get a kill, but also the first one to go down. Chicken Mighties. Making sure they clear Enemy out this tower side the of the map right off the rip. But meanwhile, Shopify Rebellion, they're going to get first progression on this hill. Camouflage yet to come up. Mighty with that sniper going towards the top tower is going to be really important to getting this camo. You see, Foe's going to get that very first camo without any sort of contention. And you trade that little bit of hill time for that camo. I think that's a valuable trade. Both these teams guaranteed top six at the moment. Wutum with this sniper, maybe, maybe he's gonna be the player to push his team to that top four, push them to championship Sunday, takes down Soul Sniper. Has help with him, they're gonna collapse quickly on the green side, three members surrounding the final two of Shopify Rebellion, that's a clean three down. Shopify Rebellion off a of spawn, this should be some good time for Foe. A great job by Foe to pressure together, right? Get your shields back, go in healthy, and then get control, and that's exactly what they've done, look at that. It's almost tied up in the hill time. Oh, oh. Holding on to that nest side with the sniper. Eventually, they're able to take him down. Luckily, they did that. Otherwise, he was about to heat up. Shots from across the map by Soul Snipe. Three down once again. This time for Foe Shopify Rebellion. Now should take the lead as far as this hill. Team. This is a player I'm looking to watch as well. It's Soul Snipe, right? Been on a, was on a team for such a long period of time, dating back all the way to Halo 5. Decided to make a change. Enemy we'll see if that change pays off here. Soul Snipe doing everything he can stay alive. I see two members. Push up quickly toward the next side. Another two pushing down sandbags. Again, it's a two-pronged attack. And somehow Soul Snipe's able Enemy to take down Mighty, but still three down goes Shopify. Foe now take the lead, or at least take the hill. Forward doing a really good job of capitalizing on damage. And this is not what we saw in, fr in the Friday event and even in the beginning of Saturday, but they're starting to pick it up, right? The chemistry's starting to come together for this squad, and you're seeing that manifest right now. So close. Foe could steal it, but here comes Shopify Rebellion with the quickness. Wootum's able to get a clutch kill onto Soul Snipe. It still glows red. 
It looks like Bo gonna steal this first kill as we move over to the tower side. Bo still have no chemistry is growing for this fellow roster. The push together right there to break the setup of Shopify Rebellion was nearly flawless, but Shopify do have initial control of that tower side, and that's gonna give them a little bit of hill time to start this second hill. 1-0 lead in favor of foe at the moment, but it was so like they got away with this game. Excellent shot on to Wu-Tang, but didn't know there was two more spawners that are pushing right back up. Shopify respond well. Slays once again about 25, maybe about 30% done with this hill where Shopify looks to tie things up. I've got to talk about Chick here, one of the newer members of Foe. Starting off really solid, seven and three. He's been a little bit quiet in this tournament. This is the time to step it up, and he's doing just that. We love to see it, but mental, he's got other things in mind. He's got the sniper in his hands. Saw what Phil could do with the sniper earlier. Now Mental oh, looking to match that same energy off the screen. Back to back kills coming from Shopify Rebellion. They are holding on to this hill, and at this point, I think Foe might be forced to punt it. They've just gone three down. Shopify not only take this hill, not only tie things up, but look at the pressure. They're already forcing the next hill. Yeah, Foe are going to be three down, and that's because of the staggered spawns that happened, right? It was the pressure of Shopify Rebellion that caused those spawns to go further away from the hill, and that gives Shopify immediate control once again of hill number three. Tied up in one of these here. Mental was able to get away with the sniper. Once again, but the spawners are oh. coming in quick. That flick right to the head of Wu-Tang. Normally, it looks like bouncing keyboard. Right? Yeah, I mean, mental absolutely disgusting with that controller, with that snipe as well. It's going to be Shopify still in a bit of control here. A trade goes out to 3v3. About halfway done to Shopify Rebellion, but the work not done. The phone do have a setup at the moment. Shopify looks great. Check doing a great job watching through the key door over towards bottom mid. They know the push is coming, so they hop out of the hill to make sure they secure those kills. Multiple going down for Bo. All four for Shopify, but Mighty showing he can use that snipe too. We got it. We saw that QT play, right? The ability to pressure the side of the hill and then bounce back to play your life. That's so important to be able to do that damage and still be able to stay alive. That is the game of Halo, and it was done there by Mental, but Mighty's doing some massive things with his snipe as he falls. Shopify moving into their final set as Bo and the Kill point be down once again. Camouflage about to come up. Shopify have the lead and they're also fighting the way through the camo side. Bo, they need an advantage. Something needs to change and just got three down again. Yeah, unfortunately, it's again the staggered pushes. A lot of 1v1s happening. It's about positioning, right? You've got to isolate your fights. You've got to be ready to use teamwork to get those first initial picks. And there we see it right away. It's going to be Bo and Mighty with that first initial pick. Now they have to act. But we're trying to clear out this tower side. You're able to deal with one, but suppressed with the double kill. The recup looking good for Shopify. Mighties able to take down Mental. Now we're seeing a whole bunch of red, a whole bunch of foes surrounding the seaside, which is exactly what both teams want, but is going to go for a bit of a dip. Yeah, I mean, he wants to go for a swim, but he played that extremely well. He played his life throughout the entire tower, got his shields back, was an impact to the players pushing as well. But again, it just doesn't seem like Foe have any sort of control here. Shopify Rebellion are squeezing them, and they're, again, isolating players one by one. Three go down once again for Foe. For three minutes on the clock, Shopify Rebellion not only have a 2-1 lead at the moment here in this game, but also over half the progression done with this hill. So press, making sure us. he checks every corner. This could be the final setup, at least for this hill, to go up 3-1. Foe, where are you? Unfortunately, it's going to be three down for the side of Shopify, so that last player is going to get the hill. A 3-1 lead here for Shopify Rebellion. That's not what you like to see if you're Foe. We saw Foe play amazing King of the Hill action against Cloud9 earlier here in this tournament, but as of right now, find themselves Enemy down two captures hill. against Shopify Rebellion, and once they have their foot on the pedal, they don't let up. There's no breaks on this card. Bo have to slow the game down just a bit. They've got to play together like we saw them in the two game fives that they were victorious. You see the pace starts to slow now. It's going to be Chick trying to get that initial pick. It's two down for Shopify, but again, they get the trade on to Wutum, so they're not really able to do too much in terms of control, but they do have top tower. So far, Bo looking good with the setup. Just about locked in right now. Shopify Rebellion ends up losing half of their team. Snap just like that, like Thanos. Bo gets rid of them as they look to put in their second hill so far for Foe and make this competitive. Shopify have Enemy to get Jimbo contest. off of the top tower if they want to make anything happen on this hill. Chick right here in a position to get the rest of this hill time. There's about two minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. Plenty of time. Jimbo with a sniper top tower. Jimbo 
wants to keep Shopify Rebellion off of the hill, but they're getting the first bit of progression. Meanwhile, Suppressed off the screen was able to take down Utum, but Suppressed dives right in. Another Enemy three down for Fell. The they are so close and so far away. Fell are doing a great job of staggering and milking this hill, though. It's going to be Jimbo who falls, so it'll be, of course, Suppressed. With this Sniper, you'll see he immediately gets this tower control. This is what's important to make sure this hill goes in Shopify's hands. Oh, just need about a split second or maybe two in order to capitalize on this hill, but mind your Shopify Rebellion. They're now getting real close to stealing this one away, which would be the last hill so far. Foe get one break. Three down goes Shopify Rebellion. We're within one. Foe may have another massive enemy team. The great thing is that Foe have plenty of time right now. We're talking about two minutes and 35 seconds to tie this game up. They've just got to slow down the pace just a bit. That's what we saw in that last hill. If they can do that, they can capitalize and tie this game. Once again, a 3-2 lead for Shopify Rebellion, but Foe once again find himself at a disadvantage. Shopify Rebellion right in this hill when the spawners are being staggered at the moment. Soul Stipe able to take down Chicks, suppressed pressuring the rest of Foe. Foe haven't been able to cross the 50% portion of the map, let alone get Shopify out of the hill. Shopify are doing a great job, like you said, of controlling that 50% 50% portion, but also that cross damage is so strong. Two players push in those shields. That's a cleanup. Four down for Shopify, though. Mighty's has a chance to get some hilt time. Four down for Shopify, three Enemy down for Foe. Mighty's was the only player alive on the map, so that should mean some hilt time. Sniper about to come up here soon. We see Shopify pushing point through the A side and Cycle not knowing the crossfire is coming in. He's gonna lose his life because of it. Excellent shot onto Menzo as Mighty simultaneously putting pressure down on the map, but also taking hill time finally to get Mighty's down. But now he's replaced by Jimbo with the sniper. Shopify still pushing up, still feeling confident they may just end the game. Shopify played the long game there. You saw they spawned on the big door. They rotated through bottom center and on top sandbags. And honestly, Fall Warren were able to capitalize on that at all. And it might be this last hill that they get. This could be it. Nobody from Foe around. Finally, they're able to contest, but it's one of a last-ditch effort as multiple going down for Foe and Cycle. Gonna chase them right out. Still, Mighty stays alive. Now reinforcements are coming in. Chicks here. Jimbo gets a god spawn. The same for Wootsum. Now everybody from Foe has a sight line on this hill. This should have been Shopify, but they were just too slow. Chick able to take down Cycle. This hill is anybody's Foe may just take it. The mud spawns were absolutely incredible for this full roster. They might just tie this up, and they do! Two minutes remaining! Full tied up at three! And this is a chance for them to close out this game. It's one cap to take it all. Two minutes on the clock, but time would not be a factor in this one. This will end with a victory, either Shopify or Foe taking momentum in this series. You see a tie right here in terms of lives, right? Jimbo goes down for the side of Foe. Shopify go two down. Of course, it's once again Chick in a very powerful position inside of this vent. They're going to be able to get their shields back and push up. Chick doing everything can to stay alive. Can't hit the curb slide to stay. Team took Soul Snipe with the double kill. He's going to demand control of his hill because of it. Mental off the screen, taking down Wootsum. So now Jimbo, the final player alive. And there's only so much you can do by yourself. Spawners are coming up. Foe need a break. They need a quick. Foe took a step-by-step -step effort for the last two hills. They've got to do that here. The pressure is on. This is when teams crumble, essentially. It's gonna be the flank coming from the outside on the camo. Soul Snipe, he's in a position to stop this, though. He's gonna have a pitch on the, on the Chick. Chick ends up going down. Foe spawned on the opposite side of the map. It looks like they sent at least two members over towards that green, and like you said, Enemy one team flanker. The, the flank goes down, but still three members overwhelmed from the nest side. They take control. Mighty's with the double. Jimbo to follow it up. Three down goes Shopify Rebellion.
Hello, welcome back and a very good evening to you as we've had a very good day two of HCS Arlington. Mikowski back on the mic alongside my duo, Eli the Ninja, as we witness Complexity taking that overtime win and the one elite in this series now in a highly contested game two. And we hop on board right into the 30s. It's still close. Quadrant up two. Yeah, this game looks like it's gone back and forth. I think the lead has traded back and forth a few times. Quadrant now with the three kill lead though, trying to extend. Looks like they are aware of Huss's location, but look at Huss just kind of baiting this corner. Has a teammate behind him. Seems like they're always so aware of each other's locations. Whoa. And they play that situation perfectly. They get three, only lose one in the process. Now, maybe suspecting Quadrant already has control of the tower. Look at the patience here. Huss is timing this reveal at the same time that his teammates push through other lanes. I love to see this. Precision comes up, cuts. This is going to open the door for Huss to push in. Precision also comes through. SLG, though, is prepared for it. Lays down the assault rifle. Shots looking like playing Halo CE again. And after all that, it's still a one-kill lead for Quadrant. The pinch was handled by Quadrant, but Complexity are doing, uh, able to do enough to earn a couple slays and tie things up at 39. Now hopping on board here with Precision, having an uncharacteristic 7 and 12, but with 9 assists, having himself still a good game, you could argue. 40-39 now, as Complexity take the lead, moving into the 40s. For a moment there, the the kills on both sides were also tied. It was 12, 11, 9, and 7 for across the board for both teams. It was a little weird to see, but now, two kill lead for Complexity. Rotating around the back of the tower, Precision here. I feel like all eyes are on this man, on this squad. And look, this is the Ryan Noob strat we talk about. They're all swinging left. They're going to try to catch somebody off guard. Their location's now been revealed. They might decide to rotate backwards to the other side. Yes, Quadrant are scurrying. And I think that might be part of the plan. Complexity wants to scare them into rotating out the big door, but they've rotated ahead of it to cut them off. SLG with the overshield charm on that snipe, looking to power up. A potential win here for Quadrant and a 1-1 tie in this series. Woo. SLG with the headshot on Ryan Noob. Quick scope on a Hus, but Glory takes him down nonetheless. And Quadrant have regained the lead, 44-43. SLG got one bullet to work with. You have to imagine it's very important that he puts it to work. This guy might be one of the best in the entire world when it comes to putting this to work, but no! Precision gets a double kill. SLG got the body shot, but that never gets cleaned up. We're now tied, but now Complexity take the lead by one. 46-45. We're in the end game now. Only four kills left for Complexity, but Quadrant are only down one. Hopping on board here with the send it, but he goes down. Ryan New makes sure it's in the trade fashion. That maintains a one kill lead for Complexity. As I imagine, we might just have a stalemate if not for SLG deciding to push through. No, stalemate is here. I think SLG was just kind of waiting to see if a member of Complexity was going to walk up the sandbags, but somehow Descendant gets away with the camo. This is massive right now. Quadrant knows the camo is lurking, but they don't know where. Shows up at the perfect time to fight Sika. Almost <laughs> loses that fight somehow. 49-48. How's this one going to end, Hunter? Descendant has the camo, but Glory on the other side has a double kill to bring Quadrant to within one. But Descendant shuts the door. Needed maximum value out of that camo. If Complexity were to take a 2-0 lead in this series, and they do. Try as they might does Quadrant, but they may have just met their match here against Complexity. I'll tell you what though, Hunter. We just witnessed one of the most epic reverse sweeps I think we've ever seen from the other Europeans that find themselves in the bracket. Perhaps Quadrant takes some inspiration from that. I mean, it's a mirror matchup too. It's, so. it's literally the same game types, right? So it was the same round that it happened previously. Can Quadrant pull the miraculous reverse sweep that we saw from foe. Granted, have to argue that Complexity might be a tougher opponent than foe's opponent in the prior series, but I mean, right now Complexity, I feel like not really playing at full form, and both these first two games were barely won. I mean, talk about sending Ooh. it to overtime. Man. Complexity has to win after a multi-reset. Quadrant barely losing the live fire. Just a couple situations go their favor, and this could be tied 1-1, but Definitely not unfathomable, unfathomable for them to come back in this. And I think in this instance, Eli, where you have a 2-0 lead for complexity, but the games have been so close, it sets up even more for Quadrant in that reverse sweep trampoline. And that, yeah, they're down 0-2 in the series, but from what we've seen at least, they're right there in the fight. And if they can bring it to complexity here in this game three, start to find the nanoseconds 
uh, the, the the millimeters that they need on the map to find the time and space to earn more ball time. But you brought up that last series. My God, Foe with the reverse sweep against Proton. It started here on Recharge Oddball. And the key, Eli, was the perfect timing of the resets and rotations. What else did you witness from Foe in that game three that Quadrant can do here to bring things back? I mean, like you said, rotations are everything in this game type. You gotta predict where your opponent's spawning, predict what route they would more than likely take to get to your setup, and then just rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise in the opposite direction. And I feel like that's what Foe did so well to come out ahead of Proton in that prior series. But complexity, I don't know if they're gonna be, they're not gonna let those kind of things slip as easily. I kind of feel like complexity is very confident in this game type. Well, not only, not only does, Game three set up for Quadrant, but might be looking a little bit ahead here. Strongholds, I think everybody gets up for Quadrant when you see Strongholds on the series layout. Granted, this is a new Quadrant this year. They still have the core retained though. And for what we've seen, we've seen moments where Quadrant passes the eye test. They look like they have that same form of map manipulation and spawn control in hand despite the roster change. So if they're able to take a game three oddball on a recharge, Solitude on st Strongholds. Solitude might even set up even better for them. So, complexity up to 2-0 in the series, but they can't start getting comfortable. Exactly right, but I would say that Ryan is the type of player that when he sees a team performing so well, like he saw Quadrant last season in Strongholds, I feel like he's ripping the pages out of their book and stealing yeah. for this squad, because this squad also imagine like insane at strongholds in general. I think Ryan Noob's also the kind of player, Eli, where he'll be crouched behind the turbine at the back of C and Quadrant will think they have this big brain rotation heading that direction. And then uh, Ryan Noob's probably got the repulsor in his back pocket too. And there he goes. One goes into the drink, oddball <laughs> goes into the hand of Ryan Noob. I don't know if uh, we have a fortune telling globe in front of us, all of the oddball icon, but it feels like that might have the potential for what the future might look like for complexity. I, I think if Quadrant are to have those rotations, I feel like if any team is able to read it and have it preemptively planned out and be laying in wait, kind of sitting there with their arms crossed and toe tapping like, I was waiting for you. <laughs> it, would, it would be complexity and it would especially so be Raya Noob nerds. Yeah, I agree with you. I will say that your premonition cannot be true because there is no more Repulsor on this map. Prior versions of the game, though. Could That's have been, right. Yeah, no more Repulsor, which I'm glad, to be honest. I'm tired of getting knocked into the drink. I mean, it just feels yeah, so cheesy to cheesy. die like that, to be honest. But regardless, the, the point still stands. It, it's about predicting that rotation and being ready for it. And I absolutely think Complexity is the type of squad that can do that time and time again. Going to have to see. They're obviously going to take a little break here. I think Quadrant probably having some conversations, you know. A little bathroom break, but also just time to mentally reset and prep for this next one. Is there any particular player on Quadrant that you feel needs to step up for them to have a better chance against Complexity? I'm looking at the old core, the retaining core, and uh, it's almost like <laughs> Louis Lared my mind. Yeah. SLG. I'm looking for one of those mainstays, the Quadrant lifers, we'll call them, at least as it relates to Halo Infinite. I know Snipe Drone pops off with the Snipe, might pop off with the Shock, but I'm looking for SLG and the re the, the retaining Sika. core, Sika, yeah. to pop off. This is their squad. This is their home, and they need to defend it. Otherwise, they'll go home. Reverse sweep uh, fashion, though, is on the table, but if they aren't able to win here, it's a sweep itself for complexity. And talk about this lower bracket run for complexity with how shaky they looked in day one. Maybe they benefit. Uh, you don't want to ride that close to the sun and get the wings burned off. But Complexity, I, think, I feel like, is the kind of roster that is going to benefit from a lower bracket run. And they're kind of showing that right here. No, I actually agree with that. I mean, these guys just want more games played on land straight up. What if they lost on purpose? Just like a play more on land. Big break. If man. anybody would. <laughs> guys, I want us to lose this series against Optics so we can just we're, barely survive we're to the win, third seed. We're planning to win Atlanta. So <laughs> yeah. when we get to Atlanta, we want to have X number of land games played. So we got to lose this so we can play more. <laughs> Our goal isn't winning the first tournament. It's simply getting the most games in and the most experience and practice as a team. I mean, they really I mean, are kind of robotic in that sense, right? Like <laughs> We're joking, I mean, but. We're, we're, we're trolling are for we? sure. But, <laughs> but at, at the end of the day, just more time in definitely going to benefit to them as they get through the tournament. Tournament, you, it does kind of feel like they're ramping up now, right? Like they're getting better as time goes on. 
maybe also withholding some energy for the series that really matter. Yeah, think about this. This is a new team in complexity. So yeah, they got nothing but upside. Granted, a lot of their pieces have familiarity. Huss and Precision forming that deadly duo last season. They stick together. And then Ryan Noob and Carmea at the time were on that Shopify Rebellion roster, right. but Carmea got dropped and picked up for cycle. Right. Ryan Noob goes back to the well, if you will, and says, hey, uh, you want to run it back? So how, talk to me how that team composition works. You got two players that have stuck with each other throughout last season. And you got two players that kind of went on a side quest and then ended up meeting each other back in the middle. Honestly, I kind of feel like it, it just grows the bond even stronger, right? Like for us to part ways and then after so long come back together and reunite, I don't know, there's something special about that. Instead of, you know, you spend too much time with somebody you're like, yeah, I'm just used to your face by now, but it's like, oh, we went separate ways and then we reunited. Maybe a little bit more of a special bond between those two, but uh, yeah, I mean, this roster, I don't know, they just vibe, man. Just it's meant to their be. Comps. Yeah. It's like it was meant to be. It does feel that way. Kind of like me and you, where we Aww. spent <laughs> most of our teenage years That's together true. playing Halo 2 and 3 together. We teamed. You carried me to professional status. We'll say it had a couple of electric <laughs> wins on the main stage uh, against talent. Oh, you popped I off think. in those matches for for top sixteen. Though. I did have some good games. I did have some good moments. And uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't talk to each other for ten years, and then Halo Infinite's coming out. It's like, hey Eli, you know, let's get the gang back together. Yeah. It kind of feels a little bit like what Complexity is working through here. And Crazy, I think huh? we saw a uh, glimpse at the bracket foe. Did they go up one zero against Shopify? I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. That's what this. So the bracket says, and the bracket is church, right? It's the truth, I assume. Actually, you know what? I heard the shouts. They were tied 3-3 in the King of right, the Hill. they came back. When, they were down. When we left off, and then I heard the shouts from the room next door. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure they did win that, that game one. Dude. Could, what if they if they beat <laughs> Shopify? That would be incredible. Because Shopify is the team that's been earmarked as, like, okay, top six. Like, almost it reminds me of a KCP or Native Red, right? Like, just yeah. earmarking for top six. But when they're on their stees... Could be All on World anyone. Championship Native Red, they could place top three. Right. And I think, oh well, yeah, that's exactly what Foe are in, 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 in the way of potentially stealing what many people would have predicted Shopify being in that spot. One, but Well, they're man, already top six. Well, they're already top so six. This so this is they, for top four. They get that top six, but you yeah, had to reach a little bit higher. It's like we know... We know your floor is top six for Shopify, but how, how far does the ceiling go? And I guess now we should ask, how far does the ceiling go for not only Foe, but the other team on the other side of the pond or uh, the neighborhood for them, Quadrant. I mean, you're, you're, this is a phenomenal event for International Halo through and through. I mean, we see Mexico win the FFA, Mexico landing in top 12. Several other LATAM teams made it deep and open as well. There was almost a potential for, I think, four Latin American teams to make it through because four of them made it very deep. So. Yeah, Darkest Hour had to take down SWAT X Alpha to qualify. Mm -hmm. That was in a 3-0, but man, that series was tight, and SWAT Alpha gave them every bit and that they SWAT could handle. SWAT X Lat Am defeated Gunplexion's team. That was a bit of an upset, right? Yeah. But I mean, and I'm pretty sure SWAT X Lat Am and SWAT Alpha ended up knocking each other out at some point. So I mean, my they gosh. were right there at the end. Yeah. So I mean, incredible international talent. Obviously, these two European squads. The last international talent to be had. We're a little bit further behind in the bracket on this side. Foe already playing for top four. This is currently for top six, I believe. These are getting iced out a little bit, eh? After yeah. losing to Optic, what feels like a day ago at this point. I mean, right. it might as well have been all the way back in the winter semis. Like, and we've had dinner and two bottles of water since then. I mean, it's been it's been a long right. time. As phase lie in wait in the lower bracket. What a big win for Optic to continue on on home court as we continue on with this series after a long break between game two and three. Quadrant have had a chance to talk about their strategy and they're deploying it off the opening break with the win. SLG already with a couple slays in a couple seconds. And just now did Complexity get the first kill of the match. They get two for Ryan Noob. On the other side, 47 kills for Quadrant. So nice hot start here, but not much ball time to be had for it. Also, Shock Rifle laying right there next to the Oddball. Kind of both the things you want to fight for, sitting right beside each other. If no players go near the ball right now, though, that Shock Rifle is going to despawn. I think that's exactly what happened here. The Oddball might even reset. It yep. does. Incoming. So three seconds for Quadrant. Only three meters it looked like they got off the stump as it heads back to the stump. 
two players for complexity pushing on through, but love this positioning from SLG. He's the last player alive, but he has the back of a couple opponents, but complexity handle it well. Nice toss up from Precision to Descendant as complexity earn their first bit of time in this match and the lead. Look at that, throws the ball off to I believe Rhinoob as well. Maybe since the pressure coming in from the other side of pipes wanted to respond to it, player able to take out both Precision and Descendant. I feel like those are the two guys you really got to shut down if you're going to have a chance. So far, Precision, not a kill to his name. Definitely dealing damage, though. Three assists. But he's got to start heating up if they're going to come into this game. A couple of three downs for Quadrant Mean. Three more seconds, it feels like, only for complexity. Both teams, despite earning some slays, aren't able to earn much time. And surprisingly enough, it's Quadrant who are going to make it. And they're going to rotate it from A to C. This exactly the strategy that we are talking about here, whichever team can rotate and or reset the oddball with perfect timing should win this match. For now, Quadra take the advantage. Love Sika's positioning here. Knows that from down here with Camo, he can shoot all kinds of players in the back that are trying to approach his ball carrier. That just means more time. If Glory can win this fight on Descendant, it's gonna be even more time, but no, Descendant does get that slay on Glory. It's actually massive for complexity. If it, what in the G-slide psychopathic <laughs> oh nonsense? God. This man is absolutely insane. I've never seen a player touch the back blue wall of Precharge <laughs> until Descendant flies through. But the Super G slide had to have had the grapple hook too. There's no way. All right, listen. And if anybody can make that Super G slide without the grapple, it's, it's him, right? Listen, yesterday, I didn't know if it was stream appropriate. You called him crackheads, but I now I see why. You call, I see why you called him a crackhead. That was the most crackheaded play I've ever seen in Halo Infinite. <laughs> Very appropriate. How the tides have turned, right? Us now with some oddball time. Two down on each side. Now that's just actually two on uh, Quadrant side. Us only one. Now with the oddball in his hand and complexity come right back, tying it, but now regaining the lead. This one's been back and forth. Both teams reaching the 30 second checkpoint. And just like that, the oddball switches back into the favor of Quadrant. That's two times in a row where I feel like wow. complexity are about to rotate it. They are, but Quadrant steal it, earn a fumble, and now they regain the lead. Yeah. And are we going to see another man fly off the map to kill the oddball player? That's the question. <laughs> they got a nice setup here, though. And right now, dodging some grenades here. This is such an annoying place to break into. If you're playing offense in this situation, trying to break into the C setup, you know that even if you get through, you're not going to get the oddball for it. But it's also sometimes very hard to get through. They do a good job of it, but look at this. Ball gets reset. Complexity has the ball in their hands. At least for now, Glory going to try to make it difficult. And I think both teams are just going to keep fighting for map control before they grab that ball. Now, what a mixy sequence there previously is. Seven out of eight members go down in the lobby. It was sounding a little too eerily quiet here on recharge as Ryanu was able to utilize the grapple to get back to the reset point. But because of the fact that everybody went down on his team aside from him, he didn't have the support to hold it much longer. Instead, it's Quadrant with the ball back in their hands and a 20 plus second lead. Saw a player of complexity going for that Walshy double stick combo. Unable to find any success with it, but look at this. Sniper has got two grenades in his pocket, two more on the ground. Let's see if he puts them to use. Sees a player here. Does get the double kill, killing spree, oh. make it a triple. Perfect. Sees the glint of the sniper from Ryan Noob, have to imagine. Gonna try to go for that overkill. Spawner's coming out on the C flat. Gotta be careful. Look at this. Senate hitting perfect shots off spawn instantly and already taking space after what looked like extreme control out of Quadrant. Triple kill's not enough. And in fact, it's not even enough to hold ball time or keep complexity from holding it instead. How did they flip that situation on their head? Impressive regain there from complexity as they look to regain the lead down by 14 now. As SLG makes his way towards the top side of gold. He's got help though. In the form of Sika, Descendant pushing Ooh. through and he wins it. Descendant takes down SLG, but Quadrant continue on to ball time and they're in that fulcrum at the long haul. Do they take it to C? Yes, they do. Both teams putting on impressive displays of teamwork in all these situations. It's been almost just like a tale of who's throwing better grenades in some spots. Snipe Drone though, by far and away the standout performer. He's 17 and eight with all the ball time for Quadrant. That's nuts. That's multiple times throughout day two of Halo. Uh, HDS Arlington, we've seen the player that has the most slays, the least deaths, and the most oddball time. What is in the water here in Arlington? I mean, you can, we can see from that triple kill that everyone he's shooting at already a little bit weak, but Snipe Drone throughout his career has always been that guy that just right place, right time. That's why they call him the European Snipe Down. 
It's what you just always in perfect position to help your teammates finish the kills. But also to do that with oddball time, very impressive. Snipe drone with an impressive performance, but complexity with an impressive bounce back. Now down only 10, single digits as SLG and the rest of Quadrant push up through the long haul. Huss holds strong because of the slay from Precision. He's not going to have to worry about potentially rotating it down towards A. Well, the needle side of the map looked like he was eyeing it, but now he's just eyeing for intel. And I love this here from Huss. If you can't shoot while you got the oddball, you better earn some intel and some good comms for your team. Love this from Huss, but he goes down shortly after. Quadrant breakthrough and do a good job to potentially regain it, but no, Raidu staggers out, takes down SLG, but four go down for complexity, if not for precision. Eventually goes down, so that's a four down for complexity. Four seconds separating these two teams. This one's back and forth as Quadrant regain the lead. This has been unreal. Both teams fighting so hard for the ball. So many kills going out on both sides. It seems like every kill is trading out. No one really getting a clear advantage in any given situation. It's currently Quadrant with a two second lead. 23 seconds on the clock. Quadrant could win this if they were to keep them off the ball, but they're unable to. Now it's oh. complexity with the lead, and they have the potential for the play. Ball. I love the communication there after Precision got the stick. He tells uh, his teammate that the seaside is clear. The tower has been broken through, and complexity breakthrough. Regain the lead, however narrowly, only oh. by two. Only eight seconds left in this one. It's coming down to the wire. Quadrant, tie it. Now regain the lead. Glory, Glory with the shock rifle can shut complexity down, and he does. Three go down, two. One, and it's a one second win here for Quadrant in round one. This is exactly what they needed for that reverse sweep. This is exactly what we saw in the other series too. I mean, granted, they had to come back after a loss, but it was a one second oddball win that was the tie turner for Foe to ultimately create that reverse sweep. Can their European compatriots do the same? Dude, if the level of competition just keeps growing throughout HCS Season 3, which, spoiler alert, it will, right. it's just going to get even more insane. How many one-second oddball round wins with 0, 0, 0 on the clock have we seen? That seems like a, a, a an anomaly, like a once-in-a-lifetime Halo moment, but we're seeing it multiple times here this weekend as complexity grabs more time off the rip here. A good job to regain here. After going down, call it an emotional loss there in round one. They thought they had it. Quadrant steal it. But for now, complexity regain. Take the lead in round two. And it looks like they're soaring towards that 30-second checkpoint. Yeah, these early leads can ultimately get you the dub in a round. I mean, to get 30 this early means that they have to win less neutral positions throughout the rest of the round to close it out. But as I say that, they're just going to continue to roll. SLG trying to make his way in. Will get the kill with the nice double melee. And sees his teammates are spawning on the C side. Knows that's a, usually the safest part of the map. Look at this rotation. Cut straight through the center of the map with the curb slide. The movement on point. Going to use the jump up here. Doesn't want to go through the blue pipes. Would have been exposed a little bit longer with that route. And if they can just hold off a couple of slays, they could absolutely begin to tie this up. Oh, this is methodical from SLG all the way back to the reset when he dropped the oddball just a couple meters out in front of the pillars to enable himself to hit that G-slide, work his way into C, where he earns another slay and more ball time. Quadrant, despite that 30-second head start for complexity, are right back in it. They might even, in fact, regain the lead with two going down for complexity. Despite SLG having oddball in his hand, Quadrant still, still able to retain numbers advantage to be quote unquote three, we'll call it. As Quadrant have, in fact, stolen it. Back and forth we go. It's a merry-go-round here in round two. Round one was the same. Camo's coming up though. Quadrant can't just sit back here the whole time. They should probably contest it with two players dying though. I think they're gonna throw the ball off the map, completely reset the situation. That Camo should go into complexity's favor. It is Ryan Noob that has it. He's gonna also probably grab the ball. No. He's gonna just kind of bait it for now. He... Looks like he was a little in between decisions, and you usually yeah. don't see that from Ryan Noob. Usually he comes up with some diabolical plan and he sticks to it. Looked a little in between decisions there as two go down on each side. Shock in the hand though of Descendant. Oddball in the hands of Huss and what a great job to regain after Ryan Noob goes down. Complexity somehow. Find more ball time and maybe even this lead. This, this is unbelievable, Eli. How many lead changes have we witnessed just in this game three? So many, but it's Huss fighting off two members. Somehow gets a kill. He was in a 1v2 situation on the other side of the map. Sika finally takes him down, but Huss buying some time for Descendant to get this kill. Also still alive in a precarious situation, but with shots like that, you can push Enemy people back ball. even from Enemy the open parts of the victory. map. And now Precision and Rainu are going to push in. 
The Senate going to hit this wide right flank, knowing that teammates are coming in from the left side and hits the curbside mid-fight. I love to see. That's one of my favorite things about watching Pro Halo is in the middle of a gunfight, you go for the curbside to try to throw off your opponent's aim. He's able to do exactly that and get the trade. That's one of my favorite things about watching Descendant. That's just... Yeah. That's just what he does. And the calculation now that comes with the movement tech. Used to just G-slide for the sake of it. Now he's combining it with strategy, patience, and the timing that you need in professional Halo to succeed at the, the top as complexity. Look to rise to the top here in round two. Taking a 10, now 11 second lead. 3.15 left on the clock. As Precision spots the back at two. 1v2, oh. gets the, the, the trade win, but in a 1v2, that's a win condition, a win for precision. Not a single shot missed there. Five perfect shots into the first target, three perfect shots into melee into the second. Huge double kill that not many players are even capable of pulling off, to be honest. You have to be oh. so precise, as is his namesake. But ball gets played once again. Currently, it is Quadrant in the pipe side, and huge shots out of Sika to shut down Precision. Descendant, though, here with Ryan Oob, is going to take the shock and try to escort him to safety, and this is a scary sight. Yeah, what a time to earn all four down if your complexity is they Add more ball time to the scoreboard and eight more shots in that sniper rifle. Descendant setting up that reticle along the gold side, expecting the push. But I like the timing. Five, six, seven seconds. It's not there. Oh, snipe drone anticipates that and re-engages with Descendant. Descendant, despite earning a fresh snipe, isn't able to use it. And another moment in the lobby where Sika, the last player alive, as if he's living in an apocalyptic wasteland, <laughs> there to scavenge whatever he wants. And in an oddball match, it's exactly what you want. I know it. He just got exactly what he wanted, which was his teammates to spawn with him in gold and in A. They got the even spread perfectly here to they essentially spawn the into set the up setup. Him. Yes, it's, that's incredible. And they get four dead again after perfect spawns, which is I don't. I mean, there is an element of chance to that because no, complexity. That's quadrant. Complexity could have easily spawned in A while Quadrant spawned on the other side, right? Because he could last man alive. It's kind of a 50-50 toss-up, but they spawn into the setup, know exactly what to do with it, and they might just earn the round for it. I'm gonna give the tips to Quadrant there, man. Quadrant is known for map and spawn manipulation, but with nine seconds, eight seconds left to go, Quadrant go four down, and with 85 for Complexity, one final push for Quadrant, or Complexity will tie up this game. If Quadrant can steal it, though, they'll take game three. But for now, Precision sits safely at the top side of gold. Sensing the spawn and the push on the needle side. He's working his way out, but he doesn't want to work his way too far out as Complexity will, in fact, take it. Eli, we're heading, who'd have thought, to a round three. This might be the closest series we've seen so far. I mean, first game, one cap in OT. Second game, two kill difference. We're going to round three here. That Look at the slays at the top of your screen. They're almost identical across the oh, board. Th that means both teams are playing their A-plus game. It's exactly. Grouping is within four on each side. Everybody's playing their 25%. And ball. I guess I'd give even more props ball. to Complexity. Everybody with between 40 and oh 50 my God. seconds. Yeah. I mean, this even is the unbelievable. time is even. These guys are a unit. Descendant, the only standout player the in the kills department, ball but drop. as you can see, the look at the assists for Ryan Oob and Precision. They've been outputting probably similar amounts Enemy of damage. Both teams playing so well right now. Enemy has the ball. Off the break, it's complexity. Winning some ball time, but with the slays dwindling down, they're not going to be able to hold it too strong. And they're actually not even uh, going to be able to secure that rotation into the back of blue. They still got some meat on the bone. Oh, but Snipe Drone takes the face and takes back the oddball potentially. But wow, what a heads up play there for Precision. Quadrant would have had the wow. setup. But instead, complexity get the reset. What a heads up play from Precision. That's huge, especially when he's not popping off like we're used to seeing. Making a heads up oh. play like that is massive, but Snipe Drone continues taking heads himself. Double kill melee earns it. On to Ryan Oob. Goes down to a frag grenade as Precision soars through the sky. Gets taken down by Sika though. A little shroud screen for some extra security for SLG as they work their way towards gold. Complexity trying to work the oddball that way as well, but this is going to be a rotation by SLG. He says, I'll take that, work it back to the long haul, and earn another slay. 28 kills apiece for all four members of Quadrant. A lot of players were questioning why Snipe Drone, but I think they're, they're, being, they're getting the answer. Have you seen this man popping off with the shock rifle, popping off with the snipe earlier today as well? Seemingly one step ahead of complexity in a lot of these spots, and that's not an easy team to be a step ahead of. After a minute and a half, burn off the clock. A few seconds only on each side, but it's Quadrant eking out a lead here, up by 10 plus. 
Glory continuing Ooh. to secure ball time, but complexity. Secure the back of C. Snipe Drone is the last player alive. The distraction on the back of C actually helps him to earn the camouflage. And with that oddball getting reset, this is a this is a, this is a winning condition, uh, a winning scenario here for Quadrant. I think they like the setup. I really liked what I just saw from Snipe Drone there. The complexity expects him to move quickly after grabbing camo, but he actually sat right there. It's, it's kind of like doing the least expected thing is to just not move at all. And he's going to find his way into having the shock rifle. They still are unaware of his position. Look at the perfect timing of that shot there. Knows that it doesn't matter to stay in camo if his teammate needs his help. Hitting shots as well. Going for the triple here. Get some damage on that player. And look at this rotation. They already know the spawns are coming in from A. He's oh! still popping off with the shock rifle. Snipe drone is untouchable right now. And it all started with that camo play. You know who grabs camo and just goes oh! straight to the camo box? My god, Snipe drone! I'm not going to continue with that thought. Continues with the headshot. Spree opening up a big lead here in round three for Quadrant. A game three where they need it to stay alive. Snipe drone stepping up in a huge way. Hitting almost every shock rifle shot. If he can hit this one, it's probably the biggest value shock rifle we've seen all day. Okay, finally misses one. Gets assassinated as well. So Huss finds his way into the back of the pipes while his teammates push in through the front. But they have a lot of ground to make up here in this round if they're going to push this series or if they want to oh. close the series out. But oh. look at the grapple to toss it up to the ledge to himself. That was big break. And he had like the front step in Visa ledge where he wasn't fully on it. So he doesn't clamber. He's able to jump back up to bat ledge. We're witnessing all the movement tech on display here from Descendant. Thought maybe he want a Super G slide with the grapple, but instead he grabs the oddball, works it back to gold. Here's that Super G slide. Oh, God. As he pushes on through, three go down for complexity, though. Quadrant are able to handle what seemed like a really good stretch from them. They're in the lead 55 to 10 with two to go. I feel like Descendant has just become the villain of HCS. Like, he's just going to do the craziest, in your face, disrespectful things imaginable. Like, flying off the map and five shotting the oddball guy. Just because, like, I feel like it's almost like an intimidation tactic. Like, yeah, I'm literally that crazy. There's I will no, do this. There's no doubt the opposing player he, he took down in that se sequence wasn't thinking to himself, what WTF? the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? You need to make the opponent think, Enemy what yeah. the? Because that is how you start to scramble the brains, manipulate the mind. And these are mind games. It's not just Halo being played as Quadrant. to get 65 to 10 lead. Two down, though, on each side. Allows Ryan to pick up that oddball. Complexity with 90 seconds left on the clock. Need to find a good stretch of gameplay. They're down about a minute or so with a minute or so left. Good recognition from Ryan Noob that he could drop the ball and get that slate. Try to get a second, but the pressure too strong from Quadrant. Sinna gets a trade in the kill feed with Sika. And it looks like Quadrant have the edge in this positioning spot. Right now, Hus just positioning himself in such a way that he's waiting for his teammates. Maybe play as bait, but a perfectly placed plasma grenade from SLG takes Hus all the way to one shot, unable to do anything, and they might just close the round here. It's getting to the point where Quadrant could sprint, finish it, and they could even play to drop the oddball and bait complexity out. Desperation going to be a part of their oh. strategy. Descendant strategizing a headshot once again with the shock rifle, but all the while the action taking place on the needle side. It's the oddball at top A, and it gets reset. Complexity with their last chance. 15 seconds needed oh. for Quadrant to win. Descendant hits another what headshot. Was that shot? Dude, his best snipe drone impersonation. We saw him pop off earlier in this series. It's how Quadrant built the big lead. Do Complexity have a big comeback in mind? They might just as Descendant rips another soul. Is this the highest kill game we've ever seen? Everyone with more than 35 on the side of Quadrant. This is unbelievable stuff. Look oh, at the shot shots. Oh, oh my god, don't almost hit that. Turn two, that was so close. 35 85. Complexity have brought it back, and now the clock in their favor. They were once down by a minute with less than a minute, now down by less than 50 seconds with 51 oh. seconds left. Continuing on with the oh. on ball, a killing spree for Descendant. He just won't die until he finally does. But did that spree, did that performance with the shock rifle allow complexity to come back? They're down 35 seconds. They're forced to reset after losing numbers. And this is a critical reset win for complexity. They got to have it. It's only 40 seconds on the clock. They need to grab this ball and get it to safety now, but they got to get some kills first. SLG trying to bodyguard the ball with the perfect precision shots out of precision. 
perfect kill. Ball still not to safety just yet. Ball's probably going to get tossed up. The Senate finds a kill. In the meantime, every player knowing what they need to do here. They gotta get this kill, but they've also gotta hold the ball. They still have 30 seconds to catch up, but I don't know if they can do it here. SLG and Sika combined for a double kill, kill via the frag grenade. And it looks like that might just do it, but no, Ryanuk has the oddball, but he doesn't have much support. It's only Huss, and if not for some fortunate long haul spawns for complexity, they won't have the numbers. But they do have a potential comeback. And there we go, the regrouping occurs. All three members going down the Dorito side. But there's not enough time. They're focusing on Slays. They gotta get that oddball back in their hand. Tick, tick, two, one. And Quadrant are gonna do it. They're gonna take the game three win. And Eli, I just got deja vu. This is exactly what it looked like when Foe did what they did to Proton. You're exactly right. This is how it started. But, oh my god, can we talk about the bloodbath that that was? I counted up the kills. <laughs> I wanted to count the slays. I'm, I'm a little disappointed. It's, it's we went to over the 300 screen. kills. Oh god, okay. I'm glad you had board. an eye on it, because, man, it felt like we saw 300 kills. Reminds me of the movie 300, where that was about the tone and pace of it. How do you put 300 <laughs> kills in a single game of Halo that has a time limit on it? That's just mind-blowing. Every single player in the lobby seemingly getting double and triple kills throughout it. Man, they are putting on an insane series. Can Quadrant continue the run that European Halo has already started on the other side of the bracket? Can they potentially match what Foe have already done? EU had never finished top four in international competition, now staring at the opportunity to secure two spots in the top four. Half of the top four from, from EU, Eli, I'm laughing because... This doesn't seem insane. real. It doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't seem plausible or possible, but it is. And we're witnessing it live here from HCS Arlington. I want to thank you guys again so much for tuning in to LVT Halo. We would not be here without you guys. You guys quite literally paid for Eli and I's flight, our hotel, oh, yeah. to stay here. Uh, shout out to Optic and HCS for allowing us on the catering crew. The meals have been delicious. They've mm. kept us fully fed, which we appreciate. Gives us uh, the energy back in our tummies to display it in the cast and my god has there been a continuous flow of energy throughout the day just passion energy and electricity i mean what other words can you use to describe today eli i mean unreal in, in honor of pure delight shout out to him first time on the cast on land how about that? Your, imagine your first cast on land. You not only witness history, but a reverse sweep. The like, craziest, craziest reverse sweep ever? that we've probably yeah, ever seen straight like, up. PD should just retire, right? Like yeah. He's just like, you know what, guys? I, I, I climbed to the peak of the mountain. I witnessed the view from the top of Everest. I'm good. <laughs> I mean, like, you can't really top that, right? No, like, every won't. other series <laughs> that he casts now is just going to be boring. Like, oh, this isn't a, like a last second reverse <laughs> sweep in the most insane fashion ever with. A mouse and keyboard phenom, uh, like the shock rifle, man. Good, nice look at it here, and that was absolutely insane. Some of the best shock rifle shots we've seen from both teams in that last game. Descendant, snipe drone, both popping off. Skill gap ever decreasing between these squads. Everyone's so good at the game, man. How do these guys get so good? They bought it, Eli. Netify <laughs> session. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna. Quit the riffing. We're going to grab some water. We're going to hydrate because we need it after that electric couple of games that we've witnessed. The continuation and the culmination, the finish of this electric series between Complexity and Quadrant. When we return, we'll be right back. Take it. And here we go. The push is in. Perfect shot's going to be another. Oh, oh double perfect. Last shot, getting the last laugh as he flies for Sight lies four down. Look at this influence of the spawns. The ball's by himself. Ball's now by himself, though. If he plays this out, somebody on business could just grab it. He's going to rotate it. This is so smart. He has teammates on that side of the map. But no, that four player down. died as well. And that's probably the end of it. Business. Take a sub. Look at all of them. They're getting all into each other. They're all teabagging. They're dropping it. All oh, the disrespect. They're jumping up. They're yelling. <laughs> they're, they're talking shit, keeping the ball on the ground. And well, business, <laughs> you get the job done. That is a business thing to do. His opponent at bay, and for now, the Pride look to have their first score on the board. This would tie things up at one. Love to see the discipline that I'm seeing from Cardboard. Woo! 
This new meta where camo's on every map, you gotta know how to get the most value out of your camo, and he's done there so with the triple kill to add to it. Can he make Enemy team score. Enemy team score. Enemy team scoring. <laughs> Enemy team scoring. Enemy team scoring. Enemy team Enemy halfway to victory. We are back in the mix, and so too is Quadrant, Eli. Look at this. Look at it secure a reverse sweep. They've already started the path to that with a game three win and already up 100 seconds here on Strongholds, but this isn't a surprise. This is the game type that suits the most. Yeah, they were by far and away the best Strongholds team last season. At least two of these members, SLG and Sika, 
But we did notice that Navi, the team formerly known as Navi, was also improving at Stronghold. Seemed like all of Europe was getting better at this game type. But Complexity, I think, has been studying them as well. So this one could go either way despite such a strong lead for Quadrant. This is now a pretty strong trip cap on the side of Complexity. And these teams absolutely know how to put the opposition into a spawn blender. And that's exactly what they look to do here. 60 seconds now separate these two teams and Complexity absolutely has Quadrant in a blender. Glory, last member alive. Enough defensive shots here to send Raidu back, but I worry about the spawns and the split as that will in fact occur as this lead was once a double up for Quadrant, but Complexity with the trip cap have gotten right back at it. I don't know if I like that play by SLG trying to force the B hold despite their team not really securing any kills. A little bit of desperation, uncharacteristic for SLG. Complexity is going to maintain possession for now. Quadrant probably going to be able to flip C, but the problem is Complexity can easily collapse back in on it. Glory with a massive kill right now, though. Raidu's going to steal the camo and see if he can hold on to the scoring position for now. All oh, right, Raidu. Working his way around top mid. Oh, puts Snipe Drone in a blender. Bamboozles him with the use of the camo. And Complexity, when we joined in, they were down by triple digits, but now only down 10. This is exactly what Complexity needed. Ever since they got control, they have not relinquished it, and it frenzy! might be because team captain Ryanu is on a killing frenzy. Not usually the player on the team you expect to be doing so, but this man can absolutely pop off when his team needs it, and he's controlling the map on all sides. He's got the Disruptor, too. He's huh. on a killing frenzy with the Disruptor. Are you kidding me? Ryanu goes from pedestrian to phenomenal with the killing frenzy. Rare that you see that this deep in a tournament, even at a top level Halo, it's rare to see a Killing Frenzy, and it's rare to see Quadrant go all four down as Complexity have flipped this map on its head. They're about to earn another trip cap. They do up by 20 seconds, but it's going to be even more before Quadrant get a chance to even push off their back foot. Hey, they've got to win these battles. SLG goes down, but it looks like they're going to have the numbers edge for now. That's going to allow them to space oh. to push out, and wow, a big win despite being one HP. Huss isn't going to get that win on the Sika, oh. I believe it was. And Quadrant are able to reset. They regain A, but as the clock continues to tick, they've got to now work for B. Otherwise, Complexity are going to send them home. Love that play from Quadrant. One player gets the melee repulse, repulses that player into his Enemy teammate who can finish score. the kill. Just a level of trust there to know how to play that situation. And now it's suddenly Quadrant back in control. This could be the control that wins the game for Quadrant. Complexity want to get out of the blender and they want to do it quick. And this is all Quadrant wanted. Just one chance, one hold, because they know they can hold it for at least 100 seconds here. That would net them the win and an opportunity in game five to reverse sweep multiple members going down again, seven out of eight in the lobby. But it's four down for Complexity as Quadrant are going to hold strong here. Back A spawns for Complexity as they look to push on through. They have to get one clean break here with enough time to cap either B or C. It's the only way to flip it and also protect A at the same time. It's a pretty difficult set of circumstances. Look at this though. The patience comes through, but it's countered by the patience from Snipe Drone just waiting on that ledge. Seeking with a double kill. They're going to now hunt down Descendant, last player alive. Uh-oh. They're going to steal A. They don't care if they're going to lose C now because they could just get a and B. Well, this is a big win for Ryan, who he might just back his way into control of B. He does, as he takes down Glory, takes B for his name, and Complexity have somehow regained control of this map, but not for long. Seek is in it, and he takes down Ryan, who descend it. On the flip side, looking at G-Slide, his way to victory, but he goes down. Seek it with two important slays in a row, has Quadrant in it in the end. Precision with the double kill, Killjoy, but it's Quadrant to get back in scoring position. They're taking C. Complexity has to take A first, but they also have to get another hold as well. How do they play this? They're going to have to send players both through the glass and loop side and through blue at the same time. That's exactly what they're doing. Huss with the slay. Glory's going to take out Huss. Glory gets two. This could be the end of the game. 237, 232. Quadrant's life are on the line, and they need to clear B. They do. Ryan who gets an important slay on Snipe Drone, though. Gets a double kill trade out, but with B and C controlled for Quadrant, oh. the trade is going to fail. Them, and Quadrant are going to do it! It looks like if they can just secure A, but no! Unbelievable shots there for Precision. Perfect five, takes down Sika, and that flips the map on its head. A and B go to Complexity, but 
it looks like that's not going to be enough. Complexity are going to retain it. 244, 244. Glory pushes through oh. almost desperately as Ryanoob has a couple chase grenades out. Yeah. And Complexity are going to do it. They're going to steal it and move on. Quadrant go home with a top six finish. Oh my god, that was so close. That was actually top eight finish. This That was four top six. We're a little bit further behind of the bracket here. Felt like it. I know, we're kind of deep in the day, but <laughs> that one was too secure. Top six for complexity. Quadrant falling in top eight. Not going to be able to find the same magic as their European counterparts of foe. But man, what a performance by Quadrant. It felt like Destiny was on their side at the end of that, didn't it? Didn't it, it did. feel like maybe but now, there was something in the water for Europe? Uh, I love that you brought up Destiny because now I think back to the reverse sweep that Complexity put on to FaZe where they'll now take them on head to head. And if you think FaZe, I didn't forget about that. I know it's online, I know it's scrims, but that was a tournament performance. That was a tournament match where Complexity reverse swept FaZe. FaZe is not gonna take them as lightly here on land mm -hmm. as Complexity move on. Top six secured. Can they take it one further and take down FaZe Clan just as they did? weeks ago. And look at that. The other side of the bracket, the, sto the Cinderella story does come to an end for Foe. Wow. Foe did win that first round of that series. I think the King of the Hill, we didn't get to see the rest of it. Shopify coming back in a big way. Kind of expected after what we've seen from Shopify so far. So Shopify, our first solidification into the top four from lower bracket. Faye's going to face off complex against Complexity next. I think we might go to a short break though while we get re-racked and set up here. Anything like overkill. This man knows how to use a sniper as well. This cardboard looks to put it to good use. I believe this is a solo sniper though. After that incredible triple, followed up by the double kill, no scope. Cardboard is popping off yes. here early. Wow. I told you this man is a problem. You do not want to play against him. And especially if he gets a sniper rifle, putting that nice no scope to work early. And they've got a good setup for this hill as well. And he's not done yet. Couple flags out on both sides though, as the red team seems to have the edge though. Three go down for pride. Make it four as Morgan lines up the headshot. Got another one here. Great recognition of the spawns. Besides, I think it's native red and Sentinels, the only non-optic SSG or um, phase teams to even place top three at one of these tournaments. So, I mean, look at this. It's Sparty has not missed a beat. This Aww. guy is absolutely insane. Almost gets the overkill. They lose a player in the process, but it's a three for one trade in Sentinel's favor. And they're going to continue to roll here. Looks like two body shots, but they get the, both get the chain effect. That means it may be a triple kill for Valcated. We said we hadn't seen him much, but he is here and he's popping off with the overkill extermination. Oh. Almost oh! a kill tag, but barely misses. He's got to be upset about that one. Wow. To spawn trap a lot of teams. The problem is, Sentinels is not making it easy. Yeah, shout out to Valicated there on that overkill. And shout out to our observer, Nighty Knight, as he seems to always have his eyes on the POV that's most likely for a multi kill. And into gold, we know the next hill moves back to batteries. Didn't even try to kill the hill player, instead, favoring that transition play. Ubadubu gonna launch himself in, make sure he does at least some damage before taking down. But Meatist with a mean double, double kill. kill. Super clean, but oh, Sparty's got kill. one better. He said, Oh, you can get a double kill. How about a triple kill and a little bit of hill time? How about that? Player to die on Optic in quite a while. This trip cap's already looking powerful. You can already see Optic spreading oh. out, getting control of the map. And man, this guy just uh, he just picks kill. up a controller and he's right back to his old ways. Look at ah. the, he might even make it. Oh, okay. I thought he was gonna hit the triple, but play any serious tournament match. They are talking to one another. They're having conversations. They're playing through every situation. Hey, okay, can we go for B here? All right, yeah, I'm, I'm pushing this way. I've got some damage here. This is a good time to go. You know, they're just telling you, they're just feeding each other. Two players off in both directions to gain some space. This is a fragile position. Mental can take advantage of it. Mental's out of ammo. He has nothing to work with here, Ali. Yeah. But the ninja's gonna be able to refill the Jeez. ammo count for now. All right, Eli, here we go. Optic Gaming versus the Stainers. Every time we thought a previous team was gonna take on Optic Gaming, they went down in the bracket, maybe looking a little too far ahead. Combat evolved off the ceiling. 
As Formal catches it, has the shot in his hand, put it to good use off the rip. Headshot for one. It does support the scene overall. I'd recommend to check it out. Lots of cool stuff in the shop right now. <gasps> Look at the repulse. Talking about oh. cool stuff. The player basically killed his teammate with the rocket <laughs> there. There's a map with a shock rifle on it. This man is probably going to grab it. He grabs the shock, tries to grab the ball, faces some pressure, decides to drop oh, it. And it's suppressed overkill. with the overkill extermination. He's going to also throw his life away to get the ball into safety. Uh, on the on the stats that don't show up for Booba Dooba is time after time, he makes plays that don't show up in the stat sheets outside of the wins and losses oh. more often than not wins. As Sparty shoots down the platform to get a little bit of that trickle damage onto Soul Snipe. Uh, allow Rebellion a chance to regain the lead as they are in striking distance of the Sentinels, but Sentinels are in striking distance of winning round two. Which way is this one going to go? Suppress going to have a lot to say about it as he's got the double. Making a triple. Could be all four pushing through the Whitehall. About to end up on Twitter? No! Oh my god, Suppress gets that player down to 1 HP. Almost his second overkill of the tournament from Suppress. Not the overkill, but it's enough to regain the lead here for Rebellion is Suppressed is absolutely popping off with this shock rifle. Looking to end the round here as the last second push comes Sheesh. through from the A side. It's Suppressed! Oh. He's getting shots! Doesn't even need a reticle or a HUD! At this moment, you gotta get the kills that matter like we talked about we got to get a few kills in succession so we can start to progress across the map get control of b and c once again Double right kill. now space station not going to make it kill. easy eco with the flawless positioning as it looks like neptune is going to take down eco three go down for ssg once again and this should start the time no bound with such a clutch slay that oddball was about to get grappled in for some scoring but Bound takes him down. Isn't able to stop the scoring, though, as Native are able to recollect and regain. Honestly, great awareness from APG. Grabs the grapple off of Neptune's body and does what Neptune tried to do just a moment prior. Does get the ball into safety, despite a great play from Bound. Bound, though, is not done yet. Gets the, the ping on the camo player. I think might have also got a little bit of damage on him. Monster going to try to use the grapple with the plasma pistol. I'll tell you right now, First walls can't allow you to do that. That was just a good play. Aiden with the double kill on the rockets off screen while the turtle still having plenty of snipe ammo to work with. That includes planting one onto the hip of Kratos as a flag ends up being pulled here, but a no scope out of Rob the Tur Oh my gosh, that must mean there's at least one rocket to continue to fight for now that Overshield is coming in. This doesn't seem like a very fair fight as you send that rocket right back to Sender and Gunplex not done still going to grind forward three down go crowd pleasers and although that's a favorable spot over toward the mangler side people champ are still pushing up they're still putting down damage and for going three down luckily hayden wins a pivotal battle against rob the turtle gunplexion seemingly coming out of nowhere though with the overshoot and bulldog combination now you overrun the mangler side another three down a triple kill out of gunplexion almost gets the overkill that player is hiding but you can't hide for gunplexion at least not for long pseudo overkill for him he's gonna keep it going here that's a five kills in a row on the way to moving this flag forward crowd pleasers where are you at kratos he can't even get off of his side this is camo dissipates it's a potential they heard the audio cue he looks for an opening but not gonna be able to find one has to back up has a repulsor to do so. Down the no shields. This is the opportunity for TSS to push it. There's no shot. This man is still alive at the moment. Then puts the last shot with the bulldog in. Then oh. gets the perfect kill with the stalker. This man should have been dead 12 seconds ago. But three down go oh. TSS. A killing spree on a persecute. He shouldn't even be alive right now. really well for rebellion if you get cycle cycle around the map not so much overextending but working his way through his snake bite works his way through the body shot on the aforementioned cycle it's been all phase clan frosty here with the shot in his hand just looking to play gatekeeper a wow. three push up at the top a side talk about commitment as rebellion push all the way through into a but two go down for rebellion phase answer it right back Talk about defensive positioning here. Frosty on his own little flank. Mini flank yeah, takes down some Preston. That might just do it. Rebellion go three down. Optic needs just a few more. Trippy though down to one HP. Gonna have to hit this sneaky jump to get back in the fight. Oh, and he misses, no. gets repulsed. 
HP, loses Snipe because of it, and this could spell trouble for Optic. That's chance for Optic to maintain their control in this hill, but with him taken down, there is an opening for, for Space Station to go in. Perfect grenade takes that player to perfect no scope. Stellar with the play of the game so far. No! Almost the overkill, but Formal shuts it down, stays alive. Sticks, and he's still gonna be one of the toughest players to beat in the world. Looks like though, Space Station with the better opening strat bound, gonna get two kills and secure this OS. Like Dude, a triple. and a triple as Bound opens up the way we're used to seeing. See Sparty flank up to Snipes. He's going to claim that for himself now as that territory now belongs to Sentinels. Boo Boo Dubu takes the ninja! Oh my god, man, he's back belongs to Boo Boo Dubu as he lands the ninja. Don't out be our drunk too. Oh my god. The cleaner looks. Not that clean though as the pressure is on. The attention is on his head. Oh, Ooh. Stellar on the head of Lucid. Takes him down with a quick scope double. SSG, we're able to tie it. 2-0 with a minute and a half left. This is reminding me of that comeback they made on Aquarius where they're down 0-3 and they've got another flag out. Stellar with the final snipes in his scope. Lands the no scope on dead zone. And this could just spur the series win. If he lines this one up on formal, it could be all but oh! over. As Stellar lands the shot, opens up more space for SSG on the map. You go down on each side, Renegade with a snipe, oh. Renegade with a no-scope, making a double. Wow, that's a delayed double. Could have had a triple, might still. Bound goes down to one HP. Down that A side of the map. Renegade gets the opening break slay though on Bound, so that's gonna give Base Clan the chance to push through. They do in fact to the A side of the map, but Eco with three shots out of that DMR and a melee. Takes oh. down one. Thought he had a sticky there. It actually lands on the player's suit. There's the <laughs> sticky grenades. He does in fact, despite the error in play. The 60 second mark. Eco so disciplined, understanding how important it is for him to just survive on this part of the map. Tries to deny access to phase, but the sneaky play from Snakebite Double slithers kill. his way through the blue pipes unseen, comes back to bite them in the back. In A, I think a member of phase might be at the glass here, which is gonna make it even harder. Yes, Ooh, real two with kill. the triple kill from glass with the shock rifle. Gonna extend into A. Instead, they're going to force that spawn trap for Phase Clan. Monster with a chance to spawn snipe these opponents. It's the perfect shot there on Snake Bite. And this could shut the door on Phase as Monster lands the double kill. Camel's up, but it's not even going to matter. This should do it for SSG. Monster locking down the series potentially as he does with another snipe. Rotate there, and the first kill favors off the gaming as Dead Zone takes down Manny, but Druck does answer back. Lucy gets a kill of his own. Three members of Optic start to push forward, but Drunk hits a clutch snipe to shut them down. Oh. Formal gets lined up and tapered, faded out as he goes for the act of camouflage, but ends up again as the spawns potentially come out on that blue side. Talk playing patiently, though. He's going to wait for mm. them to jump right in, and the bait works. Excellent shot from Tyler with the shock, lining up the second. <laughs> wow. Dead zone. We'll see you in 10 seconds. Three down once again go business. Batalic is putting damage on the map. Shock in the hands of Lucid at the moment here. Swish off a of screen. Double kill to start this push. Swish actually able to take down the third one. Systematically breaking down Optic Gaming's defenses by himself as Swish goes in for the fourth kill. But this one's Lucid. It might just go a bit different. Now Optic are trying to move in, but they're two down themselves. They need to get business out of this hill and they need it right now. This is it. The kills are going out. Lucid with a clutch double. Business was just a couple seconds away oh from taking the third hill and the lead, but a triple kill out of Lucid shuts things down. Going half down there, make it three fourths. There's only one more player that's currently waiting for his teammates to come off a spawn. It may just be too little, too late. And with Lucid still having the shot, he's by himself, but he's a one man <laughs> army at this point, spinning in circles. Forget, forget the strong side. That's we're gonna call that the Lucid. We're gonna call that the team. TW, where you just put your head down and start spinning in circles. <laughs> You'll have to earn it. You'll have to fight your way off the spawn. Looks like that's exactly what Rebellion are doing. Double yeah, Rebellion kill. got really fortunate there. They got the oh, left spot. Kill. The triple kill on a trippy, the trippy, triple. Trying to do all he can against three players on this side of the map. Suppress is going to pick that one up and punch it into his chest. And this is where they get their lead back. Or they bring this closer, I should say. 17 to 10. Make that 17 to 11. Suppress doing work with a camo. A triple kill comes out of him. That ball's been rotated towards the green side. Soul Stipe comes right back in to deal with Trippy and then focuses over towards the green side of the map where he knows Optic are continuing to push forward. Portals right back oh, in. Gets himself kill. a double kill. Who is this man? Soul Stipe is here. He's now working on the spawning players, and although he runs out of sniper, maybe 
and get himself an OS. Pays oh. are definitely <laughs> doing a great job here of swarming the base of Optic Gaming. World 2, bringing that sniper over toward the tower side. This is has to be frightening if you're on the other side of it. Optic needs to prioritize getting involved. And Lusa does chase him down with a pointing shot, but that just gives oh, a no. new angle for Royal 2 to thread the needle from sword to sword. But well, look how much damage he takes because of it. They clean him up because of that. 48 to 45. Ooh. Renegade looking for another guess to stick. 49 to 45. FaZe looking to win this. Renegade making a play there with that sticky grenade and now with the cross map shot from the commando. It's enough to create a bit of chaos. Mind you, 238 was the score line. And at this point, FaZe are about to take the lead. No scope out of Renegade, the main slayer, taking down Formal. And with that, FaZe continue to punish Optic at every given turn. A clean sweep. It's official. FaZe have taken the lead going into the end game. This might be one of the craziest comebacks that we have seen in Stronghold's history. It's so important to understand when you're dealing with strongholds on live fire, they can be massive comebacks, especially when you've got Renegade, who just doesn't miss a shot. Another double kill out of him. They're getting B, but C will be traded. 232 and counting. The triple cap locked in. The spawns are trapped. Oh my word, FaZe is going to win this. Nothing's going right for Optic, and they find themselves three down as the final seconds come in. FaZe have done the impossible on stronghold. Renegade. Taking down monster as well for down go SSG. Some people fear the monster under the bed, not Renegade. He's the demon and Oh wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, he's just struggling with this map between staying on it and hitting that clamber. It's it's a really tough for Renegade here. Long off season, if you will. Oh, are you kidding me? What is it? <laughs> Tony, I have never in my time, in my career duoing with you, ever seen you at a loss for words. You are one of the most talkative people I've ever met. That portal once again inside of the vent as he plays, as he plays aggressively, I'm sorry. Picks up the enemy team snipe as well. Stellar's down to no shields, waits patiently for him, gets the double, pulls the flag, does it all. Tony, Royal 2, staying alive as well. A beautiful play by him. The flag will be relayed. This could be flag number three. Royal Dose in the house. Just barely missing out in the quick scope, but uses that QT to stay alive. Get behind enemy lines. Eco has no idea what hit him, but you're gonna find out it's World 2 and FaZe taking game one in the grand final. Who are on the strong side of the map now are trapped here toward the gold side. Monster with a double kill, one grenade, make it a triple kill. Give him the overkill. Monster looking like a beast on the map. 35 points and counting for FaZe's SSG. Look to try to get into a full setup. And it starts from Bound making a sneaky play over toward the B side. That Bulldog, it's barking. And apparently so is Bound. A triple kill out of him. Somebody stop this man. Finally, FaZe end up getting the first kill. But is it too little, too late? Three down go SSG. You need to get in the hill in order to stop the timer. That's exactly what they do. Seven seconds of neutral time is all that's needed. And Bound with a kill can create just that. Now time is winding down, but luckily Renegade ends up finding right in and sends Monster back and packing. Stellar responds with a double kill. Four seconds. He has to get in the hill, but currently there are nades that are zoning him out. Stellar ends up going down. So do three of FaZe and those nades keep them out of the hill just long enough for SSG to end the tournament, the first tournament of this year. Space Station Gaming. To turn it into a good play for Pashti. Now it is. He takes down one with the camo. Already starting out a fairly valuable life with it. Oh, now he's baiting the snipe. Love the process here. Scuds gets his opponent down to 1 HP. Drops down to bottom mid. And now he's got the killing spree. Sniper in his hands. Double kill with the no scope. Push it up through the C side of the map. Has another potential triple here. Oh, he lands it. Overkill on the dummy side of the map. No, oh. it's not going to land. His Scuds had us on the edge of our seat. Holding on that last breath. And then half of that prize pool went towards funding a, a, a roster for HCS Double Season 3. Kill. As you see the three taken down here by Scud. Thought he had the overkill. I really thought, I'm seeing blue on the screen. I'm like, oh, the overkill is going to present itself. And he barely misses that no scope. Just in between the clavicle and the right ear. A timing issue that Matty caused. It allows Palfius to push up through the back of driveway. Take down that oddball carrier. And now he's just looking to clean up more along the arcade side. Playing a game 
with Pashi United is Palfius as he takes down two. Vector Esports looking for the triple. Yes! Overkill. Triple in sight, but goes down. We've also got the shotgun. I think this is probably the most important weapon on the map, especially if you can combine it with the camo. Spectre's not going to make it easy, though. Maddie's still going to try to preserve these shields before he goes in for it. Able to take down the camo player and another wow. huge double kill out of Maddie. Soldier looking to stay alive at the bottom of C. Maddie pushes in through with that spiker grenade. Lands the sticky. No, he does not. Not much grenade damage either, but he still cleans up. Wow. As four go down for Spectre. It's a goal line stand fumble as Passion United will take it and take game three. But it's Maddie who's the difference maker here. He crosses over to the other side. So they're doing a 3 1 split. Three on the B side. Maddie's going to hit in through the stairs using the shroud screen to get in. Throws these grenades. At the same time, these players are kind of in panic mode, calling out, hey, there's a guy here in Ivy. The rest of the team floods in through the back of C, flawlessly going into Ooh. C from multiple angles simultaneously. And that is what makes it such a good push. It's monster who's going to be trying to play bodyguard for this flag runner getting all the way to the other side other side of the map and getting a massive double kill using that thruster double he's going to stay in the other team's base with camo coming up it's a lot better to approach camo from the tram and yard side they actually push past the camo get the slays come back to grab the camo about 15 seconds after it had spawned and they're just continuing to roll here collect trying to turn three now it's maddie sitting in the hill Native did a fantastic job to rotate early during that transition, but it's Passion United with the push, and Maddie's hitting shock after shock shot this game. I mean, earlier hitting a triple kill with it, now hitting another insane headshot. Native for a couple rounds of slays here. Maddie trying to spot Monster, finds the monster creeping under his bed, kills him. And now APG drops. Maddie wins the one on him as well. Impressive gameplay we're seeing from Maddie. Looks like he maybe got a body shot on Palfius, but not enough to stop the push. Here it comes, Pash United pushing through on that Dorito side of the map. McWin with a chase grenade out, finishes off Atticus with the headshot. Grenade double kill, three go down. Maddie, the last player alive, and there you see some of that heads up play once again. Disengages, but still goes wow. down. Monster finds him, and Native Gaming look to steal this hill, steal the life force from Passion United. They don't have the numbers, but they do have the push. Uh, I like the aggressiveness out of Sentinels, but the, the strategy has been a little bit more sound here for TSS as Sentinels are able to start scoring just moments ago, but they go three down. They haven't had several dead at the same time, but Lethal has just been living right here, using himself as bait, trusting Boo 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 to help him survive. Finally, TSS gets some more vantage points, but he's still Ooh. alive and Falcated is getting sniped, oh! including a no scope for the double kill. I think this flag's gonna get pulled, but they probably wanna secure at least one more kill first. But again, because of Sparty's presence in the mid map, he's uh, he's doing enough to keep them at bay. Boo Boo with the snipe, and he's putting it to work. Has a headshot on Cherish, but another player gets down to one oh! HP. Another player goes down to double the quick kill. scope jump shot. Much better than Sentinels to get three or four dead as the hill moves is best case scenario for the team that's getting the capture and they're continuing to roll super cc now has free reign of the entire map body blocker actually uh -oh. gets the assassination on sparty and now all of a sudden tss with both overshield and four alive including the heat wave breaking Woo! shot last second win here in round two Round two goes to FaZe. Game one will be in their favor as we see another. This is like what we saw FaZe do earlier on the red side of the map. Now it's business up by two. Royal two gonna have to desperate, but there's three players down for business. Two seconds left, he grabs it and he gets through to the cuts. And it's gonna make a last second heroic play. Drops the on with no time left. And FaZe clutch up, ice up, win by one second and take game one 2-0, wow. More than double the score of their opponents. They just want to get this series over with. Want to at least get this game over with and get into the next game here as a triple kill for Snake Bite. Can he oh turn God. it into more? That Valkyrie looking to secure a slay to open up more of that B side of the map as he takes down Legend. But Stellar cleans him up shortly after, earns the double, and there we go. That'll do it. Four go down for Sentinels. SSG should be able to earn the remaining five oh seconds. My God. As Stellar puts on a show at the end. Both teams with one round under their belt. Both teams tied in uh, seconds for this third round as well. Eco with this hyper-aggressive super slide repulsor kill. 
Yeah, I'm not expecting Legend to come over as a top five player in the ATS and be the oddball guy, but hey, for now, it's working out. 98 seconds in total for him. And making a triple as well. There we go. That's a little bit more of what we're used to seeing from Legend. Control, and it's Stellar at the bottom side of the map trying to push off these spawns on S1, but he gets taken out instantly. Three dead for SSG. Make that four. Triple kill out of Falcaden to squad wipe Space Station Gaming, and not only do you already have the double cap, you're pushing it for the trip, and you know exactly where the spawners are coming from, and you're manipulating them, and you're keeping it on. Trying to hold them off from relaying the flag forward, but Ghost Ooh. simply will not be denied. From the snipe side to the flag, Zia with a beautiful headshot. Not done yet. That flag still sits in the middle of the base, and Yaxen, he wants it. Oh. Yeah, oh my gosh, all four down for the side of 10 rides. Ziad's gonna go for a counter cap opportunity here. Wise may have an advantage right now, but 10 ride, they've been playing lights out. Perfect kill on Envors. Leads to a double. There's a one shot player in front of him. Can he get the triple? Apparently he can. Just a second too late, but still four down go lies. Now they're spawned on the opposite end of the map. You're only 10 seconds behind, which an oddball isn't that much. A full setup is all you need here, but Hotshot Ghost gets caught in the middle of C plat. Oh, yeah. I don't know why he took that route, Tony. I'm going to be honest with you. That was a very risky route there. Flash, now he's going ghost. Danny Phantom. Moving forward towards the towards the A side of the map. You see Batman and Robin out of lies. You got Gunplexion and Sylvanic pushing them quickly. Gunplexion has no idea. Runs it to the back smack for Ghost. Sylvanic just finding out ends up getting get taken down himself. And now Zeon looking for the one shot in this player who's playing every angle perfectly and then ends it with a stick. 23 kills. Piggy down to one shot, but refuses to go down easily. Hits the skill jump and is going to put some Ooh. extra damage down because of it. But Zeon with the double kill, make it a triple. Also putting down some long range damage. Hopefully his team's going to be able to, to like, you, like you say, activate off of that damage and maybe take advantage of it. Four. They'll end up going three down, triple and Sylvanic will drop a triple kill to absolutely squad wipe the enemy team and to take the lead for lies. Camels will be a factor. They get it again. This is massive out of Zeon. A bulldog camo. He has the game in his hands right now, Tony. There was two players that just passed him over to which driveway. They're, uh, They're rotating away. But Piggy, Piggy's gonna stay behind. If Piggy's... Oh, oh he had to have heard that. Yep. He still gets behind him. Still gets behind him, and the stalker is going to beat out the bulldog. Three oh. down, go lies. 48 to 43. 10 Ryan might pull off the upset here. Yeah, this is it. Right, this is such a good play to be behind, but it, it, timing is everything in Halo, right? So you're right there in that action, but Ziad holds for just a little bit too long. His camo dissipates here now. If he's faster up, he probably has a better angle. Doesn't expect the red gun player, and then just misses the melee. It just feels like a, a category of bad things happening all at once. But look at this prime positioning. Three players right there. You have camo, shotgun. I think you got to risk it. You are, you're down three. Be a little bit more aggressive with this. Piggy, the first player up, watches all the players come back. He has that red gun. He's in charge of those long sight lines. And eventually, Zia just takes way too long to make the play. I mean, look how far away those players are by the time you're getting into that fight. Uh, uh, sometimes it's just a tough decision to be made. You make the wrong one, doesn't go your way. So moves once again back to top tower. This is what you want to see in a player on the top of tower in a position where he can literally change the game. And that's exactly what he's doing. 16 to 4, make that 17 with a double kill headshot. It's funny because you were saying this is great practice. And all I see is three members of Tenrai just pushing towards evolving and Envor is just not missing a shot on the top of tower this is if this is practice I, I don't ever want to practice ever again if I'm exceeding <laughs> so sometimes uh, you know you need someone like Jackson on the squad and he continues on I don't think he's died yet in fact there's a D column Tony what is that number below the D column next to Jackson's name do you see that oh never mind 91 that's a pretty good start, if you ask me. Camouflage, but Pookie's now advancing this ball forward. They already have a 46 to 29 lead, but it looks like they were rotating the ball towards the spawning players. Let them cook, actually taking over the A side of the map. Ooh, Ooh that yeah. was so beautiful by Facty there, Tony. It's still only 22 seconds to let them cook. Every time they go for that ball, even though three dead are down for uh, three are down for Pookies, it's players like Facty who are able to get a triple kill. The perfect stop the ball from being picked up. It's really good for. Bryce. 
Parabola. Unfortunately, though, he's not able to, to, to find too much, right? He gets that first kill. He has a little bit of uh, information on the second. So, I mean, he is able to find mm. enough because he gets a double there, gets top tower, gets the triple as well. Not going to get the overkill because it gets stolen, but... going to take himself out. Ambition doing the same with Rockets, but at least gets one of the enemy with them. And now... Ivan is not even playing arena right now. He's playing shoddy snipers over toward the back sword side of the map And it's working out really well from a double kill out of him and let them cook are going to struggle To get him out of this side of the map when he's shooting like this. Yeah with energy like this starting this game I don't want to call it too early, but I mean Ivan eyes hasn't missed a shot since he's been inside his sword and it was uh, one player in particular who was typing his uh, His butt off and that player has just gone on a spawn cycle twice in a row Ivan eyes has not missed Double and he continues kill. to slay. Why is it this flag pull Tony? Double kill out of Ivan eyes. Looks like the spawner still coming over towards courtyard They're still getting knocked down like flies Ivan eyes working on a killing frenzy at the moment. Let them cook. They, they don't know. Do you go for the flag? Do you go for the sniper player? What do you do here? immediately gets into safer cover in the vent here knows how important it is that he maintains his life with the sniper rifle so he's just buying time right now for his teammates to come off spawn and this man's accuracy with the no scopes has been so impressive you can take down all four for the opposing team and if you go two down in that process it's probably not even worth overextending quote unquote into the base and getting a pull here we see oh, sentinels go four Ooh. down only one down for native gaming and that exemplifies why it's so important to take your numbers advantage and i think a grapple hook got used as well to sling yes. that flag forward toward the cap point oh my as native God. gaming almost had a little bit of a fumble at the goal line but they're gonna put it in for the first score of the day native gaming go up 1-0 did you see the speed that Collect left the base with that flag? I think what he did was lift to the other team's grapple platform, grabbed their grapple, and then used it to hit the grapple super slide. A little bit of luck in that one, but also just predicting exactly where Mikwin tried to go. And they've got the flag, and they've now tied the game. Double but look at this man on your screen. Collect trying to turn it into another one Woo! for Native Gaming as he gets the triple kill. And he's going to look for a spawner here. Going to be the over. No, he's going to and use such great discipline to not overextend while one shot oh, so he can stay alive nice. and continue to delete members off the map. The 32, McGuan really looking to place himself, find his best Ooh. place on the map. There we go, Sparty goes down, McGuan looks to grapple away, and I think now potentially helping prevent camo pull for Sentinels, but I think Falcon had snuck away with it. Two members of Native died as McGuan got that snipe, so McGuan not feeling very comfortable. Choosing to play from the bat ledge, this is usually a pretty vulnerable spot where it's hard to find snipes, but the reaction time, too strong for McWin. Might be one of the oldest players in the lobby, but man, his reaction do, do not look like it. This guy is one of the best snipers still after all these years. And now they brought it back to within two, thanks to the amazing snipes out of McWin. Yeah, great recognition there with the snipe. You saw Boo Boo Doo Boo shield shimmering, didn't wait for his head to drop it. <gasps> Sparty finds a back smack on McWin. I don't think that camo got out safely. Looks like Sparty, the last player on oh! the, no, with the grapple. What a pickup from Collect! He has the camo with the use of the deadliest catch. Grapple hook pulls camo away, but Sentinels are pulling away with the lead. 48-47, Collect with camo and the shot. The game in his hands. He hits the perfect shot. Takes down Falcon in time. 49 oh, oh, And then he clutches kill. up for the 50th kill. Unbelievable shot there from Collect. As Native Gaming take it. And a two lead of this series oh my god sentinels prioritize the slays for now three go down for native monster the last player alive on the b side of the map no 1v1 here with sparty sparty has qt could pull some chicanery what? he does takes him down with the portal you may not know chat if you stand inside of a portal as a player uses it it instantly vaporizes your soul at least an extra 10 seconds off the clock three feeling like nanoseconds two 91 though as native gaming might just come back monster down to one hp one second separating these two teams two seconds left on the clock as monster rotates it but oh. does he toss the odd ball off to apg yes he does as native gaming do in fact steal round two what what a sick oh. play the communication here My in God. this moment he he apg is probably saying throw it to me throw it to me throw it to me because he knows the pressure is coming in. <laughs> Lucy doing such a good job, just understood that he didn't have any room to move forward, but he can hold down mid map, Double make it difficult kill. for FaZe to get Double out of their base, kill. but it's not gonna be difficult for them to get out now as Royal 2 picking up the triple kill. As he extends out, 
into the base of Optic Gaming. Ooh. One final shot in the sniping. Sniper. Another headshot to his double name and kill. double kill, in fact, because he has five perfect shots out DMR's mat. Safe to push out. They know Formal Lurks top mid. He's deadly with the snipe, but he's not going to get an eye on it. Instead, Phase are going to score. Down one, 120 left. Wow, I actually love this play from Formal. I mean, he, he basically just decided, like, yeah, they're going to cap that. I'm not going to overextend to try to stop it. As long as I stay alive, my team can get another flag out, and they just get the counter cap instantly. A massive factor in the end game here. Formal just waiting for his teammates. He's using the camo to gather information. Not shooting Frosty yet. Doesn't want to give away his location. Season opening. He's going to jump up into glass. He might have been spotted by that player, but he's flanking in the pipes with his teammates. Make sure he gets two. Turns around to try to kill Snakebite, but Snakebite shuts him down, and we know that Renegade has the shock. That's why they are not giving an inch until just <laughs> now. As soon as Lucid, the first player to expose himself on the screen of Renegade gets deleted instantly. This man's reaction time is oh, incredible. Oh, with the, the stick! The Takes down Renegade! stick at the perfect time to do so. They get a four dead off of that. Huge plays out of Optic Gaming. Formal is here to play today. No surprise, this man is a different beast on championship day. Frosty, though, going to use a, one of the last bullets in the sniper to get a headshot. He's right now, Lucid and Formal seemingly playing the best versions of themselves, and that's why this has been difficult for FaZe Clan. Renegade not finding the usual form that we're used to seeing him in. And even when saying that, he's still one of the best players in the world, right? We just know how good he can be, but Royal 2 is going to step up when John is not here with the reversal sticky repulse after getting two snipe kills of his own. And, and now FaZe has to grab Oddball with Optic nearby. They're feeling that sense of pressure. They're feeling that sense of overextension. We have to get back in this game, but Lucid won't let them as he out DMRs a full-on 1v2 against FaZe. And Lucid takes it, has the snipe as well, and a little bit more QD to work with. My God, Lucid. Oh the no scope as well at the back of A to finish off that QT. What a what a play there, and that might just finish the round. It does. Optic Gaming roll on FaZe Clan. Felt like a strongholds match where Optic had a trip cap the entire time. Be hard to though. Look at the pressure from FaZe. They know where they're spawning. This map's so small, very easy to predict spawn. So FaZe not gonna give any breathing room okay. to Optic, but formal with an insane double kill. That's exactly what Optic needs right here, right. Hello and welcome back to the LVT Halo coverage of HCS Arlington. We have something special for you. Be prepared. Get into the time machine because we're heading back. It's 2016 once again in Frizzilla. Well, you used, you used to, to call me on my cell phone. phone. That's right, boys. It's <laughs> Halo 5. We got some action coming right towards you. 2v2 Halo 5. This game released back in 2015. Was on the competitive circuit from 2015 to 2018. We have four players taking it down in the side tournament today. Takedown. Command Station going up against Trey Sir and Vistatron. It's going to be quite the incredible matchup. It's been a while since we last seen Halo 5, and now it's a time to bring it back, a good old classic. Those, those thrusters and that Magnum. Trace, uh, Tracer and Vistatron, two players have been playing a lot of Halo 5 in the more recent years, during the Halo Infinite era. Uh, what, I, what I've learned about Vistatron is he's a console kid, loves to play the Halo 5 matchmaking. Tracer, a part of that Halo 5 PC community, obviously take down Command Station, well-known players within the Halo community, take down uh, one of the one of the players that just so very vocal on Twitter, the Command Station. She's one of the best uh, players in Halo Infinite from the Women's Halo League and, and doing all of that awesome stuff. Yeah, I mean, we saw her compete back in the, this tournament and we also saw her in that uh, FFA, but now in Halo 5, she's just back to demonstrate that she can do just about anything, a jack of all trades. We are see already a lot of back and forth within this game. Vistatron going down to one shot. Tracer still one. And there we go. A great bait and switch. Command Station Takedown working well together as Takedown looking down these spawns, trying to figure out where this push is going to come from. Just a one kill advantage so far. If I don't remember, if I remember correctly, it was the first to 25, right? Yeah, first to 25 will win these games. It's gonna be the Halo 2's rotation. The maps that we're gonna see today, uh, Regret, Truth, and Plaza. We keep it to those three. That's where all the action goes down. The best 2v2 maps in Halo's history, in my opinion, are on Halo 5.
Yeah, I mean, Halo 5 had the best multiplayer in in recent Halo history. Mm -hmm. Like, ever since 343 took over, they took it for them to make even the best maps and the best game modes for Halo 5, especially in the competitive side. And just like that, trying to go for the kill, will get taken down. Won't be the case. Command Station goes down, but his teammate goes off takedown still with the overshield, trying to look for some damage. Take down, able to get that overshield. Interestingly enough, Tracer decided to give up the overshield. Instead, traveled all the way towards car two in order to get the noob combo in their hands. Tracer going to stay alive for just a bit longer. The noob combo misses its mark, and it's going to be Command Station who finds that kill and is the first to eclipse the 10 kill mark. The red team is really putting up the work, denying every single possibility of the blue team trying to keep up. We might be able to see quite the advantage here. It's going to be the flank by takedown that's going to be starting to do some serious damage over at Fremen team. Look out for this kill. Great shot right now. Make it a trade. That net is not going to connect. Takedown goes down. Tracer doing his best to stay alive. His command station knows exactly where he is at, but she goes down and, well, Tracer gets killed with the follow-up nade from takedown, but so far, a lot of back and forth, a lot of trade for trade Halo. And what's, interestingly, uh, what's interesting enough is usually we see a lot of 1v1 engagements in Halo 5 twos, but it seems like both these teams kind of straying away from that, opting to, to play heavy teamwork. Absolutely. They have to really move around this map and just as pairs, just try to get as many kills as possible, even if it means they'd be trading left and right. So if they're able to just utilize that quick advantage, especially those thrusters that were quite usable in Halo 5, I mean, mobility is just up in the roof. Well, here we go. It's going to be Vistatron trying to get that kill. Is able to find that trade. Command Station on this quick flank. The question is the Tracer here as Command Station able still to wrap around. I've seen it slow down. Player crouching underneath and the other one. Tom, I don't think Command Station is going to see this player above her. Ooh. Still gets the kill. Takedown. Able to get that damage. Vistatron was able to secure the overshield while that was going down. So Command Station and Takedown have to work together to neutralize this overshield. And so far, Vistatron causing a ton of damage as Command Station went down. Takedown able to stay alive, but his position is known. You can see both players converging to attack. That's going to be a sandwich situation. The ball, that plasma nade, he is going to oh, take, take down. down. <gasps> take down Chandler. Take down Ray. Double kill in the 1v2. This is the pinnacle of his Halo 5 career right there in the side <laughs> station. Halo 5 is back alive. Take down, doing him dirty. We're now switching lands. Arlington is going to become only exclusively a Halo 5 tournament. I don't, I don't hear cries in chat. That's just how it's going to roll. That's what, that's what everyone's watching this right now. There's no other match happening on the screen. This is it. These boys are on main stage right now. Takedown. Do it his best to stay alive. Command Station giving support cover for Takedown to regain those shields. Remember, a little bit different in Halo 5 how you regenerate those shields. You see that yellow bar? It has to dissipate completely before you spray. If you sprint before that, well, your shields just won't come back. Takedown is on a tear. 10 kills for his team. First one to get that Top Gun medal. Also keeping his team ahead in this game thus far. Watch it. This could be a really important double if they are able to just get a takedown, able to get a kill with the help of Command Station. Now they're moving downwards on that situation here. They might be looking for another kill. The thruster use is going to get it to behind. Now it's a sad situation yet again. Takedown going to get taken down. And almost a tied up situation. I think, yeah, that's only a three kill difference. Tracer. Looking for damage on the other side of the map. It's going to be Command Station Takedown. Taking over the P side. You see the high ground very much in favor. As they push down to get towards that overshield. It was a mad race for it. Mr. Tron able to put that overshield on his body. Takedown went down. Command Station decides to not engage. Waiting for the spawn of Takedown on the other side of the map. Overshield in the hands of Bicitron, and we are looking what could be a huge advantage, but now the Overshield is gone, the starters received some damage, the trade comes in, 20 to 18, last five kills for the Teal of Command Station and Takedown to get this first map.
Tracer has the opportunity to find two massive kills at this back base. Information no nade. Not quite good enough. Command Station just dodges that one away. As they, as Tracer knows both of their positions, ready for this push from Command Station over at P2. Oh, oh Command Station, huge win. Vistatron gets the shields back on the other side. Can he find the finish? No Command Station able to play the high ground. No trade out, and that's a massive lift by Command Station. Command Station run away. She knew that it was going to get a difficult approach, but now, able to finish up the job, it is going to be based from taking her down. Now we go to, and switch to Tracer. Just waiting? I really like this. They know that they're at the disadvantage, so they just lay back and wait for the perfect moment to strike, and now we're starting to pursue and get that important kill. Oh, Tracer needs to win this one-on-one. -on -one. Takedown gives him one shot. Tracer has the knowledge. Both still one. Takedown Ooh. wins the fight. The trade is immediate. But instead of being tied, it's still an advantage for Command Station and Takedown. And now they're on game point. Overshield comes up in just a few seconds. Command Station ready for it. It's going to be vital for Tracer and Vistatron to get these kills and get away with this Overshield that's coming up momentarily. Good. Oh, whoa! It is the last fight of this first map. Command Station and Takedown takes it. This first game really, really close, and they're able to just overall take that first map. Let's see how they do in the next one. It is going to be really an important match for them because, like you said, it's the pinnacle of their Halo 5 career. They might be hitting the next ceiling that's possible. Right, you know, for me, I, I never really got to compete much in Halo 5. Uh, if I had the opportunity to go play in these side tournaments, I'd be all about it, right? I was living and breathing competitive Halo back then. I know Takedown and Command Station were as well. This is where they really start to, to find themselves as competitive players. And now they have another chance to, to win tournaments, right? Winning a Halo 5 tournament in 2024. Could you ask for anything more? Vista Tron, looking for revenge camouflage for him early on in this game as he takes down command station with the camo and well takedowns position well known and there's just nothing you can do a brutal start for command station and takedown and i really wouldn't be surprised with how this has worked out how much these players have played this map if we see a seven eight nine kill run from these players because it's so easy to find the spawn traps when you get them in this position i mean right now they're starting a really really aggressive approach they are not letting any single mistake go by we are now seeing Tracer, just overall making sure that Plasma Pistol gets used to its best and waiting for the perfect opportunity to just go in and attack. A couple of shots down on takedown, but still not going to be enough. He is approaching, ready to get that kill, and this could be a great shot. That's a headshot, and the kill make it a double. Thank you so much. A double kill. I like I like to call it Doble Muerte. Fantastic start so far from Vistatron. And Tracer, Command Station, and Takedown just have had no space on this map. Two players still one shot over in blue. And Vistatron and Tracer stay calm. They eventually collapse in, and they're going to be able to find both of these kills eventually, as it's going to be a Command Station that is not going to be able to get away. Tracer finding the seventh kill of this game. Pursuit coming, but still, they are trying to take it as swiftly and calmly as possible. We see the nade flying by, not much is going to happen out of that. But still, the patience that they are just having right after that first game that was really close, the difference in points that they are having is abysmal. Six kill difference so far as we're starting and make it now a six. Able to get to number nine, Will. Tracer able to be able to get that tenth kill for his team. Car 3, one shot already. Takedown, not going to be able to have any chance in that gunfight. Great disengagement from him as he tries to get a little bit closer to his teammate command station. So far, it's been quite a different change for what we saw that first game. This is no longer a tight game, a close game. It is now a game that practically belong to Tracer and Basitron. So they are really now switching gears and fully going, fully embracing the dark side and the aggressive side that they have. You see both players trying to push out at the same time. A little bit of a, I'd say, too aggressive 
right there from Vista Tron. Command Station takedown just hitting out that same lane at the same time. And well, that might be a blunder that could cost them, right? We saw an early lead for Vistatron and Tracer that looked almost insurmountable. But on this game type, if you can get the kills at the right time, force the right spawn traps, it's absolutely able to say you can accumulate kills quicker than anyone really anticipates. Here comes the flank. It's going to be costly. It's going to hurt, but they are able to escape. Maybe not. Watch it. The thrust use is going to evade, and but still, they are both getting taken down. Dos muertes. What we are seeing now is basically a complete shift for what we saw in that first game. Well, Tracer and Vistatron did a great job of not getting too caught up and going too down earlier in their life. Stay calm, get together, and look at this. A perfect flank. Tracer behind both these players. The Sticky's going to miss the first one. Honestly, might have been playing a little bit too much Halo Infinite. Halo 5 Sticky's a little bit different for Zilla. They come out from the middle of your screen, while in Halo Infinite, they come out from your left hand. Something that took a, a lot of players a long time to adjust to in Halo Infinite was how to throw those Sticky Grenades to ensure that you did get six. So often, I'd see players miss to the right because they're so used to throwing them in the middle of their screen. Really important match. Firefight happening right now. We have but down, we could have another one. That's going to be one for both of these teams. Now, with the active camo, Business Run is going to try to find a sneaky way and trying to climb up, make sure he gets the kill. And this could be a huge one, able to get the takedown. He's going to put his team a little bit more closer, make it a double. That's a doble muerte. No medal, but in my heart, he got a medal. <laughs> Mr. Tron, get him just one step closer now. Three kills away from that 20 kill mark. And you can see how often they're splitting from each other on this map. The camouflage gave me a little bit more freedom, but there's always a downside when you split. You see Tracer feeling that downside as he was caught out by himself. It's going to be up to a 1v2. And one thing I missed from Halo 5 is that perfect metal. Look, double perfects in the feed. We need that back. For Zilla. Every time you find a perfect kill, it should be telling everyone in the game that, yeah, you got a perfect kill. You shit on that player. Absolutely. I mean, that's a way to just flex your skill that you know how to place your sights right where you want it. If that's a pursuit, that's going to be a takedown. 20 to 9 tools. We just saw that first game, though, go almost to the wire. Now, it's the double of what they currently have. Yeah, Tracer and Mr. Tron, two players that play a ton of Halo 5. I think they almost felt disrespected that they weren't able just to come in and, and bully the other players. Now looking to get their revenge as, uh, as they are just decimating the other side. It's getting complicated and complicated each moment. The team from Tracer and Bissetron is just absolutely doing their thing. They are coming back with a vengeance right after that first game didn't go the way they wanted. That's one kill, make it a double, and it's going to be a difficult situation. 23 to 12. Tracer team can wrap it up right here and right now. Can I get some live translation services from you right here? Yes, sir. Do you believe? Can, can, I, can we? Can I get that? How do I say that? Do you believe in Spanish? Tú crees? No, I don't believe. You don't believe? I don't believe. Tú no, crees? No, no, 24, 24 to twelve. I mean, how can they throw this one away? They just need one more kill. It looks like command station will fall. So, yeah, I, I didn't believe in that <laughs> one. We're gonna tie it up one-one in the series, as uh, as that was an incredible performance from Tracer and Vistatron. Absolutely. They really went above and beyond, and they just tied up the series 1-1. One, one. Uh, I don't really have the information of the price pool of this of, uh, Halo 5 2v2. I think it's like 500 bucks, 250 something like that. I think Louis got it for us. And mine is like uh, 2500 <laughs> Yeah, something like that, right? No, imagine like $2,500. <laughs> I, I will also be playing. I will also be playing, but still, let's go to this game number three. Let's see what these players are going to be. Uh, yeah, uh, Oh, I oh, like what it. What a new combo <laughs> shot. Oh, my God. Great oh. map. We're heading to Solitude. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, right? No, this is, this is Solitude if it was actually a, had life in it. But uh, so far, we see a great start from Takedown Command Station. Oh, yeah, yeah. Able to get that sniper 
in their hands. This is really going to be the key to winning this game is controlling the sniper, putting it to use. All right, let's switch it up a little bit. Snipe uh, takedown con el francotirador. Está poniéndose en la mira. Quiere disparar. It's not going to quite happen. Still, he's receiving heavy fire. We'll get taken down. Now we switch to Beast Station. Uh, Beast run, rather. Sorry about that. And it's going to be quite costly. That trade. 5-3, to three. we're starting off strong with uh, Command Station's team taking the lead. $750 was the prize pool. It looks like it's going to be $500 to first place and $250 to second. So that's a pretty good chunk of change. You're coming out to a Halo event, that's good enough to, to probably pay for a flight and, and part of your hotel for, for your stay. Of HCS to Halo. London. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that one's going to cover it. But if they have a Halo 5 side event for Zilla, I'll go. You can be my partner. I don't think those British... Halo players can handle the American Mexican combination of tools Ooh. in Brazil. Oh my god, Vista Tron! Oh god? Damn! <laughs> god damn! That's going to be a huge skill. Now, yet again, we switch it up to Vista Tron with the sniper rifle. Wanted to take a pick. Quiere checar los ángulos. He's just heading back to that park zone and it's just going to be costly. He can get a nice pick. It's great shot. Quick reaction. Uh, like with no reaction, that's right. Oh, no, mommy, <laughs> oh, not, 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 not another one in the chamber, unfortunately, for Mr. Tron, but the kill will come in nonetheless. Takedown sent to the respawn screen. Overshow of Command Station. Oh, honestly, a huge blunder from Command Station. She just needs to try to burn that overshield. In Halo 5, a little bit different from Halo Infinite. Once you grab that overshield, completely burned. There is no picking it up off the dead body. Right now, we're seeing a little bit more of movement going on. As the team yeah, I want to talk about this noob combo real fast, Tracer. Uh, that Tracer has that. The noob combo in Halo 5 is, I call I like to call it the poor man sniper rifle. You're about to see why. Look at this thing. It tracks like nothing else in the game. Uh, essentially, you hit a noob combo. Think about it as hitting a sniper shot to the body, and then you switch the gun. Honestly, honestly, it probably kills a little bit faster than the sniper rifle. I mean, it, now the, the way you're putting it, if I get hit by a plasma, like charged plasma shot, I'm just dropping my controller. That, that's a whole cutscene playing when I'm just on the other side of that barrel from the Magnum and that's not the, and that uh, plasma pistols. Uh, the yeah, name yeah. just didn't click. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, good oh, shots. Another oh, one, another one, and oh. another one. Okay, well, it took a second to get the job done, but. We see Command Station able to find the kill with a uh, with just about half a sniper left to work with as well. This is going to be a big moment for them as they're down three in this game. They're really depending on Command Station on hitting some big shots to close the gap. I mean, they have the sniper rifle. Command Station can pull up some really nasty plays. She just needs the correct angle. Now they're on the run. Watch out. That could be really dangerous. She knows that he she needs to back down a little bit. Get that aim sights down. That's going to be a follow through. That's a kill. But still, three down. They need to find a way to get a last kill. The patience. Look at that. Not quite the head, but Command Station getting the damage down range. Unfortunately for Command Station, was not able to have her teammates stay alive during that era. So while she's getting those snipe shots, they're, uh, they're not quite able to, to take an advantage in the game. So far, Command Station able to get away. Both teams, well, well, both teammates without their shields. Now the overshield is going to be in the hands of Tracer. Trying to go follow through, get some kills, get some Harabe Tapatio. Dance going headshot, doble muerte y jugador más valioso. I think, I think that, that's the, how it's called in Spanish, that medal. <laughs> well, Tracer getting them to number 17. 18 comes from Vistatron, and the lead suddenly has just opened doubled what it was just a minute prior. Tracer and Vistatron really showing that they've been playing a ton of Halo 5 these last few months. Tracer receiving oh, bastante daño. That's going no, to no, 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 Oh, I really like it. I forgot about the forerunner weapons. Well, Loki, this is G8. Like, this is kind of bad manners from Tracer. I don't I don't <laughs> think Command Station and Takedown care, but you're not technically supposed to pick up this weapon in twos. 
All right, that, that's like GA? G it, normally GA, just because of how powerful it is. Like, it's a four shot that's faster than any other weapon. It's a three shot when you scope in. It's just, it, it honestly is like a pseudo power weapon. It's almost akin to like the Mangler, <laughs> low key in Halo 5. Oh, uh, yeah, I can see that because with only three shots, the shields were completely gone. And usually that's not something that could happen. That's a great takedown. 15 to 20. It's uh, a little bit in. Uh, but in Halo 5, I never cared about the GAs, just low key. You know, I was like, in twos, I'm, I'm playing to win. You know what I'm saying? So, first time we've seen the, the, <laughs> the light rifle. I was once uh, asked, do, do, do you want to GA this? And I was like, no. Yeah, sure. Because I didn't know what GA meant. Uh, so I was like, yeah, sure. So you just picked it out. You thought it was dad. like Mangler only. <laughs> no, they, they were just like, we should just GA, GA what, whatever just happened. I don't remember what it was or what game it was. But oh, oh my snipe. God, protector, protector. Command station. Needs to keep winning these gunfights. Tracer was able to get the overshield, but Sniper in the hands of Command Station and a lot of kills to make aye, aye, up. Aye. And just, uh, just a little uh, Don Quixote action right there. Just chasing a little windmill as uh, Tracer is going to be able to get that overshield. I mean, able to get that Sniper back in his hands. Backtrack a little bit, receiving a little bit of damage. Nate, that is going to end shields and could end this live right here. Tracer still with a sniper, might be able to pull up something really quick, but that headshot on command station, possibly, let me give us quick. No, it's going to be on takedown. It's going to do huge damage. Un mas, un mas. Uno One more. mas. Oh yeah. Uno mas. 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 And they did it. Like they, they got 26. They didn't even need 25. 26. Dos más. Dos más. <laughs> Dos más. Dos más. <laughs> Todo lo que necesitaban. Dos más. And they, and they still got it. Damas y caballeros. Hey, well, 2-1 up in the series now. Tracer and Vistatron. Just one more game from getting this job done. We're going to get into game number four. So far, they look completely different from the first game. Hey, Tools, how many games are left? <laughs> what, what, what am I supposed to do there? <laughs> Nothing. It's just, I, 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 I really was hoping for you to catch that meme reference. No, I, I had no idea what that was. <laughs> <laughs> was it these Zoomers these days. Oh, my God. All right. Hold on. First of all, I'm TikTok rod, okay? Second of all, that was funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what? The funniest jokes are when you have to tell someone that it was a funny joke. <laughs> take down Tracer back on the map in which they were able to take game number one on. Probably a, a great change in pace for them trying to push this to a game number five. And so far, shots just not able to find the kill on command station. Takedown coming to help on the kill for Vistatron. But Vistatron doing a great job of staying, oh, was doing a great job of staying alive. Got a little too <laughs> eager as uh, the trades come through. It's going to be a 1v1 takedown versus Tracer. Check it out. Those kills are starting to rack up. Three and three for both sides. Shields go down, but still, it is going to be a powerful one. Shields, oh, that's going to be a takedown. Command Station goes down. No, yeah, it was a Tracer, actually. Command Station able to get away. Now gets taken down. We switch it up. Uh, <coughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I choked, literally. <laughs> well, two players of Command Station and Takedown spawning away from each other because of how Tracer and Vista are trying to play this. I'll say really great plays from this player over at Blue Base to jump out to that front base, stand on the top facade, and allow the teammates to come back through, essentially turning a 1v2 into a 2v2. And Tracer and Vista have to be careful here. Oh. Great job getting the trade right there for Takedown. Command Station, I think a little bit of a better job staying alive and allowing Takedown to get there in time. And wow, uh, that all starts with Command Station staying alive. Essentially turns a 1v2 into a 2v2 in which they come out on top in a 2v1 advantage. 6-6 six, six tied in this game. A lot of damage by those grenades, man. Halo 5 was, was ruthless with those frag and plasma nades that we're seeing. A couple of shots. Let's see if he... If it's able oh, to take down the that's kill, that's not tough. going to be enough. Besitron with the overshield. Yeah, I really need to win that gunfight, right? You had the height advantage, and honestly, like takedown didn't play it wrong. Uh, didn't uh, didn't get too hyper aggressive, but honestly, just great shots. The, the perfect kill metal came through, and that's honestly the only way they're going to get away with that. But uh, the the 
ramifications of that kill are just more because now the overshield is in the hands of Vistatron and really hasn't wasted much of it getting right down to action and uh, command station not going to be able to live this is where this game can just spiral out of control they have to be careful. Tienen que tener muchísimo cuidado. This could be switched up really, really quick. We're talking about a four kill deaths. The return to the battlefield, please. That's illegal. That's an illegal move. You need to watch out. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you what, uh, if, if you never watch Bound on this map, there's a lot of illegal moves because there's some places you can be that you are never meant to be. And that's one thing I love about Halo 5, right? So much movement options for each player. And, and just a lot of a. Uh, individual expression in each of your gunfights. I mean, if you can step on it, you can be on it. I don't make up the rules. <laughs> you, if, if I can step on it, you're going to have to come down and drag me out of that place. Well, the spawner come up. Vistatron in trouble as Takedown was able to immediately spot him and well, Takedown will finish the hunt as well. Taking the 1v. <laughs> Those yeah. shots not quite true for takedown, and eventually Command Station bails him out. Great uh, cleanup over there, and Vistatron and Tracer have been uh, in a little bit of a blender these last few kills. Uh, the the comeback is real. Just within, the, uh, they've been able to take the lead now, Command Station and takedown. This comeback could become a reality. But still, we're almost halfway through. There's still a lot much to see. Seven, eight minutes on the clock. And ooh, that's going to be a perfect kill. Put it as star. Oh, this is, this is bad. Uh oh. Overshield in the command station has it. Vistatron and Tracer, they have not been able to get together for the last three or four engagements. And it's starting to take a toll on the. Oh, <gasps> that, uh, I count it. <laughs> Honestly, that's tragic. That was a classic Halo 5 Ninja. Unfortunately, doesn't go through and Command Station breathes a sigh of relief as she puts down a perfect kill. Top gun for Command Station. Perfecta la kill que hace Command Station. And just like that, make it another one. Two kills, dos muertes para Command Station. And the shots right down into that top red base. You see Tracer and Vistatron stuck here. They essentially try, need to try to uh, force Command Station and take down to push into them, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. Command Station in trouble. As you see, if fights happening on both ends of the map, it's going to come down to the 1v1 engagements trades between Takedown and Tracer. Vistatron wins his gunfight against Command Station, and now they have this top control. This is where you can start padding your stats getting some important kills is when you have players trapped in the base like this but you also have to be wary of how you push pushing a little bit too quick right there no help to be found and uh you're leaving your teammate in a, a sticky situation as tracers in trouble too much trouble now, right now arising for the team of Tracer and Bestron. We see a little bit of trades, but still not going to be enough. 19 to 14, shields up for Bestron. Tracer spawning, and now Command Station and Takedown have the ability to go in and put themselves closer, a little bit closer to that sweet, sweet, tight series 2 to 2. Then four of us try to Tracer. Are starting to make the comeback happen. Command station and takedown. They're stuck in these bases. One guy was able to get out through the middle, but once you get one down, you go for the other. They lost the overshield, but they have the new combo. It's time to melt the overshield. Did it connect? Yes, it did. Overshield gone. The kill in. Once again, the EMP assist there. Down three now. This comeback, I think, is becoming more and more a reality. Remember that time when I tell you the almost exactly score? Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about, give me a 23-25. Winner, command station. Okay, let's see. That would be forcing a game five right here. I, I'm Honestly, I'm a believer. I think that uh, Tracer and uh, Vistatron can make this happen. Only down two now. And the thing is, is that command station takedown has seen just to be uh, put in the cycle of Halo where they're consistently away from each other. Ooh. Big gunfights like that make the difference. Honestly, a trade that you'll take at this moment in time for command station. But they just need to start winning these gunfights and putting this game away. Force the game number five. Okay.
situation is getting a little bit more complicated and desperate. Command station and takedown really need to put an end into this game number three. Necesit no, wait, ne game number four. Necesitan poner ese punto final because if not, stuff like this is going to happen. 22 to 20. 21 to 22. Only one kill difference. They might still be rolling out and Fremen might be looking for that victory that they need for those 750. Oh, Command Station wins a huge one-on-one. -on -one. Keeps the kills within one. That was an opportunity for Tracer and Vista trying to eventually tie up this game. It's a 1v1. Takedown at the top of the map. Can he get the finish? No. Command Station coming in from the other side. Tracer's in trouble. Uh, between a rock and a hard place, but somehow Tracer has survived for this long. Eventually, the kill comes in. Now just one more for Command Station and Takedown flying at Vistatron, and Vistatron stands no chance. Game number five, here we come. 22-25, as always, I'm <laughs> a kill behind or a kill ahead from what we're seeing, but still, forcing a game number five. That's, uh, that's really interesting, especially when it comes to Halo 5. Yeah, Halo 5, game number 5. I wonder what map we're going to. Is, is it true? I bet it's going to be Truth. Truth, a classic Halo 5 2v2. The one thing I'll say, right? Vistatron and Tracer, they've won the uh, Truth and the Plaza game. Meanwhile, Takedown and Command Station have only won on regret. So if history repeats itself, this should be a victory for Vistatron and, uh, and Tracer. Oof, I mean, we're just loading right into the game. Last game of the night as we are wrapping up with some good old Halo 5. Something we, a game we all love, someone, some hate, and some didn't even play it. So let's go. Guys, if you're joining us for the first time from the Halo stream, seeing if there's still some more Halo action to be seen, you are joining in in the Halo 5 2v2 Grand Finals of the Side Station event. This is a $750 price pool, 500 to first place. Vistatron and Tracer won games two and three. Command Station takedown games one and four. But last time we played on Truth, it was a dominant win for Tracer and Vistatron. We'll have to see if they can repeat that success. So far, slight advantage. I mean, you can call them their home turf at some time because they only been slaughtering the team from Command Station and Takedown. They might be able to change it, but they need a really, really key movement that Halo 5 has, and every single shot needs to count. Unfortunately, won't be the case for Command Station. Well, this is very similar to how we saw game number two start. Tracer and Vistatron putting a lot of room between them and Command, uh, between them, Command Station Takedown. And these kills in the middle of the map are going to be vital for both teams. You have to find the trade here. Vistatron has to go down if you're Command Station. And unfortunately for Command Station, stuck between two players, not going to be able to get those kills. And there's a two-kill swing in favor of Tracer and Vistatron. Let's see what they're able to pull out. A big disadvantage. Talking about Halo 5 twos. This is a huge disadvantage that they need to make sure to shrink, but they are not being capable of doing so. Every single time, Tracer and Beast Station, Beast Drumper, sorry, <laughs> come into this map, it's a struggle. Deja vu. 10 to 2. That was how we started game number two. All weapons out of ammo. Tracer is looking. Okay. Did get the burn. Honestly, you couldn't ask for better value. You run out of pistol ammo, you're like, okay, what can I do in this spot? If you get a burn on a camouflage, you'll take that all day. Making sure you you deny every single slightly possible advantage, but those nades are coming in hot by Tracer. Just making sure every single possible item counts and makes up for all, everything that's been going on. This is game number five. Not going to be enough. Still, great brawler sends him back to the respawn stream with a gancho de, with a derechazo, and that's going to be still double of what they had tracer and vistatron getting great damage down range time and time again command station and takedown seem to be just separated on this map because of how aggressive tracer and vistatron have been 
You can see both players looking to get into the top. That noob combo, I like to call it the poor man's sniper rifle. You're going to see why. This thing can absolutely snipe you from across the map. Once it hits you, it depletes your shields, and it's a simple pistol shot to the head to take you down. Dollar Tree Sniper Rifle is what you would some call the plasma pistol because it's green like a dollar. And then, oh, great shot and great pummel right there. Now we switch up. Oh, sticking the thrust ahead of them to dodge the damage. Creative plays from Vistatron, and it might be a double as Command Station is weak at the top blue base. Vistatron looking for a re-approach. Does spot Command Station, gets the info to his teammate. Command Station just trying to live long enough for takedown to get back into the action, but that will not happen in time. Killing spree before takedown is able to take the Tracer and Vistatron back at this base. Stick and go and tools. We're looking here for a really difficult situation. Like you said, deja vu. We're going back in time to that game, that second game where basically it was just about Tracer and Basotron dominance in this map. Camo in the hands of Tracer. Great job by Command Station and take down. They immediately spot it and take them down. That camo can be devastating much better in halo 5 than it was in halo infinite you have this ability to just to stay hidden if you stay completely still it is so hard to see players on that uh, with that camouflage something that really just fixed in halo infinite if you're just looking hard enough you can actually see whoever's standing right there with the camel no matter if it moves if it jumps if it starts shooting you but so far game takes a scroll we are now but a really slow situation here as the players are starting to get themselves all around the map. Couple of shots. This could be a kill for the team of Tracer and Bisotron. But still. Ooh, it was the other way around. A player up top mid instantly melted. Oh, you can't ask for a better play from Tracer and Vistatron. Now they have some separation on the map and they know where these spawners are going to be coming from. Vistatron just needs to be patient, wait for his teammate to get into, uh, get into place before you make any rash moves. A little, receiving a little bit of damage. Gotta win this fight. Ooh, I mean... You'll take the trade. You honestly, yeah, you take the trade, You'll take right? the trade. Right now, you're at a huge advantage. The trades, even if it's like not in a good situation, a trade is a trade and a point is a point. So if you're up ahead, you'll happily take a trade. Yeah, now you're you're just within five kills. Uh, you can go one for two for the for the entire uh, rest of this game. It, it's gonna be up to command station and take down basically both to get killing sprees at this point in order for this to go in their favor. Vistatron does go down and Tracer is just gonna have to back down and wait for the spawns. You see command station is waiting on takedown to get towards car and then they can try to work together to take down this player in this high position. A really intense game five that really shows what two that, B oh, that twos money. Oof, what two B twos no. were like in Halo Five. Sadly, I missed this era because it looked like it was really fun. Active camo in the hands of command station. I need the translation services once again. Yes, sir. Let's do it. What do you believe? Yo creo. Si. Yo creo. That's right. Si. Yo creo. I believe Command Station is in a brilliant spot right here with the camouflage, able to get behind Tracer, finds another kill. Suddenly, what was a 10-kill deficit has just turned to five. They, it's been a five-kill drought for Tracer and Vistatron. They have not been able to do much, and they still will be seeing the result. Respawn screen. This is devastating. Tracer meets his maker as well. What was 10 kills is now just three. I'm a believer. Yo creo fielmente en el equipo de Command Station y de Takedown. Estación de comando y abati uh, abatido. That's the literal translation from both of these names. So I I'm just down to it. Let's see how it goes. It's really close. Two. Really, really close. Don't Huge and key fight oh! right there. Going to be a reversal and a catch shot to wrap up the kill. One kill different tools. One. Uno. What was 10 is now one. What was 10 is now one. Command Station and Takedown have been doing everything right. Getting kill after kill. The nades are coming in. They're trying to check every corner. They know no one's at the bubble. Both these players trapped at this top base. Command Station's flying. She sees both of them. Can she execute on these kills? Vistatron is one shot. Desperately trying to stay alive. Oh, no. Command Station almost gets both. But Takedown will get the kill. It's an even game. 21 all.
Uy, 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 I can't, no, no, no puedo pensar más en inglés, no puedo, no puedo más, es imposible, la pasión de estos jugadores que nos están dando, básicamente en Halo 5 es algo de lo que me arrepiento de haberme perdido, excelente los tiros, tenemos trades, ambos siguen 22 y 22, nos estamos yendo hasta lo último que nos puede ofrecer Active Camo en el campo, lo va a ganar nadie, los dos van a caer 23 a 23. Tide. Once again, camo burned. It's going to be pistol on pistol action. Command station and takedown stuck in this back base. Vistatron trying to get checks on those nades. Nades not going to give him any information. Seize the command station from across the uh, across the way. We'll give that info to Tracer. And they're going to, in fact, both rotate towards this car side. I believe they want to try to take this fight against command station. They know where takedown's at. Command station spotted. Command station a little bit too forward on the map. She goes underneath the base trying to stay Alive. Here we go. The fight is in. Shots through Tracer and Vistatron. Just one kill away. Takedown doing his best, but he's stuck over at top mid. Can they stay alive? 24 all. Oh, stay calm. Takedown. This is what you've been waiting for. Clutch up. Huge. This is the play of your life. Takedown looking to get up high. The movement is not quite there. Looking for the opportunity, waiting. Here we go! Oh, takedown, just not able to get the kill in time. Tracer and Vistatron have done it at 25-24 finish. Are you kidding me? What an absolute banger of a Halo 5 match. We had the ups, the downs, it was everything we could have ever wanted. We almost had that upset. We almost had what could have been the upset. I mean, at least talking about just how the maps were won. It was a really close call. Both were just trying so, so hard to just go and get the last kill. But a small mistake caused an incredible amount of time and damage for the team of Command Station. Not being able to move around and not being able to just get in time with their team, with her teammate and ultimately just resulting in this heartbreaking defeat guys that's it Vistatron Tracer congratulations a top finish in the Halo 5 2v2 they'll come home $500 richer an absolute banger in the game five folks that's the last that was the last playing to watch in the entire venue everyone's telling us to leave get out of here so <laughs> thank you for watching all the action today we'll have more for you tomorrow stay tuned for that if you want to help support what we're doing out here some simple things you can do right Frizzle? you can sub to the channel you may get some subs watch some ads all that helps keep us coming to these events and keep providing some of these side events open bracket pool play uh, championship bracket coverage absolutely i mean just even just watching being able to just watch through those ads is going to help support the channel immensely you can help bring talent from all around the world like myself that i'm helping here with lbt just being able to make my dreams come true being here on the microphone being able to just showcase some uh, pasión mexicana like i like to call it so I mean, it's been fun. You can just watch, you can donate, you can send some subs, maybe looking at some five subs in chat, maybe, wink, wink, uh, maybe some uh, some bits in chat bits, too. Yeah, right. Bits are really helpful too. So, I mean, we're just ending this Saturday. Tomorrow yeah. is the big day. Tomorrow is Championship Sunday. So we'll be seeing you guys tomorrow as we'll be just entering the final state of this tournament. The HCS Arlington 2024. We'll see you around. We've seen Collect pop off plenty of times with it. Native Gaming still clinging to that narrow lead. No scope there for Collect. Pugilistic with the fist takes down Mighties. But when you play dangerous games, sometimes you're going to get burned. But I think they're going to be able to stave off any sort of push from foe right here. Jimbo just trapped in the tower. They all know where he's at. Oh, never mind. Oh, my God. What a shot. Where's the pressure going to come from, right? This is wu -Tum's just looking at the center of the map. He's just waiting for information to come. If he doesn't get information from his perimeter players, then suddenly he knows, like, okay, they're going to just jump out in the middle. But they decided all to come from the long haul side. And while wu -Tum, he might be feasting oh! with his first triple on the ACS stage.